Hi guys, I want to invite you to join the Patreon where you will get some benefits as well as audiobooks that will not be uploaded on YouTube. Chapter 1 Hiruzen stopped by the door at Naruto's apartment. He placed the plastics he held down and knocked. Not twice but five times. There was no response. He was certain though, that Naruto was somewhere inside the building. He opened the door and walked in. It was always unlocked. There was a sign of danger painted at the door. Someone had put it there. Naruto never bothered to remove it, neither did he. But at least no one would dare walk inside the place. So Naruto never locked it. Not a night. Not when he was running through the village. Not when he was in the forest of death. The place was cold. And eerily silent. Hiruzen shivered slightly. He should be used to this. But this was his ritual every time he came here. He'd brought in a TV, just maybe to give it some life, but Naruto hardly used it. One day he would turn it on and leave it on a news channel. When he comes back, it is going to be on the same channel, remote still where he left it. He didn't bother saying anything anymore. The Sandame walked over to the small kitchen. The apartment wasn't the best. But it had everything. He had made sure of it. Still, this wouldn't mean much. Even if he bought a large fridge, with Naruto by himself, it would only have ramen inside. The damn villagers wouldn't sell him food. They wouldn't sell him anything. Since they couldn't touch him, they thought death by starvation was one way to go about. To some, it was just the fear of losing customers. Who wanted to buy in the same shop as the Kyubi brat? Shaking his head, Hiruzen silently unloaded the grocery and packed it in the fridge and cupboards. He did this every month. Perhaps it was his punishment for the way things have gone. But if he didn't do it, Naruto wouldn't eat decent food. At least the blonde ate. He could cook. He had taught him how to cook. Once he was done, Hiruzen looked around, it was always tidy. Naruto was clean. He was a miserable lonely child, but at least he cleaned up his place. That was at least something good. But not something that made him smile. There were still many problems that didn't look like they were going to go away. And there wasn't much he could do about it. To feel so powerless to change things Hiruzen had never been so frustrated and he was called the professor. He had learned every fire-based jutsu in the fire country. He had solved many puzzles, and yet, Naruto's life was one he could not solve. No matter what he said, the villagers would undo it with their glares and blatant whispers of contempt. Minato would be so disappointed. He walked over to Naruto's bedroom. It was a one-bedroom apartment. There was no sense of life. The door wasn't fully closed. Slowly, he opened it it made a creeping sound. He cursed. But when he walked in, there was Naruto sitting by the window. A small boy, no more than five years eleven months old. His knee was raised, his other leg inside with his back leaning against the window frame. His eyes were cast outside. He had been here all this time. Just silent. Just never reacting. When did it start? How did it even come to this point? Naruto had been happy. He had smiled and laughed. But these days, he rarely went outside. He spent most time sitting by the window, motionless, as if dead. It pained him. Naruto Hiruzen forced a smile as he walked over the child. His tone was gentle. Naruto didn't react until he stopped by the window. Hiruzen touched the blonde on the shoulder. He almost startled him. Lost in thought. Naruto faced the third for a moment. There wasn't much on his face. He looked at the plastic on the third's hands. Clothes. He did need some of them. Once more, he looked outside the window. There wasn't much to look at. Just happy people. Sending glares whenever they saw him. Is it that time of the month already? Naruto finally spoke. His tone was quiet, slow. Month end, the time for an allowance, new food. And to open the tin he hid his savings. The Sandame gave him more than enough. It was a pity he couldn't spend it all even if he wanted. 
Most shop shops had a sign that said we don't sell to demons. Hiruzen nodded. I brought you something. Naruto had to turn around to look at the sandame. His tone had been filled with excitement. It was obvious from his eyes that he was holding himself from exploding with the news. Naruto grew curious. Maybe even hopeful. I've never seen you so excited unless you're reading that book you keep hidden in your robes, Gigi Naruto said he couldn't keep out the curiosity in his tone. Are you finally going to let me see? Hiruzen coughed. He placed the plastic he held down. And then knelt. Naruto then turned over to him and stood facing him. He had done it automatically without any urging. The third placed both his hands on Naruto's shoulders. His lips twisted upside down. He was apologetic. I'm sorry for not having done this earlier, Naruto he stared into those confused blue orbs for a moment before pulling Naruto into a tight hug. I am sorry. Naruto stiffened sharply. He wasn't used to this. His personal space intruded. When the sandame didn't let go, his hands slowly moved and he wrapped them around the old man. Warmth. It was a beautiful feeling. He pulled tighter to get more of it. He buried face on the sandame's shoulder, enjoying the warmth. It was at moments like this that something he couldn't explain occurred to his heart. His eyes usually water. But the feeling was good. He didn't always get it. But it was good. He couldn't explain it but he didn't dislike it, even though it nearly brought him to tears. You're going to suffocate me, Naruto I'm still an old man the Sandame said with a chuckle before pulling away. Naruto smiled. Yes, he smiled. It was an embarrassed smile. Eh sorry he murmured. Hiruzen was happy to see that smile. He cherished it for a moment. There was truly hope. Not all was lost. Yes, there was hope. Listen very carefully, Naruto. You are not going to tell anyone what I am going to tell you, and you will not show anyone what I am about to give you he paused. Do you understand me? Naruto didn't have anyone he could tell. He had no friends. He didn't have family. He was alone in this world. Maybe he could tell the old man at the ramen stand but that was that. Yet, he was confused. Why would the old man say he couldn't tell anyone when he had no one to tell? It wasn't by design of an obsession with solitude. He had tried. He has wasted so many hours and days chasing friends. Even if he made them for a couple of minutes, their mothers would come and drag them away. Don't play with him, don't talk to him. They would say. It hurt him. It seriously wounded him. The last friends he had made tricked him. They saw he was too eager to make friends and then tricked him. They had sent him to the forest of death. He should have known with the danger signs on the fences, he should have known when they laughed with madness when he crawled under the fence but he had been eager. The forest had nearly killed him. The sandame hadn't been amused. He had told him what happened. He had explained things and then swore those boys would never become shinobi. And they never did. Naruto had stopped trying. He had stopped. He had seen the ugliness of people. It terrified him. And he didn't want to experience it again. Why? Do you trust me, Naruto? Naruto quickly nodded. Yes, he said firmly. Hiruzen smiled. It will do your life harm if you tell anyone. I can't risk that, Naruto. I cannot risk anything happening to you. There was the chance that people would make connections. No, they would make connections. He wasn't worried about the Yandame's enemies. He was worried about the villagers. They could reject the truth and try to harm Naruto for claiming otherwise. It wouldn't be pretty. He took out a picture from his robes. It wasn't framed. He handed it over to Naruto who grasped it with both his hands. He was trembling. That Naruto, is a picture of your mother. She was carrying you when it was taken. Like I told you, she died during the Kyuubi rampage. Mother? Mother? His mother? Her hair was red. It was that crimson color. Dangerous color. He was blonde. Naruto didn't question it. For the first time in his cold brutal life filled with loneliness and contempt, Naruto had a mother. 
He had a mother. He wasn't the spawn of a demon. He wasn't the cubie. He was born of this woman. This beautiful woman. The picture. He held it against his raging heart and walked over to his bed. He sat down. He had a mother. Those words repeated a thousand times inside his head. Until. Until tears rolled over his eyes. He made sure he didn't water the picture. Naruto felt happy. He felt relieved. He felt as if something had closed in his heart. Hiruzen took out a shirt from the clothes he brought. He looked at the Uzumaki symbol for a moment before nodding his head. If it was going to bring Naruto happiness, then he would do it. He sat beside the blonde, but didn't say anything. Not until a couple of minutes passed. He didn't want to ruin the moment. Hell, an umbu even came before him to tell him there was an urgent meeting with his advisors but he brushed it off. It could wait. He had much more important matters to deal with. Her name was Kushina. Kushina Uzumaki. The same name as his. Uzumaki. Naruto stared at his mother. But he listened to the Sandame Hokage attentively. He didn't want to miss anything. Most of your clothes have this symbol. You can see it even in Kanoha's Jonin vests at the back. This is the symbol of the Uzumaki clan. Your clan, Naruto. Your mother's clan. Before you get hopeful, there are no more Uzumakis out there. At least as far as I know. Your ancestral home. The home where your mother came from was destroyed during the Second Shinobi World War. He went on to tell Naruto the fame of the Uzumaki clan, its history with the Senju clan. He told the blonde most things. It wasn't a happy thing since the clan was destroyed and Yuzu was nothing more than just ruins. But he believed it would give Naruto a sense of belonging. No matter what people say to him, he would know he came from somewhere and his mother once belonged to a prestigious clan. Gigi will you take me to Yuzu? I want to see it. I want to see it. He said those words with hope and excitement. Hiruzen frowned. But he didn't let it show to Naruto. Perhaps if he saw it, he would fully believe. It was one thing to be told about something than seeing it yourself. I will clear my calendar and take you there but he pressed his index finger on his lips. Don't tell anyone about it. When we go, it will be just the two of us. No one in this village will know. Naruto nodded vigorously. He would not tell a soul. End. Naruto had his eyes closed, standing on a tree branch in the middle of a forest, feeling the pressure of the wind. When it came to hiding his presence, Jiraiya was a master. To suggest that the perverted geezer learned this trade in order to peep would not be far off. Jiraiya had perfected jutsus for his lustful desires. He could deprive himself of sleep trying to figure out the defenses of a hot spring that that was locked away to hide from perverts such as him. He didn't open his eyes when the sandine flashed on behind him, in midair. His right foot blasting the airwaves as it moved towards the back of his head. On his left hand, Naruto held a kunai before ducking under the fast-coming kick. The moment it went above him, his body twisted in blinding fashion while he leapt into the air, getting away from the tree branch. Jiraiya grinned as Naruto faced him. He could see the kunai on his left hand. Naruto was deadly precise with those. It was always coated with chakra. Without blinking, the blonde flung the kunai. The hand movements weren't extreme. It just seemed as if he was flicking it. But the speed in which it traveled was dangerously fast. The grin on his lips disappeared. The toad sage bent his body backwards, his head facing the heavens as the kunai blasted past him. He felt the wind brush his face as it went by. The kunai hit a tree, blasting past it. Jiraiya didn't have the time adjust his body as Naruto flashed above him, a raisingan on the palm of his right hand. He cursed the blonde's speed. The raisingan was slammed into his chest. When it connected, the sandin exploded into puff of smoke. Katan, fire dragon's breath. Jiraiya breathed out a stream of crimson blames from his month. He was standing on the ground, looking up as the flames rushed up towards Naruto was who still floating in mid-air, body positioned slightly horizontal after the momentum of his raisingan. Looking at the incoming flames. Naruto moved his right hand across his chest. 
he closed his eyes, and then snapped his fingers. A wave of his chakra was released from this fingers. It was invisible to the naked eye. The wave covered a certain distance and but what it did was blast the oxygen away. The effect lasted for no more than two seconds. The flames that had been coming towards him simply died off, just like that. It was the weakness of flames. They needed oxygen to burn. Regardless of power and speed, as long as there was no oxygen, the flames would not burn. Ah, he loved his jutsu. You're wide open. Jiraiya announced. He was on Naruto's right side, still in midair. There was no more warning when his left right foot slammed onto Naruto's shoulder, sending the blonde flying away. As the force of the kick carried him, Naruto avoided wincing. Jiraiya's physical attacks carried a brutal kind of strength. He flipped several times with his senses fully functioning. As he was about to pass a tree branch, he stretched out both his hands and grabbed it. He attempted to swing forward but Jiraiya once again appeared. The Sanmin was right in front of him, the man punched him on his chest. When the brutal punch connected, Naruto burst into a cloud of smoke. Jiraiya frowned before flashing away. He landed on the ground and leaned against a tree trunk. His eyes flashed open when he sensed something coming in fast. He couldn't react when a kunai went through on his right, it cut slightly his cheek before piercing through the trunk of the tree. Jiraiya sweated as blood dripped from his cheek. His heart pounded a bit with relief. That could have opened his skull had it been intended to do so. You're getting destructed. Naruto was in front of the Sanmin. His right foot weaving through the air before slamming onto his chest. The attack planted the Sanmin against the tree. With his foot still connected with Jiraiya's chest, Naruto formed a small Raisingan in the blink of an eye. As he retreated his foot, he was driving the jutsu towards Jiraiya's chest. The Sanmin dropped to the ground and Naruto's jutsu collided with the trunk of the tree, breaking it. As the tree began to fall, Jiraiya did a leg sweep, making Naruto off balance and start to fall backwards. The Sanmin flashed above the blonde. Naruto quickly crossed both his hands above him as the back of Jiraiya's right foot came crashing towards his face. His defense held firmly and Naruto quickly grabbed Jiraiya's foot. He balanced himself quickly before spinning around in quick motions. He flung Jiraiya towards a tree. Futon, wind bullet. He spat out a bullet of wind from his mouth. The bullet hit Jiraiya on his chest and propelled him further backwards. His back crashed into a tree with a sickening thud. Naruto was right before him, not easing up on his attack. He held a sword, coated with wind chakra. He swung it horizontally and seemingly cut through both Jiraiya and the tree, but the Sanmin turned into a log. Jiraiya was behind Naruto, crashing down. His hands were held together, creating a giant fist. The slammed the hammer down with all his strength, hitting Naruto on his right shoulder. The force caused Naruto to fall to his knees, dropping his sword as his hand trembled and throbbed painfully. The Sanmin wasn't done, the moment he touched down, he lifted his right foot, kicking Naruto on the back of his head. It was brutal. It forced Naruto to hit the trunk of the tree he'd just cut with his forehead. A sense of dizziness gripped his mind for a moment as his vision blurred. Birds chirped for a second. Jiraiya grabbed him and then lifted him up into the air. The Sanmin was holding him up by his throat. Just one hand. Shall we call an end to it? Too soon. Naruto muttered. He moved quickly. Both his hands grabbed Jiraiya's arm. He put so much pressure on his fingers that he stopped the flow of blood and Jiraiya's grip loosened. His legs moved up and he wrapped them around Jiraiya's arm. The Sanmin cursed loudly before slamming Naruto on the ground. There was a loud boom as Naruto crashed with his back. But he didn't let go. He even started twisting the arm. Jiraiya started tapping on the ground comically before yelling. Naruto you are going to break my hand. Do something about it. Naruto yelled back. Careless of Jiraiya's pain. You shitty brat, if you break my hand, I won't be able to do research properly. That is worse than death. Naruto shrugged. It will save you from pain and women will have their dignity back. Jiraiya cursed once more and used his free hand to form a hand seal. 
his hair stretched and wrapped around Naruto. He strangled the blonde, forcing him to let him go. Once free, he hurled the blonde away. Naruto flipped several times before touching the ground with both his hands, trying to stop the momentum. Once he stopped, an earth spike burst from the ground. It was sharp, and dangerously moving towards his chest. Naruto propelled his body backwards by pushing chakra into his fingers to push himself. The spike missed him, just by a whisker. Jiraiya expected this, he was upon the blonde. Twisting as he moved, he channeled chakra onto his fight foot and then slammed it on Naruto's face. The kick picked the blonde off the ground but before he could do anywhere, Jiraiya grabbed his right foot and then twisted him up before hurling him towards a tree. Naruto didn't have enough room to balance his body and so he crashed into the tree with his back. The Sanin appeared in front of him, driving his punch towards his chest. Jiraiya sensed a spike of chakra and tried to retreat, the blonde burst into a swirl of hundreds of small wind blades. He landed a distance away, but before he could even glance at the damage, he felt the air leave his lungs. Naruto was standing just away from him, with a bleeding face but he was sucking all the oxygen away. It became harder to breath for Jiraiya. He fell on his knees, clutched his chest, his mouth hung open. He was going to pass out. There was no relief when it stopped Naruto kicked him on his forehead with a wind-enhanced kick. He guessed it was payback for his earlier kick. Jiraiya felt his head tremble violently. His vision blurred as dizziness took over. He didn't even feel it when he hit a tree with his back. His senses came back when something slammed into his gut, causing him to spit out saliva while falling on his knees, hands on his gut. The attacks were enhanced with wind. It wasn't like Tsunade but they did the damage. Naruto fell down on his butt, his breathing labored. He wiped out the blood on his face and then fell on his back. He needed to rest. Once the pain was over, Jiraiya leaned against a tree trunk and looked at his hand. It was bleeding with several cuts. He applied his medical ninjutsu to stop the bleeding. The cuts were not deep, so they closed. After a couple of moments of silence, he looked at Naruto. His right hand still ached from that lock. The blonde was improving. He was getting better and better by each month. This training trip had been the best option for Naruto. If they hadn't done this, he wouldn't have gotten closer to his godson, he wouldn't be producing another shinobi who would surpass him. It was still early days but one day, Naruto would surpass him. He would be better than him. Jiraiya was honestly proud. Minato had been a genius but Naruto had potential and he used it to his advantage. He knew his potential. The blonde was also willing to learn. I'm no longer taking it easy on you Jiraiya more or less grumbled. The last hits had been unpleasant. It has been quite a while since someone managed to hit him so hard. I told you to bring your a game, even Senjutsu if possible. I'd kill you with Senjutsu. And I am soon going to cripple you if you're not careful. Naruto retorted. Jiraiya frowned. That was true. He couldn't deny it. It wasn't the arrogant speaking. It was a fact. Before their training ends, Naruto was most likely going to leave him bedridden for a couple of days. They did fight with the intention to kill. There was no friendly. You could break a leg. It was part of the training. Part of fighting experience. More than anyone, Jiraiya knew the experience was important for survival. Your reflexes are good and your speed has improved. But you need to stop leaving gaps between your attacks. Jiraiya lectured. You also leave yourself open each time you snap your fingers. It is only for a second. When fighting against normal shinobi, I can recover quickly. Don't take comfort in that. You will fight people even faster than me. If they are faster, they will attack on that lapse of concentration. If you cannot work around the problem, it is best you leave that jutsu for emergencies. I think that would be best Naruto said before going silent for a moment. It requires maximum concentration and I must stop breathing monetarily. For you it might be seconds but for me, it is like minutes. Well, we can't take away the fact that the jutsu is a work of genius. It basically makes the fire element useless against you Jiraiya smiled. When are you going to broaden your arsenal? You can't be satisfied with just wind. 
That aside, wind is weak against some elements. You must always be ready to adapt to any change and using different elements helps in this regard. I can work something out with fire. Given my extensive knowledge of the element, using fire-based jutsus for me should require minimal effort Naruto said getting up. I will send a letter to Tsunade for her to send us some scrolls with fire-based jutsus he said while getting. Come on, let us go back to the town he looked at himself and frowned. This is going to drive away customers. Don't flatter yourself you're not pleasant to look at even when you are clean. Jiraiya glared at Naruto. Neither are you. He spat. Naruto shrugged. I have never been pleasant to look at. I have accepted that he said indifferently. But you seem to be struggling with denial. You should sit in a dark corner and repeat after yourself, I'm not pleasant to look at, I'm not pleasant to look at. I know it will finally click in. Jiraiya didn't ease on his glare. The cold dark humor. Sometimes Jiraiya questioned Naruto's sanity. But he knew there was no harm. He was used to it. They would be laughing any moment. It has always been like this. At least he was with his godson. Who else did he have? The sand aim was gone and that had truly shattered the blonde. The old man was everything to Naruto. And when he died, without saying a word to him, Naruto has suffered. And then there was Sasuke. The cursed Uchiha. Thinking of him made Jiraiya angry. Well, not since they left Kanoha has Naruto brought up the subject. Not once, not ever. Hell, the blonde didn't even talk about Kanoha. And Jiraiya didn't push. He was getting close there was no need to venture into territories Naruto didn't want to touch. But he understood that they couldn't ignore it forever. They would have to talk about it because sooner or later, they would have to return to Kanoha. You could at least try to be nice you know my heart isn't that strong anymore he said with mock misery, feigning to be hundred years old. Old people are locked up in their homes Naruto said. He sighed and stared into the heavens. What do you think is up in the sky where we cannot see, sensei? Jiraiya cast his eyes into the clear sky, he stared for a moment before shaking his head. I don't think there is anything there. I don't think there is life there. Interesting isn't it? Naruto said. What? You say there is no life there, but up in there is where this world receives its life. If the heavens do not make clouds for rain, the trees, the animals, the grass, these things will die. The rivers will eventually run dry and people will be next there is no life there, and yet, it is where we receive our lives. Once again, Jiraiya looked into the sky. He couldn't argue with the blonde on that note. One thing he has noted about the blonde was that he was deeply knowledgeable about many things. And he knew how to apply his knowledge. Perhaps it was the wisdom he gained from spending much time with the Sandame Hokage. When you spend time people, something about them also rubs off you. That is nature Jiraiya said. Naruto nodded. Yes, nature, so beautiful, calming and yet it can be so dangerous. I like nature. He said before changing the subject. I have been curious, you have no shame, have you ever tried peeping on Tsunade? Jiraiya's body froze. Yes it was more of a whimper than anything. He could never forget that memory. He still had those wounds from the beating she had dished on him. He fought with the crazy side of him that said it was worth it because he had nearly died that die literally. Tsunade had pummeled him hard. She had broken so many bones the pain. Worse, she healed him after doing it and then threatened to beat him into the brink of his life again if he tried it once more. Well, those had been younger days. He could escape now, but he wouldn't dare try it again. He had learned his lesson. Judging by that response, you must have received quite the beating. You don't know half of it Jiraiya said with his eyes closed. He swallowed hard to banish the memory. She nearly killed me. Since then, I say anything to her but never again. Never again. But you did see, right? Naruto glanced at the San Nim. It must have been something else. She must have been a very delicate young lady when she was younger. She was Jiraiya said. She is still beautiful he added. Naruto didn't comment on that. He just nodded. Without much being said, the two headed back to the town. The walk was silent, both in their thoughts. 
Jiraiya was thinking about what they had to do next while Naruto was thinking about certain things in his life. Once they reached their motel, Jiraiya took a shower and changed his clothes. There was no need to rest for the Sanin he was going out and likely not to return for the night. Naruto didn't question it. He knew what the Sanin was going to do. They had chosen this town because of its fun activities. There were casinos, brothels. Jiraiya's kind of hunting ground. He loved places like this. He always danced with joy when he thought of what kind of material he was going to gain through his peeping work or getting drunk with young girls who giggled and laughed hysterically whilst he tells them his legendary stories. The man walked out of the bathroom, already grinning madly. You could see it in his eyes, his body language. He was going to have fun. Well, the past four days had been spent training vigorously. The man probably felt he needed to reward himself. Jiraiya contained himself and walked over to the window. He opened it and then turned back to face Naruto. We are going to leave this town in the next couple of days. He said a bit seriously. They never stayed at one place for too long. The longest they had stayed was two months, they were always moving around, seeing different places. Sometimes they didn't even camp with people. They would stay in the middle of nowhere. For survival, it was hunting. They always made sure there was water close if they were going to camp in the middle of nowhere. We have stayed long enough and I am certain that by tomorrow, you'll no longer be able to walk in the streets without women chasing after you along with their husbands. Jiraiya glared at Naruto. It had happened at their last village. It hadn't been fun and he had been forced to depart early. He was surely not going to return to that village again. He would be burnt on a stake like a witch if he returned to that place. There were wanted posters of him in good spots. And whose fault was it that I was nearly killed? Naruto shrugged. You left without giving me money for food. What was I supposed to eat? You're a man you need to make a plan and you didn't have to expose me like that. I wouldn't need to make a plan if I wasn't forced to use my money to bail us out after you lost your wallet when running away from one of your conquests. Jiraiya smiled. Remembering that day, ah, that had been truly a good day. That woman had assets as big as Sonade's. She was just sitting there in the water, never minding her nudity, doing things to herself. Jiraiya had never been quite pleased. Anyway he fought the blush gracing his cheeks. When I come back, you must be ready. I will look for a mission you can do. This time, it will have to be difficult. Naruto sighed, so, you'll be gone for a couple of days. The Sanmin nodded. He took out his wallet and stared at his money. He glanced at Naruto and then his money. He frowned. If he didn't give enough, Naruto was going to hunt him down and ruin things for him. He counted a few bills and put them down. I put enough for food and some fun he finished with a grin. With that, he jumped out of the window and was gone. Naruto shook his head and walked over to the window. He leaned against the window while sitting down, his right foot close to his chest with his left touching the floor inside. He rested his right hand on his knee and stared down at the streets. This was his comfort zone. How many days has he seen, sitting like this? He couldn't remember. They were too many to count. Almost all days he had a window, he performed this ritual. The streets filled with people, Mothers walking with their daughters boys chasing each other drunkards, walking past with a stench that turned people away. He saw this scene almost every day. Yet he was never tired of seeing it. The past sixteen years of his life have never been dull. There was always something happening. Had it not been for the old man, it would have been chaotic at best, but when he saw those mothers, he remembered his own mother, the woman who gave birth to him. Now he knew he had a father. The Sandame had left it as his last revelation before he died, a painful experience that had been. Losing the one you loved the one who saved your sanity. Jiraiya had come in, talked to Tsunade and he was taken out of the village after a couple of months of misery in solitude. For more than two years now, he has been running around the elemental nations with the Sanmin. He has seen many things. Many people, the shamefulness of Jiraiya and he had learned to drink. He had learned to speak to women. He was still young, but his body was growing fast. Then again, the old man had always ensured that he ate healthy. 
After an hour, a bird flew over to Naruto and landed on his right shoulder. He stood up and walked over to a small wooden table in the wide room and sat on a cushion. He took the scroll it carried and the bird flew over to the window. It stood there, as if standing watch. It always did that each time it came. Naruto opened the small scroll and channeled chakra through it. Another scroll appeared in a puff of smoke it was another storage scroll. He channeled chakra on the seal and then five mountains of papers appeared in a puff of smoke. He blinked work. It always came for him wherever he was. For five hours straight, without a break or anything, Naruto worked through the papers. Once done, he sealed them in the scroll and snapped his fingers. The small bird flew over to the table. He wrapped the small paper on the container on its leg. Do you need something to eat? It nodded its head as if it could understand his words. Naruto smiled and stood up. He returned with a small cup of water and fresh bread. The bird ate and then drank. If you drank, I'd give you some sake as thank you. The bird seemed to shake its head as if to say, alcohol. No thank you. Naruto laughed. Safe journey he said. The bird made a sound before flying away. The sun was already setting, it would be night soon. He couldn't sit here forever, he would lose his mind. Naruto went over to clean himself and then changed his clothes. Once done, he took a nap. By the time he woke up, it was dark outside. He pocketed the bills Jiraiya left him and put his hands on his pockets before walking out. He was already familiar with the town. He knew where to go, but it usually depended on where the wind was blowing. His mind wasn't focused on the road head, so he only blinked when he stopped at a bar. He could hear the musing blasting from inside, voices of male and females. Miserable people having fun and happy people expressing their joy. To be human, to be alive. People came here. There was a guard at the entrance. It was to guard against children walking inside. The young ones had a rebellious streak about them. They liked the joys of the adults. The forbidden ecstasy always seemed to be too attracting to humans. Naruto just still sixteen, still underage, but he was a shinobi. Those rules didn't apply. When the large man saw his headband, he merely grunted and opened way for him. The insides were dimly lit. The noise was too much. But those who complained about it shouldn't be here in the first place. They should be at home sleeping or reading night stories to their kids. If you couldn't handle the pressure, just stay away from it, or so a certain lady had told him. Naruto went towards the bar. He didn't sit he looked around and saw a free table by a corner. It was dark and you couldn't see clearly. It was his perfect place. He ordered four bottles. Once they came, he took two cups and walked over to his little corner. Solitude. The alcohol. Ah, the perfect combination to drown in bitterness. Kanoha. It has been two and a half years since Naruto left the village and still, there was no mention from Jiraiya on when they would return. Her friend hadn't even been returning. He sent letters every now and then, but he never showed up. Even now, she was looking at his letter. She was going to write for him to show up before her. Tsunade missed them. She really did miss the two. They had brought her back to this village and now they were running around in the elemental nation without her her old life. She hoped that Jiraiya wasn't teaching Naruto how to gamble. She had permitted them to go away because Naruto hadn't been the most happiest of people. He was miserable. The Sandame's death had affected him deeply and from what she had learned was that the old man had been the only person he talked to before he made a couple of friends at the academy. It hadn't been easy and that only happened in his last year. Jiraiya said he was fine. But she was a bit concerned. He was family in a way. He was the son of Kushina, someone who had been from her grandmother's clan and someone who was close to the old woman. She wasn't the one who was by Mito when she died it had been Kushina Naruto's mother. So, she did consider him family. Tsunade placed the letter on top of her desk and tapped her fingers. Something, wrong, Tsunade-sama? Sakura asked quietly. The slug princess glanced at the pinquette. She had grown. Well, she had trained her well. But she was still obsessed with Sasuke. That rotten child. 
he had been spoiled rotten. From what she knew, Tsunade didn't understand why the villagers adored him. She didn't see why girls liked him. He had a cold personality and he was rude. Did the girls really like him like that? If someone said they had been brainwashed, Tsunade wouldn't disagree. Sakura had been willing to throw a fit if someone said bad things about her beloved. The damned Uchiha. No Tsunade said with a shake of her head. I'm just worried about Naruto. It has been two and a half years now and from Jiraiya's letters, they are still training. He is even requesting scrolls to continue with Naruto's training she explained with a frown. Naruto, her teammate. The boy she'd been cruel to in their days. At some point, even Sasuke had yelled at her and told her that she didn't understand anything. She didn't know anything. Sakura had been hurt but she hadn't understood why Sasuke gave her that reaction. Now she did. She had been cruel to him. She never acted like a teammate. There were good memories but her attitude towards Naruto bothered her these days when she looked back at it. Perhaps it was because now she understood things about him. She knew his story. She knew why he got along with Sasuke. They were both lonely people. They both didn't have anyone. And she had mocked Naruto for not having parents. Sasuke didn't have them either, but she had considered that his had died. Naruto had never known his. He was an orphan but she never considered Sasuke as an orphan, but he was in the same boat as Naruto. How is he? Sakura asked carefully. Jiraiya never explains in detail but he is fine Tsunade said a bit bitterly. Sakura was surprised at the realization. So he has never sent you a letter? Tsunade nodded. No not even one, not since he left. I have only been hearing from Jiraiya. If this continues, I will order them to come back she said firmly. She didn't say anything as Shizun walked into the office, holding more stacks of papers. She frowned. Why do you have to bring that load now, I just finished another one. It is going to pile up if I leave it Shizun said calmly. There is also this she said handing a report to Tsunade. The go dame looked at the report for a moment before frowning. Troubling news, she didn't need it now. She closed it and put in on the drawer on her desk. She handled the letter from Jiraiya to Shizun. Please make sure you get everything in the list, I need to send them to Jiraiya. Shizun looked at the list. She left quietly without saying another word to Tsunade. Once Shizun was gone, Sakura took the opportunity to ask. Anything on Sasuke? She asked hopefully. Her eyes widened, she didn't want to miss anything on Tsunade's face. Tsunade shook her head. Still nothing. Well, he is with Orochimaru he is rather difficult to track down she frowned. But we must find him. The time is coming for Orochimaru to change bodies and if we don't act, he might take Sasuke's body. That will be over for the Uchiha. Sasuke Kun won't let that happen. Sakura said firmly. When Tsunade merely stared at her, she sunk down a bit and became nervous, and worried. Do you think he will? That is the only reason Orochimaru gave him the cursed seal Tsunade said. That aside, Naruto did say Sasuke said he was going to sell his soul to the devil to get the power to kill his brother. If it means giving his body to Orochimaru to kill, Itachi, then he might do it. I wouldn't even be surprised if Orochimaru manages to twist Sasuke into allowing him to get his revenge for him. For a moment, Sakura's body froze. If that happened, she would never see her beloved. He would become Orochimaru. They really had to find him. If Tsunade wasn't winning, she would look herself. Can't you ask Jiraiya-sama to do something? I didn't want to burden him but it looks like I don't have a choice. Tsunade said. For days after Jiraiya left Naruto. It was in the afternoon when Jiraiya returned. He found Naruto sitting motionlessly by the window. Perhaps it was something they had in common, but he never sat there like he was dead. Naruto never even used the window like the door. Never ever. Jiraiya had never seen it. Even when he was sitting there and had to go out, he would out through the door. It was strange, but Jiraiya never questioned. That took you long enough Naruto said without turning to face the Sanin. I'd stepped out of the town to receive some information. 
Jiraiya said as he sat down next to Naruto. He had his back leaning against the wall, the blonde on his left side. You know my network is very busy. I know, you sometimes leave for a month chasing shadows Naruto responded. He glanced down at the Sanin for a moment. What did you discover this time? Jiraiya realized, there was no hint of curiosity. Naruto was rather good at it. He was never too eager to learn anything. Even when he was asking things considered secrets, he never showed you how interested he was. Sometimes it made it difficult to tell if he was serious or not. Jiraiya had learned to just share or say he didn't have to know. If Naruto was asking, he wanted to know. It is about Yuzu he looked up, to see Naruto's reaction there was nothing out of fashion. My ancestral home Naruto said a bit lazily. There were many rumors going on about the land of whirlpools. The village had been reborn, but no one knew who did it and how it came to be. Suddenly one day, people just heard the rumors and the wave country confirmed it because they traded with the village. What bothered people was that the land was being led by the unknown someone who was called the Emperor. No one has seen him not even the people within the village. Considering how the village saw its end during the Second World War, I'm certain some people are very nervous. Naruto added, his blue eyes staring outside once more. Jiraiya nodded. The village had been destroyed. It hadn't done anything to anyone. The Uzumakis didn't fight in wars. They were a peaceful nation but yet, they were powerful. People were nervous about their power and ended up plotting their complete destruction. Now, there were just remnants of the clan. But with the village restored, did it mean that there were many other survivors of the clan out there and they had regrouped? Iwagakure is the one that is most agitated. Jiraiya said. They are concerned because if really it is the Uzumaki, they might have an enemy with a grudge. That is one way to look at it. Naruto said. Jiraiya raised an eyebrow. He would not forget, Naruto was Uzumaki. Even though he didn't live there, it was still his ancestral home and his mother had come from there. How would you look at it? Naruto shrugged indifferently. My clan was peaceful, they did not support wars, and they did not fight. They were allies of Kanoha but never partook in the wars. They didn't start trouble with anyone. They were hidden in their village, minding their own business, and yet some people felt threatened by them and decided to destroy them, what would you feel about that, sensei? There was no anger, no emotion, nothing in Naruto's tone. Again, Jiraiya couldn't tell what Naruto thought. As those blue orbs glanced back him, there was a hint of curiosity, in how he would respond to the question. It is a difficult one but you cannot say that what IWA and its allies was just. It was wrong in every sense of the word. Yet, nothing was done, not even by Kanoha. Again, Naruto looked outside the window. Our world isn't fair at times, sensei. People with power always do what they please. Sometimes, right is decided by those with power. I know that believe me, I know there was bitterness in Jiraiya's tone. This is why it is my desire to change this world. He said with burning passion. I admire your passion, sensei. I'm sure my father shared it as well. Of course Jiraiya said with a grin. It is why he named you after the hero of my first book after all. Ah, uh, yes, that book. You said my father liked it I think I like it as well perhaps for different reasons, but Naruto wouldn't say. What would you have done in that situation, sensei? In a world you desire, would you have allowed IWA and its allies to get away with what they did? Their action was nothing but a slaughter of innocents. I say this not because it is my clan, but looking at it as someone who has listened to your desires. Jiraiya thought for a couple of moments before shaking his head. I don't know, Naruto. IWA would say they were justified and they wouldn't back down. Anything would more forceful would result in bloodshed. He said. But if you have listened me to, you will know that I still don't have answers. Naruto nodded. Which is indeed a pity the blonde said. What of Kiri? They are the one should be most worried. Kiri is a bit far and we don't generally go there. It was locked up in a civil war. But I heard that the war was over and that a new Kage has been named. I'll go there sometime. Jiraiya said. 
Naruto didn't say anything else on the subject he just nodded and asked. What is new in the information you received? Nothing much there are still many things we don't know. Getting inside is near impossible. I'd have to go there myself. But since it is something that will require time, I can't do it now. I would have to be away from you for a long time and there are dangerous, spies get killed there Jiraiya explained lightly. I want to focus on our training now. But I am checking Iwa's movements. What are they doing? Nothing as things stand, but they are watching. I wouldn't bet against them preparing naval forces to prepare for an invasion if they feel they might be attacked. Kill them first before they kill you Naruto said. It was the cold truth. Jiraiya could only grunt in response. What would you do if it came to that? Naruto took his time before responding. I don't know he said. You said we'd do a mission when we leave. The Sanmin nodded. Are you ready? He asked. But let me correct you, I never said, we. Naruto looked at the Sanmin curiously. Why don't I like the sound of that? Jiraiya smiled. There is nothing to worry about. Otogekyur. Kukukukukukuku Orochimaru laughed with throbbing joy, seeing Sasuke fight. He was sitting on his throne. The Uchiha was excelling and moving faster than he had anticipated. He had been right after all and the Uchiha was a good candidate. But then again, he was never wrong was he? He was usually right because he made calculated moves. Kamamaro had turned out a failure because of his illness but Sasuke was perfect. The Sharingan would finally be within his grasp and he would make sure that the body would last him. It was a pity he could not sit Sasuke on a chair, strap him up and then begin to bisect him to an up close to what actually happened inside the Uchiha's body. Well, he just had to be patient. He would do it once he gained the body. He didn't have a problem with cutting himself up. Orochimaru went through a fit of coughs coupled up with blood. He frowned. This body had reached its limits. He really needed another host. He couldn't move freely now. And very soon, he would be bedridden, unable to do anything. Kabuto walked up to him, medicine. Dutifully, the Nin gave him his medicine before glancing at Sasuke who was fighting in the hall. He is improving splendidly he said. Should we inform him of Naruto Kuen's improvements as well? Orochimaru shook his head. Let us leave that for now. It might come in handy as a form of motivation he said. Did you bring what I asked for? Kabuto nodded. I've also found something interesting that you might like to know he said lifting up his glasses. Orochimaru eyed Kabuto, was he being teased? If the man knew he was going to like it, why didn't he just say it? Kabuto was loyal but sometimes Orochimaru questioned it. He smiled. What is it? It was appears that Gyurin has once more surfaced in Yuzushiogakure. Orochimaru blinked. Oh. That was indeed an interesting piece of information. His former number two had vanished from him along with that boy. He hadn't bothered chasing after them because they were no longer useful. Gyurin had done what he needed her to do. Perhaps the only thing she could prove was that of danger to him was about what she knew. Well she has been gone for about a year now, and nothing has happened, so he thought he was safe. That aside, he hadn't thought she had gone to join another village. Well that could be troublesome since we don't know anything about the village Orochimaru finally said after weighing up his thoughts. Have you sent someone? Yes, but they didn't come back. Well well it is interesting Orochimaru. I could go myself but at this point, I need to be by your side. A bitter reminder that he did need Kabuto at this moment. His movements were limited and very soon, he wasn't going to be able to do any by himself. The medicine wasn't for anything but pain. He couldn't stop the rot. So long as his soul remained here, the body would continue to break apart and he would experience the pain. Why didn't Kabuto just leave him? He shook his head. He needn't think about such things. There is something I have prepared but I'd rather not use it unless there is no other choice I am not going to be like this forever anyway but if Gyurin was here. I'd take her body and continue to nurture Sasuke Kuen until he is ripe for the taking the Sanmin said. Call him. Kabuto nodded and called Sasuke. The stoic-looking Uchiha walked up to the two, 
his fully matured Sharingan glaring at the pathetic-looking Sanin with so much coldness that it filled Orochimaru with joy. What? I have a mission for you. I'm finally leaving this cage Sasuke said as he accepted a scroll from Kabuto. Everything is in there Orochimaru said. It is merely a test of your strength. I want to see if you can succeed smoothly before changing tactics for your training. River Country Naruto sitting under a tree in a meditative position with his eyes firmly fixed on Jiraiya. The Sanin was sitting there with him. Plans were drawn on the ground. Naruto had already surveyed everything while Jiraiya watched. The Sanin hadn't commented and said he would not comment. Even if Naruto was making a mistake in something, he would not say anything, not until the mission was over. The Sanin had said he had to make sure no innocent person died and if it happened, he would have to live with it because that was what happened. The village close to them was being occupied by criminals, scums who were here for the loot. The village of Takumi has sent for help and they had to remove the scums. Naruto had to do everything by himself. There were thirty enemies, but they were mostly just bandits. Ten were shinobi but nothing strong that would cause him trouble. The danger here was that he had to make sure that they didn't kill the village people. If he made the wrong move, they would kill them and the mission would be a failure. The leaders of the group were all located in a small bar having a meeting this was this was a perfect opportunity to strike, when all leaders were at one place. Seven were doing patrols around the village. He could easily handle those with his clones and silently as well. Five were guarding the daughter of the village leader who they were demanding a ransom for. These people were in different locations and he had to strike quickly. The rest of the villagers were in their homes. They were told not to make moves. For some reason, Jiraiya had leaked that Takumi had hired Shinobi and he had to deal with people who were aware that an enemy was coming. Remember Naruto, if you just leave this people, they are going to harm more people. If there was a mass jail for criminals, we'd capture them and send them there, but we don't have that. Killing is part of the job. Don't make it feel natural for you. It's not natural. Life is precious but as shinobi, we cannot avoid it. You don't always have to kill. You have to determine what is safer. Naruto had shed blood before. It had been horrible. He hadn't meant to do it. The man was a bandit and Naruto had put too much strength on his hands, he had ended up snapping his neck. That sickening crack when the head twisted, those eyes rolling with life disappearing, they had haunted him but Jiraiya had been there. Jiraiya was taking him through this, just to prepare him, just to make sure that he would not freeze and risk the lives of innocent people locked up in their homes. At any moment now, these people were going to round up the villagers and use them as shields to deter Shinobi from attacking. This was why Naruto had to move now. I know, Sensei. Naruto said. Wish me luck. Just use your head. This isn't a battle that can be won because of physical prowess. You might have the power and still lose. Just know that you sometimes have to put aside all that power and use a kunai to get the job done. Naruto nodded. He stood up. Two minutes. He said. A minute is more than enough for you. Jiraiya said. You have your shadow clones to help you. Since the enemy is weak, that is more than enough. But two minutes it is. Naruto stood up and jumped onto a tree. He would have preferred to just walk into the small village and crush the enemy but he had to be subtle about things. There were not more than fifteen houses here. It was a mining village. But the gold had run out. The bandits didn't know. Imagine their disappointment when they found out. Kage Bunshin no Jutsu Naruto created seven clones to deal with the bandits standing guard. He created eleven more to guard the houses where people were locked the five guarding the important girl were inside as with the leaders, so he could get rid of the others without them noticing. Once his clones dispelled after completing their duties, Naruto ran. His movements were as smooth as a gentle breeze. He didn't make a sound as he danced through the rooftops before suddenly landing behind a group of four bandits. Hey WH. He didn't allow them to say anything. He moved in a blink of an eye jumping over the man. As he was doing so, three kanais were fleeing in three different directions. The kanais hit straight on the foreheads of their targets. They pierced through. 
he landed on the man's shoulders, and placed his hand over the man's mouth to stop him from screaming. The others dropped to the ground, before he hit the man on the back of his head, knocking him out cold. The villagers would deal with him. Naruto left a clone to tie him up before disappearing along with small gusts of wind. The house he appeared in was a double-story house. His target was upstairs with her five guards. There were ten downstairs, drinking while placing guards. They were laughing merrily while the villagers cried in their houses. There was no hope for tomorrow. They were thinking, at any moment now, they would be killed. Cold-hearted humans. But he had seen it hadn't he? The ugliness of people. He had experienced it too, so he could understand. Naruto went behind the house and walked through the wall. He peeked through the window. The girl looked fine. She was small, crawled up in a corner, trembling in fear, tears in her eyes. People were truly ugly, weren't they? A little girl, an innocent child and you did that to her. He had been innocent too. A child, younger than she was and ugly people had tormented him. He needed to get in silently and time was ticking away. He held a single hand sign and used Shunshin to appear in the room. Five kanais were in his hands he twisted speedily and threw them all, each hitting its target. The bandits didn't see a damn thing. They fell lifelessly on the floor. Naruto walked over to the girl and knelt down. He gave her a warm smile and whispered something to her ear. He noticed she tensed. She was afraid. He created a clone which picked her up and left by the window. Naruto stood up. He was done with this part. He took out a smoke bomb and went downstairs. He threw the ball on the round table the ten were gathered around. It went off, quickly covering the room with smoke. Everything else occurred within seconds and Naruto walked out safely with his hands inside his pockets. He could consider his mission done and dusted. He just had to interrupt a meeting and with everyone else gone, he didn't have to worry about the safety of the civilians but the clones would still keep watch of everything. Naruto had manners, unlike a certain pervert. So he actually knocked when he arrived at the door where the leaders of the bandits were gathered. He knocked gently a couple of times before a large man walked up. He dwarfed his frame by sizable proportions. Even a chunin would be afraid to face such a man whose face was a field of scars. What? The man demanded glaring at Naruto. He then noticed the headband. They sent a brat. A brat? He looked insulted for a moment. Naruto didn't say anything his response was to punch the man on his face. That despite his size, the man was sent flying back inside the room. He crashed loudly onto a wall, face bleeding, teeth falling out. He cursed loudly as he staggered to get up to his feet. Naruto stepped into the room. They were all large ugly men. They were the kind of perverts of liked little girls. Pedophiles. He counted them calmly before greeting them. They were not even the least surprised or alarmed. As large as the man he had punched, he was simply a doorman. Kanoha Shinobi one of the men frowned looking at the forehead protector Naruto wore. Is it true, I've had even though young, leaf shinobi are strong one asked quietly. We are about to find out. They all readied themselves, grinning madly. He was just one, they were big and strong. They could handle this, or so they believed. Between mob justice and quick deaths, what do you prefer? Naruto asked in a calm tone. But a mob justice was no good, was it? Maybe the villagers would pay back the people who made them suffer but it did nothing but incite violence in the hearts of people. Naruto nodded to himself. Although he offered that option, he wasn't going to go with it. Innocent people didn't need to dirty their hands. This was the duty of a shinobi. We pick neither option. The first one lunged towards him, attempting to plant the base of his foot on his face. Naruto side stepped the large food and raised his right hand, channeling chakra through it. He made a fast motion as if he was cutting something and then blood gushed over from the man's knee. His leg was cut off from his knee. When the pain shot through, he cried painfully. You little fucker. Another yelled, swinging a right hook. Naruto caught the man on his arm, having avoided the punch. Chakra was channeled through his fingers and he pressed. 
There was a sickening crack or bones breaking. The man cried out in pain while gritting his teeth. When the last man hovered behind him, Naruto slammed his elbow on the man's chest, knocking on the wind of his lungs. He was a shinobi, and he had to finish this. He took out four kanais from his pouch and did what he had to do. Once done, he breathed in and out to calm his nerves. He didn't need to see anything. He simply walked out and made way for it. Jiraiya could handle the rest. They just needed to do what he did and mission complete. The village would be safe. Minutes later, Jiraiya walked up to Naruto. I can't complain he said of Naruto's performance. You okay? Yanaruto said with a grunt. Where to now? I doubt we are going to be staying here. Takumi to collect our payment you know someone has to pay for our living expenses Jiraiya said. We will stay in the village for a couple of days before deciding where we will go. I have to wait for something. Our payment? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. It is my payment, sensei and we are not sharing. I'm the one who found the mission and we are a team. Takumi hired both of us and they will pay both of us Jiraiya said. You should have asked the terms before you did anything. Well, I can always tell them that you didn't do anything and don't need to get paid. Naruto offered. I'm sure they believe me. You wouldn't. Naruto smiled. Of course not I wouldn't do something like that to my beloved perverted sensei. Chapter 2 When Naruto first met the bijou inside of him, he had been truly frightened, not of those huge eyes or its size but the sheer amount of hatred those eyes directed at his presence. He was surely just an insignificant person the bijou could squash under its massive paws, yet it could look at him with so much hate that his body trembled. Naruto had never felt something so powerful. Over the years, he has learned that it wasn't him specifically who was hated but humans in general. The poor beast was forced to remain caged because of its power. It was a sad thing. Of course, Naruto didn't pity the beast. He didn't hate it either. As he gently touched the waters, those huge eyes opened slightly. Naruto marveled the size of the bijou, its intelligence. People were missing out by simply brushing out the bijou as nothing more than a source of power a weapon of destruction. Chaos incarnated. Those eyes I wonder if you stared at my mother as you do with me. She never visited. Kurama responded calmly. Unlike with you, her seal was simply designed to suppress my power. The same can be said about Mito. So they all never used your power but just kept you at bay. The Shodai's words were like he has nothing against me but I was too powerful to be left alone. So his wife sealed me within her. I have been confined for years you thinking of ending my term? A toothy grin. Naruto smiled. Yes those attempts. The bijou always attempted to entice him to let it go. To free it so it can finally breathe in the oxygen it has been deprived of for many years. But Naruto wasn't stupid. He wasn't going to do it. Releasing the bijou meant his death. He did not have the full genes of the Uzumaki to survive an extraction as his mother did. My clan was also destroyed for being too powerful. I guess we have something in common there. Naruto said. But that isn't why I am here. My power Kurama said. Naruto was like all humans. He wanted his power. He was the first Jinchuriki to use his power but it did give him a sense of freedom. The seal held him, if Naruto was willing he could draw out as much chakra as he was willing to give. Naruto nodded. I wish to learn to control it once more. Kurama grinned. I thought after you nearly killed that hermit when you lost control you wouldn't want to try again. Naruto shrugged. It would be stupid of me to leave this power like this. You are strong and I am your host. It doesn't matter that neither of us had a choice in our union, the fact is we are together and I am going to learn to control your chakra. I'm not stopping you. Yes because when I use the chakra, the seal weakens. I have been studying seals since I was seven. Although the old man never taught me anything special, he introduced me to Fuenjutsu and said it was the legacy of the name I carry. So I know what happens with this seal and I know you laugh gleefully when I lose control. Kurama stared at the blonde for a moment before laughing menacingly. You lose control because you can't handle my chakra human. Naruto shook his head. 
Yes, your chakra is potent and admittedly deadly to the human body, but it isn't the potency of your chakra that makes me lose control, it is the hatred. HMP Karama stared. If you can't handle it, then don't try to use it. I am hatred, it comes with my chakra. But you can make is worse because you want me to lose control. Naruto stressed those words. Look up. Kurama did and saw structures. He frowned. He knew the seal. Naruto clapped his hands. You are very knowledgeable about seals. Then again, you have always been sealed within seal masters he said. That is insurance. You are not going anywhere unless I say you are. If more than six tails of chakra leak out the seal that falls down on you and restrains you. With that said, it would be much simpler for both of us if you allowed me to use your chakra without doing anything funny that interferes with the process. A human, doing this to him. A child no less. It was humiliating. I have no plans on remaining here until you decide to transfer me to another host. I will make my escape. I know you will try. I'd try to escape too if I was locked up in a cage but I still won't let you go. I need your power. I know you hate humans. If you force your way out of the seal, you're likely to kill me first and then incinerate my body just to make sure I stay dead. But let us make a deal that gives you a bit of freedom. Of course, you'll still be locked but the seal is special and we can work out something. Naruto's eyes snapped open, they sharped when saw Jiraiya's foot heading straight towards his face. It was too close for comfort and he didn't want to get any unnecessary hits. He quickly fell backwards, lifting up his face while he raised both his hands. As Jiraiya's foot passed above him, he caught him just above his ankle. The Sanin raised both his hands up, surrendering. Naruto let go of the Sanin. Why are you attacking me? You were open. Jiraiya said with a shrug. Naruto stared. Is that how we are going to play it, Sensei? If one is open we attack them. It's not a game but it's a one-way street exercise. I am the master and you are the student here Jiraiya said firmly. He was certainly uncomfortable with the idea of Naruto being given the license to attack him if he was open. That's not fair Naruto said. Here is my rule, to determine that you are still worthy to train me, I will attack you if you are open. I see no value if being helped on by someone weaker than me. Jiraiya stared. You still got a long way to go, Brett the Sanin said. He sighed and sat down next to the blonde. They were still in the river country, it has been a week and he already had plans. He would have liked to start with other things but there was something he had to do and it was important. Not to mention he still needed to see Tsunade. The woman had been forceful in her letter. He had to go before attending other agent matters that needed him and he couldn't do them with Naruto. But even if he was to leave Naruto, it wasn't going to be much of a problem for the training the blonde had to go through. Naruto did his own training when it came to ninjutsu. Even as his sensei, he only informed Naruto of the basics and the blonde did everything on his own. When they do get to fire, he would only teach Naruto the basics and a jutsu he knew. The blonde would learn everything by himself. He trained Naruto with taijutsu, kenjutsu and some genjutsu. Naruto was not that good with the latter, so they'd shelved it and focused on simply being able to negate them. Troubled. Jiraiya glanced at Naruto for a moment before shaking his head. No he said. I was just sorting out my thoughts. What were you doing anyway? Ah when you interrupted me Naruto started. I was having a delightful conversation with the Kyubi regarding the use of its chakra. You'd loosened the seal before to allow me to draw out as much chakra as possible but there were massive negative consequences to this. Jiraiya frowned. He still hadn't even told Tsunade about the incident. She would freak out, possibly question why Naruto even needed to learn to use the Kyubi's power. But he believed it was necessary. Why have so much power inside of you and not learn to use it? Besides, with the way Minato designed the seal, it was designed for Naruto to control the power. The key was for this purpose. The cage could still be unlocked while keeping the Kyubi sealed. However, if Naruto was consumed by the power, the Kyubi got free. Don't remind me about those consequences. The toads won't give me the key again after that incident the Sanin grumbled. 
Big questioned his decision. Well, he had been close to dying and releasing the QB at that time. If he had died, the QB would have escaped. Jiraiya laughed bitterly at the thought. It would have been a ridiculous end to his miserable life if his last deed was unleashing a hateful bijou into this world. It would surely leave a trail of destruction on its path and who would be blamed for it? Most of all, Naruto would be gone. He would have ended Minato's legacy. Naruto shrugged at this. He didn't need the key at this point. He had already copied it and memorized it. Without seeing it, he wouldn't be able to recreate it because the lock was hidden and the seal itself was worthy of Uzumaki. For greatness, we must be willing to take risks, Sensei. If everything came easy, things would be different. Naruto said. My conversation with the Bijou centered on it allowing me to use its chakra freely. Of course, I can still use it freely but when forced and taken in its raw nature, it leads to situations we both rather avoid. Jiraiya was silent for a couple of moments. Did it say yes? Of course not. The Bijou wants to leave the cage Naruto said with a shake of his head. Even so, I still want to learn to control its power. We are fine with at least two tails but anything more than that, it becomes a problem. I'm okay with that but you must understand that power alone doesn't determine things Naruto. You can control the power of the Kyubi and still be unable to do anything. Naruto smiled. Sensei, you should know there is such a thing as soft power. Believe me, I know and understand it. Orochimaru doesn't use his physical prowess to entice his mad followers, he speaks to them, a language they can understand. That is politics. But the power of words cannot be underestimated. You can change things with words. You can influence how people look at things with your words. But as shinobi, there comes a time when words cannot save your life or protect what you value. That is where this power comes into play, don't you think so, sensei? Jiraiya nodded. Sometimes Naruto spoke volumes. Sometimes he spoke like someone who was much older. But he was just a brat. And of course, these were just moments. That is correct I see Sensei taught you valuable lessons in life. It was necessary Naruto said with his eyes closed. The villagers glared at me with contempt, they said things in whispers and it crushed me. There were no jutsus there and yet my life could have been destroyed. That is just one practical example of how words can change things. The bitter days that he hadn't seen much of Jiraiya cursed his cowardice. Had he been a little courageous, he would have bothered trying with Naruto but he did not. Even when he came, he watched from afar. His sensei had asked him, when are going to introduce yourself to Naruto? It didn't have to be anything related to his parents. The third was his beloved master. Naruto could have understood without too many questions. But he hadn't. He had said he couldn't do anything good. Sensei was really good to you, huh? There was sadness in his eyes. Naruto nodded. He was my family. He said and paused. A minute passed before he spoke again. When do we begin? Jiraiya gathered his thoughts for a moment. He gave Naruto a scroll and explained. This contains what you need in order to learn how to convert your chakra into fire before learning to use fire-based jutsus. Like what you did when you learned to bend wind. Naruto shook his head. He returned the scroll back to Sanmin. I know how to that. Jiraiya blinked. When did you learn? You have never even tried using fire-based jutsus when sparring with me. You always use wind. About a year ago Naruto said with a shrug. I have been putting focus on learning to use wind chakra and controlling the air around me. This requires maximum focus. I couldn't allow myself to be preoccupied with something else. More than a year and he never said a word. Not a damn word. But then again, given that shrug, it was apparent that he didn't take it as something serious. You still don't know any fire-based jutsus. I have a good memory I most certainly remember the hand signs you have used for your jutsus. But I haven't tried it, yet. Again, a nonchalant shrug. Jiraiya understood why Naruto never said anything. He didn't want to start learning to use fire-based jutsus at that time. We can't start your training now. The one about the Kyubi. Why? 
We have to go our separate ways Jiraiya said. I have some things to do and will be traveling a lot. You have to go to Sunagakir and try to finish your wind training there. The environment is very conducive there. I will send you a message once we are done and we can talk about concluding things. Last time I checked we didn't have a good relationship with the hidden sand. Suna had invaded the leaf and they had ended up fighting. He had fought and defeated Suna's Jinchuriki. Had Kanoha had bad leaders, it would have certainly marched to decimate the sand. But good leaders avoided such bloodshed and were working on something else. That has been resolved Jiraiya said. Tsunade soothed things out but there are still some people who are wary. They did betray us, they can do it again. At least some people are thinking that. Naruto looked thoughtful for a moment. Then I must confirm how things are there before they take things to the next level. My training is nothing more than convenience. Jiraiya grinned. You're not a bad student he said. Kakashi always spoke about reading underneath the underneath Naruto said with a shake of his head. The desert is going to be unpleasant. If you get caught in a sandstorm. But it should be fine. You can always consider it a training trip. You really do like trial by fire sensei. You threw me in a deep pit to get me to learn how to summon the toads Naruto stared. One of these days sensei, you'll be drunk and wake up sleeping next to the old hag while posing nude. Jiraiya shivered at the thought of Tsunade seeing him naked before her when waking up. She'd kill him this time around. Let us not go that far he said nervously. I sent a message to the Sabako family to inform them of your visit. I thought it would be suitable they know. Naruto nodded and looked up into the sky. I'll camp by the border tonight and enter the desert before the sun rises. He said. Don't try to learn using the Kyuubi's power there. We don't want you accidentally leveling Sunagakir to the ground. Jiraiya said. He could actually see that happening. The Kyuubi had enough firepower to do that. The only way he had managed to even survive was through suppressing the chakra. If not for Fuenjutsu, he would be dead, literally. Eh, we shall see. Naruto responded with a shrug of his shoulders. A day later. Hidden village in sand. Traveling documents those were essential, if you were going to walk through the gates of any hidden village, you needed them. It didn't matter if you were wearing a headband or just a civilian you needed papers that showed who you were and where you come from. Security reasons. They didn't just want everyone and anyone entering their villages. Spies and dangerous criminals could walk through the gates if not watched and that posed a serious risk to a village. Naruto looked up into the sky this was his first visit in this village. He didn't know where to turn to. He didn't know anything. Perhaps this was why Jiraiya had contacted the Sabaku family. Naruto didn't actually need them to get by. He could ask around. The wind around the village was pleasant though, a gentle breeze, a warm kiss of nature. It was unlike the desert. The wind was wild, untamed a natural force of destruction. Certainly something that could destroy you. Listening to its whispers, how it caressed his skin, Naruto was tempted to dance right here and now with his bag hanging on his back. Someone hit him on the shoulder. That just ruined the mood. It felt like the wind suddenly disappeared on him. He looked at the man who had hit him, an apologetic smile. Naruto nodded and the man hurried somewhere. A minute later, two more people passed by him running. Naruto shook his head. A village may have different name, culture and environment, but people were still the same. He started moving once more and finally found a room to rent for a month-long stay. There was no hurry to see the Sabaku siblings. He wasn't even sure how it would go considering that the last time he met them he had been battling Gara. Well, at least it had ended up pleasantly. Naruto placed his bag on the bed and turned towards the window. His calling, it was high up in the wall. He frowned. He stepped next to the wall and placed his hand on it. He blinked before smiling. He almost laughed. He was thinking of creating a window that suited his needs. Was he that obsessive about this? Naruto shook his head. The window was probably up there because of the conditions in the village. If storms came, they had to be safe. He placed his hands up and climbed up onto the window. He couldn't sit the way he preferred given the size of the walls, but it would do. 
Once settled, Naruto looked outside. It wasn't a pleasant view. Then again, he never visited the window for its view. Two hours went by before Naruto was snapped out of his thoughts by a knock on the door. He thought about ignoring it for a moment. His sentimental time was being disturbed. Silently shaking his head, and went down and walked over to the wall. A young girl, who showed him the room was standing there, with a warm smile. Sorry to disturb you, but I just wanted to see if would take your food here or if you would eat downstairs. Jiraiya was going to shout and curse but Naruto would only smile. He was renting a room in a five-star hotel. The Sanmin would cry foul over his wasted money. Naruto was usually safe with the money the Sanmin gave him. He rarely spent it all and the man was more than happy to take it back. So, just this once, he could live the life of a spoiled prince. I will come downstairs. He said. Can I also get a small table I can use to write on? I will speak to the manager about that. Thank you. The young lady gave him the eating schedule and before walking away. Naruto closed the door behind him and sighed. He should ease the tensions he felt on his body. Traveling in the heat of the desert as a bit rough. He would rest his body today and would go out tomorrow for training. Hidden Leaf A bandaged Jiraiya was sitting by the window, with a frown on his lips. Naruto didn't do this to him. But Tsunade had to greet him by pummeling him. He couldn't do his job with his body in pain. It would be troublesome if he came across trouble when his body was still suffering from the effects of Tsunade's beatings. Well, he was used to it anyway. I can't believe you, you damn pervert. Tsunade sent a harsh glare towards her former teammate. Jiraiya moved slightly. He was ready to bolt through the window if Tsunade made a move. One beating was enough, he couldn't take another one. I just couldn't help myself, Haim. When I came in, I felt that I was being called. Being called my ass. Tsunade didn't ease up on her glare. For more than two years you don't come show up and when you finally do appear, the first thing you do is go on a peeping tour. He didn't bother coming to see her. He didn't come through the gates. If it wasn't because of the complaints she had received, she wouldn't have known he was in the village until he decided that he was ready to see her. Didn't he know that she had missed him not that she would even admit that to him. He would never stop reminding her about it. There was also too much to talk about that could not be said through letters. It has been over two years, damn it. I was going to come Heim Jiraiya said lamely. But you didn't have to beat me like that and then tear my scripts. I've been working on that for some time he complained with a glare. Tsunade shrugged carelessly. I should be having someone remove all those images in your head. She said. Jiraiya wouldn't permit something like that he would fight tooth and nail to avoid it. Naruto let him do his research peacefully as long as he took care of everything that the blonde needed. Sneaking in was a good idea though. He was already banned in most places. He just wished Tsunade wouldn't have her umbu try to monitor him while in the village. They were not a problem, but it would just create an unnecessary problem for him. Anyway Tsunade turned serious. What did Naruto say when you said you were going to come here? For a moment, Jiraiya thought of lying but he chose not to do so. He wouldn't do that to Tsunade. Nothing. He said. Tsunade was silent for a few moments. At this point it was getting dangerous but she didn't want to get suspicious or cast doubts around Naruto. But he could not mope around forever. Or maybe he wasn't moping around but just had nothing to say. He hasn't had very good memories in Kanoha. They certainly didn't give him anything. As far as she knew, the only good thing that had occurred for him in this village was when they cheered for him after he won his match at the Chunin exams. But that was the only thing. All other memories were bad and the Sandame's former advisors seemed particularly worried about this. Then again, they dined with Danzo. There was always an ulterior motive. But they kept disturbing her about Naruto's return to the leaf. She certainly didn't want him to spend more years in the wilderness. She was sure he would be here when needed, but the leaf didn't need another Jiraiya. I was thinking that perhaps he would have said something Tsunade said in a measured tone. He doesn't talk much about anything personal. We get along just fine and I think he is fine but we do need to start talking about these issues. 
Then again, it seems that unless I bring up something we won't talk about it unless it has something to do with training. But he does talk when the subjects come up. Jiraiya nodded his head. He isn't a silent person when you're talking to him but he can be very silent. He does this thing where he can sit motionlessly for hours like he is a statue there was a bit of indifference about the way Jiraiya said those words. He even shrugged in the end. Why don't you sound concerned about it? It isn't a problem. He said. I think it is done out of habit. Tsunade was silent for a couple of moments. She couldn't get any reports the Umbu made on their observations of Naruto. There was a register that said someone was observing him but there were no records of it. Not in this office, not in the Sarutobi compound, not in Umbu HQ and she didn't know who was doing it. Well, she had succeeded her sensei. If it was something dangerous, he would have made sure to keep it for himself only. The training is going fine I assume you don't really give a clear picture in your reports. Everything is going fine. If we end up taking more time, I will talk to the toads about teaching him senjutsu. But I will see what happens in the coming months. Forget senjutsu, why are you talking like you are going to spend more time away from the village, Jiraiya? You have to start talking about coming back now. There is a limit to how much I can tolerate this. I will talk to Naruto about it but I did mention that we would have to talk about concluding things the Sanin said. Tsunade stared at the man. He didn't sound concerned and he wasn't saying they would come back. You're not concerned are you? You are happy you are spending time with your godson and are able to do some good for your past failures. Jiraiya smiled bitterly. That might be true. It may be selfish on my part but I am doing something good here. Naruto is learning and he will become a great asset to Konoha. It isn't like there is anything that really needs him here, so he can afford to focus on his training Jiraiya responded in a tone filled with regrets. I will talk to him about it. Let us just give it one more year, Haim. Tsunade sighed. The issue with Yuzu is becoming a problem. Naruto is Uzumaki and his continued absence in the village is troubling to some people and to me really. If there are survivors of the Uzumaki clan there, would he decide to go there or would he come back to this village that has done nothing but treat him with contempt? Jiraiya frowned. He avoided thinking about this issue. He didn't want to question Naruto's loyalties. His sensei had never said anything about Naruto being a flight risk. But this was what Tsunade was basically saying. He could understand from her position. There was also the Kyubi to think about. What are some people plotting? I don't know as yet, but they will eventually. She sighed tiredly. Who could have thought that the revival of one small village could unsettle things so much? Well, you could understand why it was destroyed in the first place. Our world depends on bijus to balance power but they had the power of making possessing bijus worthless. The Uzumaki ceiling prowess was something that we can never see in this world. Jiraiya said. If they have come back, now you start questioning, are they going to come for us? A paranoid person like Danzo will also be thinking, will they also look at Kanoha? Why would they turn to us if they have indeed revived? Kanoha did nothing after Yuzu was destroyed. Nothing. Mito was married to the first Okage, we carry their symbol on our shinobi vests, Kushina was sent to this village for the sole purpose of becoming a Jinchuriki. And yet, when their village was destroyed, we did nothing. Tsunade frowned. That just raises a new problem. We will deal with it when it comes. But if we are looking at it in that way, they have a lot of enemies. She said. We still don't know anything, so best we wait have you been able to determine Naruto's standing in this? Jiraiya shook his head. No he said. He asks questions when talking about it and poses some things that get me thinking but always does it objectively not as Uzumaki. Naruto did that often. He didn't reveal his opinion on most things despite his willingness to engage him in any subject. You have to find out what he thinks Tsunade said. What do you have on Sasuke? He follows Orochimaru closely but I think he has been around Odogekyo in the past months. We never saw him anywhere. Orochimaru is the one who has been rather silent. Tsunade looked thoughtful for a moment. Since he has to change hosts every three years we can assume that his current host is starting to wear out. So he is limiting his movements she said. This would be a good moment as any to apprehend him. 
Jiraiya nodded. But we don't know where he is Odogekure is a massive web of hideouts. If you go to one, Orochimaru will know and escape. You really can't move unless you know exactly where he is. I expect you to find out soon before he takes Sasuke's body. I personally don't care for the brat but we can't allow Orochimaru to have him. I'm going to be looking around for the next couple of weeks. I will come with something, at least I hope. What of Naruto? I didn't tell you. I sent him to Sunagakure. He will be there for at least a month. If he didn't stop by the desert to train, he should have arrived already. Jiraiya said. You could have said when you came here, Jiraiya Tsunade said with a shake of her head. How long are you going to stay here? I will be gone by tomorrow morning. Jiraiya said. I have to do what I need to do quickly before meeting up with Naruto. I have given him a month, it will be best if I don't keep him waiting by taking too long. Sanagekure. Naruto was in a training ground it hadn't taken long for him to find it. The whispers of the wind were just too much for him to ignore. The wind just felt so natural, so gentle, so powerful. In the places he has been, he has had to use much of his chakra to generate wind jutsus but here, you could control the wind itself. It was a difficult adventure but nothing impossible. It could be done. You just had to learn to move with the wind and just be one with it. In this exercise, Naruto usually meditated and allowed himself to measure the speed and density of the wind. You could not simply wish to control something you did not understand and could not measure. He meditated for about two hours before standing up. He took a stance and breathed calmly, his breathing becoming silent, like an assassin. Once he had achieved this, Naruto lifted his hands up and then down again. He twisted around and the wind picked up. He jumped forward and the wind moved with him. He stopped and smiled. He didn't care that someone was watching him. It was only natural for them to observe his movements. He was still a leaf shinobi and maybe they had become allies once more, but he was using their training grounds without even talking to anyone in their ranks. And by now, they probably knew that he was a Jinchuriki of the Kyubi. If they were willing to let their Jinchuriki run loose in Kanoha, they'd think the leaf would do the same. Naruto shook his head. Wasn't it something that such thoughts hadn't disturbed his breathing? Then again, for how long has he been doing this? The days in the forest of death, the days sitting by the window of his apartment in the leaf. It has been long. Many years. It was only natural for him. But he had forgotten when he started hanging out with people. He shoved the thoughts to the back of his head and returned to his training, he waved his hand across his chest, picking up wind, this time around, with dust. He tried spinning it around, but it fell down. His concentration. Naruto stood motionlessly for a couple of minutes trying to regain his concentration. Once he was satisfied, he started moving. He waved both his hands, moving the gentle air around him. He needed to move with it he started walking around along with the wind. He did jumps while controlling the wind, moving it with him. He did this for an hour before halting. Naruto waved his right hand front of him in a quick motion. His sand picked up, like a wave before it once more returned to the ground. Naruto clapped his hands together, while standing motionlessly. Sand picked up around him and then started twisting. It was like a small gentle storm. Naruto was moving around with the storm, dancing around the training ground. He stopped, with the dust returning to the ground, sweat on his forehead, breathing a bit labored. Tamari stared at the blonde she had seen in Kanoha. At first he had been unimpressive, just another brat but then he did something she never thought would happen, he defeated her brother, even though Gara had even transformed. It was something she could never forget. He had sacrificed himself that day. He could have died. Gara could have killed him, but he defeated Gara and returned her brother to her. Now he was standing there, looking at her he had grown, he still looked slim, his hair was long, reaching over his shoulders, and it looked like it was never cut because it was messy but it could be because of the dance he was doing. He was dressed long black pants and a black long sleeved shirt with a swirling symbol in the front. He had truly grown a bit of something to look at. That was impressive Tamari said walking over to Naruto. Naruto shook his head. He had a small smile on his lips seeing the blonde Kunoichi. It was nothing he said. 
Just requires a bit of concentration and energy he paused. You don't have a problem if I sit down, do you? I am a little worn out than L look. The exercise took out a lot from me. Tamari shook her head. She glanced at him with a curious eye as he settled down. On first look, it appeared that you were controlling the sand but that isn't it. Naruto glanced up at the blonde. Sabaka no Temari. The eldest of the past Kazakage's children. As far as he was concerned, this village has yet to elect a Kage since Raza was killed. This was the daughter of that man the brother to the puppet user as well as Gara. His memory of her was when she brutalized Ten Ten during the Chunin exams and looked irritated when Shikaku quit in their match. Oh yes, she did blush when she first saw Sasuke. What is so funny? Tamari more or less demanded. Naruto shook his head. Sorry, I was thinking about something. When we first met, you blushed when you saw my former teammate. Tamari sent the blonde a slight glare. She didn't want to be reminded of that moment. I thought he was good looking and impressive but he was a rude person she said with a frown. Well, you looked delightful in person to look at first glance but were rather brutal in your battle. Naruto said. First glances don't always reveal everything do they? Tamari looked away from a moment. He had just complimented her. When was the last time someone did that? Oh yeah, it almost never happened. She was the sister of a bloody killer. Even though Gara had changed, to the people of this village, he was still the bloodthirsty killer who killed people just for looking at him a bitter past that just didn't seem to stay away from them. She coughed once before responding. No they are not. I'd brushed you off at first glance you looked like some weak brat who was just playing shinobi with a headband. But you truly are impressive. No, you shocked me. I didn't think you'd be able to defeat my brother. Naruto smiled. Well, there is really nothing that is impossible he said. Brother you are speaking of him fondly. Last time you were truly afraid of him I guess things really did change after my fight with him. Tamari nodded with a smile. They did I guess that is thanks to you she said. I am a Jinchuriki perhaps it is the territory Naruto said. You really have a clean eye to be able to tell that I wasn't manipulating sand but rather wind. You are looking down on Suna's strongest wind user. Tamari said proudly. Oh really Naruto said curiously, a little charming smile on his lips. Tamari thought he was mocking her. She looked at him sternly. What is with that response? Naruto shook his head. No offense he said with both his hands in the air. He looked up in the sky. I have been around and I haven't come across anyone who says they are the best in their village when it comes to wind. Then again, I have mostly been dealing with civilians. I am also a wind user, as you saw, so that makes me curious. Tamari stared, looking at him skeptically before finally accepting his response. Any reason you didn't to see us when we were expecting you? This is my first time in this village. Tamari stared, unimpressed by Naruto's response. Are you trying to say that you didn't come because you don't know where we leave? She asked, a bit rhetorically. And yet you still found a hotel to stay and even managed to make your way to a training ground she paused. How stupid do you think I am? Naruto didn't respond to that trick question. I wanted to look around the village by myself without my hosts because it is my first time being here. Being able to navigate around unfamiliar places is important for shinobi. You're not always going to go to places you know. Tamari was a bit embarrassed for her rant. She jumped to conclusions. She glanced at him at the corner her eyes he had his face staring at the sky, his eyes clear. She couldn't read anything from his face but he had stopped smiling. Eh sorry it was truly difficult saying that. Naruto shook his head. I led you to it. He said. Tamari stared at him for a moment trying to understand the meaning of those words. She couldn't figure it out, so she ended up just shaking her head. It would be of service to us if you came to our house we are your hosts after all. I'm staying here for at least a month besides that, I am more comfortable in my own private space Naruto said calmly. But invite me tonight for dinner and I will come. Tamari blinked. It usually goes the other way around, you know she said. Ah uh, you can't always confine yourself to the norms Naruto said with a shrug. He then held out his right hand. 
Temari looked at it for a moment before helping him stand up. I need to rest up a bit and do some reading, but before that, you won't have a problem showing me to your house, yes? He paused. Oh, you still haven't said you are inviting me. Temari smiled. He was certainly a bit weird. Then again, she didn't deal with people she casually talked to like this. You are invited. She said. Come on she said and started walking away. Naruto walked by her side silently. He only spoke when they arrived at the streets of the village where people could see them. He noticed the reaction of the male population and glanced at Temari who was walking normally as if nothing was wrong. I'm certain I will have people blocking my path when I go back to my hotel. Temari glanced at him for a moment before responding. Why? How often do you walk with a young man around here, Temari? Temari was caught off guard by the question. It took some time for her to stutter a response. W.I. are you a asking that? Oh. Naruto smiled. Well, that reaction is a bit interesting. I'm guessing you don't do that. Surprised, I am truly surprised. I mean you are a beautiful woman, I thought both lustful and mad in love boys would be throwing themselves at you. Temari frowned. They can't do that. They are afraid she paused, shaking her head. They are afraid of my brother. She didn't explain why. And um thank you. Hmm for. Naruto knew why, he just wanted her to say it. She was a tough person but yet still innocent. And he was used to dealing with the perverts that Jiraiya surrounded himself with. Not only that, but in the bars he visited, he saw some crazy things. Alcohol was a mad demon. Temari sent Naruto a look. Naruto laughed, raising his hands. Forgive me for that he said. I just thought it would be adorable if you said it yourself he said. But there is no need to thank me. I am not giving you a favor by complimenting you. You just need to smile and appreciate it because that is the truth. He put on a thoughtful look for a moment before speaking again. Well, I can't think Gara would compliment you and your other brother Naruto shook his head. What of my other brother? Naruto shook his head. Nothing, he said. He didn't step into Temari's house he just looked and then turned around to leave Temari offered to walk him to his hotel but he shook his head, it was a gentleman's duty to walk a lady home. Her reaction had been a bit amusing once more. Later night. While there was no emotion in his face, Gara was a little happy knowing that Naruto was going to come to have dinner with them. The blonde had told him some important words that changed the way he views life. He was content with his life as he was and the voices had died down. He could now sleep peacefully. It was perhaps safe to say he was at peace. He wouldn't go as far as to say he was happy but all was well. His siblings didn't look at him with fear and that was fine. He still needed to do a lot to change things for his past behavior. If people hated or fear him, he could understand. His actions hadn't been just and he could not excuse it by any reason. He had been wrong and he was working on to correct those wrongs. He could only thank Naruto for this change. Why didn't you invite him to come stay with us? Gara asked his sister. He had returned a bit late. Training with Baki and meetings with people who couldn't stand before him without their knees trembling was exhausting and it took too much of his time. I did and he said he was fine being alone Temari said. Alone this word got her thinking. Naruto was like Gara. He hadn't been bats hit crazy, bloodthirsty and frightening, but he had been lonely. He didn't have family, and he hadn't had friends. A miserable existence the fate of Jinchurikis wasn't pleasant and with what she saw with her own brother, she could understand. We do have enough room here Gara said. He couldn't understand why Naruto wouldn't want to come here. But if someone didn't want to do something, you didn't have to force them, lest you make them uncomfortable. Well, that is his decision he said. Isn't it fine as things are? Kankuro said. The letter didn't say we had to give him a place to stay. That may be true, but we were asked to make him feel comfortable and look out for him while in this village Gara said calmly. A woman who helped around the house came up with Naruto to the dining room. She then walked away. Temari realized, Naruto was dressed differently from earlier. He must have been wearing training clothes when she saw him during the day. And his hair didn't look out of place. 
Naruto please come through Gara's voice snapped Tamari out of her thoughts. Naruto nodded. There was little emotion in Gara's voice, you couldn't even tell if he was smiling or not if you didn't look properly like an experienced shinobi. Tamari had a smile and Kenkuro looked bored. He must be thinking about developing new skills for his puppets a rare trait of skills for the hidden sand. He sat down next to the bored looking man and faced Gara. Thank you for welcoming me to your home he said. Gara shook his head. You helped me, this is nothing he said calmly. Family dinner. Naruto never had this. He had eaten with the Sandame there and then, but it was not dinner with his blood family. He would never get this chance unless he forms a family of his own. What a miserable existence this was. Although he had said Tamari could invite him, he was suddenly feeling a bit out of place. He wasn't used to this. He rarely even ate with Jiraiya. He really had to stop putting himself into things when he would be have difficulty carrying them out. But he still couldn't let his discomfort show. He had to play his part. He couldn't make this awkward. He tried but he didn't speak much for the first couple of moments. He responded to questions until they finished eating and they moved to another room. How are things in Kanoha anyway? Gara asked quietly. Naruto shook his head. I actually haven't been in the leaf in more than two years he said. Three siblings were surprised. The letter they received didn't say anything and neither had really gone to the leaf since the invasion. It was a difficult time between the villages with negotiations between carried out over their actions in the invasion. But at least that was settled. Why? Naruto looked at Tamari who'd asked. Training trip, he said with indifference. She was still surprised. You haven't been home for that long and you've been just training. What else have you been doing? You know, traveling around. The world is huge, there are many places to visit that is why it is trip Naruto explained lightly. I didn't think you'd need to train more you were already strong even when you were a Genengara said. Naruto shook his head. I did not defeat you because I was stronger than you. You cannot think that. I defeated you because you had a glaring weakness that I could expose. I still lost in the end Gara said. Everyone does have a weakness some people just have a better way of handling it. Power isn't always determined by your physical strength. For the first time since he arrived here, Naruto smiled. Well, that is something I can agree on he said. How are things around here? I never followed the negotiations between the Leaf and Suna. Then again, Jenins are not given that kind of information. Wait wait Kankuro said. You're still a Jenin? He asked, surprised. Naruto nodded. I have been away from the Leaf over the past two and a half years, so I haven't had time to participate in the Chunin exams. I can't imagine myself playing over that field though, I think I laughed at those who were repeat offenders. Tamari laughed at this. We are all Jonins she said. But you are not too old to enter the exams. I do think you are much stronger to be ranked a Jenin. Naruto shrugged. I don't usually think about that he looked thoughtful for a moment before speaking once more. Well, I do think it might pose a problem when taking missions. Jenins get to do chores while those higher ranked missions their rank. I'm sure they won't give you chores Gara said. Things have been a bit difficult but as you can see, we are managing. You are leaving out that they want to make you Kazakage Kankuro added in. It is nothing Gara said. Naruto smiled. That was something interesting, Gara the Godain Kazakage. In what world was he living in? There were certainly more suitable candidates but he wasn't going to ask why. It wasn't his business. Still it was good that a Jinchuriki with a past such as Gara's was becoming a Kage. He was truly going to become the youngest Kage and since he doesn't look like a bad person, things would go well with Kanoha. Congratulations, Gara. Naruto said. I think that is something special, regardless of the reasons. Certainly, they wouldn't put the Jinchuriki up as a figurehead. There had to be someone they could put in that position. Suna didn't even need to pretend to be strong, it was weak. It's failed invasion in Kanoha and proved as much. Not yet Gara said. They are still considering it. This village hasn't had an official Kage since the past Kage. There has been someone who assumed the role of leader, 
but no Kage I still have to be appointed and do the job worthy of a Kage to be congratulated. You'll do a great job Garatemari said reassuringly. You've got us to back you up. Ah, family. Naruto lost his smile. He stayed with the San siblings for a little while longer. But once time had come for him to leave, he bid them farewell. It hadn't been a bad night. A bit uncomfortable but he had soldiered through it. There were moments but it had been quite lovely. Are you going to be using our training grounds often? Naruto nodded. This is also part of my training trip. He said. I'll come and fetch you tomorrow around 9 a.m. I will show you another training ground where you can train privately. If I feel like it, I might join you. You sounded a bit skeptical when I said I was the strongest wind user in Sooner. Naruto smiled. I wasn't he said. But it would be lovely to have you join me, Tamari. You are another wind user after all. Gara alone said he would walk Naruto. Kenkuro wanted to follow but he was told to stay behind and he obeyed very quickly. Then again, Gara was someone who you listened to carefully when he spoke. They started out silently but the walk was slow. I actually wanted to talk to you Gara started calmly. I have come to consider you as a friend. And I hope that we can be friends. It can happen Naruto said. There was nothing stopping that from happening. It was either he said he didn't want to make friends or Gara was just too much that he decided it wouldn't work out. There was nothing wrong with making friends either way. I thought so Gara said. I'm not actually being made Kazakage because of my abilities the village council just fears me and they want to keep me happy and in control by giving me this responsibility. They probably think I will wake up one day and destroy them. My change hasn't done to anything to lift the burden it has made them even more suspicious since they can't tell what I am thinking. They are putting me here to, say, we trust you and want you to lead us, but I know the truth. Even so, I will accept the job. They probably think I will fail, but I won't. I have done many things that I will probably never earn forgiveness for, but I still want to do something different. I want to correct what I did in the past. I cannot erase the past, but at least I want to protect the future. And for those who I never wronged, perhaps they will remember me for the good work I did. But even if they choose to remember my past, that is fine. Naruto was honestly surprised by those words. He was silent for a couple of moments as digested them. Forgiveness is truly difficult, especially when you have filled your heart with nothing but hate. But it only damages those who hate. I have never truly seen anyone who stepped out of the darkness to march in the light in the same way as you. People never truly want to accept that they were wrong and they are more willing to pretend that the past never happened. It's safer than apologizing. People want to be forgiven but not willing to do everything to be forgiven and when they are not forgiven, they turn backwards. You are willing to walk your path even if people do not forgive you, even if people choose to remember you for the dark days that is special. Naruto looked up to the heavens for a moment. You have taught me something important and I will admire your courage and willingness to stand in the midst of those who hate you and still do good that isn't something people are willing to do. A couple of weeks later. For how long has it been since he came to this village? Weeks, and there was still no word from Jiraiya. The Sanin had a way, don't contact me, I will contact you. He didn't even have a way of contacting the Sanin except through the toads. But the time here hasn't been all disturbing. Quite honestly, it has been refreshing. And he learned a lot of things about this village and the San siblings. It was truly apparent, Gara wasn't the most loved. It just reminded him of his past in a hidden leaf, but at least Gara could explain why they hated him. Nevertheless, he was truly a menace in the eyes of the villagers, and yet, he was still willing to lead this village. It also didn't make things easy for someone like Temari. She was honestly a beautiful person. Over the past month, he has been training with her, a bit constantly that he had thought he would when she offered to join. She wasn't a bad person and she was truly skilled. But at this stage, she wasn't going to get loved in here. People feared her brother. And he had noticed that Gara was a little protective of her. If someone hurt his sister, the old Gara was certainly going to come out and there would be a sand burial. Thinking of this, Naruto laughed. Someone is going to think you are crazy one day, you know Temari said with a raised eyebrow. Naruto shrugged a bit carelessly. 
People will always have an opinion about other people, Temari. I have to come to learn that with being human, you think about what you see and you form an opinion of it. I generally don't care about what people think of me. The indifference, Temari realized it was something he had about a lot of things. He smiled and spoke well, but he was obviously indifferent to a lot of things. He had opinions, but it wasn't always personal. Even now, she really didn't know a lot of things about him personally. Just because he talked and talked didn't mean he opened the doors. No, perhaps the talking was a way to keep you busy. It was strange though, how do you spend so much time with someone and feel like you know them yet realize that you really don't know much about them? What did she know? Personal things. His views. She could never tell. He used, I, but there was always a lack of emotion, in it a general lack of connection between what he was saying and himself. Was it purposeful perhaps? You're staring, Tamari. He was looking at her with those clear blue orbs. They were clear, almost pulling you inside, and yet, there was nothing inside. I was thinking. She said. Naruto was careful about these things, so he didn't ask what she was thinking. He could almost assume what she was thinking, but he wasn't sure. I would assume so. That was it. Temari could never tell what Naruto was thinking. That was the issue. She had no idea what Gara was thinking but she felt that there was no disconnection between his words and thoughts. She had a nagging feeling that there was with Naruto and it was very big. Are you here for a session or do you find something interesting in my body that you like? Naruto asked smiling. I realize that I won't win beauty contests, but you certainly don't get eye burns from looking at me. Temari smiled. Somehow, he still managed to be honest. Perhaps at times a bit extremely so, but she liked that about him. I brought my fan. Naruto suddenly leapt into the air. Futon, great wind breakthrough. He released powerful gusts of winds to the unsuspecting Temari. The powerful gusts slammed into the blonde Jonin and sent her flying backwards. Temari flipped several times before landing on a knee. When she looked up, Naruto was right in front of her, he kicked the ground and dust picked up, and into her face. Temari quickly closed her eyes to avoid getting blinded. Naruto twisted around swiftly and kicked Temari on her forehead, sending him flying backwards once more. He didn't attack her again he stopped and watched, almost impatiently waiting for her to explode. What the hell was that for? Temari shouted, glaring at Naruto. I didn't say we could start you just went on to attack me like that. What if someone thought you were really attacking me? Naruto shrugged a bit carelessly, almost on purpose. I was really attacking you he responded. Temari responded opening her fan, she swung it a bit violently. The fan released multiple blades of wind that sped towards Naruto. He knew they could chop down a tree the blades. It was that dangerous and yet, Temari released such a jutsu. She was mad at him for his careless response and was enticing a response from him. Well she was asking for it. He did hand seals. Violent sand storm. It was like a blow of wind. Sand picked up, twisting violently and in great speed. The jutsu didn't travel much. It was short range and could be used for defensive purposes but the speed of the sand within the storm could blast through human flesh. The jutsu blocked Tamari's before dying down slowly. Tamari flashed behind Naruto, some distance back. She attempted to swing her fan, but Naruto suddenly appeared in front of her. He stopped her from swing her fan by grabbing it forcefully and then pushed her back. Tamari quickly recovered her balance and stood still. You should really work on your short-range skills. I dislike depending on one thing because the moment you lose it, you're out of your comfort zone. Jiraiya taught me kenjutsu, but you'll never see me carrying a sword. However, when the situation comes, I am able to handle it. Tamari was a bit annoyed by that lecture. If you want to see my taijutsu skills, we can have a go. Naruto shook his head, smiling. I've seen it and I don't want to get hit by your fan again he said. Tamari was silent. You're a bit rough though she said massaging her temple where Naruto kicked her. He wasn't very merciful. There were those who said they couldn't hit a woman, Naruto could hit. And he did as hard as he could. Perhaps that was the good thing about him. 
he didn't take it easy on her. He fought seriously. Gentleness is when we are naked in the bed, Tamari well, unless you like it rough. Bam! The fan landed on his left shoulder. A flustered Tamari was glaring at him, trying to fight off the image Naruto had just painted on her head. It could be that he was a pervert. But he really did like teasing her. Was it because she was innocent? I'm going to shove this fan down your throat if you keep saying things like that. While massaging his shoulder, Naruto still laughed. Don't be like that, Tamari. You are not a child anymore. And I am helping you get used to such talk. You are already at that age. Naruto didn't mistake that Tamari was older than both Gara and Kankuro. And of course him. How can you be comfortable saying things like that? You get used to it Naruto said. My sensei is a man who proudly claims he is a super pervert. If you spend time with him, you'll pick up things. There were days I used to receive nosebleed seeing him with women, but I am used to it. And I hang around that ground as well. They say things a bit for graphically while touching you. Tamari had to mentally slap herself from imaging Naruto with a woman touching him while whispering things to his ears. That happens in the bars. I know you go there. Naruto shrugged. I don't go there to meet people or do anything. Why do you go there? Naruto was silent for a couple of moments. He was thinking if he should answer or not. In the end, he responded. Observation maybe drunk people amuse me and I go there for the show they put out. Aside from madness, what would you observe? That madness Naruto said. Madness aside, you see many people in bars happy, sad, miserable lost. People go there for different reasons. Some are running away from their problems, some are busy making deals, some are exchanging information, and some are with the wrong crowd. You see many things in a bar full of people. Why would you want to observe such things, if you are not going to do anything about it? Naruto shrugged. Who knows maybe it helps me understand people better maybe I don't even go there for that only but just want to get drunk and forget about the troubles of being a shinobi he shook his head. If you want to see Gara liven up a bit, take him there and get him drunk. Tamari tried to think about it but she couldn't even form an image because she could never imagine her brother getting drunk. Would he even agree to go to a bar and drinking? No. He would not. If he does, it was just one cup, and he'd nurse it for seven days. I don't think that will happen Tamari said. Are you done for the day? Naruto nodded. I have always been curious Tamari started slowly. You are always in your hotel room from noon till late, what do you do alone? Naruto looked up into the sky for a moment before looking straight at Tamari. In my first year at the academy, I had no friends, no one. The kids avoided me, and their parents openly told them not to play with me. During lunch breaks I sat alone, being ignored. In the streets, people looked at with contempt so after classes, I would immediately go back to my apartment and sit there. What would be the purpose of going out if people didn't want me in the streets? Naruto asked before shaking his head. Perhaps these days I do it out of habit more than anything. That was perhaps the first time he said something about himself without looking indifferent, without shrugging. She felt, those were his thoughts his experience, that was the question he had asked himself back then. Tamari felt sad. Yet, she felt there was something she was missing. Tamari felt sad, realizing just how miserable life had been for him. What were you thinking about while alone? Naruto merely smiled. Tamari realized, she wasn't going to get a response. You ever thought of breaking that habit? Eh I hold things of the past too closely just can't seem to let go easily Naruto said. There was the indifference, yet this time, Tamari didn't feel annoyed by it. It isn't that much of a habit, is it? Perhaps not Naruto responded calmly. A couple of minutes later. When Naruto arrived at the hotel, he found a message waiting by the window. Jiraiya, he thought. He opened it. Tenzaku guy in seven days. He could do that. But he had to leave as early as tomorrow. He wanted to travel slowly by the fire country. He could speed through the river country and rest once he crosses the border. Hidden Leaf Danzo, we have to do something about the Kyubis Jinchuriki Koharu said to the war hawk. 
It has been more than two years and he isn't coming back Tsunade isn't even saying on the matter. Danzo didn't react visibly to this. This was a troublesome issue, yet nothing new. But with Tsunade present, he couldn't get close to Naruto. Well, with the blonde outside of Kanoha, he could make his move. Jiraiya wasn't always with the Jinchuriki. The Sandame had stonewalled all attempts to get close. He had blocked him and threatened him. His former teammate was willing to turn a blind eye on most things but when it came to Naruto, he had been immovable like a mountain. There had been no forgiveness even Koharu had been told that she wasn't to bring out Naruto when they talked unless she was asking his health or how he was doing in class. If she persisted, she would be sacked as an advisor. He is a flight risk and we cannot afford to lose the Kyubi. We have already lost the Sharingan we can't afford this loss Danzo didn't generally care for the boy, he cared for the Kyubi. He is currently in Sunagakir training there. Suna have they selected a Kage, yet? No he said. If I had my way, we would have just taken control over it. There wouldn't be a need for a Kage but Tsunade has been unwilling. Well, for someone who has fought in wars, Tsunade can be quite naive at times Kohara said. What are we going to do about the Kyubi's Jinchuriki? I have a plan Danzo said. Chapter 3 Naruto didn't know how it came to this, but he was standing at the gates of Suna, with Temari beside him, Gara holding out his right hand. The man who was going to become Godain Kazakage was being guarded by a man he learned to be Baki the man who has been the sensei of the San siblings since they were young. He was their sensei when they went to Kanoha for their Chunin exams and he was helping Gara prepare for his role as Kazakage. When he informed them he would be leaving, he was told to wait for a day, they would make preparations to send Tamari to Kanoha so that she could inform the village of Gara's appointment. She was the one who would be handling dialogues between the two villages. Naruto had waited. Gara had asked him. I was just a single day anyway. There was no smile on Gara's lips when Naruto shook his hand. I hope you come again soon to visit us, Naruto. I will try to make time. Naruto said. It wouldn't be any time soon. He was going back to his journey. His training with Jiraiya and once he was satisfied, he would think about Kanoha and what he had to do. There was no hurry to go back. He was content as things were and the Sanin training him wasn't complaining either. You will always be welcome. You have been a good friend. Gara said. Please take care of my sister along the way. This time, Naruto smiled. I will try to do that, but she is plenty strong he said, eyeing the blonde sister of the Kazakage. For some reason, Tamari looked annoyed. Come on, we don't want the sun to set while in the desert. She said to Naruto. I will be safe, Gara. You don't have to worry. Baki shook his head. You really have to be careful, Tamari. There are elements within the hidden leaf that don't like the fact that things are being done this way. You never even know that other forces are watching. Someone might just decide to do something just to make sure that Suna and Kanoha never become allies. Naruto could understand what the man was saying. Dangerous creeps were always lying in the shadows and it was truly interesting that the man was willing to say in front of him, a Kanoha shinobi. For sure the man probably didn't trust him but was going with the flow because the San siblings trusted him. Which forces wouldn't want the relationship to work? No, within Kanoha, the dark forces only wish for Suna to surrender itself to Kanoha. There were such forces. There was a saying, everyone has darkness. Kanoha had its darkness and so did Sunagakir. The difference was how people dealt with their darkness. Tamari pulled Naruto away before Gara could say anything. Naruto had noticed that the Jinchuriki hadn't been particularly pleased with what Baki had said. If anything, it looked like he was contemplating on having someone else go with her as her guard. As they sped through the desert, Naruto glanced at the silent Tamari. I never asked, how are you dealing with the change? Your brother usually threatened you but now is very protective. I'm just happy that I have my younger brother again. He was a very gentle child before our father sent people to kill him. Our father viewed things based on their value, even people. If he no longer saw value in something, he would get rid of it. He tried doing that to Gara, but my brother would kill all the people and so he stopped trying to do it. It was easy to understand why Gara turned in the way he did. 
To have your own father try to kill you because he viewed you as a failure. But it wasn't Gara's fault. It was their crappy Fuenjutsu users who couldn't devise a seal capable of allowing Gara to use Shikaku's chakra without the bijou influencing him. The Uzumaki would never create something so pathetic. Fuenjutsu in some other villages was truly cheap imitations of the work of art that his clan was able to create. The seal that housed the Kyubi was an example of this, it may have been used by his father but the basis of it came from work of the Uzumaki, something that his mother taught the Yandame. You look displeased. Naruto smiled. Got lost in thought he said. I don't know what I would if my own father was trying to kill me. Then again, had it not been for some of the Sandame's laws, I might have just hanged myself. Temari frowned. He could say something like that and yet sound so indifferent. Regardless of how you thought of it, that was just sad. Do you really have to say something like that in that tone? This is because it is the past, Temari. That aside, I have come to understand that only hopeless people will think of ending their lives. My situation wasn't hopeless I'd just yet to see the light. Naruto said a bit firmly. I'd like to camp somewhere closer to the border of the fire country can we speed up a bit? You do know that I don't have as much stamina as you do right? Well, if you get tired, I will carry you Naruto said with a smile. I'd rather you not. Naruto just laughed and they ran through the desert, taking water breaks and there and then. By the time they reached the river country, the sun had already set and they stopped running. They walked slowly for a couple of hours before they finally reached a place where there was a stream of water and decided to rest close to it. Fire was set and tents were put up. Naruto collected the wood and did the fishing while Tamari watched. He seemed like he was used to this kind of thing. His tent though, it was big and she had peeked inside it wasn't the kind of thing Shinobi carried. It looked just way too comfortable for camping through the night. Then again, this wasn't to make you suffer. You couldn't mistake the symbols on the tent. It was the symbol she saw on every shirt he wore. Where had she seen it again? Tamari couldn't recall but it was obviously something that had a meaning to Naruto. She was alone with Naruto, only separated by the burning fire that kept their bodies warm. Tamari hadn't really thought such a moment would come. She hadn't thought it would feel so weird. They were alone. No witnesses. He was the person who said things that provoked her to think thoughts she would never think. It worried her. It wasn't her physical safety that worried her but her emotional state. Naruto's face was strange since he walked away down the water stream and disappeared, he was strange. She couldn't see it clearly, but she could feel that there was something different. I thought you'd be saying all kinds of things now that we are alone Tamari said. It wasn't that she wanted him to tease her. She didn't want it. But she had nothing better to say to break the awkward silence. It was the first time she was experiencing this moment with him. Then again, she had never been so alone with him. Naruto's eyes moved towards Tamari they could clearly see her. He could feel her breathing. She wasn't calm. She was having a difficult time. He could feel the slight tension in the air around them. Perhaps it was his silence. He'd never been so silent with her. You have your guard up I'm waiting till you get sleepy before pouncing. Tamari smiled hearing those words. It didn't make her uncomfortable it made her happy that he had responded positively. That reminds me, I'm sleeping with one eye open. Can't trust you not to peek while I sleep, can I? Naruto shook his head, wagging his index finger. You're thinking peeking I'm thinking you waking up in the morning next to a nude me. Tamari shivered at the thought. She fought hard to avoid picturing him naked. She was glad for the fire that he couldn't see the pink tint on her cheeks. Now that she thought of it, she hadn't even seen his chest. He really did like covering up his body. Forget his chest she hadn't seen his arms up his to his elbow. He always wore long-sleeved clothing. I'd have to be dead for you to get that close even if you do get that close, when I arrive in Kanoha, I will also be sending my condolences for their loss. Naruto laughed. You wouldn't want to kill your brother's friend, would you? Temari shrugged. I'm sure he'd understand if I say his so-called friend was trying to violate me. Naruto looked thoughtful. Well, I can see him nodding, saying that you did the best thing the blonde said. We will separate here, Temari. 
I won't go anywhere further with you. I have to turn towards Takumi. I could escort you near Kanoha and still be able to meet Jiraiya in time, but I'm you'll be safe. He was serious. Temari was a bit surprised for a moment. Not at those words but the seriousness of his tone. It sounded like she was talking to someone in power someone who was dishing out instructions that were not to be questioned. Why? Naruto knew she was asking why he didn't want to get close to Kanoha. She was curious. My training trip wasn't supposed to take long but it has been over two years and we are working towards a third. They probably want me to return but Jiraiya and I still have many things to do. If I go near, I will be forced to get into Kanoha. The moment I step through those gates, I won't be able to leave again. My training trip will be over. That was reasonable, Naruto thought. For some reason, Tamari thought he just didn't want to return to Kanoha. She couldn't understand why. He didn't talk much about the leaf. He almost never said anything unless you asked. She didn't want to be nosy, but she was curious. She nevertheless didn't ask him. She didn't want to be a bother. I see Tamari said she paused, and stared. She wanted to ask, but she didn't know how to say it. When do you think we will meet again? At that moment, Naruto realized, he had grown a little too attached to this person than he would have liked. He had trained with her for many days. He had shared many laughs with her. He had seen her smile. He had seen her flustered. And honestly, he thought it was adorable. His smile would only make her angry. But that was fine. That was Sabaka no Temari. Naruto smiled. Temari saw it. When Naruto realized he was smiling, and he had been caught, he didn't drop it. He was used to her presence, her curious glances. She was always trying to figure him out, trying to study him. Perhaps it was dangerous for him. But he was okay with it because she never asked. She never tried to sneak behind him to see what he was doing. She was curious, but she knew not to pry. Naruto didn't hate her. But what? He shook his head. He was overthinking things once more. He did like people at a distance despite openly chatting to them, didn't he? Was it because he always wanted to be in charge? Once more, he shook his head. I don't really know but if you miss a training partner, let me know. I don't even have a way of contacting you if you are not going to be in Kanoha Temari said with a frown. Sometime in five or six months, we should be making way towards Kanoha. Jiraiya said we'd have to discuss the conclusion of things but we will surely see each other soon Naruto said. That was the truth. He would see her again. But, Lord, he was walking into another dangerous situation. But this seemed fine. Her brother looked like decent person. She was a pleasant person. He had his issues. He could work on them. And nobody needed to get caught up in it. Naruto smiled inwardly, was it concern for other people? He has truly become soft in the inside. He could blame the Sandame Hokage for this change. He had stopped caring. But Team 7 made him see things. It made him experience new things. Perhaps he enjoyed those fleeting moments a bit too much than he should have connections. Friendship, they were never meant to be lasting, he was never meant to be attached. Tamari smiled. I hope so she said. A moment of peace settled in. She enjoyed it. How different her life has become over the past month. It was amazing how things could change. But then again, she never had a boy who wasn't her brother close to her. She had someone she could call a friend. Someone outside of her family. It was a good feeling. She glanced over at Naruto his eyes were on the fire. She cast her eyes at the burning flames. She listened to the sound the wood made was they burnt. She laughed. She was amused at herself. When did she start doing this? She really needed to get a hold of herself. And you were saying people would think I was the crazy one Naruto said after a moment. Temari realized, she'd make a sound. She wasn't embarrassed she just shrugged carelessly. Oh, brother, she was picking up his habits. I couldn't help myself. She was glad Naruto didn't ask. That happens he simply said. Say, Naruto Temari started, staring deeply into his eyes. When he stared back, 
she shook her head. She could ask another day. Never mind she said. I'll ask when I see you again. It was unlikely to be soon but Naruto wasn't that curious to know what she wanted to ask. His mind was already filled with too many things. I'll remind you I'm going to check the parameter he stood up. Take my tent for the night, I will keep watch. Not for the whole night, wake up me so that you can also rest. Naruto nodded. I will do that. He would not. He did not. Tamari only woke up early in the morning and when she woke up, he was gone. He wasn't taken. He had just left her. Yes, she thought it like that. He had left her. There was only a letter beside her. A couple of words that didn't give her comfort over the loss of her companion. Tamari took the letter and hugged it. For the first time since he came to Suna, Tamari felt lonely. She felt alone. Amage Kure. The shinobi world was ruled by power, it was those with power that determined everything. Nagato had power, Amage Kure had power. The great five nations were powerful. That was why their wars always affected even the smaller villages. They were always caught in the crossfire they always get crushed under the weight. Amage Kure had wounds from wars it did not start, wars it had no part of. He had pain, memories that he could not remove from his head. Because those with power, used it recklessly and they suffered from it. But they would suffer no more. Amage Kure would not suffer any more. This village this home of his it was firmly in his hands. The grip of the past dynasty he had crushed it. There wasn't anything tangible that remained of it. Nothing. He eradicated it. It was nothing but just memories from the minds of people. But that would too, disappear. His village had a massive population. But it didn't have many shinobi. That was why it was considered weak. That was why it was indeed weak in the past. But it was weak no longer. Over the past five years, he had been building its military strength. It had shinobi who could fight shinobi who could stand behind to withstand the might of any hidden village. Jinchurikis were not a consequence. He could handle them because he was strong. Conan Nagato glanced over his shoulder as his partner walked towards him. Itachi just left the village did he say anything to you? Conan nodded. Sometimes the Uchiha had a tendency to walk away from the village without saying anything. The journey always ended up in the Fire Nation. She had always assumed he was going to check on the hidden leaf, but he never said anything and they never asked him. He is going to offer his services to Yuzu Konan handled the Akatsuki while Nagato handled duties of the village. She handled all mission requests made to the Akatsuki and she assigned them to whoever she thought was suitable. But Yuzu was always specific in their demands. It was always Itachi. Nagato went there occasionally. I hope he is careful this time around. Last time he returned before the mission was over because he had put some people under Jinjutsu Nagato shook his head. The Uchiha was smart. But those people in Yuzu were not to be underestimated. Even if Itachi was powerful those people were not the ones to be fooled easily. The visual prowess was a thing to behold, but the eyes in that village saw everything. They said they made preparations this time around. He is going to stay in places he has to see I doubt he has seen anything they don't want him to see. Nagato nodded to this. We are going to be doing more missions these days. But it will attract attention he said. He was referring to Aim Shinobi. But it can't be avoided. We are ready for the world. The village will however remain closed. It isn't time yet. IWA is trying to hire the Akatsuki to look into Yuzu. Any other village trying? Conan shook her head. At least we know who the enemies are but we can't afford to do anything at this time. The risk is too great for us. But if they try anything, they will be crushed. Nagato said. We are going to change this world, and there will be no one who will stand in the way. Those who try will be crushed. We have been wronged too often and because these people have power, they have always gotten away with it. We shall no longer allow them to make us experience pain. If they tried, it was them who would be made to experience the pain they have felt. Perhaps they would understand. Maybe they would not. But this world had to be changed. This order of things would be changed. And they would do it. 
they would not fail. Conan looked down at the streets. This was at least something they had managed to do, secure Amigecure. The village that once reigned constantly now saw daylight. It was a beautiful sight. It was their home. The home they fought to protect and Yahiko was still alive and the home they now controlled. Yuzushi Obikure was a good friend of theirs. They could not accept any mission that required taking action against the land. It had already seen destruction it would not see another one. What do you think will be Jiraiya Sensei's response when he hears that we are still alive? For some one reason, Conan felt like asking the question. Their Sensei. The man who taught them ninjutsu. The man who showed them love. He was a good Sensei. A good person. When his teammate offered to end their lives, he offered to give them tools for survival. I wonder Nagato said. But what he says is irrelevant. We have our dreams, Conan. No one will stand in the way. Not even Jiraiya. Later that day. Hidden Leaf. Tamari had indulged the thought that Naruto had been watching her all the way. She had felt like she was being watched along the way. But when she stepped into the leaf, she felt like she was really being watched. The eyes were not friendly. She could feel it and it made her uncomfortable. She really wanted to get to her business then just get away from the village. Baki had been right there were forces that were not pleased with how things were progressing. But at least no one in the village was glaring at her. They seemed to be over the invasion. Then again, Suna had really lost as well. Their leader. Her father had been murdered by Orochimaru. Tamari wasn't particularly sad by it. Even so, had he been alive, things would have been difficult. The leaf might have forced them to surrender. It was different because they knew and understood that they had been tricked. Tamari glanced at the person beside him. The Nara she fought in the Chunin exams. He was the one who welcomed her. He really looked happy with the silence. He was part of the team that entered the exams with Naruto. She wanted ask, but she bit her lip. She didn't want to pry. Naruto never spoke, it was better to keep things as they were. You people are rather forgiving. If she was able to walk freely here, then her brother would be welcomed when he comes to this village. It wasn't a bad thing it was good and she couldn't have it anyway. She wished Suna was like that. She wished people accepted her brother as she has, but she had to forget about it for now. It wasn't going to happen any time soon. She still held hope nonetheless. She did wonder though, did they treat Naruto in the same way? Tamari shook her head, she was thinking too much about that person who left her without a word. Now she was angry. She just wanted to hit him. Not everyone Shikamura thought for a moment. I think they just realized it would be too bothersome to hold grudges. Suna didn't cause the Sandame's death, it was Orochimaru he paused. It is possible that they are blaming everything on Orochimaru. Well, you got to have someone to blame for everything Tamari said. The most convenient choice was always the best that was how people behaved. That was how people did things. In this case, it isn't exactly wrong Shikamaru said. To this, Tamari nodded. Orochimaru had been the one fighting the Sandame Hokage and he was the one who murdered her father. If there was someone to hate for the invasion, it was him. Sunagakir still held some fault nevertheless. They still played their part. Her father had negotiated with Orochimaru. He wasn't killed before plans to invade Kanoha were made he was killed when going to Kanoha for the finals of the Chunin exams. The rest of the walk towards the Hokage Tower was in comfortable silence. Tsunade stared at Tamari for a long minute before looking at Shikamaru. Thank you, Shikamaru. I will call you if there is something else. Hi the Nara said lazily before walking away. Tamari was amused. To her, it seemed like he was saying, I really hope you don't call me. Please sit, Tamari. Tsunade said to the Kunoichi. The Godame Hokage leaned back to her chair and stared at the young woman. She really had nothing bad to say to her or about Sunigakir. They had already discussed things with those in charge at the moment and she was pleased with how things had progressed. She didn't want any bloodshed. She didn't hold any grudges. But it was a fact that Suna had betrayed them even though they were allies. 
she almost snickered at the thought that after betraying them, Orochimaru had gone to betray them. It was like this in this world. You could never trust anyone with your back. You betray people and others will betray you. She still had to work around that issue. Suna had betrayed them. The village was struggling with resources and it did depend on the hidden leaf on many things. However, Kanoha sold them cheap things of low quality because that was what they could afford. There was no charity. Even Kanoha had to look after itself. But their situation didn't excuse their actions. Tsunade really didn't want to talk about Suna and Kanoha. That was settled. But she knew Danzo wasn't happy. She knew he was probably plotting something, his suggestion had been to even take the San siblings and make them Kanoha shinobi. Ridiculous. How long are going to stay here? I plan to return tomorrow morning. Temari responded calmly. She took out a scroll and handed it to the Godame Hokage. She didn't have to answer anything she just had to give the woman the scroll. That was her mission. Tsunade nodded. Please see me before you leave she said. I need to make preparations for your departure. I will have a team take you back to Suna. She said in a serious tone, but she would not explain anything or her reasons for doing what she was doing. Tamari frowned, but she wasn't going to ask. She knew why. Someone had really been watching her since she stepped into this village. This was really a dangerous world, wasn't it? Kanoha was big it was to be expected to have so many forces. I was told that Naruto was in Suna. Tamari nodded. He stayed with us for a month. He left after receiving a message from Jiraiya-sama she was surprised with her response. She didn't say that she left Suna with him and wasn't planning on saying it unless the Hokage led her to it. I'm going to ask some questions, you don't have to feel pressured or forced to answer them Tsunade started calmly. Who did he spend time with? Was he alone? What was he doing? She was worried, Tamari realized. It was like a mother asking about her child. The look her mother had. This woman did care for Naruto. She really did. But Naruto never spoke about it. He never said anything. You wouldn't think there were people who cared for him in the leaf with how he avoided it and kept silence on the subject. Naruto had spoken to her freely and she had a choice here. Temari decided. She decided it was best to relieve the Godame Hokage of her worries. I spent time with him I was the one who was actually training with him. I saw him every day. Tsunade's eyes lit a bit brightly. I only hear things from Jiraiya, but not from another set of eyes who have sat with him. When he left here, things weren't great. That is why I allowed him to go on the training trip. She paused. How close did you get to him? I don't know how, but we talked Tamari managed a small shrug. Just like how Naruto would respond to the question. God, she was copying his tendencies. Naruto didn't have a lot of people around him when growing up and trusting people was a little difficult. But when he got into a team, he trusted his teammates they were friends but the person who shared his loneliness betrayed that trust and nearly killed him. Tamari now understood things she understood why he looked so welcoming, yet not very close. She could only think that it was the Uchiha who did it. What a horrible thing to do. But Naruto still didn't look like someone who had trust issues. He talked to people, and he smiled. He hadn't pushed her away. Tamari nodded. He is fine after spending time with him I can't really say there is something bothering him. She would not say though, that he didn't talk about many things personally. She would not say he never brought up Kanoha or the Uchiha who nearly killed him. The Uchiha who betrayed his trust. I want some details. Tsunade said. It was more like an order than a request. For a moment, Tamari thought of rejecting the request before nodding her head. She could indulge the Godame. Perhaps she would get to see how the experience affected her. Talking about it. Sharing her experience with Naruto to someone who was listening so attentively, Tamari felt like she was just breathing new air. It was a good experience. It made her free. She didn't say everything. She kept some details to herself. It seems that he is doing well Tsunade said with a smile. I was really worried. The Godame looked at the scroll she had been given. She looked at it for a couple of moments. 
she'd already received a report that it might be so. It was perhaps good that this was happening now. A blessing that Naruto had befriended Temari. She was going to be the Kazakage's sister. They could use her. If things were not going smoothly, she could demand a political marriage. That would bind the hidden sand from doing anything. She could use this card to silence some critics over the way she has handled things. She wasn't going to do it, she was going to wait and see. Your brother is still young I haven't met him, so I am going to be honest, what do you think? Tsunade asked the blonde wind user. He is capable and Baki has been preparing him over the past year she would not say that he was simply being put in his position because the council was afraid of him. But that was Suna's internal problem. They would deal with it. If Kanoha found out about it, they would work it out. But this didn't mean he didn't have the qualities. He had them and he would do a great job as Kazakage. That isn't very reassuring but I have seen enough not to underestimate someone because they are young Tsunade said. I will write to him. Kanoha is still open to trading with Sunagakir but we will have to revise things a bit. Tamari managed a smile. I will pass on the message she said. A couple of days later. When Naruto walked into the room he had rented in this gambling town, he found himself standing face to face with blood red eyes. Sharingan. Those eyes. Those damned eyes. Naruto really didn't like them. He wouldn't go as far as to say he felt nothing but contempt for them it would be extreme. He knew this person. This was the elder brother of Sasuke. He should be afraid. He should be worried about the motives of this person. But Naruto was not. He was only curious but he didn't show it on his face. His heart was beating a little fast but he wasn't concerned. He needed to silence it. It was a dead giveaway. He walked past the man and settled by the window. Jiraiya was already in town. It was only a moment of time before the Sanmin found him. Maybe he was already on his way. Itachi watched Naruto carefully. He should be surprised to buy the blonde's reaction to his presence, but he wasn't. He didn't even raise an eyebrow. He just watched the blonde walk past him. If Itachi wasn't seeing the blonde, he wouldn't say he was there. He had managed to completely erase his presence. It was remarkable, the tools a trained silent killer. He didn't have much time with the blonde, Jiraiya was probably charging to this place he stood. I want to speak to you, Naruto Kuen. Naruto didn't turn to the Uchiha, he merely responded in a cold tone. You have my ears. But not his eyes. Though, I find it interesting that a known S rank criminal would be interested in just a mere genin. I think we both know you are more than that Itachi responded calmly. I once served as an umbu in Kanoha and the Sandame trusted me very much. Naruto glanced at the Uchiha through the corner of his eyes. I know I did see you once or twice. He did speak very highly of you, even after the massacre then again, he was still fond of Orochimaru despite everything. The blonde paused. Like I said, you have my ears but I may not respond. If I want to get answers from you, I'd be forceful Itachi said calmly. It is about Sasuke Kuen. Naruto said nothing. I know you were friends with him I know things happened and he ended up joining the ranks of Orochimaru. He is training now trying to gain power you once tried to get him to return to Kanoha, would you try again? Naruto faced the Uchiha with a look of indifference. Why? That baffled Itachi, but he didn't let it show. You no longer consider him a friend it seems there was still no emotion in Itachi's tone. Naruto looked away from Itachi without saying a word, after a couple of moments he responded. I can't really figure out why you are asking. I don't even know why you left him alive. I was thinking perhaps you just couldn't kill your younger brother he shook his head. Sasuke decided that joining Orochimaru was the best possible cause for him he wanted his revenge whether Orochimaru allows him to get it or not is his problem. I would be happy if he somehow kills Orochimaru but I won't thank him. Orochimaru once tried to take my body if he is going to use the same technique as he did with me, he will fail Itachi said. I merely wanted to confirm if you were still willing to save my brother. At this point, even if he does get his revenge, he is likely to dive deep further into darkness. A man who massacred his entire clan shouldn't care, now should he? Naruto said. 
you shouldn't stay of course, Itachi. It makes you look concerned, and that isn't the Itachi the world knows. Itachi narrowed his eyes. Those words were dangerous. Naruto has grown. He did observe the blonde a bit. He had been close to Sasuke, after all. The way they parted wasn't great, but still, he didn't expect the blonde to be so cold. What do you want from me, Itachi? I don't think you have come here for Sasuke. I have been around people, and when they want something, you sense it. This wasn't even the kind if crowd he hanged around with. Having such people with curious glances was even dangerous for him. Never did he even think that he would end up getting a visit from this infamous man. Kanoha once worshipped him but now he was just another Orochimaru. Pitiful. But Naruto didn't care much. He wasn't even fond of the Uchiha. For some reason, the bijou inside of him seemed to appreciate his dislike for those damned corrupted eyes that had the power to bend your will. I wanted to confirm something. Did you? If Naruto was curious, he didn't show it. There was still an air of indifference around him as he responded. Itachi did not respond to the question. He asked a question of his. As far as I am concerned, you are the only other Uzumaki who has no connections to the revived Yuzu have they not approached you. I would find it curious if they have not. Naruto glanced at the Uchiha for a moment. This was an interrogation. A soft one. Those eyes were watching every inch of his body, waiting for any sign of deception. Have you been searching for the Uzumaki, Itachi? You're not answering my question. I'm not obligated to answer when you ignore mine Naruto said with a shrug. I have been to Yuzu and I have traveled around a lot. I haven't come across any Uzumaki. The world is big, Itachi. The survivors of the Uzumaki clan scattered across the elemental nations after the destruction Naruto said. It does make you wonder, doesn't it? What? In asking that, Itachi realized, Naruto hadn't answered his question and he was steering him away from it. His eyes narrowed dangerously. This was no normal teenager. He was at least able to confirm that. But Yuzu would not show him anything. Maybe someone would slip in something to him, but it was unlikely. Yuzu and Kanoha were like brother and sister and yet, none of the survivors ever took refuge in the hidden leaf Naruto paused for effect. That is a puzzle, isn't it? It is Itachi said. I will also reveal a little secret since you don't want to cooperate with me. I am indeed a criminal and massacred my clan but I still kept contact with the Sandame Hokage. You see, when it came to you, he did not trust any of the Umbu. He contacted me. I was there when you two visited Yuzu. Naruto turned to face the Uchiha. The mask on his face didn't slip but he did have a raised eyebrow. Well, that is interesting. Well, at least no one in Kanoha knows about it. He turned his eyes outside once more. What else do you know? Admittedly, nothing. This is why I came here. You were interested in Yuzu back then but now there is nothing. Why? Itachi asked. My time is up but we shall talk again hopefully. The Uchiha disappeared from the room after those words left his lips. A few moments later, Jiraiya burst into the room, looking worried. Naruto turned around to face the San Nin. I'm not paying for that damage. He said. Naruto was fine but there was no sign of the Uchiha. Jiraiya frowned. He was late. But at least there was nothing wrong. Then again, he didn't exactly think that Naruto would have been harmed. What would Itachi have against his student? The Uchiha was a member of the mercenary group, Akatsuki, but they wouldn't be after Naruto, would they? Glancing at the door on the floor, Jiraiya sighed. I didn't book the room, I can't pay. I was never even here. Naruto sent the San Nina look. You will regret many things, Sensei that said, he looked back at the window. What took you so long? I gotta held back some someone Jiraiya said with a grin. A young beautiful lady and you just couldn't resist until you realized she was being manipulated Naruto said with a shake of his head. You can be remarkable sometimes, Sensei. You are only saying that because you didn't see her, Naruto Jiraiya said. He was firm, anyone would have been distracted. But sometimes Naruto did act like he didn't recognize beauty when he saw it. Now that Jiraiya thought about, 
he never saw the blonde with a lady, even though he visited bars. He always came back alone. He was truly missing the joys of life and this was his student. I'm sure I wouldn't have behaved in the same way as you Naruto said with a shrug. When are you going to follow me? It would be nice to show you off. I did it once, never again Naruto said with a slight shake of his head. How was your work? Jiraiya looked thoughtful for a moment. There was no harm done with Itachi, so they would discuss this issue some other time. He would not forget. For now, he was happy. He didn't want to ruin the moment even. Fruitful the Sanin said calmly. I heard you got close to a certain blonde head a grin plastered his face. Naruto faced Jiraiya for a moment. That look. The smile. It suggested something but Naruto wasn't going to think too deeply about it. Tamari is a delightful woman. But that was that. Jiraiya shook his head. I don't have to teach you how to get close since you already know the trade, but if you keep watching the birds, they will fly off. You must make a move. He said seriously. You are still too young to talk about marriage but you need to have fun, Naruto. You mean your kind of fun Naruto said. I am not exactly a boring person in case you forgot. You know, I just am more controlled than you. Certainly, the blonde knew how to act. He could sit at a bar and laugh with a couple of ladies while drinking, but he would end it there. Jiraiya could confidently say the blonde knew the body of a woman, and yet, he never seemed eager. The toad sage sighed and settled on the bed. Tsunade was as asking about you. I'm sure she was. As she does in her letters you have a tendency to leave them open so that I can comment. And you don't. You pretend as if you didn't see anything. I don't pretend anything. I just keep my thoughts to myself. Besides, if you didn't ask for my opinion, I can't give it Naruto said. How long do we have? She didn't stipulate and I'm honestly fine with the way things are. I failed to do so many things in your younger days. I'm watching you grow, we are close, I am happy with that. But things had to come to an end. Nothing was forever in this world. He knew that. He had experienced it too many times. This end would be on his terms and he would be content with it. There was nothing that could take away the memories has shared with Naruto. There was nothing. The memories were his and he would make some more. But we are still wanted in Kanoha Naruto said. There was no emotion in his tone. And he wasn't looking at the Sanin. Jiraiya couldn't tell if the blonde was displeased. Yes Jiraiya said with a small nod. We have to cover your katan training, and the Kyubi's chakra. And we have to do missions for you to earn yourself more experience in battle. If the toads are willing, you will learn Senjutsu. Well that is quite the schedule Naruto said. We can do fire and Kyubi's chakra simultaneously. It isn't my favorite meal to do two training exercises at once but since we don't know when we will end our time together, we don't have a choice Naruto said. Jiraiya could work with that. Are we going to talk about your skills in Fuenjutsu? His tone was serious. I don't usually push you for answers but it is important if we are going to learn controlling the Kyubi's power. Naruto glanced at Jiraiya at the corner of his eyes before looking at the streets. This town was lively. This wasn't his first time here. He'd come here looking for the old hag. What of my Fuenjutsu skills, sensei? I put it wrongly Jiraiya then corrected himself. What is your knowledge regarding Fujinjutsu? You might not be able to apply the art in practical use but sensei gave you many books about the art to read. He even had me hand over scrolls I have obtained from Minato. He would not tell me what it was for, but I suspected it was for you. He did give me things to read. Naruto said quietly. The third had me consume as much knowledge about Fuenjutsu as I could filter through my head. He said it was fine even if I didn't understand. I just had to consume the knowledge. He said it had to be on my head. When I was alone, sitting like this, I could search my memories and try studying the structures of seals. Since it was difficult, it would be enough to preoccupy my time. He had two reasons for this, he said it was my legacy. It was the legacy of the Uzumaki. The second was that he wanted me to think about something useful. He didn't want me filling my head with thoughts of my loneliness. Because I could concentrate, 
it was easy just thinking of diagrams I couldn't tell describe. At the same time it was frustrating. But I also needed something to think about, so I filled my mind with those diagrams, arrays, drawings. Jiraiya was silent for a long minute as he absorbed those words. He knew of Naruto's habit. He knew the blonde could sit by the window for hours without moving. Why haven't you attempted learning it? Just because your mother was good at it doesn't mean you'll naturally be good at it Naruto responded calmly. Those were the words the old man used to tell me. Jiraiya sighed. Do you know the secret of the necklace Tsunade gave you? It is a sealing technique I know but it can easily be crushed because it works best with Mokutan. It is the Shodai's jewel after all Naruto said. What of it? Jiraiya shook his head. That is just another measure we have in case you lose control. But I don't know what it takes for it to activate. It didn't activate on four tails. There were still five my tails missing Naruto said in a flat tone. We will work something out. Those tags you created are still useful. Yes Jiraiya said with a nod. But he was looking for something a bit more permanent. Those seals required one to get close and Naruto couldn't apply them himself. There had to be something that could be activated automatically or through a hand sign. He would think of drawing up something. But at this stage, his mind could only think of a chakra suppression seal. How was the situation in Sunagakure? Ah, he did have a side mission. And now he had to give a briefing. Gara is going to be made Kazakage. I don't know when they will do the coronation. But you can rest assured he is a good person who won't think of doing what his father did. I think by now they already know their village is weak. I didn't actually think that they would make him Kage Jiraiya said with a shake of his head. He is still just a brat. And Suna is a mess. Last time I checked, the wind daimyo was no longer even funding it. Their failed invasion hasn't even earned them new allies. That may be true but Gara is willing and has a lot to prove Naruto said. You thought they'd put Baki? Jiraiya nodded. He was the Kazakage's right-hand man. Whatever he did, that man was in it too. The man explained. He then stood up. Let's go out. The day is still in its diapers, we need to let loose of some steam before going for our training. We can stay here for a couple of days before departing. Once we go to it, we'll spend at least two months away from people. Best we stock up for those days. Naruto shook his head. You didn't stock up on fun like it was a nutrient that could be stored in your body but this was his sensei. His perverted sensei. Their time was running out. Perhaps he should indulge the man. He got out of the window and then stared at the San Nin. If you misbehave, I will walk away. Jiraiya grinned. I will be on my best behavior. He said. In your best behavior, you drool from your nose while peeking through a hole on some naked women Naruto responded flatly. That's called research. Jiraiya said. You should try reading my books. You have all the copies, even ones I have yet to release. I have written one, I don't need to read them Naruto said with a shrug. You do know Aika Aika is for perverts, right? Jiraiya shrugged and they then started to leave he picked up the door he had broken and created a clone to take Naruto's things. They'd have to look for a new place to stay. How sad was the old hag? Very Jiraiya said after shrugging off his surprise at the question. You do need to write to her. Why haven't you? Jiraiya, aren't I reactive to the matters of the heart? Naruto asked. That was a false impression but who cared? She hasn't written to me either. Tell her to write something and I will respond. Isn't she the parent in this situation? You know, you can be frustratingly simple at times. Jiraiya said with a shake of his head. She'll probably hit you. Ooh we can't have that Naruto said with his eyes closed. Where are you taking me? We are just going to drink. I haven't seen you get drunk. I need to see who will first get drunk between me and you. That isn't a fair competition, sensei. You are a professional and I am just student Naruto said with a shake of his head. And I only started drinking like last year. If you can't handle it, just say so but I will consider it my win. Naruto eyed the Sanmin for a long minute before speaking. Let us make a wager then. 
I'm not making a wager with you Jiraiya said. Last time I ended up walking into a hot spring while naked a women's bathing place. You were confident you could win if I had lost, I would have been the one doing it. Jiraiya glared at Naruto I doubt it you have a smooth tongue when you want to use it. You could have ended up convincing them that you truly thought it was a men's place. You overstate my abilities, Sensei Naruto said with a shake of his head. Your student cannot talk a woman who has had six bottles to share a bed with him. Jiraiya thought about it before bursting with laughter. He walked closer to the blonde and put his right hand over the blonde's shoulder. Now that is an exaggeration he said in a whisper. I know you can do better. Naruto glanced at the firm hand on his shoulder before looking at the road ahead. We shall see. Iwagakure. What took you so long? Anoki asked with annoyance as Kuratsuchi walked into his office. I called for you an hour ago. No Kuratsuchi said with a shake of her head. It was ten minutes ago. You are losing your sense of time, old man. Can't you even see? Should I get a bigger clock for you? Are you even hearing me? Anoki frowned. If you keep talking like that, I'm not going to retire. Kuratsuchi shrugged. It doesn't matter. You are going to kick the bucket very soon anyway. Anoki thought of sending the black hair to glare but he held himself. He tossed aside the mocking of his age and stared at the scroll before him. I have a mission for you. Kuratsuchi smiled at hearing this. She has been holed up in the village. It was nice to be able to go out and do a mission. There hasn't even been anything worthy of her skills. If her grandfather was sending her, then it must be something challenging. What do you want me to do? I want you to go to a town in the Fire Nation. Book a room and a certain man will approach and give you a scroll containing information. Don't lose it. Return immediately upon receiving it. Kuratsuchi frowned. There are messengers for that kind of mission. There is a danger that this person is being followed. If I send someone else, they might not return. Anoki said in a firm tone. The information is also very important. It affects our security. When you leave, please stop by Han and tell him I wish to see him. There is something going on, isn't it? Kuratsuchi asked in a stern tone. Ghosts of the past Anoki said. I will explain it to you once you return. With the information you will receive, there should be something to talk about. Otogekure. As the days pile up, his master was getting worse. He was coughing blood and now they had bandaged most of his body. He kept in his room. It was almost pitiable. His once active and flexible master had been turned into something, human. Something so fragile. Orochimaru was strong. He was powerful. Kabuto knew it better than anyone. He was the best of the Sanins, but now he had been reduced to a fit of coughs, a pained man who couldn't do things himself. It was a spectacular fall. But Kabuto knew. His master would rise up once more. Once he took Sasuke's body, he would be unstoppable. He would become the master that Kabuto had come to respect. For now, he could only watch the pain of his master. He couldn't do anything against it. He entered Orochimaru's room carrying the now customary tray. Orochimaru was sweating badly. A normal person couldn't tolerate the pain. But he was going through it. Your situation is getting worse, Orochimaru Sama Kabuto said. The body had given away far quicker than both had anticipated. At this point, we will have to move things ahead. There is no need to hurry, Kabuto Orochimaru said with a shake of his head. There is something that can cure this, but it is a temporary fix. You have to leave here to get it. Kabuto raised an eyebrow. Orochimaru trusted him with all his experiments and he did conduct some research for the man at times, but this was the first he was hearing about it. Should I leave everything you'll need? Yes, Orochimaru said. Behind my throne, there are three scrolls. Take the smaller one. It has everything you'll need. Hi. How is Naruto Kuenei training progressing so far? Ah yes, the mysterious blonde who was being trained by his former teammate. Smoothly but there is still a lot I don't know. He is still traveling with Jiraiya-sama so their movements and activities are always covered Kabuto said. 
I said we should keep his strength as a secret from Sasuke Kuen, but when you come back, we shall go out on a hunt. You're thinking of using him to try to awaken Sasuke's Mangekyo? Orochimaru nodded. He didn't want to admit it, but it was unlikely for him to unlock it. He needed Sasuke to do it for him. Naruto Kuen hates Saki now, but they were still friends. Sasuke might be able to awaken the Mangekyo after killing him if it doesn't work out, it will be a good workout to test his strength. Will Jiraiya-sama allow them to fight? Orochimaru grinned. You should know they are not always together we will wait for that moment. Tenzaku Gai. The conversation was going to come at any moment. Naruto had been counting the stars, waiting for Jiraiya to finally say the words he has been meaning to say. Itachi's appearance should have given him the energy. There were a lot of things that the Sanin has been refusing to say. Perhaps he was enjoying the moment and didn't want to ruin it by saying something that would displease him. For a man who thought himself as a failure, that was one reasonable thought Naruto came up with. Well, they have been on this journey for a while and he had known it would come up. He wasn't dreading the subject. He could take it on without flinching or being all dramatic. He was normal regardless of the subject being discussed. It was perhaps something he learned from that old man. Thinking of Hiruzen, Naruto couldn't help but play a couple of memories from the past. The good days. The whole of Kanoha was against him. Academy teachers didn't want to teach him. They made sure to screw things up for him. It was a miserable existence, but Naruto had lived through it. He had endured because that old man was there for him the Kyubi's Jinchuriki. What did Itachi say to you, Naruto? Jiraiya finally asked. His eyes never left the blonde, they were stern. He wasn't going to back down if Naruto said he didn't want to talk about it. He was done being careful. Naruto glanced at Jiraiya from the window. The air was flowing nicely. He could use some warm-up once he is done with the perverted Sanin. He had questions. About Sasuke and Yuzu. It was a curious encounter. Why would a criminal be curious about my thoughts if Yuzu approached me? Jiraiya's eyes narrowed sharply. It was a curious thing. But then again, Itachi's actions have always been strange. Jiraiya couldn't understand what motivated the man. He couldn't figure him out. But then again, when he walked in a room, the Uchiha jumped out through the back window. They could never meet but he was really looking forward to that meeting. That is indeed curious Jiraiya said in thought. What did he say when you asked? Said his time was up Naruto said with indifference. I was interested in his answer though. The way he asked didn't exactly sound like man corrupted by power. Then again, you can never be sure about appearances when it comes to the Uchiha the blonde finished calmly. What if he is working with Yuzu? Jiraiya said. Itachi has an affiliation with the Akatsuki but I don't know anything about it. I'm merely speculating but it could make sense if he was asking on their behalf. Jiraiya thought there was a chance that Yuzu recruited rogue shinobi to protect itself. There couldn't be powerful shinobi in the village so, they had to be thinking about hiring shinobi who can protect them. He could be wrong. There wasn't that rumor out of things that reached the wave country. Well, he is a powerful shinobi but again, you still question his motive Naruto said. Jiraiya nodded. What did he say about, Sasuke? Strange Naruto said. He asked if I was still willing to fight for him, to try to bring him back to the good side. I was given the impression that maybe he doesn't actually hate his younger brother. From what I hear, Itachi loved his younger brother. It could be that he left him alive because he just could not kill him Jiraiya offered. But that still does leave the door open to many questions. And zero answers Naruto added. Jiraiya grunted in response. That is true he paused before asking. What did you say about Sasuke? Are you still willing to try to get him back to the hidden leaf? Why? Naruto said. That is the response I gave Itachi and I am giving it to you, Sensei. Naruto said, there was still no change in emotion. His voice never faltered. He was neither cold nor hot. This lack of emotion frustrated Jiraiya. Not because he expected the blonde to throw a fit. Naruto never did that. He was reserved and controlled. But this indifferent response meant he couldn't read him and that is what frustrated him. 
He was your friend Naruto. You cannot erase the past you shared with you. Regardless of what happens, the Sasuke you shared a past with will always be there. Jiraiya said in a stern tone. Regardless of what happens, Sasuke is a former Hidden Leaf shinobi and the people there still want him back. If you are ordered to bring him back, would you say why? When a shinobi is given a scroll and told to deliver it, does he ask why and what is in the scroll? Jiraiya frowned. Although Naruto wasn't looking at the San Nin, he could tell he was frowning. Exactly, Jiraiya. I would carry out my duty. Itachi was asking for my thoughts on the matter. If it was my choice, what would I do? You didn't answer his question and you didn't answer mine. Your responses have been with questions. Jiraiya said. I gave you a reason, he was your colleague, now, you can either choose to ignore it or accept it. I have no attachment to the Uchiha Naruto responded. Honestly, his attachments to the people in Konoha were fragile. He never got too close because he knew it was a fleeting moment. I have not really thought of him since he departed Sensei at this point, Sasuke is irrelevant to my training and my future. Regardless of how you look at it, those words were just cold. Then again, how many years did he spend chasing after Orochimaru did he succeed? Of course not. I really hope I don't become irrelevant. Naruto glanced at the Sanin for a moment before shaking his head. You can be miserable at times he said. But it is a fact, Sasuke and I were friends. It wasn't what he wanted. He played the role of a mere genin all too well. He ended up getting attached. It wasn't supposed to happen. But he got closer. It was his mistake. You really couldn't fully predict the human emotion. He wasn't sad things ended up in the way did. That was why he wasn't moping. Perhaps people thought he had been miserable after Sasuke left yes he was but not for the reasons they had in mind. What of Kanoha? You've never talked about it. There isn't really nothing much to tell or talk about. That aside, I really didn't want to focus on the leaf. I just wanted to get my head straight into training and forget about Kanoha. It doesn't work like that, Naruto. Kanoha is home you have to think about it. Perhaps but we are still going back. The village isn't under attack, I never felt like talking about it Naruto said carelessly. What are you worried about, Sensei? Are you thinking that if the Uzumaki come knocking I will drop Kanoha off the bat without blinking? Jiraiya wasn't that concerned about it but to say he didn't think about it would be an outright lie. Naruto would have every reason to depart the leaf and honestly, Jiraiya would not blame him if he decided to leave Kanoha hadn't done him any favors. Minato would be disappointed. The leaf was supposed to be home, but it certainly hadn't treated him like it had been his home and that was because he was the host of the Kyubi. Yuzu was still Naruto's home. His mother came from the land. If he wanted to go back, there shouldn't be complaints. But Kanoha would not let him leave they would allow it. There was a sense that the blonde belonged to them. The Kyubi was their property. Jiraiya sighed. Don't say it like that, Naruto he said calmly. I understand but there are people in the Hidden Leaf who are asking questions. I'm a shinobi of Kanoha, it is only natural that I be concerned. Naruto didn't offer an immediate response. A couple of moments passed before he spoke. Well, you still don't know if Yuzu is an ally or an enemy. There should be concern there he said. Everyone is worried about that Jiraiya said with a nod. Tsunade wants us to be on the lookout for Sasuke. If I get information about his whereabouts, we will move. Any time now, Orochimaru might take over his body. Well that is what he wants he is willing to sell his soul to the devil Naruto said without emotion. But Sasuke is an emotionally unstable spoiled child. I guess it can't be helped. So you won't have a problem. Naruto shook his head. Not at all a mission is a mission and we can't have Orochimaru becoming powerful it would become a problem he said. When do we move? I'm still waiting for some information Jiraiya said. He was silent for a couple of moments before speaking. I feel that there is a storm that is coming. It is making me nervous. This world might become unstable and the peace might be threatened. Naruto wasn't all that deep into the talk of peace. Jiraiya surely loved the subject and Naruto had indulged the Sanin on a couple of times. 
well, we must be prepared for everything. In this world, you never know what is going to happen tomorrow. This is why we must always be prepared for anything. To this, Jiraiya nodded. I'm going to see one of my contacts the Sanin said standing up. You want to come? Naruto shook his head. I have had enough activities for the day. I wish to stay and I will go out tomorrow to stretch some muscles. Jiraiya nodded and walked away from the room. With the Sanin gone, Naruto released a long breath he'd been holding. Silence. Peace. The Solitude. Finally. Chapter 4. Naruto was sitting on a clear field, just away from Tenzaku. He had an expressionless mask on his face, staring down at a couple of lines he'd drawn on the ground. Sometimes he liked to keep up with sealing. He didn't need any more training. Manuals. Many seal structures and what they did, they were memorized inside his head. The Sandain Hokage had made sure his mind was a field of seals. Sometimes it made him crazy. Sometimes whenever he closed his eyes, he could only see the marks, the tattoos. They were complex and he'd obsessed trying to untangle them. At least spending hours each day just thinking about seals had driven away the demons, the laughter inside his head the whispers from the villagers those eyes that glared at him with nothing more than contempt. He'd forgotten about them. Even when teachers at the academy refused to give him anything good and actively tried to sabotage his grades, Naruto had found comfort in Fuenjutsu. His legacy. His savior. Because of the role he has had to play as a shinobi of the Hidden Leaf, Naruto had been forced to forget about Fuenjutsu practicing it and using it. But he didn't want to lose his touch. Yet, having a paper and a brush would earn him questions from Jiraiya. It was a dangerous situation. He avoided dangerous by abstaining from things whenever possible. But since the man had brought up the subject, it was safe to study. Space-time ninjutsu, a rather delicate art. It was complex, yet very useful. Perhaps he would have never gotten this far without it, to be able to move from one place to another in the blink of an eye. It was a tremendous ability. His father had truly made himself famous by taking the Naidame Hokage's jutsu into another level. People praised Minato for his genius, but Toborama was the true genius. He created so many jutsu some now forbidden in the hidden leaf. A kunai flew towards him from behind Naruto tilted his head to the left while raising his hand. He caught the kunai through his fingers and looked at it for a moment. Without even looking, he flung it backwards before stood up. It almost never happened that he found himself a target of an attack by someone. Naruto hasn't gone around pissing off people within the elemental nations and his actions since he saw the result of Yuzu's destruction have always been subtle. He never got too involved. His hands were free. It wasn't to say they had no blood in them. He was a shinobi. That was bound to happen. Because there were few people who'd have something against him, Naruto concluded that this was Kanoha's mischievous people. He wasn't too sure, so he would have to ask. He doubted they would talk, but he would still ask. There was no harm in asking, was there? Naruto looked at the four masked men with an expressionless mask. He was being disturbed from his training. He generally didn't like it because now he would have to go again in reorganizing his thoughts. One of them lunged towards him having spared with Jiraiya for countless times, Naruto could see the masked shinobi coming all the way. He felt bored. But he could still use this as a training session. He hasn't had one where bones could be broken. He could do this. But they would still have to pay disturbing his time. The masked man stabbed a kunai towards his face. Naruto side stepped the strike and twisted around swiftly. He lifted his right hand and slapped the man on his shoulder, sending him off balance. You're slow you need to increase your speed. He stated calmly. The man responded by twisted clockwise, while lifting his right foot. Naruto watched the incoming attack. If he stood still, he would be hit on his shoulder. He jumped back, slightly, avoiding the kick. Only his left foot touched down the ground. He'd sense more movements. A second after touching the ground, another masked man, flashed just above him, he swung his sword in a downward slash that was aimed at his right shoulder. Naruto leapt into the air, and twisted around. He slammed his foot on the man's shoulder, sending him flying away. 
He then landed gracefully. Katan, great fireball. The fireball was coming in from behind. It was a pathetic excuse for a fireball. Naruto had seen something bigger from Jiraiya. Hell, even Sasuke did better than this. Almost lazily, swiped his right hand and then snapped his fingers. The flames just died down in the blink of an eye. You're all not very strong. It is quite pathetic really for shinobi who wear masks Naruto said with a shake of his head. Come on, let me end this he said motioning for them to come. Perhaps he was being too rough of them. He has been training with Jiraiya and he wasn't exactly weak. He was strong. Even so, it was quite disturbing to learn that they could not even touch him. He should have just broken them at first glance. When they didn't attack him, Naruto took out kanais from his pouch. He held them all with just his left hand and then flung them towards the masked men while charging forward. The man he was facing dodged the kanai by tilting his head to the side. When he saw Naruto coming, he threw a right hook, but slowed down, falling backwards slowly and watched the punch with both his eyes. He held out his right hand and channeled wind chakra, forming an invisible blade. He swung it and cut through the man's elbow, separating his arm from his shoulder. There wasn't even a sound from the man when the sword struck. When the man attempted to run away, Naruto took out a kanai, channeled wind chakra through it and flung it. The kanai pierced through the man from the back of his neck and went through his throat before dropping dead. Naruto fell on his back when he saw another masked man stomping downwards. He rolled to the side just once to avoid the blow. When the man's foot crashed into the ground, Naruto's right hand moved swiftly with his wind blade still activated. The blade cut through the man's left leg, just above his knee. He stood up and another swing cut through the right shoulder and blood gushed out as the man fell down. Two more to go. They both charged towards him, Naruto stood still and waited for what felt like eternity. They flanked both his sides, swinging their blades in horizontal slashes. The swings cut Naruto but he turned into a cloud of smoke. Naruto flashed behind the man who'd attacked him from the left, he grabbed him by the back of his neck and pushed him towards his colleague. He shifted to the right when the other man pierced through his comrade's gut in order to get him. Naruto did the same, but his strike was marked towards the man's heart. It just pierced through and he dropped dead. Naruto twisted the man he held and lifted him up into the air. Foundation he uttered. I find it convenient that after Itachi leaves, you guys appear. Is Itachi in contact with Danzo? Did he threaten your master with intel? Are they working together? He shook his head. The man said nothing. Can't talk Naruto said. I really don't have the time to torture you. Take the pieces of your colleagues and go away. Do tell Danzo that I wish he not do this again. Naruto dropped the man to the ground and walked towards where he had been sitting. He stood there for a moment before shaking his head and then settled down. What was he busy with, again? Ah, yes space-time ninjutsu. The jutsu he had in his position wasn't anything like what the Nidane created. His jutsu wasn't for battle. It was purely made for traveling long distances. He still burned a lot of chakra using it, and he needed to find a way to do it without burning as much chakra as he does when he uses it. He couldn't test anything now because ever since he became a genin of the hidden leaf, he deactivated all seals he was attached to. He was playing a role. To be able to work on it, he would need to activate the seals. He couldn't do that now. It was dangerous and would attract too many questions. Naruto shook his head and rubbed away all the drawings on the ground. He closed his eyes and decided to meditate. After an hour or so, his eyes snapped open as Jiraiya walked into the field in a leisurely pace. Something happened here the toad sage said calmly. His eyes glanced around before looking back at Naruto. Your timing sucks, Sensei Naruto said. I was still busy do you also come early? It took a moment for Jiraiya to understand the meaning of Naruto's words. When he did, he grinned. I knew you were no innocent. You act like you have no interest in women, but you are not so innocent. I never claimed I was innocent, pervert San I just have my days. I don't know what is with you. Maybe you are trying too hard to be loved because someone refused to love you or because you really are just a pervert Naruto shook his head. 
Either way, you shouldn't read too much into my actions. For me, it really has to do with convenience most of the time than desire. I'm surprised you even have desires Jiraiya said. You generally don't show any desire in anything aside from training. Even so, you are never too excited. Naruto shrugged. Everyone has a desire sensei. Everyone dreams of something. I have dreams I just choose not to make them public. What are those dreams? Naruto appeared to be thinking about a response for a couple of moments but he didn't respond to the Sanin's question. Something did happen masked men attacked I think they might be from Kanoha. Jiraiya's eyes narrowed sharply. Can you describe the masks? And Naruto did so. The Toad Sage frowned. They are indeed from Kanoha what do you know about the Danzo? The Sandame's former teammate and someone who considered himself to be his rival but still could never hold a candle to the Sandame. He warned me, if someone called Danzo approaches you, come to me immediately and don't talk to him Naruto said. I trusted the old man so I never asked too many questions. Danzo leads an organization called the Foundation. He has done many experiments with it and they are basically the dark horses of Kanoha. Danzo says they live to protect Kanoha and will do the dirty work that the Hokage cannot do. He has his own agenda of course. But Sensei always thought he was useful and never got rid of him. When you were younger, he fought. He pushed and pushed for you to be given to him so that you could be trained as a weapon that would only live to serve Kanoha. You see, Danzo teaches his forces to abandon all emotions. They are nothing but tools. The mission is important than their lives. Naruto looked into the sky for a moment before responding. This power within me does attract all kinds of vultures, doesn't it? Well, the Kyubi is still the strongest bijou and control over its power means you have a powerful weapon Jiraiya said. It has an unlimited supply of chakra. That was an overstatement, as long as the Kyubi was a living thing, it could not have an unlimited supply of chakra. If it was a force of nature, then he could understand. The fact was that by human standards, a biju's chakra supply was enormous. You didn't have any human who could rival it in terms of pure chakra, this is the reason people even hunted them in the first place for their chakra. It was like that in this world, if you had too much power, you either joined them or you faced destruction a corrupted world. But those with power controlled it and the weak could only complain about in their dark little corner of misery. Power power that is something people desire. Some will do everything for it kill, betray, sell their souls. Power is everything or at least fools think Naruto said with a shake of his head. I was being tested. Probably Jiraiya said. Did you give them a good spanking? Naruto shook his head. No he said. Are you going to warn the old hag? Can you stop calling her that? Naruto stared for a moment before shaking his head. When we arrive in Kanoha, I will sweep her off her feet and call her princess, will that make you happy? Jiraiya painted the thought on his head, and tried to imagine just how Tsunade would react to it. Try it he said with a grin. You're being mischievous Naruto said. Then? Of course I have to warn her the Sanin said. Danzo is dangerous and bad news. I will step on his neck if he is trying something. There had to be a reason the man was making a move now. It could not be that he was simply trying to examine if Naruto was learning something new or not. There was always something with the war hawk. Jiraiya really didn't like dealing with that extremist. It was never good for anyone. I guess he is also the dark force Suna was concerned about Naruto said in thought. You didn't say anything about that Jiraiya said to Naruto. You never said Suna was worried about something happening in Kanoha. I didn't. Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. It must have slipped my mind because it was something that occurred when I was coming back. But if Princess Tsunade is doing things, there shouldn't be anything to worry about unless Danzo taps into the village's council soon as council I mean. I don't think he'd go that far Jiraiya said. He could just plan for something to happen to Tamari and then blame it or any other village. That sounds like work. Danzo is work. Jiraiya said in a firm tone. In the Third Shinobi World War, he was pushing for Kanoha to pin IWA down and maybe take over. The village was willing to talk at that point but he didn't want it. He wanted IWA destroyed. 
I wouldn't be surprised if he even tried to sabotage them the Sanmin paused. I thought you'd show some concern for Tamari. Naruto eyed the Sanmin very carefully for a moment before shrugging. Tamari, the blonde sister of the Kazakage he'd come to know. She was truly a delightful person and to say he got along with her wouldn't be a lie. Still, Naruto wasn't going to stress over it. Perhaps I have to believe that the people in Kanoha are not ignorant of this and Suna seems to be aware, so it should be fine Naruto said. Jiraiya shook his head, what did he expect? Did he expect Naruto to cry over it and think of rushing over to the blonde side? At this time, Jiraiya even considered if Naruto was even really mad that Sasuke tried to kill him. He wondered if the blonde was just perhaps mad that he allowed himself to get close when he had grown up distrusting people. Guess what? Jiraiya said, trying to change the subject. Guess what? Naruto responded. Jiraiya frowned positive he wasn't going to like Naruto's game. What? He forced himself to say. I don't want to play. That Suchikage's granddaughter is within the town, you have to go to her and speak with her. The toad sage in a serious tone, ignoring Naruto. More schemes by Jiraiya when it came to collecting information and data, the Sanin really went all out. But Naruto was certain that Jiraiya wouldn't have come to him if he could do it himself. Naruto really never bothered himself with Jiraiya's services of gathering intel. He always made sure to keep a safe distance. Why can't you speak to her? Obviously you want to find something about her and Iwagakure Naruto said. Jiraiya nodded his head before smiling. Well, I don't want to go anywhere close to her. You know young girls sometimes don't like older and experienced men crawling up close to them he said. Besides, it will be more interesting with you speaking to her. Ah, uh, Minato wasn't a famous person in Iwagakure they held a grudge for his actions in war but that should be over now don't you think? Jiraiya nodded. They won't have anything against you but when you keep your hair long like that, you turning into him the Sanmin said with a slight shake of his head. The outside world never knew of Kanoha's Jinchuriki, and I don't think even now they know. But there were things happening and we need to know what is happening. I doubt I will get much from just speaking to her and you are obviously aware of this Naruto said with a stare. Are you trying to fix me up with her? Jiraiya merely grinned, what would be the problem if I was? I don't find it amusing. Naruto said. What is she doing here? Well, you see one of my contacts is an IWA spy she is here to meet him Jiraiya said, he seemed really pleased with himself. After meeting him, she will leave the town, so you have to speak to her today. I don't want to miss an opportunity. More like you don't want me to miss an opportunity Naruto said. Are you sure my performance is that interesting? Jiraiya nodded. I'll be watching. Don't Naruto said. I will be uncomfortable knowing that a perverted hermit is busy giggling with his notebook while dreaming about a potential pairing and harems you'll create for me. That wouldn't be a bad idea, you know Jiraiya said in thought. I won't watch but I still want a detailed report. Since when have I given you a detailed report? Jiraiya frowned. You will have to stop doing that the Sanmin said sternly. We shall see Naruto said as he stood up. When are we leaving? We have to wait for Kakashi he is coming here with something from Tsunade. After that, we'll disappear. Jiraiya explained lightly. What were you working on? Before I came here, I first stopped by somewhere to fetch my armor. I was preparing things and I want formalize myself with it. In our next sparring session, I will be wearing it. About two hours later. Kuratsuchi the granddaughter to the Tsuchikage a young black-haired woman who was obviously very attractive. She was obviously a very capable kunoichi, if given the way she carried herself meant anything. Then again, she was related to the current leader and was thought to be on the front seat to replace Anoki once he does retire from his position. The old man was currently the oldest kage alive and active. The Sandame had made him learn everything about the kages and their power a bit of history about them. Information was always essential before you made a move. Naruto was certain though none of the current kages could be compared to Hiruzen in terms of strength. In his prime, the Sandame had no one to rival him. It did make Naruto wonder just how the old man who stack up if he was pitted against the first Hokage or the second. Shaking his head Naruto reminded himself of where he was in a bar. Shinobi liked this place. 
not for the drinks or the pleasures, but exchange for information. It was a good place to overhear conversations, to accidentally bump into certain people. Or maybe to poison someone. Such places existed in another world, far away from the normal things that occurred in the streets. Naruto picked up his bottles and walked over to the Kuratsuchi she was sitting alone by a corner. She was obviously looking for someone. She didn't show it, but Naruto had observed people around this place that he could tell what they wanted judging by their body language. Kuratsuchi looked up when the blonde walked up to her. She stared at him, seeing the headband on his forehead it was bit hidden by the wild blonde air, but it was Kanoha. She frowned. She wasn't looking forward to dealing with Leaf Shinobi. Not now, not at a place like this. But this was the Fire Nation, Leaf Shinobi were everywhere, so it could not be avoided. When did she last summon a picture of such blonde hair and blue eyes? Oh yes, the Yandame Hokage a very famous man. Kanoha worshipped the man while IWA was a little bitter that one man had forced them into the negotiating table during the last war. She was well aware that if not for the Sandame Hokage, the man would have done more damage than he did. At least that was what her grandfather told her. She didn't see it. She hadn't been born into the world, so the fame of the Yandame was nothing but a story to her. You just didn't think of Kanoha's yellow flash, did you? Naruto asked in a light tone, a small smile on his lips. He was still standing. Kuratsuchi blinked. I just did she said with narrowed eyes. I bet people who have seen him will be thinking the same Naruto said with his smile. Can I join you? No Kuratsuchi quickly said. I won't take much of your time, Kuratsuchi. Naruto said, looking straight into her eyes. Oh, and I will tell you a little secret that not even Kanoha knows if you let me sit he said in a whisper, a sly smile in his lips. Kuratsuchi frowned. He knew her name. He came here because he knew her. Well, there was no harm in letting him sit with her. She was getting bored alone and was even thinking of leaving anyway. She still had the rest of the day and tomorrow. You can join me she said. What is the secret? Naruto settled gracefully. He noticed, although she had a bottle before her, she wasn't drinking it. Naruto Uzumaki, a shinobi from the hidden leaf he pointed at his forehead. Uzumaki? Kuratsuchi asked. She was immediately interested in listening to that person. She was surprised to see someone from that clan here. Not to mention, as a shinobi of the Hidden Leaf. There were issues with the land of Uzumaki, so seeing another one of them here was a good thing for her. Ah yes Uzumaki Naruto said with a smile. My mother was Uzumaki, born in Yuzu but because of the friendship with the Hidden Leaf, she moved there at a young age. Kuratsuchi nodded. Why did you decide to join me? You are a kunoichi of IWA and you are sitting here alone it gives you away Naruto said with indifference. Besides, you are a rather attractive woman. As a man, I can't ignore you. Kuratsuchi snorted. Easy pickings. Naruto laughed. Not at all, he said. Do you think I came for that? If you want easy pickings he said, turning around and pointed at a woman was drinking heavily, you go for that you don't approach a woman who isn't even drinking her alcohol and her defenses are as tight as a seal holding back a jinchuriki. Kuratsuchi stared for a moment. That is a funny way of describing someone's defenses she said. But if defenses are not up, scums walk all over you I don't have time for that. I would think so Naruto said. Do you just perhaps enjoy the challenge? Kuratsuchi asked. You could never be too sure when it came to shinobi. Some people were just suckers for punishment. She could never understand masochist. Naruto smiled mysteriously. Who knows? That smile, Kuratsuchi couldn't read it. She couldn't read a damn thing. She couldn't even read the blonde. It made her uncomfortable. What is the secret you wanted to tell me? Naruto smiled a bit sheepishly. Well, the truth is, I really didn't have any secret. I just wanted you to let me sit with you. He said. He would admit he lied with such a smile on his lips. She shook her head. So you are Uzumaki, any connections with Yuzushio Gakure? Naruto took one bottle and put it on his mouth, he took a couple of gulps before putting it the table. That hit the sweet spot he said smiling. 
What were you doing alone? People come here with boyfriends, friend to have fun I came to drink you are not drinking, and since this is far from home, we can rule out friends found love with a man far away from home. Naruto glanced around the place. Now which one could be your type? I figure he has to be strong, good looking, or do you perhaps like women? What? Kuratsuchi looked baffled. Naruto laughed. I'm just messing with you he said. I wanted to see your reaction but I am curious, do you have someone you love? What does that have to do with anything? I said you were an attractive woman. No. Naruto grinned. Would you like to be friends with me or maybe more than that? Even a friend is better. I don't know you, but I want to know you. Isn't that wonderful? I'm sure as that such a kid's granddaughter, you probably don't get a lot of friends and I'm sure, boys, are intimidated by you to even come close. The last one hit the spot but Kuratsuchi wasn't all that concerned with it. She didn't even spend her time thinking about such issues. There were more important issues in life. You must be thinking you don't have time for it because you have to think about your career but I must ask, wasn't it the same for your grandfather? It is especially worse with him since he lived in the times of war. He still made time for family. He had one of your parents and your parents had you. It is only natural for you to continue with the cycle. But that alone isn't enough, it is happiness that matters the most. You should ask your grandfather why he had a family in a time of war. Kuratsuchi was silent for a couple of moments. What do you know about happiness? You seem rather happy gulping down the alcohol. Naruto smiled a small sad smile. I'm a miserable person who wants to bring happiness in his life he said. What do you say to my offer for friendship? Shinobi want to benefit in everything I will tell you this I actually look a bit like Kanoha's yellow flash because I'm his son don't tell anyone about it it's a secret he said in a whisper. So, what do you say, don't you want to befriend someone like me? Given the history with IWA and the fact that you are Uzumaki, I'd rather kill you than befriend you. All the better become close to me and you decide whether I should be killed or befriended. You can do that easily while close to me. Kuratsuchi thought about it before smiling. That makes sense she said. You have deal. Naruto tilted his head aside. His stare made Kuratsuchi uncomfortable. Before she could ask, he spoke. You have a beautiful smile he said. You asked if I have any connection with Yuzu I can't answer it nor can I tell you if I can use my father's jutsu we will talk when we meet again. We are going to be friends, right? Kuratsuchi frowned. That was disappointing. She had been hoping that he would start singing like a bird because he was drinking. Wait, if she let him continue, drinking, wouldn't he end up getting drunk? He didn't seem like someone who was fearsome. But you could never know with Shinobi right? There was no harm in entertaining him for a bit longer to see if he would sing. So Kuratsuchi paused, trying to figure out what to say. I have said a couple of things about myself, you haven't, why don't you start? Or we can hit a battlefield if you think that is dull a sparring session could be good I hear some people understand each other better when they cross blades Naruto said with a shrug. You don't really believe that, do you? If you close your heart, no one will get to it by fighting you unless you really want them to do so. If you, Kuratsuchi, don't want to be a friend of mine, sparring with me will only change if you find my skills acceptable Naruto said. But I do believe a man and a woman can understand each other better when they do foreplay you get to know your sensitive areas, and maybe when you hit the good spot, some secrets slip out. You're pervert, aren't you? Naruto shook his head. I'm merely stating what I believe, he said. What is it going to be? Kuratsuchi would rather have him continue drinking so he gets drunk and start talking. I'll talk. Naruto nodded. But I have a rule he said. If you lie and I spot it, you take a drink he pushed a saucer towards her. It wouldn't be fun if I got drunk alone, now would it? Kuratsuchi frowned. She was going to get drunk. There was a reason she wasn't even drinking in the first place. But Naruto was already way ahead of her and if she doesn't admit that she is lying, how would he tell? Of course, she had no intentions of telling the whole truth. Fine. Oh, she regretted that choice. Later. Naruto was sitting by the window, looking over at the streets of the town. Nothing was ever like Kanoha. There was peace. There was freedom. 
Kanoha had restricted his movements with its contempt for him and really made things difficult. He could have left any time he wanted. Yuzu was his home it was the home of his mother. But it was dangerous. The people in Kanoha would have turned the world upside down looking for him. If they found out he was in Yuzu, they'd raise hell. People like Danzo would be at the forefront of the attacks. The man would be looking for his bijou the Kyubi. When it came to him, the only thing the man was interested in was the bijou. It didn't matter if Yuzu and Kanoha were technically still allies, Danzo would try to invade Yuzu. If he could not, he would entice the enemies of the whirlpools to do it for him. The war hawk was capable of doing something like that. Being here was safer. And as long as he gained strength, it was more than enough. There was not even a need to rush things. He was growing. He needed to grow. They needed to be careful, lest they suffer another tragedy. Your ability to remain still for hours still amazes me Jiraiya said. He was standing next to Naruto, eyes glancing between the blonde and the streets. I have been doing this since I was five Naruto said. When you do something repeatedly, it becomes natural for you to do it. Well not all things Jiraiya said with a sly smile. What did you to the Tsuchikage's granddaughter? Nothing. Were you threatened by someone? Jiraiya shook his head. No but she was drunk. Oh yes, we were playing a little game and she was a bit too confident in her ability to lie. Then again, I'd made her a little curious by telling her some things Naruto said with indifference. She is an excellent kunoichi. Even though intoxicated, she didn't say anything. I just helped her to her hotel. You don't sound like you got anything out of her. It wasn't my intention to get something out of her Naruto said. I just wanted to lay the foundation for future relations. I'm sure tomorrow or when she wakes up, she will be very pleased that I was a gentleman despite there being occasions she felt compelled to ask if I was a pervert. Jiraiya narrowed his eyes. Are you saying that you will see her again? Naturally Naruto said with a nod. Who knows, we might be friends. Can you try to be a little enthusiastic about that? Jiraiya said, seeing the indifference in Naruto's body language. Kakashi will arrive tomorrow. After he leaves, we will depart. Do everything you need to do by the end of the day because we leave tomorrow. There isn't much for me to do Naruto said. Some rest will do he said with a yawn. I think I will sleep for the rest of the day. My mind is a little tired and I don't want to be seen by Kuratsuchi. A year later, she'll look at me and think, oh, this is the guy who I got drunk with and then walked me to my place, and laid me on my bed. A bit of an embarrassing moment if she tries to think of what if. Your cruel Jiraiya said. She is going to be thinking about that the moment she wakes up. You didn't leave any letter, nothing, you just left. That brings curiosity and the desire sensei. Naruto said in a simple tone. When you passionately kiss a woman, and then leave her with a hand on her lips, thinking, wow. She will think about that kiss when she wakes up, when she kisses another man. Speaking like a corn artist you do that often. Naruto shrugged. You jealous that I can do that? Well, I could understand, I don't see any woman chasing after you, saying they want more. I haven't seen any woman chasing after you either. Nice touch, Naruto grunted. But you should be satisfied that we shall speak again, no? For better relations with Kanoha and IWA, that is suitable I bet the creepy geezers in dark corners would be thinking about a political marriage. Three months later. Jiraiya Dam Sensei Naruto couldn't understand the Sanmin at times. He really did like doing things at his own time and wouldn't allow anyone to interfere. He never really did like spending too much time at one place. They'd spent two months training together and the Sanmin then suddenly said he was going and would return soon. He never returned. He left him and never returned for a whole month and now a letter came, saying they would meet in the cloud so that Naruto could test himself against another Jinchuriki. Naruto hadn't been afraid of being alone, but that he had been warned, don't use the Kyubi's chakra while I am away, just continue learning using the fire element. Of course, Naruto hadn't listened to those demands. He had promised, but he didn't follow through with it. Jiraiya couldn't force him to do what he didn't want to do. Besides that, Naruto had seals in place in case he lost control once more. He was currently walking through the land of hot of water, 
coming all the way from the land of tea. It was a long journey but. Naruto's thoughts came to a halt as he sensed something, he immediately twisted around. A large snake was hissing loudly as it slithered towards him in speed. Naruto stood still, watching it with indifference. The snake didn't stop it continued to charge towards him. As it neared him, it lunged towards him, trying to smash him with its head. Naruto merely raised right hand, with its palm open. The snake slammed into the hand, coming to a complete halt. Naruto didn't move, not even a muscle. He might look a bit slim, but he had conditioned his body. He might not be in the standards of someone like Guy, but he could hold his own in terms of physical strength. Naruto ignored the hissing snake and looked up. Orochimaru he said seeing the snake Sanin, standing atop of the snake with a wide grin, hands folded across his chest. Naruto should be afraid of Orochimaru. There was no question that the Sanin was a powerful shinobi, and not someone who should be taken lightly. But Naruto wasn't afraid. He was merely curious. What did the snake want with him? He was getting guests these days. First it was Itachi and now it was this snake. It couldn't be any good if someone like Orochimaru had to come himself. Their last encounter hadn't been a good one. He had nearly died after facing Kabuto. Orochimaru looked at Naruto with interest. The blonde's hair had truly grown and a bit wild. But that interested him was the way he dressed, it was a bit like Madara, but the armor didn't have shoulder plates, and the blonde wore a crimson shirt, and with gloves that matched that color. You could hardly ignore the Uzumaki symbol on his chest and around the metal plates. You have taken quite the transformation, Naruto Kuen. Naruto shook his head. This has always been in design, Orochimaru there was just never an appropriate time to wear it. As you can see, it does draw some inspiration from a rather infamous Uchiha. The blonde explained lightly. Orochimaru laughed. I didn't take you for a history fan not to mention Uchiha. Naruto shrugged. But history is origins, Orochimaru. In some way or the other, our pasts are what shape our futures. I'm not a fan of the Uchiha but well, Madara had something I like about him. Oh. Orochimaru was immediately interested in what Naruto had to say. What is that? Nothing really, I was merely interested in your reaction Naruto said with indifference. I hear you love yourself some Uchiha the Sharingan to be precise. Well, to say, love, is corrupting the word. Let us just call it a perverse obsession. Kukukukukukukukuku. Orochimaru laughed hysterically at the response from Naruto. I get the feeling that you have always been like this, Naruto Kuen. Naruto raised an eyebrow, well, that would certainly be an interesting development. He said carelessly. Yes, and it does draw me closer to trying to study more about you. I'd always dismissed you but when we first met you seemed rather mysterious, and you never stood out but I'm beginning to think that was by design and dismissing you might have been an oversight on my behalf. Orochimaru actively searching what he can about him. Now that was a dangerous development. Naruto didn't want that but he couldn't tell the Sanin to stop. I'm certain I will have nightmares about this the blonde responded calmly. What can I do for you, Orochimaru? Don't be so hasty to end the conversation we were getting along just fine Orochimaru said with a laugh. You proudly wear the Uzumaki crest but yet don't have a connection with Yuzu that does set the mind racing. I'm sure the people in Kanoha will be on guard if they see you boldly wearing the symbol of the Uzumaki. Well I am Uzumaki and anyone who says I can't wear the symbol of my clan is just being ridiculous. I doubt Kanoha will even have a say about it when they also wear the symbol. Once more, Orochimaru laughed. So when are you going to Yuzu to be with your people? Who doesn't love their clan? If they invite me, I will surely be interested in seeing my fellow clansman Naruto said. I see, you brought your little pet project with you. I was praying that you'd have consumed him by now. He is still training Orochimaru said with a grin. You don't mind being a test subject do you? With that armor, you should be at least a good punching bag. Not to mention you have the QB with you. I want to see how my Sasuke has grown. Sasuke isn't worth me using the QB's power. He is just a little child with some mental problems. Well, you two suit each other well. You both have loose screws up in your heads. 
Perhaps Sasuke has been suffering from the mental effects of his brother's genjutsu Naruto said in a cold tone. I think I am beginning to like you Naruto. Naruto shook his head. I'm afraid I don't swing that way. Orochimaru frowned. The blonde was mentally strong, unlike Sasuke. But truly, he was proving to be an interesting subject. If he does manage to survive here, Orochimaru wouldn't mind taking him back to the hideout. Sasuke, you can come out. The Uchiha flashed behind Naruto. You have trained your dog well, Orochimaru. I didn't think that you could train it better like this. Kukukuku Orochimaru chuckled lightly. Sasuke Kuen is more than that. Oh, I am very much aware what he means to you, Orochimaru. Naruto said with indifference. Sasuke stared at Naruto with an expressionless mask. This person had made him jealous of his growth. But he was here. He had trained hard under Orochimaru. He had abandoned all emotions and focused on his training. He was confident that he could beat him even with the power of the Kyubi. This is rather interesting, isn't it, Naruto? Sasuke started in a calm tone, eyeing the blonde. He had yet to even activate his Sharingan. I guess you can say that Naruto said. You do mean the fact that last time we stood like this I was chasing after you and now you are the one who has run after me? Yes Sasuke said. Naruto shrugged. Well, I have never been the one good on chasing people. Admittedly, I don't really care what you do. Even if you strip down and bend down for Orochimaru to screw you, that isn't my problem. Naruto said indifferently. Nevertheless, Kanoha has ordered that you be returned before you carry Orochimaru's children. And as a shinobi of the leaf, I must follow those orders. Sasuke didn't like those words. It was insulting to think of what Naruto was saying. But in the end, he ignored those words. Let us hope that the armor isn't just for show and you can actually fight. And I hope that you actually learn something Naruto said. He clapped his hands together for a moment before, stretching his neck muscles. Come Uchiha. Show me if you can really dance. That is some tough talk from someone I beat you've never been able to beat me and there will be no change. In terms of arrogance, yes you will win Naruto said. Admittedly, you had more skills than I do your sponsors liked you because of those skills and not to mention the Sharingan. Sasuke smirked. So you do admit that I was better than you? Yes painfully so Naruto said calmly. I am not the one to fail to recognize someone's skills when they are better. But of course, that was the past. Are you saying you are better than me now? Sasuke asked with narrowed eyes. He always did feel superior but Naruto always had to undermine him. He always had to show that despite all his efforts, he could still get better. Sasuke had hated it. He had hated that someone without a bloodline could match him. Even when he was doing better, they'd always been a feeling that Naruto's wasn't really giving it his best. They'd always been a feeling that the blonde could do better than what he showed he could do. And that was always pissed him off. Naruto tilted his head to the side. Who knows? If you're still the same child who sees hatred whenever Itachi's name is mentioned, you can't defeat me. Sasuke glared. Sasuke Kuen Orochimaru called from the sides. Don't kill him. He could prove to be a very useful subject. Laughable Naruto said, but he didn't look the least amused. The arrogance in Orochimaru to assume that Sasuke could kill him, it was mystifying. Orochimaru, this arrogance of yours is the reason you actually believe that you could destroy the hidden leaf. What a miserable person you are. You lost the use of your hands in your arrogance and had to crawl to Tsunade looking for help please don't incite Sasuke to do something reckless I will gouge his eyes out. Have them crystallized and then put them on display in my throne room. Kukukukukuku. Orochimaru laughed. Big words, Naruto Kuen. I can see why Sensei replaced me with you, the snake grinned. Do it, Sasuke. A bit annoyed at being commanded like that, but Sasuke still dashed towards Naruto. The blonde didn't move but just watched him with sharpened eyes. Sasuke reached Naruto and unsheathed his sword he swung it across Naruto's chest in blinding speed. Naruto took a step backward slightly and watched as sparks flew with the blade running through his chest metal plate. 
he held out his right hand and summoned the sword of the thunder god from a storage seal on a plate around his waist. Seeing the sword, Sasuke encased his own sword with lightning and swung it towards Naruto. The sword clashed with Naruto's creating a huge spark of lightning. He attempted to push the blonde backwards but Naruto didn't budge. Not even an inch. Sasuke jumped back while flipping his sword to his sheath. The sound of birds chirping invaded his ears as he summoned lightning on his right hand. He pointed towards Naruto. Chidori Iso. A lightning spear spread through quickly towards Naruto. The blonde reacted instinctively by shifting his body to his left while positioning his sword to block the jutsu. It managed to graze through his right shoulder before Naruto pushed it away with his sword. Sasuke cancelled his jutsu and burst towards Naruto. He flipped several times as he neared and tried to slam his right foot above Naruto's head. The blonde took a step back to avoid the kick. Sasuke managed to flip once more and touch the ground with his hands, his body positioned upside down. He quickly bent his arms before going airborne. Katan Great Fireball No Jutsu Sasuke breathed in before exhaling a large fireball. The flame sped towards Naruto quickly. Sasuke was left puzzled when the flames suddenly disappeared into thin air as if they had just burnt out. When Naruto flashed in front of him while he was still in mid-air, Sasuke activated his fully matured Sharingan and saw the incoming punch directed at his chest. He quickly flipped, twisted above the blonde. He stretched out his hands and touched Naruto's shoulders before using them to propel himself further away. He twisted around in flash and tried to kick Naruto on the back of his head. Naruto held out his right hand and gathered wind around the tip of his middle finger. He gathered enough chakra for the Uchiha to even spot the chakra build up. Wind Bullet Sasuke still couldn't react swiftly to avoid the bullet that sped through in the blink of an eye and collided with his chest. There was so much force behind it and Sasuke felt the air leave him for a moment before he was sent flying backwards. He recovered quickly by flipping once before landing down. A second later, Naruto crashed in front of him, driving his fist towards his chest. Uchiha twisted anti-clockwise while unsheathing his sword. He did not swing it but rather raised his left leg and tried slamming his right foot on Naruto's gut the blonde caught his kick with his left hand. Sasuke smirked before swinging his sword in a slash aim just above Naruto's shoulders. The blonde reacted by leaping backwards and then did a sudden pull on the foot he'd caught. The sudden movements made him lose his balance and just sword just flashed past Naruto's face. Naruto pulled Sasuke towards him while still holding him. He slammed a brutal wind-enhanced punch on the Uchiha's chest. Sasuke felt something crack before spitting out blood. His whole upper body ached as Naruto did a quick twist before hitting him on the forehead with a powerful kick. Sasuke was sent flying backwards. He crashed into the ground and laid there for a couple of moments. He clutched his chest for a moment before getting up. He cursed as he saw Naruto jumping into the air before kicking a dark orb of flames towards him. His Sharingan could see the wind around the blonde's foot. The speed in which he kicked the ball was just ridiculous. More so the speed of the flames. Yet, Sasuke straightened his body and shifted to the right a bit. He felt intense flames burning his chest as the ball sped past him. It was only for less than a second and yet it managed to burn his shirt around his chest. Sasuke didn't get to thank his Sharingan when he felt the tremendous explosion of the flames and the heat it produced Naruto had appeared before him, stabbing his sword towards his chest. Sasuke managed to move his body a hit to avoid it but the lightning sword pierced through his shoulder. Naruto didn't step there he slammed a small Rasengan on Sasuke's chest, sending the Uchiha flying backwards. Shit, Sasuke mentally shouted after crashing. He was seriously hurting. At this point, Naruto was going to shatter his ribcage. He couldn't allow that to continue. His eyes widened slightly as sensed a heat wave coming towards him. Sasuke gritted his teeth before activating his level 2 cursed seal. The flames touched him and exploded into a massive cloud of flames. The Uchiha burst out of the flames with wings behind him. Seeing the Uchiha's form, Naruto shook his head. How unsightly he said. Then again, this is how far you are willing to go for power. I don't want to hear that from a Jinchuriki. Naruto shrugged indifferently. I didn't seal the Kyubi within me. 
he said. Doesn't matter Sasuke's wings flapped before he vanished from sight. He appeared behind Naruto and kicked the blonde on his back. Naruto flipped several times before twisting around. He landed gracefully. Sasuke was right above him, a chidori on his hand. Naruto summoned a Rasengan and slammed it toward Sasuke's jutsu. When the jutsus collided, there was an explosion of chakra and lightning. Seeing that he was being pushed back, Naruto jumped backwards to create some distance between him and the Uchiha. But Sasuke cut the distance in the blink of an eye. The Uchiha attempted to kick him straight on his face but Naruto crossed both his hands, and the kick hit the defense. Naruto's body slid through the ground considerably after being pushed back. Chidori Senban Sasuke fired multiple Senbans towards Naruto in quick succession. Naruto frowned before summoning his lightning sword. His hands blurred through the air as the sword collided with the Senbans but a couple hit him on his knees and left shoulder. While swinging his sword, Sasuke flashed below him. Chidori. The Uchiha slammed the jutsu on Naruto's gut. But the blonde suddenly burst into hundreds of sharp almost invisible wind blades that cut through Sasuke's hand although his elbow. Sasuke cursed feeling that some chakra points had been damaged. Naruto appeared on the Uchiha's left side with a wind blade on his right hand. The blade extended massively. The Emperor's Cutter. He swung it in a downward slash and it cut through Sasuke's wings. Sasuke cried out in pain as the stage 2 failed him. When he saw Naruto swinging his sword once more, in panic he released a jutsu. Chidori Nagashi Naruto didn't even wince when Sasuke discharged electrical currents that hit his body. It rendered him motionless for a moment and Sasuke used that chance to get away from Naruto. The Uchiha cursed inwardly as he breathed heavily. He wasn't going to lose this battle. He would not lose it. Stage 1 of the Cursed Seal was still active. He could still fight. Disappointing Sasuke, I expected better from you Naruto said with a shake of his head. Oh, right, three months ago, I was with Itachi he says, hi, but at this point, I will be the one to kill him before you do. It will be sweet, isn't it? If I take away your precious revenge away from you. Sasuke was angry. He was mad. He forgot about the pain and lunged towards Naruto but he was stopped from doing as a large snake appeared in the middle. We are leaving, Sasuke. Orochimaru hissed while standing atop of the snake's head. No the Uchiha said. I need to finish things with him. It is no longer possible Orochimaru hissed. Come on now. He almost shouted. Too late, a giant toad crashed into the scene. Jiraiya was standing atop of the toad. The legendary Jiraiya-sama has arrived. Kukukuku Orochimaru greeted his former teammate with a laugh. While I would like to play with you, Jiraiya, we were on our way. Oh. The toad sage grinned. Do you think I am going to let you escape? You just attacked my apprentice and I know why you are in a hurry to leave this is a good opportunity to take both of you to Kanoha. Some other time. Orochimaru said. Sasuke. He hissed and this time, the Uchiha listened. It was a pleasure, Naruto-kun. We shall speak soon perhaps next time I'll be the one entertaining you Orochimaru bowed mockingly. Explosions started to tear through the ground like a chain reaction. Massive amounts of flames and smoke covered the area for a couple of minutes. When everything cleared, Orochimaru was gone. Damn Jiraiya cursed. Got away again. Thanks Gamabunta we could have been late. The toad chief didn't respond to Jiraiya and turned towards Naruto. He had kept his eyes on him. Even when that explosion occurred, he hadn't moved. Not a muscle. He just stood there without even shielding his eyes. Yo Naruto said to the staring toad chief. I'm not bleeding, am I? No Gamabunta said. Jiraiya the toad said before disappearing in a puff of smoke. Jiraiya landed gracefully and checked Naruto for a moment. He wasn't completely surprised to see that Naruto looked perfectly fine despite this encounter. Sasuke had used the cursed seal but Naruto still didn't use the Kyuubi's chakra. There wasn't even a sign that jutsus had been thrown around the area. Well that was close, I am glad that he didn't want to fight we'd have been screwed. 
Naruto looked thoughtful for a moment before shaking his head. You're a clone he said. But I wasn't concerned about anything. Orochimaru would have taken me to one of his labs and molested me if I had lost nevertheless. Jiraiya shook his head. I'll be waiting for you in the cloud we'll talk about this I'm almost out of chakra. When Naruto stare, just do the obvious, book a place and I will find you. And if I hide? Jiraiya shrugged. You are going to wander through a bar one day I'll find you he then disappeared in a puff of smoke. Naruto shook his head and looked at himself for a moment. He dusted himself up and then frowned. He needed to clean himself up. But he wasn't that much of a mess. He started walking slowly towards the hidden cloud. He would need rest once he gets there this fight wasn't something he'd wanted to do. At least he'd managed to save Chakra and had Jiraiya not showed up, he would have been forced to use his ninjutsu arsenal to try to counter the threat the Uchiha posed in that form. Admittedly, he would have been in trouble. After walking for a couple of minutes, Naruto's movements came to a halt. He glanced on his left, Itachi was sitting on a tree branch, watching him carefully. Itachi, I thought you wouldn't show up he said. But you are a clone Naruto started walking away again. You reached out to me and you are going to walk away. Naruto stopped walking and glanced over to the Uchiha for a moment. He realized that Itachi he didn't have his Sharingan activated. But that wasn't the reason that made him turn over to the Uchiha. Naruto walked over and leaned against the tree trunk, folded his hands across his chest and then spoke. I am listening. Itachi started in a measured tone. You have truly improved but not surprising since you are being trained by Jiraiya. Why do you talk to me, Itachi? You are a shinobi of the Hidden Leaf was a teammate of my brother and you are Uzumaki Itachi explained. Those things matter, more so than you are willing to admit or to show. But I am here because I am connected to all three parties in some way. How connected how are you to Uzumaki, Itachi? Yuzu but I cannot get into those details. Perhaps I will never get to them with you. Itachi responded. Let us talk about your connection with my brother and Kanoha tell me, although you are Uzumaki, you are still a Kanoha shinobi should things come to a point in the near future that Sasuke tries to attack Kanoha, would you stop him? Do you no longer care that you are more than willing to kill him if it meant protecting Kanoha? Naruto glanced up for a moment before closing his eyes. That raises questions, Itachi. Why would Sasuke even try to destroy the hidden leaf? He left it to gain power. Sasuke is gullible and can easily be painted any color by anyone with the means. The fact that he left Kanoha to join Orochimaru is proof of this. Orochimaru tried to destroy Kanoha once and failed, if he has Sasuke and regains his strength, wouldn't he try to do it again? Unlikely but for argument's sake, let us say he does and Sasuke is with him why are you talking to me specifically? Because you were the only friend Sasuke was able to make. I realize that you are not going to try to talk Sasuke into returning to the leaf. You didn't say a word about it when fighting him. Naruto shook his head. Just because I didn't talk to him about it doesn't mean that if I'd broken both his legs and clipped his wings, I wouldn't have dragged him to the leaf. Despite my views about him, if the mission is to stop Sasuke by any means, I will do it. I see Itachi said silent for a couple of moments before speaking again. I am speaking to you because I want to understand you and your motives. You want to get stronger, but for what? You haven't shown any desire for anything but I know you are not completely without any desire. You have hopes, you want something but I don't know what it is. And that makes you nervous of the Uzumaki's revival? Naruto asked. But what is my connection to this? Yes, I do have dreams, but I am not the one to share them a public knowledge. Still, that doesn't answer the core question to your interest in my dreams and the potential connection to the Uzumaki. I am a rogue shinobi of Kanoha and wanted, but I don't want to consider you an enemy. However, I must know, where is your home, Naruto? Uzumaki is more than just clan politics, but it is home. It is the place where your mother was born is your home Kanoha or Yuzu? Itachi asked. You have always proudly worn the symbol of your clan and even now, you wear it. You are proud of being Uzumaki, which begs the question, why are you not in Yuzu? Whether we are enemies or not depends on my response to your question, Itachi. And although I do not wish to make an enemy out of you, 
I don't want to share anything with you. You are not my friend and your motives are unknown to me. You seem to concern yourself with where my loyalties lie, but how does that affect you in any way? Itachi was silent for a moment. He really hoped that he wasn't wrong. Naruto was more than someone who was ranked a genin by Konoha. Itachi was almost certain of this but there was no evidence, and Naruto wasn't going to admit it. Despite everything that has happened, I was a former shinobi of the Hidden Leaf and I do care for what happens in it. This is why I ask if you'd be willing to stop Sasuke and if you are loyal to Konoha. Sounds like Konoha's Dark Knight Naruto said with a shake of his head. As long as I am a shinobi of the Hidden Leaf, I will fight for it, I have already said this to you. And when you are not? Who knows? We are not at that time yet. Naruto said calmly. My life is simple. I have a simple way of doing things. I don't care about a lot of things. I'm not bound by hatred. But I am not a truly happy person. I do desire happiness, who doesn't? What of what Kanoha has done to you? Your life in Kanoha has been nothing short of misery I can understand why you'd be miserable. There has not really been any reason to be happy when Kanoha hasn't made it possible for you. I was wronged, but no one will admit that. Should I just forget it, Itachi? Should I say that yes, those people made him miserable, they treated me with nothing but contempt. I was mocked for being an orphan yet the very reason I became an orphan was that they could live. What would you feel? The Sandame used to say that I should work hard to prove to them to that I am not the Kyuubi but a hero. It was laughable. My parents sacrificed their lives, they sacrificed me I am okay with that. But to treat me with contempt, for the wrong reasons, to blame me to the deaths of your loved ones when you really did nothing but just an innocent child that, I cannot accept. They told their kids not to play with me they isolated me. I was a danger, for eleven years straight and I must work to show that I am good. I have nothing to prove. And I will not accept people who loathe my existence for years and to suddenly shift and smile while ignoring the things they did to me. To be forgiven, you must ask for it. You must work for it. There must be a balance. They were wrong, they must accept that. I was not wrong. I did not kill anyone. But I was used as a tool to stop the destruction, the killing, and yet, the hatred. Naruto said in an icy cold tone. Those are thoughts Itachi, am I wrong? Naruto's tone was cold, it made Itachi uncomfortable, but he could not sense a bit of hatred, but there was anger, yet it wasn't in Naruto's tone. He was unnerved by it. How do you say such words without expressing anger and hatred? One who becomes a Kage is one that is recognized by the people. The people are Konoha. Perhaps I would have told you the same thing the Sandame told you, to work hard to prove to Konoha that you are truly a hero, because if you really love Konoha, you would do that. People are emotional, they will always overreact. There will be bad apples, and maybe sometimes it is the majority, but we cannot let that define what Konoha is. You sound like someone who does love their village and that is okay. I have nothing against that, you have to love someone, but my question isn't about the love for Konoha. Before we get to that, we must talk about what is right and wrong. If we simply brush aside that, we become fundamentally flawed. Naruto said. There is the truth, right and wrong. I do not love blindingly. If something is corrupt and you love it, you will try to correct, but there will be limits. If Sasuke cannot be saved and attacks Konoha, he must be killed. That is what you are saying. But why must he be killed? If Konoha's Kage suddenly decides to invade another village for the simple reason of expansion, do you support it, or do you do the right thing and kill the Kage? Those are my thoughts, Itachi. You decide what you think. Naruto said in a firm tone. In the meantime, you have your issues to deal with. When I am in Tenzaku, we shall speak again. How were you even able to keep tabs on me? Naruto merely smiled. You have your secrets, I have mine perhaps in our next conversation, we shall share. Chapter 5 Otogekure It didn't often happen that Orochimaru would end up being disappointed having assured himself of success but truly when things did go left, it really did sting. The last time his sensei had truly done him a number. Taking away his hands had been a rather sinister move. 
he had cursed his sensei but he couldn't be mad forever. This time around, it had been Naruto. But the blonde hadn't been in the way. In fact, Orochimaru was happy things turned out the way they are. It wasn't what he had gone expecting but he was fine with it. He had something else to look at now and it was certainly something very interesting. Naruto had not only managed to hold his own against Sasuke but he had managed to deal some damage that forced the Uchiha to utilize the cursed seal. It had been unexpected but nothing to be too shocked about. He was going to be grounded once more. He had avoided fighting Jiraiya because it wouldn't have been healthy for him. Orochimaru glanced at the brooding Uchiha for a moment before laughing. It was a bit gleeful. Both he and Sasuke had been confident that the latter would win against Naruto but it hadn't been going according to plan. Sasuke did not lose. The battle hadn't ended yet. Maybe Sasuke would have won, maybe he would have lost, they couldn't be certain about anything. But to Sasuke, it felt like loss. Orochimaru wasn't that concerned by the Uchiha's wounded pride. There were more important matters to deal with. Are you that afraid of Jiraiya? You can ask him, Sasuke Kuen, but Jiraiya knows out of the three Sanins, I have always been the strongest. None of us have surpassed our sensei, but I was strongest, Orochimaru said. Admittedly, the condition of my body doesn't allow me to match him. I'm afraid fighting him would result in more severe consequences for me. Sasuke snorted. I came to you for power, Orochimaru, but you have not given me what I want if I could still struggle against Naruto. If I can't defeat him, I can't defeat Itachi. I can only push you so far, Sasuke Kuen Orochimaru responded calmly. There are some things that you cannot be taught. You need to look at where you have failed. Power I have given you. You depended on my cursed seal to defeat Naruto the last time and this time around, you still used it. He was using the power of the Kyubi last time. Yes, frightening power but Naruto has no bloodline and still this time around, he didn't use the chakra of the Kyubi Orochimaru pointed out, a little amused by Sasuke's glares. At this point, he was going to end up taking Sasuke's body even when he wasn't ripe. You are the one who has failed. If you cannot improve me, there will be no reason for me to stay with you, Orochimaru after saying that, Sasuke stomped away from Orochimaru. Kabuto looked at the retreating Uchiha for a moment before turning to his master. He looks like he has taken quite the knock. Orochimaru shrugged carelessly. Sasuke has grown strong but he fails to control his emotions when Itachi is mentioned. Unable to control himself, he doesn't act rationally. Naruto didn't do anything impressive the Sanin looked thoughtful for a moment. But admittedly, he is truly better than expected. It could have gone either way. Well, Kabuto could understand why Sasuke would be displeased. Naruto's growth was the reason Sasuke had felt like he needed to get away to gain more power. Sasuke was strong, Kabuto could admit that much. But this was going to turn things back a bit. Are you going to have another try? Not at the moment Orochimaru said. He was grinning. You should have seen the way he handled himself. Even when I was there, he didn't blink. He just stared into my eyes and asked me what I wanted. He has a way with words. Should we increase our efforts on him? Orochimaru nodded. You need to work quickly. I don't know how this body will hold on. If we don't take Sasuke, I will have to find a new host. It is becoming troublesome since he is talking about leaving Orochimaru couldn't allow that to happen. If Sasuke left, he might never be able to get him back. To stop him from leaving, Orochimaru would be willing to take over even when the time wasn't right. There hadn't been this threat before, so it was never a consideration. I will get on it. And the other thing? It has been wiped clean of everything. There was dust, so I assume they did it some time ago Kabuto responded calmly. Well, it is safe to assume that there are possibly people who saw Yuzu's destruction and who know about its secret hideouts and possessions Orochimaru said. Even though the masked temple was in the outskirts of Kanoha, it wasn't something that everyone knew. Considering the things that were in there, it did make sense to keep its location hidden Kabuto said. How has Naruto been able to improve drastically in such a short time? There are two possibilities. It is either he has always been good but chose not show it or he has one big appetite for learning new things. He proudly wears the symbols of his clan, and yet even though it has revived, 
doesn't claim to have any desire to reunite with his clansmen, isn't that strange? Are you suggesting that Naruto has a connection with Yuzu? Yes Orochimaru said with a nod. We just have to discover what that connection is. Kumogakure. The hidden cloud, a power-hungry nation it once was. Perhaps it was still power-hungry. Had it not been for the Sandame's methods and the Hyuga's sacrifice, maybe Kanoha and the Leaf would have gone to war over something the village was truly guilty of doing. Ridiculous. In this world, right no longer mattered. Power was everything. The strong did as they pleased and the weak suffered. Maybe Kumogakure felt confident it could boss Kanoha because it had two Jinchurikis who are known for being the best in the shinobi world. Kumo's Jinchuriki knew how to control the power of their bijus and they stood out because of this. The beast inside of him had resisted plots and attacks from the hidden cloud. When none wanted to come near because the Kyubi was too powerful, Kumo was more than willing to send its shinobi on suicide missions. Power. Bijus, the right in this world. The cloud was rather lovely, and perhaps Jiraiya would be having the joys of his life. Kumo and Kanoha didn't have the best of relationships because of the past. Then again, none of the great nations were truly friends, there was always some bitter history between the nations. Wars haven't done any favors to the relationships of these villages. Naruto didn't dwell much on the scenery within the village, he walked around for a bit. He was mindful that he was being watched. Perhaps he had been watched too often that he could spot a pair of eyes staring at him even from across the seas. But he didn't mind it, he had metal plates around his body and looked like he'd been in battle. It was understandable for them to be curious. He found himself a good place to rent and rested for about two hours. It had been afternoon when he arrived in the land. Once up, Naruto went to the window and settled nicely for about two more hours while staring blankly into the streets. His little birdie friend appeared before him. Naruto let it rest on his hand before smiling. You've come a long way from home he said, walking over to the small table he'd requested. The bird nodded and flapped its wings a bit. It looked tired. Was it dangerous? Naruto asked, taking out the scroll it had. Five mountains of paperwork appeared in a puff of smoke. For a moment, Naruto stared at it before shaking his head. He looked at the bird and waited for its response. The bird nodded and showed him the inside of its right wing. It had a wound. People do try to attack the messenger birds. Naruto put his finger on its head, as if to pat it. Ask for a vacation when you get back home. I'm sure they'll grant you. He said with a smile before turning his attention to the paperwork. He glanced at the bird for a moment before speaking once more. You don't need to keep watch you can go on to rest I'll wake you up once I'm done. The bird nodded its head and gave him a look that clearly said, Thank you, master. Naruto just smiled and went to work. Darkness had already descended on the village by the time Naruto was done. It was time for scums to wake from their slumber. The night was full of many things. Many evil. But Naruto liked taking a stroll through the night. It had been safe in Kanoha to do so. The hateful glares were not there. There was nothing but a silent breeze that kissed his body with relaxants. With his armor off, Naruto was wearing dark clothes. They suited the night. He strolled around for a couple of minutes before finding his place. A bar. Entrance was never an issue with shinobi. This was a shinobi place. There were kumo headbands everywhere. Naruto felt like he was the only foreign person in the place. It didn't bother him. He just danced around the tables and sat by the counter on a stool. It was fully loaded. His usual place was occupied. A pity. For a moment he wondered if he should go tell those people that they were sitting on his spot, but he realized, it would make a scene. And he was far away from home. He didn't need to get kicked out. Since he was sitting by the bar, Naruto ordered one bottle but told the barman to keep them coming. He had paid already. There was no opening of a tab. He wasn't at Kanoha. For about an hour, Naruto drank alone. He was at peace. The noise around him was non-existent. He was lost in his thoughts but he never missed his drink. He continued drinking absent-mindedly. When his thoughts deserted him, Naruto started to look around. 
he saw two women sitting by themselves. They were not civilians. He could see their headbands, Kumo Kunoichi. Well, he could indulge himself just this once. When was the last time he felt compelled to approach people and dine in the pleasures of the body? Naruto ordered two more bottles and walked over to the women. He smiled charmingly. While he continued to say he would not win any beauty contests, Naruto knew he had a certain look about him. He would not compare himself to anyone. Ladies, can I join you? Naruto was already sitting even though he was asking. You are a bit far away from home and considering your drinking, you are not going to make it home soon. Naruto took a sip before responding. That is the intention well, unless you ladies decide to leave the table a bit early. The night is still young. The following day. Coming from somewhere. Jiraiya asked as Naruto walked into his room. Naruto frowned seeing the grin on Jiraiya's lips. He was willing to bet that Sanmin was thinking that he should have been there to watch. A sick perverted old geezer. He was going to die peeping one day. You don't exactly come from nowhere, now do you, sensei? You know what I mean. Jiraiya said. Naruto shrugged. I know what I mean but I don't like discussing my nights with you. I'd rather not permit my conquests to become part of your stories. You are no fun Jiraiya said. He then grinned again. So, who was she? Was she young or old? I can't tell if you like older women or young ladies your age. Girls my age are still napping and breastfeeding Naruto responded calmly as he walked over to the window. The morning is always rather unpleasant no matter how much you have. How much did you drink? A lot Naruto said. I approached two women who got drunk before I could. To even the score, I had to drink more. But some shinobi from Kyumo blocked my path and to avoid a battle, I had to back down. Went by a corner, drank some more before being approached by someone who seems to like young men. I knew it. Jiraiya exclaimed. You do like older women. Some of them but that there was no helping the situation there was rather difficult. And I really didn't want to come back here alone Naruto said. You would prefer being in bed with a stranger than someone you know Jiraiya said with a shake of his head. That is some way of doing things. Naruto wanted to remind the Sanmin that he got into bed with people who didn't he didn't love because the one person he has loved his whole life didn't love him in the same way he loved her. But he figured it would be a low blow. Jiraiya was okay, there was no reason to make him miserable, especially when he was here trying. Naruto wasn't that cold-hearted to ignore the man's efforts. How long have you been here? A day or two Jiraiya said with a shrug. How was fighting Sasuke? And Naruto said with a shrug. Nothing fancy. He is easy to mess with, so not that much of a problem. I would have been in trouble had you not come in around that time. The power of the cursed is something else. Not to mention Sasuke already has the Sharingan. I am fortunate his eyes are not like his brother's. I wouldn't have willingly fought him if there was a choice. Are you afraid of facing the Sharingan? Naruto shook his head. No it just makes me mad the ability to see the future, the ability to copy Jutsus and the ability to cast Jinjutsu upon you with just a look. If I fought against the Sharingan with the intention to kill, I wouldn't kill that person I'd just gouge out their eyes and leave them blind. Sometimes I think you'll be capable of cruel actions the Sanmin said with a shake of his head. Well, there was no helping the situation. I will have to make a report to Tsunade that you encountered him. If I had been there, we could have captured both. If I had used the Kyuubi's power, I could have captured both. Although he didn't want to show it, Orochimaru was weak. He wasn't the same person who appeared in the Chunin exams. Then I had been amazed by his power. Then, he looked like a normal person. But I would have still released six tails and brutalized him Naruto explained lightly. Being confident is good, but being overconfident will get you killed, Naruto. You're talking about the same situation in which you sent a clone to intervene, pervert sensei Naruto said with a stern look to the Sanmin. Why did you send a clone anyway? I was held up with the rakage and I wasn't sure Jiraiya said. I'm still glad you did well though. Did you have any doubt? Naruto asked the Sanmin. You have been sparring with me do you still doubt my strength? You can never be sure Jiraiya said. 
I didn't think he'd take this chance though. He was must have waiting for the right moment. We will have to be careful from now on. We can't have moments like this happening again. We might not be fortunate next time. Naruto said nothing but he could agree with the Sanin on that point. How was your talk with the Rakage? A bit unpleasant but nothing to worry about Jiraiya said before taking out a file. This is the Jinchuriki you are going to meet. I won't introduce her to you. Well, she might not like me since I may have done something without knowing. Anyway, she is around the village and you can see her any time you want. Keep it light, and she isn't a bad person. You should be able to get along with her. I refuse to take comfort in anything you say to me about women, Jiraiya-sensei Naruto said. I'll see her tomorrow we are not in a hurry, anyway. Kyumo hasn't been all that bad I could stay for than two weeks. We can't stay for too long Jiraiya said in a serious tone. We have some leads we must follow we are almost done with training so, it will be best if you start following me around when I gather intel we'll have to start thinking about going back to Kanoha. How long? A month or two Jiraiya said. Tsunade insists. I had asked her to give us a year, she sent a message, and she wants us to return. I managed to convince her that I needed you to learn a couple of things about my spy network so that you can be in a position to take over when I am not able. You have fine hope Sensei Naruto said. But he would disappoint. Yuzushi Ogakure. The Emperor's Compound, a traditionally built place at the heart of the village. It wasn't that big, but it was majestically built worthy of someone who calls himself the Emperor. Gyurin had been to the throne room a couple of times, but the throne was always empty. It was always cold. Each time she went there, she thought she'd finally meet the person who sits on the throne, but she'd not seen him, not once, not ever. Too many people have not seen him. She'd never come across anyone who says they have seen him in the streets. The village had a leader who led the village but it wasn't the emperor. The compound was usually quiet. People didn't go there. The old geezers went there at times to have their meetings. It was a place of secrets. The Uzumaki were secretive. It was almost an obsession perhaps filled with some paranoia. But Gyurin didn't criticize it. These people would do anything to protect the village. It was a fortress because of their methods. And anyone who found a loophole to enter the village never returned home, unless there was a message that had to be sent. The village itself was vibrant. The Uzumakis were not many, but they were the most energetic people you could find. The atmosphere was fine. Yukimaru enjoyed his time at the academy and she did her job as one of the higher-ups in the command chain. She had no complaints. Orochimaru couldn't hurt her from here. He couldn't touch Yukimaru. She was safe and that was what mattered to her. She had fun chasing after spies during night. Perhaps the sadistic nature in her would not completely go away despite being asked to control her urges. They didn't complain, so she kept at it. Gyurin San Haku greeted the woman who was standing by the entrance to the emperor's compound. It was dark in the streets. And she shouldn't be standing here. Are you nervous? Gyurin didn't nod. She glanced at the ice user she'd mistaken for a woman. A complicated past with this one but she'd never bothered to pry. They spoke well. Both had been recruited but when she came here, Haku was the one who welcomed her. He didn't act as the leader, but he was high up in the chain of command. Why would she be nervous? Yes, after being here so long, she'd been summoned to meet the emperor. Finally, she was going to meet the mysterious leader. The Uzumakis she'd met spoke well about him. A master of Fuinjutsu they said. A truly brilliant man. Maybe Gyurin said. I didn't think even you would be nervous. I mean you did work with Orochimaru Gyurin said. I'm curious here and when you get used to something, it hardly becomes a problem. You only realize its cruelty when it turns to you but when facing things you do not care for, you don't see it you actually enjoy the show. Haku shook his head. He could never understand this woman. She was strange and nothing like the Uzumakis. Then again, she'd been hired to do a job that demanded that you do dark things. A job he could never do but perhaps he might fight himself in the battlefield somewhere in the years to come. There is no need to worry he's not a bad person. Haku said with a smile. Best we not keep him waiting. 
he said walking over to the entrance. There was no one guarding but both he and Guren knew there was a barrier around this place. The moment they stepped into the compound's ground, their presence had already been known. Yuzu was just a giant barrier that could be turned on at any moment. It had a particular ability and it would certainly offer a nasty surprise to enemies but it was reserved for cases of an invasion. How many times have you been here? Guren asked. I hardly see you around the village. You're mostly on the other side of the island. Well, I actually live here Haku said with a smile. Guren was surprised. She didn't know that and she ran the village's covert affairs. Then again, whatever happened in the compound was always secret. It was after all the most secret place within the village. You're not always around when I come around. With spies always trying to sneak in, there is no rest. Sometimes you have to chase some across the sea. Guren said with a shake of her head. It was a busy job but she had to do it. People are curious Haku said. I'm surprised I haven't even seen my former master's number two sneaking into the village to try to get intel Guren said. Then again, with how good he is, tracking him would be difficult. As she said those words, they entered the throne room. It was dimly lit. But the walls were in the form of a pale blue crystallized ice. The floor was the same. You could see a massive Uzumaki symbol on the floor, deep within the ice. The same could be said when you looked into the ceiling. There were pillars around the throne. Today, there was a person on the throne. Cold eyes were staring at them without blinking. His head was tilted to the side, resting on the palm of his right hand. She couldn't see him clearly but there was no presence from him, she couldn't even tell if he had chakra. If she wasn't seeing the silhouette, she would have said there was no person there. When Haku kneeled a bit away from the throne Guren followed his example. Your Majesty, it is good to see you again. Haku said in a calm tone. Guren noticed the slight nod of his head. Those eyes were staring at her. Guren we finally meet. I wish this was a social call so we can dine together. But there are agent matters that you two must attend to both of you were chosen because of your unique bloodlines and we'd like to recreate that. That isn't why you're here, but your bloodline is the reason you are being sent to this mission. We worked hard to develop the wave country after taking over Gato's company. It has now developed. Its economy is healthy and its population has been increasing drastically over the past two years. Its new strength has made the land of water uncomfortable and it seeks to undermine us. The wave is mine but its importance lies in the fact that Yuzu doesn't directly procure its needs from any village or merchant but we get everything we need through the wave if the wave is hurt, we are hurt. The feudal lord of the water country is behind the move to slow down the wave's progress, but you won't see him. You are going to meet the Godei Mizukage to discuss the issue and try to seek a way forward. At the moment, we don't need trouble, but if we are threatened, we will take action. You are to leave tomorrow all necessary arrangements have been made. The mission aside, the voice was powerful yet it sounded young. It wasn't what Guren was expecting. We will depart tomorrow morning and try to return as quickly as possible. Haku said. Study the Mizukage for me I'd like to see what kind of a person she is the emperor said. Guren, you will try to assess Kiri's capabilities without getting caught. Hai Guren felt compelled to give that response. You may leave. And those words and the two stood up to leave as they arrived at the exit, Guren glanced back. She saw two redheads leaning into the emperor, both whispering something. His eyes, they were staring back at her. She immediately turned away. Once out, she breathed and then spoke. That wasn't much of a meet with the emperor she said. Haku merely smiled. You'll do that when you dine with him. Perhaps when we come back he is a delightful person. He said. Somehow I doubt that Guren said with a shake of her head. I can understand us being sent for our powers, but why isn't the leader going with us to be the one to handle the issue? We could simply go as his guards. That is simple they want to keep the mystery going nobody actually knows if the Uzumaki have indeed revived, sending us there doesn't confirm it. Guren nodded and looked back at the compound. The throne room shouldn't fit in that place, should it? It was much bigger when you were in the inside than when you looked at it from the outside. She glanced at Haku. Why is there a difference in size? 
Haku got what Guren was asking. Because the throne room you entered is in its own dimension, not in this space. You can enter the dimension because of the seal you were branded with. People who don't have the mark will see the normal throne room. Kumogakure. That damned pervert in the form of a San Nin. He wasn't going to watch him battle Yujito and he wasn't even helping out. Naruto had to do everything on his own. Jiraiya wasn't doing this to measure his strength. The Sanin probably didn't want to see it as he already knew what he could do. He was using this as training for him. The man wanted him to use a sparring session with Kumo's Jinchuriki to help him experience what it is like to fight another Jinchuriki. He couldn't count Gara. The Kazakage was unique. That aside, they'd been genins when they fought. Well, he was still a genin. Naruto shook his head, rubbing off those thoughts. The secluded training ground he found Yujito in was a bit away from the village. Then again, she was Jinchuriki who fought using her biju's power. She had to be a way to avoid the collateral damage and to cause panic around the village. Yujito wasn't alone. She was with another blonde-haired woman with a large bust. What was with blondes and sizable chests? You were just staring, weren't you? Naruto looked at the woman whose cold tone made him raise an eyebrow. Yes Naruto responded with indifference. I was thinking, if my sensei saw you, he'd emigrate to this village and abandon his beloved slug princess. Naruto said walking over to the two women. None of them seemed cautious of his footsteps. He stood in front of them and smiled. Naruto Uzumaki, Jinchuriki of the Kyubi. Yujito stared for a moment before speaking. The armor, are you here for a battle? Naruto completely ignored Yujito and faced the other blonde. I know her but I do not know you. If she is willing to indulge me, I might not get the chance afterwards. Samui she said. She had seemed to get where he was getting at. A pleasure, Samui. Cool. She said. Naruto merely smiled before turning to Yujito. Sorry about that he said. I traveled to this village to test myself against an experienced Jinchuriki. I have been told that you're fully able to control the power of your bijou. Although I house the Kyubi, I still cannot control most of its power. Even so, I'd still like for you to indulge me. Yujito eyed him for a long moment. The Kyubi was the most powerful even more powerful than the bijou he held. She was confident but if he was saying he cannot control most of his biju's power, it meant that there was the chance that even B would defeat him. Then again, power alone wasn't everything. Personally, Yujito didn't think anyone could defeat B while using his biju's power. I haven't tested myself against another Jinchuriki aside from B, I don't see why not. Naruto smiled. Then let us entertain ourselves to our heart's content the blonde said before jumping backwards. There are no rules, no. Naruto nodded. Please come at me with the intention to kill. I find it more satisfying to battle someone who wants to kill me. You need not take it easy on me I house the Kyubi if you break my legs, it's fine. Yujito grinned, hearing those words. Are you not going to regret those words? Will you make me regret them? Naruto asked. If you make me regret them, I'll treat you to a meal every day while I'm still around in the village. I don't want to brag, but I am quite the cook. You are offering to cook for me? Yujito asked. If you don't regret those words, what do I have to do? Take me out, tonight. Deal Yujito said. Naruto took out his lightning sword and sped towards Yujito. The blonde didn't wait for him to arrive, she also charged holding a kunai which was encased with blue flames. Naruto swung his sword towards Yujito's left shoulder in a horizontal slash. The blonde aligned her kunai over the shoulder and blocked the swing. The flames burst lightly upon contact with Naruto's sword. Yujito lifted her right foot, aiming for his shoulder, Naruto jumped back slightly to avoid the kick. Yujito twisted quickly while shifting the kunai she held towards her left hand. When Naruto touched down the ground, she was already upon him, stabbing the kunai towards his throat. He lifted up his sword, blocking her strike. She felt her kunai tremble slightly as Naruto's blade slid through the kunai, cutting it. Gan. Naruto formed a orb of chakra on his left palm and tried to smash it towards Yujito but she managed to speed away from the path of the jutsu. 
The raisin gun slammed onto the ground, and exploded. The explosion tore through the ground, creating a small crater. When Naruto tried straightening up, Yujiro flashed in front of him, her fight foot cleaved through the air in tremendous speed. Naruto could only cross both his hands across his face while holding his sword to avoid the kicking slamming into his face. When the kick connected with his defense, it sent him flying backwards. Naruto recovered quickly by flipping several times before landing on both his feet. Yujito dropped into all fours as she formed claws. She then lunged towards Naruto in blistering speed. Naruto didn't wait for her to reach him he summoned his sword once more and began to dart towards the woman. He held his sword in a reverse grip and slashed towards the blonde. Reacting swiftly, Yujito slid through the ground, while ducking under the sword. Yujito stretched out her right hand, her claws swiped through Naruto's right foot as she slid down the ground before quickly getting up. She retracted her claws and went through hand seals. Flame Explosion She spat a small ball of flames that sped towards Naruto at close range. Naruto didn't try to use his jutsu upon seeing the flames. He did hand seals while flashing around to face the incoming jutsu. Futon, Great Wind Breakthrough he released powerful gusts of winds in a flash. The gusts covered a wider area and were bigger than Yujido's flames. But when the jutsus collided, the flames went off, setting off a huge explosion that disrupted the gusts, causing a violent reaction of flames and wind fighting it out. Naruto was forced to jump away to create some distance from the explosion to avoid getting caught in it. Once he touched down the ground, Yujido flashed in front of him in blinding speed. He couldn't react quickly as she swiped her claws across his chest. There were sparks when the claws ran through the armor plate. Yujito swung her left with claws racing towards his face. He leaned back slightly as watched the claws pass by his face. Wind Bullet Naruto didn't spit the bullet from his mouth he channeled chakra into the tip of his index finger, forming a small orb of wind. He flicked it, and it slammed into Yujito's chest. When it collided with her, it caused her to slide back slightly but not enough to cause massive damage. Naruto lunged his left foot graced the ground while his right foot charged towards Yujito with wind gathering around it. The kick slammed into Yujito's chest, causing her to wince painfully. She rocketed backwards like a bullet. She ended up crashing down the ground a distance away and tried to get up. She clutched her chest painfully and coughed up some blood. Yujito wiped the blood on lips and glanced towards Naruto who was slowly walking towards her. What the hell was that? Wind it just knocks the air out of you. That was dangerous. It was like being hit by one of the rakish lightning punches. A normal person would have suffered more damage than she did. She could still continue but she wasn't about to receive any more of those hits. Nizumi Ketama Yujito created a ball of blue flames. The ball shot towards Naruto who halted his movement seeing it. When the ball split into multiple projectiles, charging towards him, he leapt into the air and then rushed through hand seals. Futon, decapitating wind. He released hundreds of twisting blades that covered a wide area. The blades charged towards the rushing flames and cut through them. Naruto cursed when the flames only multiplied. He should have just shredded them. Seeing flames rushing towards him, Naruto flashed towards the ground. When he landed, he cursed once more when the flames still pursued him. They arrived in a heap and exploded upon contact. The explosion was huge blue flames surrounded Naruto's entire body for about a minute before dying down. When it ended, Naruto was standing in the middle of a small crater hands folded across his face, with slight burns all over the parts where his skin was exposed. Yujito flashed in front of him, with a huge blue cat claw she had transformed her right hand. She slammed into Naruto, sending him flying backwards like a bullet. She didn't let up she flashed above him and created a punch before slamming him into the ground. Boom! He crashed into the ground in the blink of an eye. Naruto closed his eyes in pain when his back crashed deep into the ground. His eyes snapped open when Yujito continued with her charge, she was crashing down towards him, her punch first. Naruto folded his hands together and summoned the Kyuubi's chakra to help him a bit defensively. There was a loud crash when Yujito's large hand slammed into Naruto's defense. 
The collision caused the ground to shatter around Naruto, burying him further into the ground but his defense still held on, and he avoided damage. Yujito jumped away from Naruto, and landed a distance away. Her hand returned to normal as she watched Naruto get up. Naruto held out his right hand and formed a small orb of intense crimson flames. He allowed the flames to float in the air before doing a quick jump into the air. He kicked the flames, sending them towards Yujito in blistering speed. Yujito jumped up while stretching out her legs, she allowed she ball of flames of pass in between her legs but cursed when she felt intense heat burning through her. The ball exploded behind her, and a second later, another ball of flames was rushing straight towards her. She was certain it was going to hit her on her chest and would leave her in an unhealthy state. She summoned Matatabi's chakra, covering herself in dark blue chakra before the flames collided with her chest. They exploded in a blistering explosion that surrounded her in a large cloud of flames. Yujito burst out of the flames moments later and rushed towards Naruto in blinding speed. She flashed just above the blonde and attempted drove her huge claw towards the blonde. Seeing Yujito coming towards him like that, Naruto summoned four tails of chakra, turning into a miniature fox. He folded his crimson hands just above his forehead as Yujito's punch reached him. The powerful claw slammed into his defense in a loud boom that caused the ground to shatter below him. Naruto's tails moved from behind and twisted towards Yujito in blinding speed. Two of them pierced through her shoulders. Yujito gritted her teeth before opening her mouth wide while still above Naruto. A ball of flames formed before she shot it towards the blonde at point blank range. Boom! The flames exploded, creating a huge shroud around Naruto before Yujito flashed away from him to avoid being caught in the explosion. When the flames died down, Naruto was standing there in all fours, in a sizable crater. He then suddenly faced up into the air and started forming a small bijudama. Seeing this, Yujito cancelled her form and raised both her hands. Wow wow! She shouted. That is a bit too far. She said. Naruto had already started and his jutsu was almost complete. He couldn't just stop it like that, not when he had already started. It would a waste of chakra and effort. He ate the small orb of condensed chakra. The ground below him shattered under the massive weight of the jutsu. Naruto then spat it, before releasing it into the air. Afterwards, Naruto cancelled his form and stared into the heavens as the jutsu exploded. He smiled, well, that is dangerous he muttered. We should stop here Yujito said. I can see that will end up causing unwanted attention. She said lightly. I just felt that power, I'm afraid I don't know what kind of damage you might cause or we might cause. I'd rather not have Shinobi coming to this side. Naruto thought about it for a moment before sighing. I guess that will do he said. Collateral damage can't be avoided at times, but I know what a bijou's power can do. Yujito smiled. You're really skilled it became obvious that without transforming I couldn't do anything, she said. I have had time to train Naruto said looking up into the sky. What about our bet? I couldn't make you eat your eats let us just call it even Yujito said. But still willing to dine with you only if Samui joins us. Cool. Naruto said with a smile. Chapter 6 It was midnight Naruto was sitting by the window of his hotel room, alone in the darkness. It was fine he was used to the darkness. So many times he'd sit through in his apartment, not even realizing that the sun had already set. How disappointing, Jiraiya said as he appeared within the room. Naruto glanced at the Sanin for a moment before looking back outside of his window. The night was truly a peaceful time, perhaps a bit of his favorite time. Back in a hidden leaf, it had been his moment to be free, to feel like that hole of Kanoha was off his back. What are you looking for, Sensei? I thought I'd see you getting some action the perverted Sanin said in a sad tone. Like I'd allow you to get that close Naruto said in a calm tone. Sometimes it is best to just know people, Sensei. Friends are not truly bad people to have around. Jiraiya frowned. I think you have a different definition of what a friend is it is certainly not the same line as I do the Sanin stated. It was strange to hear from Naruto. On the outward everything looked fine because Naruto didn't avoid people like they were a plague. 
He actually talked casually and smiled with people but there was a certain distance that one could not push through. Naruto didn't like going personal. There was always a side of him that he didn't want people to see a side of him that Jiraiya wanted to know and thought getting closer slowly would change things. It hasn't been working all too well so far. Naruto didn't reveal too much behind that mask of indifference. He had his moments when he let out a couple of things, but it was far and few between the storylines far in between for him to piece together. It was almost as if he only released details when he knew you wouldn't be able to make something out of it. That is something else to say, Sensei Naruto said. But to get to know people is a good thing. They may not become your friends, but they certainly become people you can connect with. In your line of work, you cannot do much with those connections. But what would be the use of making connections, in your part, I mean? Who knows? Naruto responded with a shake of his head. Sometimes people do the most ridiculous things that you really cannot begin to explain. This again, Jiraiya frowned. It wasn't going to take him anywhere. What do you think about the shinobi world, Naruto? Jiraiya asked after a couple of moments of silence. Naruto eyed the Sanin at the corner of his eyes but didn't offer an immediate response. What of the shinobi? It was kill or be killed. Rule or be ruled. If you have power, you can do whatever you want and no one will say anything unless it affects their interests but if the benefit outweighs the losses, a blind eye can be turned. No one did anything without expecting something in return. But Jiraiya knew this world. He understood it better having spent much time traveling and having fought in past wars. It was another test. Ah, the temptations of this world. He was always being tempted in each corner he turned to, wasn't it? What does it matter what I think about this world, Sensei? Naruto asked in a curious tone. It matters, Naruto. Your view of our world shapes your ideals, your dreams. Jiraiya said in a firm tone. Everyone has a thought and everyone wants something. We all have duties to our villages but we still have dreams. Some shinobi dream nothing but services to their village Naruto said. He thought of Itachi at this moment. But yes, that attitude is based on what is important to them. To determine that, you do need to have a view on the world around. If you can say those words, why do you need to ask why your view matters? Jiraiya asked with a raised eyebrow. Then again, Naruto could simply be speaking his thoughts but not something he actually believes in. This trait bothered him. There were many times he couldn't tell if Naruto actually believed in what he was saying or was simply just saying it. My question was to you, on your personal level, Sensei. Naruto said calmly. You can say you need to know because you are my Sensei, but haven't you said that a student should always carry the teachings of his master? You get an apprentice to share your dreams and carry on with your will. That has been the desire, hasn't it? It was indeed true. He had shared his dreams with the AIM orphans and he'd heard of the good that they had been doing. It had honestly surprised him. But he had been happy. Yet sad that they ended up dying. In our situation, it doesn't really look like you are doing what I want. You have your own goals and although you seemed interested in my dreams, you have not made any commitment. Jiraiya started firmly. I am your sensei, I must know where you stand. If it is the wrong path, I need to be able to correct you if the path is good, I need to be able to assist you as your sensei. I see Naruto said. I have wondered, Jiraiya. But I still cannot form a conclusive view of the shinobi world. There is a lot of bad than good. Should I do something about it? Should I simply be loyal to my village and do what is best for it? I cannot yet answer those questions Naruto shook his head lightly. If you need help with understanding something, please talk to me Naruto. I know you prefer to figure things on your own but you have friends, colleagues to help you in such cases Jiraiya said in a hardened tone just to drive the message through. I have not been shy in asking questions, Jiraiya sensei Naruto said. But I have always decided for myself. It is true that I was close to the Sandame, but he did not have the same kind of influence on me as you would have on your students. I loved the old man because he loved me. But I formed my ideas depending on how I saw things. Perhaps Jiraiya should have seen this as a red light blinking but he wanted to have hope. There is nothing wrong with being independent but be careful. 
you don't want to stray too far. Without observing and listening to other people, you are likely to cloud your own thoughts and drift away from reality. With my past, I cannot drift away from reality, Sensei. I know what is real and what false hope is. An illusion one paints to live in glory Naruto said. Why did you bring this up? Tsunade wants to know what your thoughts are about Yuzu. If the Uzumaki have indeed revived and offer you an invitation, would you accept it? This question again. People were really too curious. But could he fault them? He was the only Uzumaki living in the hidden leaf and with his past, they had to be curious. They must be dying to know. Naruto thought perhaps that if some villagers knew about this, they'd certainly wish that he go home. Most people in Kanoha have forgotten about the clan. They didn't even know where the symbol on their shinobi vests came from and yet, they knew very well that their founding father, Hashirama was married to Uzumaki. Maybe she was just Mito and Uzumaki was nothing more than a name just a meaningless name. Ignorance. If they came now, I would reject the invitation Naruto responded while staring at the San Nin. After saying that, he turned his gaze outside of the room. Why? You are a proud Uzumaki. Anybody who looks can tell that much. And you don't even hide it Jiraiya asked with narrowed eyes. Should I not be proud of my mother's name, Jiraiya? By all accounts I should be Namikaze, isn't it? Jiraiya frowned. Kushina was married to Namikaze. Naruto forename was supposed to be his father's but because the Sandame wanted to separate Naruto from Minato, he gave him his mother's forename. If Naruto wanted to, he could change but it was not going to happen. Yes Jiraiya finally responded. But my circumstances robbed me of that legacy. I should have inherited my father's legacy as his only child, but I did not. Perhaps if I had, I would be proud to be Namikaze Naruto said in a thoughtful tone. But Uzumaki was the first thing I heard. It was the first good news. And the Sandame said to me, it is your clan. I grew up being proud of that. I had nothing else to be proud of. The villagers resented me. Uzumaki was my happy moment. Jiraiya cursed himself once more. Had he been a little responsible had he thought things clearly, he could have taken Naruto away from the village and raised him. Naruto would have experienced happiness and a happy childhood. He could have returned him when he was old enough to ignore everything else. But he did nothing. He kept chasing women, Intel, Orochimaru, and running away from problems. A pathetic life. His regrets. They were heavy. I understand them, but why would you still not take any invitation? Because Sensei, if they come now, it won't be because I am Uzumaki but because I could be useful. I honestly can't allow myself to be used like that. Jiraiya nodded. If they'd come when you were younger. I would have jumped on the chance to leave my misery behind Naruto said. Because then I would have known that they are coming to me because they want me. Because I am Uzumaki and it would be an escape from hell. I am not that miserable anymore Naruto said. He said it like that and for some reason, Jiraiya felt thankful that they did not come. It was selfish of him. If they had come earlier, Naruto would have had a better childhood. He wouldn't have experienced as much pain as he did. Jiraiya felt disgusted for his thoughts. He didn't voice them. He kept them to himself. The Toad Sage smiled miserably. I will write to Tsunade and tell her your thoughts. She was really worried you know. She cares for you and really doesn't want to lose you. Naturally you don't want to lose people you care for Naruto said. That is why we sometimes kill, isn't it, Sensei? Jiraiya nodded. Yeah. Silence reigned in for a couple of moments. Naruto was fine with it. But Jiraiya didn't let it last for long as he lifted his chin and spoke once more. We are worried because we don't know what Yuzu's motives are Jiraiya said. Recently, I was informed that Iwa's spies were killed and their heads were sent back. We know that spies don't return, but they've never done something like this. And it is going to cause some reaction from the hidden stone. Naruto nodded. I wonder how they will react. We are going to find out. We? Yeah we are heading to IWA tomorrow morning. Jiraiya said. I wanted you to know that. Tsunade wants me to find out what they want to do. 
I could send spies but I need to hear from the Tsuchikich. What do you want to find out? Naruto asked. What he plans to do and if there is something that needs to be done, I will have to do something about it Jiraiya said firmly. Kanoha had no formal relations with the current Yuzu but they didn't want a repeat of what happened last time around. He did believe that IWA would try to do something about it. They could plot Yuzu's downfall. Kiri wasn't being put in a picture because it was currently recovering from its civil war and had closed its doors to focus on rebuilding. They would surely not try to do anything that would attract bloodshed. Naruto merely nodded his head but said nothing about the matter. I guess I should rest and I might have to face Kuratsuchi he said with a sigh. Why do you say it like it's a bad thing? It's not Naruto said with a shake of his head. She is just a bit of a difficult person. She might be thankful or mad that I tricked her into getting drunk. Either way, you'll get out of it. You continue to overstate my persuasive skills Naruto said. The following day. Naruto wasn't wearing his armor he decided to put it away. He was comfortable with wearing it, so he would no longer have to adjust to anything when he does have to wear it during battle. In the future, he would have days where he sets out to battle and in those moments, he would depart wearing the armor but unless otherwise, he would be dressed a bit, formally. He was already away from the hidden cloud, traveling slowly with the toad sage. Any reason we had to sneak out of Kumo? Naruto certainly hoped that the Sanmin didn't piss off some people and that was why they had to sneak out. Jiraiya responded with a shrug. A force of habit and I wanted to see if you had it in you the Sanmin said. Had it in me? Naruto asked. You know, I had to practice being invisible in the streets of Kanoha just to avoid the glares. It was an interesting experiment and there were some failures there and then. Success. It was there Naruto said. But as you know, I don't talk much about my conquests he said. Jiraiya nodded. We should start talking Fuenjutsu before you go back to Kanoha. You know, you are Uzumaki and you are truly proud of it, it won't be bad to know ceiling. You have said you know things, practicing it should make you even prouder. I cannot disagree to that Naruto said. You know, when looking at current seals, I think the standards have really dropped. I have been inclined to look at some sealing and say, pathetic. Most of the seals in Kanoha were originally developed by the Uzumaki and when you look at it, there is no other village that can match them. Every village has something that it excels in and the Uzumaki truly worked wonders when it came to Fuenjutsu. Their skills were just a bit too complex Jiraiya said. Even though I call myself a Fuenjutsu master, by Uzumaki standards, I am nothing. No need to be bitter about it Naruto said with a shrug. Where to after IWA? We will see if information comes around, we will probably head to either Amagekure or Kiri. Jiraiya said. Kanoha. Tsunade hated herself for this but there was just no helping things. She needed to make use of Danzo's services now more than ever. Of course, she couldn't trust him but she still had to use him. If he does something he isn't supposed to do, she was sacking him. If he did anything treasonous, she was going to hang him while his friends watch. She wasn't going to have him do as he pleases under her watch. Her sensei allowed it and indulged the man. He allowed Danzo to do as he pleases. She would not. Of course, this represented another threat. Danzo could influence things but there was no going about things without taking the risks. She had Jiraiya to count on if Danzo does something he isn't supposed to do. Given the room, the War Hawk could possibly try to set alight the flames of War 4, Kanoha's, game. Ridiculous. Then again, the Leaf did have that kind of history and this man really did play some part in it. A corrupted past that tainted the image of this image. Certainly not something her grandfather had envisaged. Nothing in this ever went according to plan. Had things been different, Minato would have still been alive. He would be Hokage and maybe she would still be miserable or just running the hospital. He did have a good future. But that ended. Misery to his son and a great legacy. This village celebrated him as its greatest Hokage yet, it had scorned his very son. The only child he left in this world. That hadn't been the plan. The plan had been to make Naruto a hero but the villagers had turned him into a villain. Tsunade shook her head. This wasn't something she wanted to be thinking about. 
the most important thing was that they had an Yuzushiogakure problem. And this was something that could turn the peace they were currently enjoying into a memory. There was a threat but Tsunade wanted to believe that it wasn't to Kanahagakure. If it was to Kanoha, they would have to fight to protect this village, their home. She did wonder though, what would Naruto do if Yuzu turned out to be the enemy? Would he fight his clansmen? Would he side with Kanoha? It was a situation she didn't want to see but it all depended on Yuzu's actions. What the hell is keeping that damn cripple? The Godame Hokage demanded from Shizun. I don't know Shizun said with a shake of her head. Should I go search for him? A more fitting way would be to send Umbu to drag him Tsunade amused herself with the thought. He would certainly not be happy with that action. She wouldn't even be surprised if he marks the Umbu who manhandled him for death in the near future. There was no need to go that far nevertheless. The war hawk walked into her office, with a pale teen by his side. The Godame glanced at the teenage boy for a moment before looking back at Danzo. He had sent the list of his operatives to her. She had studied the list but hadn't done anything about it or even commented regarding it. He delivered something she could touch. He'd passed the first test. What do you know about Yuzushiogakure? Tsunade asked before Danzo could say anything. That damned village. If Danzo really wished or if he was the Hokage, he would have already sent people there to determine its motives, strength. If it was dangerous, he wouldn't be against its elimination. If it could be used, he would send Shinobi for a takeover mission. But he wasn't the Hokage. This knave woman was the one who was making the decisions. Well, there was also the little problem that he couldn't get information out of Yuzushiogakure. The people he'd sent had been refused entry. They couldn't even get on boats in the first place. If they got in, they would be turned back at the gates. The village truly had ways to keep people out. He wasn't doing everything he could nevertheless. He'd avoided killing people because he didn't want to attract any attention. If you are referring to the current Yuzu, then not much. I do know however that they mostly depend on the wave for their supplies. Anything that can't be made in the island, they get them from the wave I do suspect that they either control the country or have a rather strong relationship with them. What do you mean by that? Tsunade asked. The wave country still sends its mission requests to us and nothing has changed in the way it does things. Yes nothing has changed because they don't want to attract attention. Tsunade looked thoughtful for a moment. She hadn't thought of investigating the wave because it wasn't the problem. But at this point it was the only nation that had a relationship with the whirlpools. If this was true, then they would have had some information. Unless why don't you know something? If Yuzu depends on the wave then obviously it will look at the nation as an asset. Most likely someone from Yuzu is within the nation. Danzo shook his head. The wave has grown over the past couple of years someone was behind it. It does seem that the people there credit Yuzu for the changes he explained lightly. But it isn't something they openly talk about and none of the masses have had contact with someone from Yuzu. However, the man who acts as Daimyo frequently visits Yuzu. He goes alone. And he can't talk. Can't or won't. Can't Danzo was frowning in the inside. They used a method he would use but even if you threatened to kill of the man's family, he couldn't talk. So you have tried something in the wave but there is nothing much Tsunade said. Back to Yuzu it is then. What are you planning? I'm sure you already know what they did to Iwa's spies. Danzo nodded. I'm surprised that they were even able to tell they were spies from IWA. Unlike Shinobi, spies do not wear their allegiance for all to see. The only way to know is through interrogation. A spy never reveals his identity, much less his home. And if they didn't reveal it by choice. It means we cannot underestimate Yuzu. Tsunade nodded. I have sent Jiraiya to Iwagakure to discover what Anoki is planning to do about this. But I want you to do what you can to find as much information as you can about Yuzu before we make a move. Danzo nodded. What of the Kyubi's Jinchuriki? Naruto Tsunade said sternly. It is Naruto. Danzo stared at the slug princess for about a minute before finally speaking Naruto Danzo was forced to say. He is finishing his training trip and will return within two to three months. Tsunade said. That is all I am saying to you. 
you should have no interest in him. He is my shinobi in my problem, if he is a problem. It becomes more than your problem when he can threaten the very security of this village Danzo stated in a calm tone. You should now know already that there is nothing much about his childhood in our records because Hiruzen made sure all records were destroyed. I will tell you something you don't know there is also a suspicious moment where Hiruzen took Naruto out of the village for about two weeks. He said he was taking the boy to train in secret. I tried to tail them but I lost track of them. He would not say what the training was about nor did Naruto show in any changes in his skills. But if the boy isn't a Fuenjutsu master, I don't know anything. What do you mean by that? Hiruzen stone walled all my attempts to get closer to Naruto and made sure that I wasn't able to observe him Danzo said. However, I did observe Hiruzen himself. He visited Naruto almost every day in his apartment. Even if he would only stay for a couple of moments, he would go there. He collected Fuenjutsu scrolls and possibly handed them over to Naruto. And that was before he even joined the academy. Tsunade frowned. Jiraiya has never said anything about Naruto's Fuenjutsu skills. A Jinchuriki who knows the art of sealing wasn't something that would please anyone. I see Tsunade said. And him? For Naruto's observation when he comes back. I would have suggested he joins them but you are not going to agree to this. And what makes you think I will even agree to this? Team 7 is still short of one member. You don't have anyone suitable to put in the team. I will think about it Tsunade said. I expect results soon, Danzo she said dismissing the man with a wave of her right hand. Once he was out of the office, Shizen spoke. Well, that was surprising. The third really did keep many things about Naruto to himself. It was almost as if he didn't want anyone to find out Tsunade said with a shake of her head. But Jiraiya has been with him for these years and he still hasn't done anything to raise anyone's suspicions. It does make it a little hard to believe that there could be something we don't know Shizen said. Iwagakure. Halt. Jiraiya frowned deeply at being stopped by the guards at the village gates. He really didn't like going through this check. It was annoying. He was the legendary Toad Sage, and he had a pass to go everywhere he chooses. This kind of thing was the reason he often chose to sneak into villages. The rakage hadn't been amused in his last attempt. But he had managed to laugh it off without setting the man off. He'd nevertheless, been given days within the village and was told that he would be watched. Jiraiya the Toad Sage said to the guards. This is my apprentice and we have come here to see the sand in such a cage. Jiraiya Sama one of the guards said. He then turned to face Naruto his eyes sharpened slightly. Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto merely nodded with disinterest. He just looked away from the man and turned his attention into the atmosphere around the village. It was different from Suna. The wind had a different vibe to it. Within Kumo, there was a bit of static within the air and it had made him uncomfortable. Seeing that the guard looked a bit ticked off by Naruto's response, Jiraiya quickly responded. Don't mind him he said with a smile, before taking back his papers. We will find the way ourselves. Tsuchikage-sama is waiting for you, we will quickly take you there. Jiraiya shook his head. I want to walk. No, we insist that you allow us to take you there, Jiraiya-sama. I also insist. Jiraiya said in an even tone. The man stared for a couple of moments before relenting. He could not force a Sanin into anything. Fine but we will escort you. Jiraiya smiled. I can live with that. The man talking to them led the way while his partner remained behind. Naruto and Jiraiya walked through in a slow pace. There was no hurry. Jiraiya was probably checking places he could stop by once they were done with their business. You do realize that when these people see blonde hair, blue eyes, and a Kanoha headband, they think of the Yandame Hokage Naruto said to Jiraiya seeing the curious looks they were getting. The Sanin wasn't an unknown man either. Jiraiya shrugged his shoulders. It is bound to happen sooner or later he said. Besides, this will be a good test. There is no need for a test Naruto said. There is no contempt. Perhaps only from those who lost their loved ones in the war. It would be like with the Kyubi rampage. Jiraiya frowned deeply. He was getting it now. 
Naruto really didn't have a problem talking about his childhood days and what Kanoha did to him. Worse, he didn't mix his words and even spoke with some indifference. It bothered Jiraiya but he could not tell Naruto to cry when he speaks about his miserable past. Perhaps it was good that he wasn't afraid to talk about. What was missing was emotions. Maybe Jiraiya said. But it is good to know. We know where we stand and should be able to tell if there are enemies we should look out for. You are not wrong Naruto said before falling silent. Jiraiya said nothing either as they were led into the Tsuchikage tower. Upon arrival, he stared at Naruto. Respond politely as they ask you a question about Yuzu or Minato. We don't want to go back to war with IWA. Do I look stupid to you? Naruto asked the San Nin. Jiraiya blinked once before shaking his head. I will accuse of many things, including being disrespectful to your sensei, but you are not stupid. Good. Naruto said as they entered Anoki's office. The sandamed Tsuchikage didn't offer both Naruto and Jiraiya any smile as they appeared before him. He had only even accepted this because he thought he could get some information regarding Yuzushiobakure. His stern eyes glanced at the blonde. What caught his attention was the Uzumaki clan symbol. He nearly glared. But he was sure he would still be able to recognize the symbol even if he was blind. The Uzumaki represented a problem. But it wasn't one that gave him nightmares. He could solve this one. He just had to move carefully. This is rather bold of you bringing an Uzumaki here when they are proving to be a problem Anoki said, facing Jiraiya. The Toad Sage shrugged a bit carelessly. Naruto is my student and a leaf shinobi. He has no connections to Yuzu. But he is Uzumaki. I didn't deny that Jiraiya said in a hardened tone. Naruto isn't the reason I came here. But his clan is Anoki interjected before the Sanmin could finish. Yes Jiraiya eyed Naruto. The blonde looked indifferent as always. He was a little thankful for it this time around. We know what they did to your spies. Everyone seems to know Anoki said. He glanced at Naruto once more, that look was pissing him off but why was an Uzumaki still running around the elemental nations while his clan was rebuilding? If he had been his shinobi, Anoki wouldn't trust him. Everything would just be suspicious, especially if he was going to walk with the symbol of the clan proudly drawn on his chest. Before its destruction, Kanoha was allied to Yuzu do you have contact with the nation? Jiraiya shook his head. We are in the dark about it as everyone else is. We don't know what is happening in the village. You have Uzumaki with you you could send him to find out Anoki suggested. You wouldn't have a problem with it, would you? It would be dangerous as we don't know anything. Jiraiya responded. Naruto is a little too important for Kanoha to lose. If you don't have anything and are not willing to use an asset you have to find out something, why are you even here, Jiraiya? The leaf is interested in two things, what you plan to do about Yuzu and your connections with the Akatsuki. I plan to determine if Yuzu is a threat. If so, it will be destroyed as for my relationship with the Akatsuki, it is not your business to know. Jiraiya frowned. He should have known that Anoki would say something like that about Yuzu. It was dangerous and would cause unnecessary tensions within the elemental nations. Kanoha was still technically allied to Yuzu, if IWA was going to do something without being provoked, Kanoha might be forced to step in. They did nothing while Yuzu was being destroyed the first time, they could not sit back the second time. What would the villages who depend on the leaf for protection even say? Kanoha would lose friends. But if they tried to stop IWA, it would be war and that was something they were looking to avoid. What do you have to say about that, Uzumaki? Anoki asked Naruto. The blonde shrugged. Nothing, really he said with indifference. Oh. I thought you'd say you would fight for your clan Anoki said. He would have marked the blonde as someone who must be killed if it had come to that. Tsuchikage sama, I want to kari. The doors burst open at that moment as Kuratsuchi stalked into the room and stared at Naruto. She grabbed him and twisted him around. You bastard. Naruto smiled. It is good to see you too, Kuratsuchi. She glared and dragged Naruto out of the office. Anoki sat speechless for a moment. Do they know each other? I think they met a couple of months ago. 
Anoki was silent for a moment. I hope nothing is happening there, Jiraiya he said in dangerous tone. The toad sage acted as if he was oblivious to the danger. If the young ones find love, it is up to us to guide them in their love rather than stand in their way. I hope you heard me, Jiraiya. I am not losing my granddaughter to Kanoha. You have little faith in her you think she'd be willing to leave IWA for love? Jiraiya asked. Let us get back to the subject at hand, Suchikich-sama. The Sanin gave the old man a stern look. He would not allow Anoki to dismiss him like that when he had clear intentions of destroying another village. This just made him think about what Naruto had said when they were talking about the issue. Iwagakure was going to do the wrong thing and more to that, this was war. This world didn't need another war. The Uzumaki didn't deserve it. Not after what was done to them in the past. Looking at things, Jiraiya didn't think that Yuzushio would have the might to face off against any of the great nations. Iwagakure perhaps by quantity had the largest military power. They had even outnumbered the hidden leaf in the past war. Then again, Kanoha had been fighting in all wars around that time. The leaf never missed out on a war. Never. Anoki looked towards the door for a moment before facing Jiraiya. I really don't know what you want to talk about, Jiraiya. If you have nothing to give I have nothing further to discuss with you. You have indeed said that but I am concerned about the state of affairs in the elemental nations. That aside, do you really think that Yuzu would have the power to invade Iwagakure? Jiraiya asked. Anoki shook his head. They do not they never did. Despite their power, they never had the power to threaten any village with invasion but that is beside the point that Suchikich said. If Yuzushio seeks revenge, even though it doesn't have the power to attack us, we will do something about it. And if it remains locked down, we will need to see what is happening in there what do you know? Maybe they are busy building up a military strength. Or maybe they just want to keep out people who only have bad intentions against them and think they have the right to decide who lives and who dies simply because they think of them as a threat. Jiraiya said in a stern tone. Anoki's eyes sharpened. Watch what you say, Jiraiya-san. The toad sage shook his head. I am just telling it like it is don't forget that Kanoha is still technically allied to Yuzushiogakure if they ask for our help, we would have to respond to their request. Didn't you say you have no relationship with the current Yuzu? Jiraiya nodded. But we are making arrangements to meet the leader of Yuzushiogakure to determine where they stand. If we determine that they are a lost generation, we will do something, but if they have no intention of invading any other nation, we can't stand to watch someone attack them. So you are saying that Kanoha would be willing to fight, Iwagakure? Anoki laughed. In the last war, we outnumbered you. It took the efforts the Yandame Hokage to end the war. Years ago, you suffered greatly in the Kyubi Rampage. You have lost the Sandame Hokage, Yandame, and the likes of Orochimaru since we last fought, do you think that you can stand in our way? Jiraiya stared at the old man. Regardless of how you look at it, that was a not-so-subtle threat. What are you saying? If we determine that Yuzushio is a threat, we will destroy it and anyone who gets in the way Anoki said in a firm tone. The current leaf doesn't threaten me. I see Jiraiya said. I really do want you to consider things carefully. An unnecessary war will cause needless bloodshed. You should know better than anyone that war causes pain on both sides. Even if you win, you will lose something. I don't need a lecture about war from you Anoki said with a shrug of his shoulders. Meanwhile. Once out of the office, Kuratsuchi dragged Naruto atop of the Tsuchikage tower. She didn't want to be seen with him in the streets, lest people start rumors about it. Civilians had a thing about gossiping and so did Shinobi. It wasn't that she paid attention to it. Sometimes you just could not ignore it because people were always around talking behind your back. The black-haired Jonin turned to Naruto with a glare on her eyes. She really wanted to pounce on him and beat the crap out of him for doing what he did and then disappeared just like that without even saying a word to her. She had searched through the town, looking for him, but there was no sign of him. She had come to realize that he had disappeared from town with his sensei. Bastard. She had been afraid when she woke up in the morning. Had something happened to her? Had he not touched her? 
Relief had washes over her like a tonic when she had come to realize that she was still intact. There had been nothing out of place. It had been strange, for someone who had been acting like a pervert, why didn't he? It wasn't that she wanted him to do anything. Getting drunk hadn't even been part of the plan. She was never going to drink again. Not like that. You disappeared without saying a word. I am here now Naruto said with a small shrug. It would have been painful if I had taken advantage of you after getting you drunk. But I don't swing that way. Despite everything, I have some moral integrity. Kuratsuchi snorted. What do morals have to do with being shinobi? Naruto eyed the woman. Shinobi are still people you are a kunoichi it doesn't mean you must lose all sense of right and wrong because of that. You sound like an idealist Kuratsuchi said with a shake of her head. But you got me drunk. I did Naruto said with a smile. But that had been because you thought you could get me drunk and get information out of me admittedly, if you had done that and worked on your seduction skills, I might have spilled I do have that weakness he said in thought. I don't have any seduction skills. I was certain all experienced jonins who sometimes work undercover are taught those skills then again, you are not that type Naruto said. You shouldn't have been too confident in your ability to lie. I didn't know you were that good even after drinking so much Kuratsuchi said. It did sound like you knew about me. Then again, I should have known it when you called me by name. It happens Naruto said before turning to look at Kuratsuchi in her eyes. It seemed like you didn't tell your grandfather about our encounter. I couldn't tell him, it is embarrassing. Naruto laughed. I hope my sensei doesn't mention it by mistake. He said with a smile. The old man wouldn't think twice before he puts me on a leash for a couple of more years. Kuratsuchi said. With how things are, I shouldn't even be talking to you. It might cause some problems. Then why are you talking to me? I couldn't just ignore you after our last encounter. Naruto shrugged. It's not like we shared a bed the whole night and then I decided to make a run for it in the morning, he said easily enough. Think of this as a chance to get close to the enemy. Kuratsuchi narrowed her eyes. She looked ready to battle him there and there. Are you an enemy? What if I am? I'd kill you now all of Iwa's enemies must be dealt with. With those terms, even if I was an enemy, I wouldn't tell you. If it wasn't because you are a leaf shinobi, I'd use other means to get you to talk. Although you are still ranked as a genin, your relationship with a sanin is troublesome. If you were ordinary, I wouldn't care. Spoken like a villain. This was something Naruto was seeing that would become a bit of a problem this woman was willing to do anything to secure her village's interests. It was no longer just about security but anything that could benefit Iwagakure. If stabbing a friend in the back had to be done for IWA to gain new business that would help, she was probably willing to do it. If this woman couldn't change her thinking, Naruto was to watch his back with four eyes and to have someone watch him as well. The good thing about dealing with people you knew had this mindset was that you always expected it. There was no need to feign surprise or shock when they try to stab you. You wouldn't even have a problem cut them up because you never trusted them to begin with. The woman shrugged. I am Kunoichi of Iwagakure. It is my duty to protect it I wouldn't be doing any service if I allowed a known threat to walk free. Naruto shook his head slightly. Overzealous he muttered. But for now, you are not grabbing me by the throat because you don't want to be the one to start a war with Kanoha. She nodded. But I thought you were going to become my friend getting to know me better so that you can see if I am an enemy you need to kill or a friend you must keep. Naruto said. Kuratsuchi was silent for a couple of moments before responding. I hadn't been thinking about it. I didn't think you were serious. You could have been lying even. You really can't trust what a shinobi says. You can't trust a kunoichi either he said. You continuously lied with a straight face. I was honest with you and even treated you well after you got drunk. Don't try to make me feel bad for you. I'm just stating the obvious Naruto responded calmly. It is up to you to decide how you take that. But hopefully, you take my offer and decide to be a little honest. Until then Naruto turned away to leave. Kuratsuchi grabbed him, to stop him from leaving. Wait she said. She cursed herself for sounding a little desperate when she spoke that word. 
she quickly shook off the look on her face and stared into the back of the blonde. She would not show any weakness. Naruto looked into the heavens with a smile. Kirigakure. The hidden mist, his former home a land that was once blessed with so many bloodlines. Yet, the normal people saw them as curses. They saw them as stains that needed to be removed from the world. They had been driven away and the village plagued into a civil war. Kiri would certainly be a very powerful nation if it wasn't because of its bloody past a past that Haku had somehow managed to escape from with the help of his former master. Haku really did miss the man. He had died being useful. But he was alive again. Someone had been sacrificed for him to return to life. And he had been shown his master's actions upon being shouted at by Naruto. Oh, what a good person Naruto had been, on the outside it seemed. Deep inside, there had been a mystery. But not everyone seemed to be aware of it. This was his second chance to live to do things differently to make something out of his life. But he had another master the emperor, the person who gave him this second life. You really look like you are lost in thought Guren said to Haku. They were being escorted towards the Mizukage tower by two shinobi and along the way the ice user hadn't said a damn thing. Haku glanced at Guren with a smile. I was just thinking about the past. Past? Guren frowned at the thought. Her past was with Orochimaru. That sadistic bastard. She smiled bitterly at the thought. Wasn't she like him in that regard? In any case, she had ended up leaving. She had escaped him. Yukimaru was the reason. Perhaps it was the guilt or ridiculous feeling. Guren had never thought she would be able to experience it. But she had grown attached and her master had gleefully said he knew it would happen. She was no longer needed there. He had found a new host who was admittedly better than her. Yours was a roller coaster, Haku said of Guren's past. I don't know much about yours. We have different positions. But once we are done, we will work closely together you'll learn a couple of things Haku said. I am going to be removed from my post. Guren was a bit alarmed by this. She loved her current job regardless of how tiring it was. There was danger but being a kunoichi was danger to begin with. Not necessarily but you won't take on as much responsibilities as you do now Haku said. They are still busy fixing up everything on their part. And some people are still busy with training. Once that is done, they take over. And what are going to do? Work closely with His Majesty Haku said. We'll also be his guards when he travels outside of Yuzushio. What of those, two? Oh, those two their job isn't to protect his majesty but they have other roles Haku said. I actually come from this village. But I left when I was younger. It was a long time ago. Is that one of the reason you were sent? Likely Haku said with a nod. I'm going to be the representative and you will be my guard. Don't forget that you still have that mission. It's going to be difficult when we are being watched like this Guren said with a frown. And we have to leave before the day ends. Well, we can't afford to be away from Yuzushio for a long time Haku said. Well find way to make things work. We can't go back home without any result. Guren really hoped that failure wasn't treated with death. She hated that kind of principle but she had been told that she wasn't to punish anyone for failing to do their jobs. It was part of the job and no one had to die for failing. They just had to learn from their failure but if they continued to fail, they would be removed and shown to another department. Hopefully Guren said. Failure doesn't click well with my language she said as they arrived at the door of the Mizukich's office. She wasn't used to this kind of thing. Well, at least Haku would be talking. Guren didn't do diplomacy. She used force to get what she wanted. May looked up from behind her ask as the two people from the hidden whirlpools entered her office. She was certainly curious about how they would handle things. That aside, this was the first time she was dealing with anyone from the nation since its revival. She also knew that the nation didn't send its people outside to handle issues. The wave country always handle things, but the nation never admitted it was on behalf of Yuzushio. However, from where she stood, May could tell that Yuzu lived off the wave. She didn't bother standing up to greet the two but she did smile. Her smile became a little sly when she caught the eyes of the handsome young man walking beside the purple-haired Kunoichi. She could tell though, 
They were both capable shinobi. Haku smiled and greeted the woman. Hello, Mizukich sama he said quietly. Haku Yuki representative of the emperor of Yuzushiogakure he pointed at Gyurin. This is my comrade, Gyurin. She is acting as my guard. Hold on Mei said with a stare. Did you just say Yuki? Are you from the Yuki clan? Haku nodded with a smile. Yes I was born in this village but after my clan was killed, I was forced to flee. Admittedly, I almost died but I was saved. Who would have thought that a member of the Yuki clan would still be alive at this time? And not to mention now, wearing a headband with the symbol of the Uzumaki clan. Disturbing but this was due to their past, a past where bloodline wielders were not celebrated but hated as people hate Jinchurikis. May thought it had been nothing more than jealousy. Either way, she now had someone from her village allied with another nation and he was just willing to admit it like that that was perhaps the most disturbing part. They had no records of him, so he was probably just a civilian by the time he left the village. She frowned at the thought, if only she had found him first. I see May said. You don't mind if we talk alone, do you? Haku asked. He was thinking that Gyurin would need to go out of the office and have a look about. He didn't want to stay any longer than he had to after speaking with the Mizukich. May thought about it for a moment before shaking her head. No she said. I'll be taking a walk around the village Gyurin said, if possible, I'd like to have someone show me around. The guard will show you around May said. She watched Gyurin leave the office, leaving her with just the handsome Haku. She allowed him to sit down. Thank you Haku said. I'm surprised that the emperor didn't decide to come here himself. It is even more surprising that you are willing to come here yourselves. The wave has always been the nation we negotiate with May said. She did not forget the history between the two nations. It was a troublesome history and one that didn't make her happy. Had she been the one in charge, she wouldn't have threatened Yuzushiogakure she wouldn't have done anything against the nation. But her past leaders took part in the destruction by providing ships. They didn't have a problem since Yuzu wasn't much of a problem to them. The nation hasn't made its intentions known. Perhaps that was why Iwagakure has sent her a message to inquire if they had made any contact with her. It was likely that the hidden stone was plotting destruction if Yuzu proved to be an enemy. May didn't want to think it was the case. She didn't want to think that Yuzu was out for revenge. The Land of Water's recent actions have been troubling. They do threaten Yuzushiogakure, that is why we decided to come here. We are also thinking that perhaps some actions are being motivated by our existence. May shook her head. I don't know what the daimyo is thinking we don't get along that well. We are trying. I think this has to do survival than anything sinister. The wave country is growing, at a faster rate than anyone would have thought. It is taking some of the land of water's economic interests. For our own survival, we have to take measures to ensure that our own futures are secure. Haku smiled. He seemed relieved more than anything. I'm glad. May tilted her head to the side with a raised eyebrow. Glad? Haku nodded. I am glad that it is something that can be resolved in simple matters. He said lightly. The wave and the land of water don't have any deals, but you do trade. I understand you are saying that you don't know what the daimyo is thinking, but you don't have any bad intentions towards the wave and Yuzu, yes? Mei nodded her head. And if I had bad intentions? It would have made things a bit complicated Haku said with a shake of his head. I do have a question do you always do what the daimyo wants you to do? I cannot answer that question. Haku nodded. I understand he said. Never minding what the feudal lord is doing, we want to form a trade deal with Kirigakure. It will be of mutual benefit to ensure that none of us suffer. We are in competition, and we are a bit of a small nation, we'd rather not get involved in disputes. We would rather we just form an agreement. May stared at Haku for a long minute. He was asking her to do things the lord of this country wasn't doing. It would be like going against the feudal lord. He had asked her the question about whether they always did the man wanted for this reason. He was young, but obviously capable. What kind of trade deal are we talking about? It was an agreement in which we play by certain rules. Competition is good when it is played fairly. 
this agreement can help us create an environment that allows us to rule over the seas in a peaceful manner. You have your territory, we have our territory. If we want to come to your territory, we have to pay fees, per our agreement. If someone wants to buy something, we can sell it to you for a good price and you sell it to your customer. We don't want a situation where we are stealing your customers and you are stealing ours. That is a broad suggestion that will require time to iron out things may said in thought. If you break the agreement, you have the military might to do what you think is right. Haku responded calmly. And if we break it? We have our methods. Haku said with a smile. We can discuss the broad terms and what it shall entail. The wave will conclude things. May shook her head. I'm not signing anything with the wave I am talking to Yuzu, now, am I not? Then my agreement isn't with the wave but with Yuzu. Haku looked thoughtful for a moment. He could see what she was trying to do a relationship between the two nations would be formed because of such an agreement. But the decision was not for his to make. I will have to consult with the people back at home to see what they have to say. You have to understand that as things stand, we have no formal connections with any hidden village. To break away from that, changes everything for us. And only the emperor can make that decision. I understand but that is the only way you are getting an agreement with me. Haku nodded. Are you still willing to discuss the broad terms? Yes, but I am still not agreeing on anything. Earth Country Jiraiya was stalking out of IWA with giant footsteps. He looked like he had one unpleasant meeting with the Lord of Terror or he had just been told to cut off his ties by his beloved mistress. They stepped out of IWA and the man didn't say anything until they could no longer see the hidden stone. I really need to find a town and just sit back with alcohol beside me the Sanin grumbled in a stern tone. Now now, Sensei you really don't want alcohol to be the tonic to your problems Naruto said. Jiraiya glared at Naruto. Then snorted. Says the brat who consumes alcohol like it is water. Worse, you drink alone while sitting in a dark little corner. I don't do it to forget about problems Naruto said. Jiraiya shrugged. The fact is you drink you should not be telling me to stop he eyed the blonde. And I doubt your reason is truthful. Ah Naruto looked shocked. You now doubt my word, sensei. We really need to sit together for a soul-searching mission to ensure that we get this mistrust out of the way. You'll probably be shrugging all the way. Naruto thought about it for a moment before nodding his head. You are probably right he said. I guess things didn't go well. Not as bad but it could be Jiraiya said in a serious tone. How bad? I knew Anoki was a stubborn old man but I didn't think he was this stubborn. He wouldn't listen to a word I say. It was difficult getting a message across that thick head of his. You should have seen him, Naruto. If I hadn't been firm, you would have to worry about your clan. He says if he determines that Yuzushiogakure is a threat, he is going to destroy it. He wouldn't listen and he really has a narrow definition of what a threat is. Naruto looked thoughtful for a moment before shaking his head. People can disappoint you sometimes, sensei. You cannot always predict their movements. They are troublesome. Yeah Jiraiya agreed. He is willing to wage war against Konoha if it defends Yuzu. He even brought up the last war a war isn't what I want. But Iwagakure seems more than willing to drag us into war. A war against Iwagakure. It was going to be another bloody massacre. People would die. Lives would be lost over the quest to destroy Yuzu. Simple-minded fools. Naruto couldn't understand the mentality behind that reasoning. He would never comprehend it. It was nothing more than a perverted thirst for destruction. Kanoha could not afford to go to with Iwagakure. The leaf was powerful but an all-out war with the hidden stone would leave it massively weakened. It wouldn't be any surprise if any other village decides to take advantage of the situation. IWA has been rebuilding since the last war and it had two fully experienced Jinchurikis. That is indeed a troublesome situation Naruto said with a nod. Tsunade will certainly be left fuming over this attitude. Jiraiya nodded. But at least I managed to get him to chill until Kanoha has tried to develop some contact with Yuzu it will still be difficult to tell if he will keep his word. Shinobi are liars after all Naruto said. 
agreement signed can always be torn apart. The very thing that is wrong with our world Jiraiya said. I wonder when it will change, Naruto. People do whatever they want without suffering any consequences. It was a free world. The strong ruled. The weak simply had to look away to avoid destruction. Sometimes even they have yet to do anything their lands are used as battlefields. In that time, innocent people die. Shinobi rape and take food from innocent civilians. It was war. Anything could happen. Just making it out alive was all that mattered. It didn't matter if you lost all of emotions and moral integrity. Naruto shook his head. He wasn't the one who to speak about emotions. Perhaps I might join you for that drink, Sensei. And we can talk about this. Jiraiya grunted. How did things go at your side? Not bad but that woman is willing to stab friends in the back for the sake of pushing forward the IWA agenda Naruto said with a shake of his head. However, the human emotion is something curious. Because of emotional attachment, there are some things that you really cannot do. And even if you try to do, you hesitate. That moment can save a life. And is it all that you are looking for? It is easy to come to an agreement over something with someone you are emotionally attached to especially if it is a case of war and you both want to survive. Jiraiya couldn't fault Naruto's words. It was perhaps something he could very well agree on, that was kind of thing that could even help them avoiding a war. Is that the same attitude you take with Tamari? Naruto shook his head. Tamari is an honest person who wouldn't stab a friend in the back. To be quite honest, I did enjoy my time around her the blonde admitted in a calm tone. That was a reality that he had to face. Although he didn't want to get too attached because of his own associations, Naruto did realize that he couldn't deny himself an opportunity to be a friend to someone. He was a friend to her brother but not to her, was he? Naruto shook his head. He would see what happens the next time he does see her. Jiraiya smiled. You know, it isn't wrong to fall in love sometimes, the Sanmin said. You're still young. You can love, get married and have children. I certainly wouldn't want you closer to my children. I'm certain if I have a daughter, you'd already be measuring just how much of a beauty she would be in the near future Naruto said with a pointed look. You really wound me Naruto Jiraiya said with a hurt look on his face. Have you no faith in your sensei? Naruto shrugged. When you start acting like you can be trusted, maybe I will have some faith you he said. You are talking about me, what of you, sensei? You are can still love. Is your heart so wrapped up around Tsunade's chest that you cannot look elsewhere? Jiraiya frowned. It isn't her he said. Regrets what a miserable man you are, sensei. Naruto said with a shake of his head. He then smiled. Well we are both miserable people for different reasons. Perhaps this is why we are able to get along. A sadist will surely find comfort in the presence of another sadist. In the sea. The ship was heading out of the land of water, going back Yuzu. Haku was standing by the deck, watching the waters with an expressionless mask on his face. He had seen his former home. The memories had been unpleasant but that was the place he had been born. It looked so peaceful. He really wished he'd been born in this age. Perhaps he would have experienced a better childhood. Better memories. He did wonder though, would Yuzushio end up fighting Kiri over the past? Haku hoped not. Kiri was peaceful now. It had already seen too much blood shed. And the Mizukage seemed like a good person. No, she was a good person. Haku was certain that the Emperor would like her. But when would they meet? You're gonna end up falling over the sea Gyurin said as she walked over to Haku. Did things not go well? It took a couple of moments before Haku could respond to Gyurin. It went well. He glanced at the purple-haired woman before looking at the water below. Just how deep was the water? If you fell, you'd suddenly be crushed by the pressure of water. Then why do you look so gloomy? Thinking of being shinobi of the hidden mist. Haku shook his head. Death will separate me from my master he said. Just thinking about things. You know, if we are going to get anything done, Yuzushio itself will have to sign the agreements. I understand the village wants to keep its doors closed Gyurin started. Is it the past? 
There is that but what do you think when we open our doors to Kiri? Gyurin thought about it for a couple of moments before frowning. She worked with security, she should know. It increases the chances of spies getting into our nation. Gyurin almost laughed. She's just called Yuzu power. Ridiculous. When did she start taking Yuzushio as her home? Well, she wasn't complaining about anything. She was actually having fun being in the nation. That is something we don't want. Not now. Can't we do things without opening the gates? We can but the Mizukage is insistent on a couple of things. She doesn't have a problem in signing the agreement with us but there's some terms she wants before she agrees to it. Haku said, shaking his head. How did things go at your end? Nothing much gained Gurin said. I will need to send someone there to get into it deeper she wasn't concerned that she didn't get as much as she wanted. She did get something she could work with. What does the Mizukage want anyway? She wants to see his majesty. I don't think she will get it. Yoshino could pretend to be him and get things signed. Why doesn't the emperor just meet the Mizukage himself? You must know already that his majesty isn't always present in Yuzushiogakure. Gyurin nodded. She had concluded as much. But that just left many questions around him. She still didn't know anything about him. Because nobody knows him, Yoshino could play the role. That foxy man can play any role he wants. Sanagekure. He was Kazakage but Gara didn't want to say that he was tired of this job already. But the truth was that things were difficult. No one had said it would be simple. The council didn't matter. But at least they were not standing in his way. He was able to do his job without much interference but things were still difficult. It was still not easy. He was doing it though. He was steering the ship. He was doing it. Suna was going through the right path. The villagers hadn't warmed up to him, but Gara wasn't complaining. He had expected things to take time. Gara glanced at his sister as she walked into the office she was his help. She spent time with him, helping him do some things he could not because he was busy with another thing. He didn't have a lot of people he could trust around here. So she was going more work than he would like. She seemed more than happy to help nevertheless. It has only been a couple of months and there are people who are possibly planning to kill me Gara said in a calm tone. Not long ago, some people had killed off the idea of killing him because it was impossible. Many had tried in the past and they had died. Gara couldn't boast about it but it was the truth. They were not going to try to assassinate him this time. It would not work out. They were coming with another plan that could perhaps work. If the opponent was strong enough, he would be killed. Yet, Gara had cautioned Baki against hanging those people who were plotting this for treason. He didn't want his rule of be marred by bloodshed. He would find a way to deal with this. Well, he just had to survive it. Then again, the people were not really succeeding and he had someone watching them. He did have shinobi who were loyal. People he could trust. Not everyone, but they were there and that pleased him. Tamari frowned at this. Who are they hiring? Trying Gara said. They are trying to hire a mercenary group called the Akatsuki. I have been told it is a group of S-ranked criminals nothing more about them exists. We will try to gain more information. I have sent a message to Kanoha to see if they know anything more about it. What do you mean by trying? I mean they are not winning Gara said. It is strange. From what we know of the group, they are prepared to do anything, even if it means destroying a village. They have that power. But for some reason, they are refusing to take this mission. They wouldn't even have to take on Suna as this is planned for when I visit Kanahagakur. That is indeed strange Tamari said in thought. She shook her head. You should still be a little more worried about this, Gara. What if they end up accepting the mission? It will be problem but I will try to survive. I don't plan on dying Gara said. I suppose I could go to them and give them a sword to kill me if they really want to do it. I will have a couple of words for them. You are not going to do that. Gara managed a tiny smile. I still have to figure out something before I head to Kanoha. He said. Naruto still hasn't gone back, has he? Tamari shook her head. No she said. That's a pity Gara said. 
I was hoping that we could see him. Chapter 7 They were still in the earth country and Naruto still found time to follow his obsessive ritual of staring into nothingness while sitting by the window. Jiraiya didn't question it often but with a few revelations that the blonde has put forward, he worried. Not for the sanity but what was actually going on in that head of Naruto that his body could just switch off like that. If you wanted to kill him, now was best chance to do. He rarely reacted on first movement. Then again, it could be just an act. Naruto had a certain way of doing things. But for certain, Jiraiya was sure the blonde was alert. You probably couldn't even stab him while he was having wet dreams. The thought made Jiraiya laugh, Naruto and dreams. It looked like something that could never meet. Naruto displayed no ambitions. And even when pressed, he admits to having something but never confirms anything. It was always like playing a guessing game. But Jiraiya had stopped trying to guess Naruto's motives and thoughts long ago. It was a fruitless excise that wouldn't earn him anything other than a headache. The toad sage sat on the bed and glanced down for a moment. He'd left Naruto to do some networking in this village. He wasn't afraid that the blonde would be gone. It was likely for Naruto to look for him than to disappear. In his networking work, he'd received a message from Tsunade. He could simply give it but he wanted to speak to the blonde first about certain things. Naruto Jiraiya started his voice was quiet yet stern. He waited until Naruto glanced at him before speaking once more. What were you thinking about? Is it Fuinjutsu? I will need to know what kind of seals you have in your head. Naruto shook his head. I'm not hooked up on Fuinjutsu Sensei he said. I do think about other things I'd certainly lose my mind if all I did was to bath my thoughts with complex work of the art of sealing. You did admit to having spent hours thinking about it Jiraiya said with a shrug. What would be the difference now? I had nothing better to do then. What else could he do when the village he called home loathed him and tried its best to ignore his presence? Now you do. Naruto stared at the Sanmin he gave the man a questioning look, wondering if truly he wanted him to answer the question. Naruto thought the answer was quite clear and apparent unless Jiraiya was feigning ignorance. But Naruto really had no time to waste. Seeing the look, Jiraiya asked. You could have still answered the Sanmin more or less complained. He felt as if the look as asking if he was stupid or not. Naruto shrugged and looked away. His focus went onto the streets. People were talking. Humans were always saying something. They never stopped. Always something had come out. Sometimes it was just pure nonsense. They didn't always make sense. They didn't always speak the truth. The same tongue that clicks lies is the same tongue that sings the truth when the moment calls for it. I'd rather not indulge in obvious things, Sensei Naruto said before pausing as he thought of what had been on his mind before Jiraiya came. I was thinking about Kumogakure. Jiraiya raised an eyebrow in curiosity. They had indeed visited the village but Naruto had seemed to like the atmosphere there. He hadn't complained and yet it felt like he was going come with some negative thoughts about the village. What of Kumogakure? Kanoha has never had a great relationship with other great powers has it? Sensei. According to the Sandame Hokage, although the first Hokage did everything in his power to form better relationships, nothing fruitful ever happened, Naruto said. Suna has only been Kanoha's ally because it depended on us for its survival, and the leaf basically captured Shikako for it because it didn't have competent shinobi to do it. Kanoha was the one who subdued most bijus. Kumogakure has always been power hungry. It looks fine but it's a bloodthirsty village that will do anything for power the Hyuga incident. It even tried to kidnap my mother, just for her special chakra the blonde glanced towards the San Nin. It is curious isn't it? Jiraiya's eyes narrowed. What is? How did Kumogakure know about my mother? Jiraiya frowned deeply. He could not answer the question. He could not. He didn't even try thinking deeply about it because it was the past and bringing it now would just cause problems. I don't know. I would assume so but you also don't have any interest in finding out Naruto's voice was indifferent and he was no longer looking at the San Nin. I don't want to focus on the past, Naruto. What will it change knowing about it? Shouldn't we be focusing on the future? Naruto could not forget the past. He would not. 
the past was what caused his misery. He did think of the future. In fact, it was because he thought of the future that he thought deeply about the past. We should Naruto said with a small nod of his head. But it still doesn't take away my curiosity. My mother was brought to Kanoha for the sole purpose of becoming a Jinchuriki. She was chosen amongst her people in the Uzumaki for this reason. But it wasn't something that everyone was supposed to know. Only people concerned were supposed to know and yet, Kyumo caught wind of it. Jiraiya frowned. Someone probably told them or they were just good at gathering intel these kinds of theories were the reasons he didn't want to think about this. It was just going to bring up conspiracy theories that would lead them to trouble. Always something unanswered when it comes to the Uzumaki Naruto said with a shake of his head. Well, at least now Kumo seems satisfied with its two Jinchurikis. I wouldn't put it past them to attempt to recruit you if they thought they had a chance Jiraiya said with a sneer. The great nations are always thinking about themselves and what they can do to improve their power. It doesn't matter if they have to topple another village. As long as they think the risk with worth the gain, they will do it. Naruto nodded his head. It is a world where power means everything. Those who get the best services and more mission requests are the strongest. Jiraiya was silent for a couple of moments before asking. What brought this on? Iwagakure. Anoki, that damn stubborn old man. Jiraiya really couldn't understand why he had to view things with the fine margins in which he saw them. The Uzumaki hadn't threatened anyone. He didn't even think that they had the power to threaten any of the great villages. Then again, even before, they hadn't threatened anyone. But Anoki didn't care for those reasons. He did not care. He was unapologetic for his village's actions. There was no way around it though. He just had to try to make sure that Kanoha confirmed with Yuzushio that all was well. But it might still be not enough with Anoki. There was that possibility and it was something that made Jiraiya to think deeply about this because he could see the clouds of war looming over them because of this. Anoki is just being stubborn Jiraiya said. It is hard to believe that he has lived through all wars the Sandin said. The Sandame Hokage had been very different. He wasn't like Anoki. He knew the pain of war but Anoki didn't seem to care. Perhaps it is because he has experienced all those wars that he doesn't have a problem with starting another one Naruto said lightly. Well, I am sure you will figure a way out, Sensei. I thought thinking about this you'd be thinking of a way out. Naruto shook his head. I was merely thinking about the reasons why people do what they do and Kyumo's unchecked hunger for power. What did he expect? Naruto didn't speak much about doing anything that could change things. He was so different from his father. Naruto didn't even speak about how well he would serve the hidden leaf. Jiraiya decided to drop the matter and turn on something else. Princess Koyuki has specifically requested your services, Naruto. Oh from the land of snow. Jiraiya nodded. Here is one particular thing, she is going to Yuzushio Jiraiya watched Naruto without blinking. He wanted to catch any reaction that might be amiss. But there was none. Not even a slight twitch. It was only silence. My ancestral home Naruto said in thought. Kanoha must be quite happy about this. I get to see Yuzu, and all eyes will be watching if I will still go back. No doubt I'll be watched to see if something happens. I can't deny that I am also interested in seeing your reaction at being home, the Sanin said in a firm tone. But I want to admit this will give me a good opportunity to get into the village to try to gather some intel. If you get inside with the princess, you will be able to see the emperor. A truly convenient opportunity for you, isn't? You make it sound like it was planned. Naruto faced with Sanin with a smile. We don't have people with such powers, now do we, sensei? Jiraiya didn't like Naruto's smile. There was a bit of mysteriousness about it. It was nothing dark, just the unanswered questions about it that bothered him. She is going to arrive at the port in the frost. Three days from today. Snow cold Naruto said. But what can you do when you have been requested by a princess and this one is a real princess, pervert sensei? Jiraiya knew who Naruto was referring to but he merely shrugged. You must have made a good impression for her to specifically request you personally as her guard. But of course, since I am your sensei, I have to follow. 
I would be more than happy if they turn you back Naruto said eyeing the Sanin at the corner of his eyes. You know, they must know who you are and allowing you to go inside would prove to be a dangerous task. There is that possibility but I am going to be part of Princess Koyuki's security, they can't turn me away Jiraiya said with confidence. Naruto shook his head. Only if Koyuki refuses to abide by the demand to stop you from entering the village. Jiraiya frowned. That would be problematic. This was his chance to gain something on Yuzushio and be able to tell something to Inoki that will perhaps ease his foot on the war gas. He had hopes. He wasn't sure what he'd find in the village would please him. But he still had to find a way inside. Koyuki's mission was convenient. Perhaps there was nothing convenient about it as Naruto seemed to suggest. Either way, she had requested Naruto. The team would be him and Naruto. You just have to make sure it doesn't come to that. Me? Naruto asked. But I don't control anything. Like you, I will be just another hired muscle. She requested you. You must have a way with her the Sanin then grinned. If you are planning anything, you have to let me in. She is not only famous. But she is a beautiful woman. If you want something from her, go get it yourself Naruto said. I ain't helping you with madness. Don't be like that Naruto Jiraiya whined. I know you like older woman. But still. Naruto spoke before the Sanin could finish speaking. That isn't something I ever admitted. I don't have a preference. As long as we are able to get along and the person is a woman, not a child, I don't have complaints. Jiraiya brushed those words aside. Will you make sure she stands by me? It is important that I get information on Yuzushio before Inoki decides to do anything. We were already talking about how power-hungry Kyumogakure can be, we don't know how they might react to this. You couldn't get anything out of the rakage. Jiraiya frowned deeply while shaking his head. No he said. He wouldn't even discuss the matter with me. Dismissed anything I said. Strong man Naruto muttered. They probably think they don't need anyone and can handle everything by themselves. I don't know if it is just arrogance or confidence. Either way, it doesn't really matter are you going with me? Frost? Jiraiya shook his head. We will meet in the wave country. I trust you'll be able to protect the princess along the way. She is a civilian she'll be traveling with a carriage, you want me to carry the carriage all the way to the wave country? Jiraiya shrugged. You can use your clones. I don't have eternal chakra you know Naruto said. Jiraiya snorted. Yeah, right he said sarcastically. Naruto you can create thousands of Kage Bunshins without breaking a sweat. Even I can't do that. In his fight against Orochimaru, the old man couldn't even use more than five clones without depleting his reserves. You could even make hundreds of Kage Bunshins and fill them with chakra reserves of a normal jonin. And yet still be able to fight without feeling its effects. You the Sanin stared, pointing a finger towards the blonde, don't get to complain about chakra. When you say it like that, it does sound like am I a truly blessed shinobi, doesn't it? Naruto asked the sage with a smile. A little jealous? When you become stronger than me. Naruto smiled. Is it any longer a question of when, Jiraiya-sensei? The blonde asked calmly. Shinobi of this generation are not strong as your generation, isn't it? They didn't even have to go as far as Jiraiya, but during the days of the Shodai Hokage. There was him, Madara and Tobarama. But now, who did they have? Perhaps someone like Guy if he uses all the eight gates, but that was just death. The past generations lived in times of war they had to be strong in order to not only survive but to protect their villages. Jiraiya said. These days are peaceful you're not forced to go to war when you are young. Well, with the tension in the air, we are bound to have something in the future. That is why we must always be prepared for anything Naruto said calmly. I guess I should depart as well. I want to travel a bit quickly. He was going to have to go through the sound there was a possibility of being seen but if he blitzed through the country, he could make way without meeting any trouble. The other choice was going through the land of fire but that would just make his journey long. He still had to travel a long and slow journey with Princess Koyuki. Ah, it was going to be a truly long journey. But perhaps it would be worth the effort. 
who knows? He might end up getting more than he expected. Things had been just fine with her the last time around. It has been a couple of years but nothing had changed and the bonus was that there would no Jiraiya trying to hit on the princess or attempting to make her a subject of his research. Naruto shook his head at that thought. Don't take too long Jiraiya said in a bit seriously. There are still a couple of things we must do before we head back to Kanoha. And with how things are at the moment, Tsunade will keep knocking. Naruto merely nodded and went on to pack his things. Just when you think things couldn't be bad, they just turn out to be really bad. Was there no other way the elemental nations could go about in doing things without anyone threatening to destroy the other? Well, it hasn't taken much to start wars before, and it looked like it wasn't going to take much this time around. And she had been thinking that the generation of Naruto would not get to live through a war but that looked like it was something that would happen. Nothing was sure, but if they moved safely, they might avoid war. Tsunade stared at Jiraiya's message once more and deepened her frown, Anoki was going to be a difficult person. She had to measure up against him. She wasn't going to allow him to do as he pleases because he thinks Kanoha is just a relic of the past. It was indeed true that the village has lost out on much of its military power, but they were still a great nation. The losses were massive though. Tsunade could admit that much with bitterness. The military strength of the Uchiha was no more Minato was dead, the Sandame was gone. Even though he was old, he still had his presence and mind. He would have still been the professor. The QB incident also killed many yes, massive losses indeed. The slug princess looked up when Shikaku walked into the office. She permitted him to sit down before talking. I have called you here because you're the Jonin commander and I need to know the status of our elite shinobi. Tsunade said in a serious tone. Shikaku looked curious but he didn't want to think deeply about it. If Tsunade was asking such a question, there was something happening. Well, he had thought that there would be something that would happen soon with the revival of the Uzumaki. There were so many great nations involved in the mess that it wasn't something that could be ignored. It isn't as good as it was during the Third War Shikaku said. Unlike other nations, Kanoha has taken a relaxed stance in training its shinobi. This is due to the Sandame Hokage's policies. We have been enjoying the peace without being conscious that war could start any time. There had been some objections to the Sandame's policies but he was the Hokage and no one could defy him doing so would be insubordination. However, the policies left the current academy being truly useless in terms of teaching students anything useful about the shinobi world. The Sandame had always said there was no need because there was no war. They were at peace, living peacefully there was no need to train the young ones as if preparing for war. There was the danger that if you train them preparing for war, when anything happens you're always ready for war. You won't hesitate because you have been preparing for it. The Sandame had been conscious of it but perhaps he took things a little too far. It was nevertheless understandable at that time because there was no one who thought that there would be a situation that could lead to war. They could not ignore the fact that the likes of IWA and Kumo have been building their military strength since the last war and it hasn't fought in any battle that would make it lose it its best shinobi. Kanoha hadn't gained anything but has been losing. Tsunade stared at the Nara for a long minute before nodding her head a bit grimly as if she was in pain. What do you think our best option is with regards to the Yuzushiogakure situation? Have we established connection with it? Shikaku asked. Tsunade shook her head. But Jiraiya is going there to see a couple of things. Once we have seen, I will send someone to try to broker some form of connection with the village. For now, we have been moving slowly as the village hasn't made contact with us either. Shikaku looked thoughtful for a moment before nodding his head he could understand Tsunade's reasons. And he had nothing against them. I've heard that they don't allow people in, is it going well? Team 7 took a mission to the Land of Snow a couple of years ago Naruto seemed to have made an impression with the daimyo there. This daimyo, Princess Koyuki Kazahama she has requested Naruto's services in guarding her towards Yuzushiogakure. I have assigned Jiraiya as well to the request. Now this was something that opened a curious door. He didn't know if it was a good idea to let Naruto see Yuzushiogakure but they needed to see where his loyalties lie. This was a good opportunity for them to test Naruto's loyalties, and also for Jiraiya to get valuable information about the village. Isn't this a little suspicious? 
Everything is suspicious Tsunade said firmly. But I cannot question the connection between Naruto and the princess. I have read Kakashi's report on their mission. I assume that she is probably going there for the Land of Snow's technology. From what Kakashi said, the Snow is a technologically advanced nation that even uses tools like chakra armors and trains for transportation. Perhaps Yuzushio wants to acquire this technology. But shouldn't Yuzushio Gakur have provided for her security? I did think of that, but what if she said she wanted Naruto and they agreed to it as they get to see one of their own without going through the effort of approaching him away from their home? Tsunade asked. They have been very secretive even though they seem to rely heavily on the wave country, you will never see any Uzumaki in the wave the leader of the wave always goes to Yuzushio Gakur. Shikaku was silent for a couple of moments. He was still suspicious about the whole thing but for now, the benefit outweighed his suspicions. Perhaps it was the convenience about the whole issue. Either way, they would be able to confirm some things and be able to make decisions on their part. At best, I think our best option is to do things that don't threaten Kanoha's security Shikaku stated in a stern tone. It isn't just Iwagakure that was involved. I know there is a lot of mystery about it but we know it is more than just one village that was involved. If it is so, and they decide to attack, do you think Kanoha will be able to deal with it? Tsunade bit her lip. This was a situation she hoped she could avoid but that would be the reality if they could not stop the great nations from touching Yuzushio. It was truly going to be a difficult task. Winning against Iwagakure wasn't even guaranteed but if another village entered the fray, Kanoha would face destruction. It would be especially worse if Kumo got involved. The village has two Jinchurikis who can fully transform. Tsunade had a job and it was to protect the village. She would certainly not do anything that would result in the leaf facing destruction, even if it meant turning a blind on Yuzu's destruction. Would she regret it? Perhaps not. But would she be filled with guilt for allowing Kanoha to be destroyed, very much so that she would wish she had a second chance to change things? But there was none of that in this world. Once you died, it was all over. We wouldn't be able to deal with the danger Tsunade said. Shikaku felt there was something else coming, but... What do you think, Shikaku? Well, if they attack and we do nothing, it is likely they might feel a bit too confident and decide to attack us as well it is unlikely but a possibility. When it happened last time, we were not told of it, we just heard about it after it had happened, and yet the village did nothing. That is something that worries me about how the Uzumaki will react to our attempts to form connections with them. Trying is an effort we have to take regardless Shikaku said. People might not know, they might not even know the Uzumaki is a clan, but those of us who know understand the importance of the clan to Kanoha. The village has influenced many things about us we still were their symbol, and many people in the village were the symbol without even realizing where the symbol comes from. Our Fuinjutsu is a legacy of the Uzumaki. They provided for us. When the Kyubi had to be transferred to another host, the Uzumaki sent one of their own. And even now it is one of them who holds the Kyubi. That is a service to Kanoha that we cannot simply ignore even the past leadership seemed to sweep it under the rug because of the clan's destruction. Her sensei Kanoha yes, this village was truly ignorant of how just valuable having the Uzumaki as an ally was to Kanoha. But what has Kanoha done for the Uzumaki? In any case, we have to improve training, play strict rules on shinobi. You will draw out a new curriculum for the academy that will overhaul the current one. Jonin senseis will have to take their job seriously in ensuring that their students are ready for anything. Is that acceptable? Shikaku nodded. I will work on it he said. Should I call the jonins who have teams to you? Tsunade nodded. Yes I will deliver the message but we must be careful that word of it doesn't become public knowledge. The Jonins must be sworn with keeping the secret to themselves. We don't want anything that will create tension in the village and burden the young ones. The Godame said. Perhaps if we change things in the academy, we will be able to weed out those who are no fit to become shinobi. There are too many of them these days Shikaku was willing to admit. Shikamaru was surely going to be displeased with having to work harder than he would like. He could imagine his son's reaction to the news but Kanoha had to prepare. They had to prepare themselves for anything. Things looked like they could get dangerous. This is why we must take action. Tsunade said. 
If we are going to end up going to war, I want to have shinobi who are ready, shinobi who know what they are getting themselves into. I don't want to send people to war simply for the numbers. Land of Frost Naruto was waiting by the harbor, waiting for Koyuki's ship to finally arrive. He had arrived at the port two days ago and each day he came here. He was always checking in to see if she would arrive earlier than expected. But she had not. Yet, he'd waited. The sound of the ocean was soothing, it had felt natural. Perhaps that was why he had enjoyed coming here and didn't mind sitting by the dock every day. People stared and asked questions but he hadn't been a creep who ran away from people when they asked questions. There had been a fisher who saw him since he came here and the man greeted him each day, asking if his guest was coming. The man saw him in the morning and in the evening, he always asked the same question and Naruto's response had always been the same. It was still early morning on this day, but Naruto was already up, feeling the cold breeze that washed over the atmosphere. It was around that time that a large ship docked with Princess Koyuki. He had smiled as he saw the woman getting out of the ship with a couple of people around her. Well, she was the daimyo, she needed her entourage. She was still an actress, she needed her guards. Naruto hoped that he didn't have to guard everyone with her. It was going to be a bothersome job that he wouldn't want to do and Jiraiya hadn't said anything about these many people. He'd said only Princess Koyuki. Perhaps they were going to stay within this land and wait for her return. Princess Naruto greeted with a smile. Koyuki smiled and held out her right hand. Naruto she said as the blonde gently took her hand and kissed it her smile brightened. You have grown she said. What lives must grow Naruto said calmly. You haven't aged at all I see you're still the same charming woman as you were then. Oh, you flatter me Koyuki said. Perhaps Naruto responded. Are they coming in for the journey? He asked looking at the people walking behind her. Koyuki shook her head and then turned to her people for a moment before glancing back at Naruto. No they are staying here. Once I got out of the ship, it was no longer their duty to protect me. They will not travel with us but will stay here and wait for me. Naruto glanced at the people behind the princess for a moment they didn't look particularly pleased with those words but what could they do? When the master says this has to be done, you do it. If you don't do it, you get fired and someone who can do what is requested is hired without asking too many questions is hired. Naruto didn't doubt his abilities to protect the princess against any danger. If things got too dangerous, he could always summon the toads. He hasn't been doing it recently. In fact, he has gone out of his way to avoid summoning them. Perhaps this was why the toad chief had stared at him with a curious glance the day he had faced Sasuke. Either way, he would have to do it if things got a little difficult. He doubted it nevertheless but there was no harm in thinking of all possibilities. Jiraiya was fine with it because the Sanin understood his strength better than anyone else. Perhaps not as much as he thought he did but he knew better than anyone. Jiraiya didn't know everything that he could do. Some things had to be kept away from people. As a shinobi, you didn't always reveal your cards, now did you? You will be protected with my life. Koyuki smiled. I expect nothing less she said. I didn't think you'd be coming alone well, I am not complaining. This does give me a chance to talk to you without anyone interfering. Naruto raised an eyebrow in curiosity but didn't raise his questions about the tone of her voice. Jiraiya will join us in the wave country. He had to go for a little detour but you should not worry about your safety I will take care for you. The princess nodded. She bid farewell to her people and Naruto took her things before they walked away from the port. There was a carriage waiting for them along the way. Koyuki stared at it for a moment before looking at Naruto. We are not going by land, are we? She asked. Land would be too much for her, and certainly not in that small thing. There wasn't enough room. Where was she going to bath? Naruto certainly didn't expect her to spend time sitting on that thing and then be forced to help herself behind a bush, did he? We are Naruto said with a smile. I think you will enjoy it. My clones will carry the carriage and I will ride with you. We will camp out in the forest, eat fish, and you'll bath when we find a stream of water. It will be fun it will be like the shinobi experience. Koyuki frowned. If there had been a route, I would have gone around the lightning country and gone straight to Yuzu or the wave. 
naturally, I kid about all that Naruto said. But that is what official records will show. I have arranged for something small along the harbor on the other side of the country. However, you must know that the journey might be troublesome. In what way? The sea on that other side is filled with pirates. Naruto said. We might encounter them along the way and I will have to fight them. There might be some discomfort but for now, we have to use that to travel towards the other side of the country. Koyuki was silent for a couple of moments before nodding her head. For a moment, I thought you were serious about traveling inland. My sensei seemed to expect me to take the route because it is the safest Naruto said. But we can change things. You'll be more comfortable. You just said there might be some discomfort the princess with a stare. I misspoke Naruto quickly said with a small smile. Come on, I don't want someone stealing our ride. He walked her to the small carriage. Naruto sealed away her things in a storage scroll and then created clones to carry the carriage. Once he was done, he also stepped into the carriage and it started moving. It's comfortable in here Koyuki said as Naruto entered. The seats were soft and didn't hurt her but. There was enough room to move her legs. Naruto could even seat across her but she didn't want that. Please sit next to me. I want you a little closer. Naruto didn't question it he merely moved to her side and settled in peacefully. It was a bit relaxing. He didn't mind that there was a woman sitting next to him with a fragrance that seemed to hypnotize his senses. She really did smell pleasant. He could almost move closer and then request to sniff her a bit. But he did not. He closed his eyes for a moment as he enjoyed the feeling. You're comfortable. Any reason, I shouldn't be. It would be a little fun for me if you acted a bit nervous Koyuki said with a smile. Naruto smiled. Perhaps a couple of years ago he said. But I have overgrown that. Admittedly, you do have a certain presence about you. I want to hear more about that but for now I really need to take a nap. Koyuki said with a yawn. Naruto blinked. She hadn't looked like she wanted to sleep. He smiled realizing that it had slipped his mind that this woman was an actress. Putting on masks was her natural for her. She could do it even better than train shinobi. He shook his head. He was going to have to be careful. Are you sure you want to sleep? I could do things to you Naruto said with a straight face. The woman giggled in thought. Her body fell over to his and she closed her eyes, said her last words before falling asleep. I trust you won't but if you want to do something, you just have to ask. Trust? What a strong word to use. Shinobi were not the most trustworthy people. They could not be trusted. They lied and cheated whenever it was convenient. The creature that was called a shinobi was one you did not want to trust blindingly. But he did have an experience with the princess. She had watched him. She had learned from him. And Naruto liked to believe that he was a trustworthy person. Or maybe he was not. Naruto did nothing to disturb the princess from her nap. He too closed his eyes he could afford to take a nap. He rarely took them during the day but this was convenient. The person next to him was sleeping and the clones were keeping guard. If anything happens, he could be awoken. He didn't even think he could sleep in the sea. This was a good opportunity to sleep. And so, he forced his mind to obliviousness. Later that day. Their boat was speeding through the vast waters the sight was a little frightening. They were surrounded by water and if something happened, they would sink to their deaths. Naruto was a shinobi, but what could he do against the forces of nature? Koyuki hadn't tried to think deeply about it as it would make her uncomfortable with the whole journey. It was just her and Naruto, there was no need have such thoughts. The blonde was sitting by himself his clone navigating the boat. He was with a bottle of alcohol with him, an expressionless on his face. She hadn't seen that look before. It was strange. He could project himself as a happy person but with a bottle beside him, he looked a bit miserable. It was as if he was reliving something from the past. Koyuki wasn't a stranger to hiding feelings she wasn't a stranger to putting on masks. She had put on one after being saved from death when her father was killed. She had moved around, playing the character of a princess. She was truly a princess but she had suppressed the reality and focused on the acting, the mask, and the lies. 
what a life it had been. Koyuki sat beside the blonde, who glanced at her for a moment before staring into the space ahead of him. You'd looked at peace a few moments ago looking at the sea and enjoying the air that came with being here she said. Peace. That was strange. Maybe something foreign in his heart, his crowded head has he ever been at peace in his whole life. It was something he desired but he could not truly grasp because really, he was a little miserable in the inside. He plays the role of a delightful person quite well. He had played it since he entered the academy, when he was playing Jenin, even with Jiraiya. But was his life really that delightful? It had the potential to be something else but not now. Not when he was still like this. I sometimes enjoy a good view of nature and when the wind blows like this, it fills all my senses with feelings that make me want to enjoy it Naruto said with a small smile. If you become attuned to nature, you get to feel its mood something like that. Koyuki stared into the clear sky it was going to get dark soon. They would travel all night and probably reach their destination somewhere in the afternoon but she wasn't complaining. There was calmness in the sea. She was calm. The atmosphere wasn't bad and best of all, she didn't have to think about her duties and the nagging old geezer she has in her country. I can never be in the same wavelength with nature I am just blissfully oblivious to its mood. What I see is what I believe the princess said. Well, you are a shinobi, you train in such things she said. She took the bottle away from Naruto and put it on her lips. That's nice she said. Strong I think I was drinking you when guys came to get me. Naruto nodded. Yes drinking alone in bar he chuckled. Something amusing. Naruto just shook his head. I just remembered something he said. The drinking alone it had become his favorite time, hasn't it? Perhaps it was the solitude and the idea of loosening the screws in the head that made him a little free. He would have to watch it, though he drank a little too much when he tells himself it was time for the party. It has been a long journey. Yeah Koyuki said, thinking of her own miserable journey. When did you start drinking? I don't know Naruto said. One day my sensei invited me over to a bar and I was drinking. I had a couple and when my mind felt loose, I felt that there was nothing holding me back there was no anger, no hatred, no burdens I felt free. But when drinking he tells himself that he was drowning in his misery. Maybe that was right. Maybe not and he was just drowning his misery away in the alcohol. That is dangerous you know Koyuki said in a serious tone. You can't allow yourself to be drunk to experience freedom. You are still young, if you get into it, you will have difficulty trying to break free saying that, she took the bottle away from him and put it on her side. No more drinking for you. Are you my boss now? Yes I did hire you after all Koyuki said in a firm tone. What kind of a guard are you anyway? How do you drink when on duty? Naruto smiled. It is unprofessional he said. Despite what I said, I don't really get drunk that often. Over the past year, you can count the times I have been drunk, and that is maybe three times. There are days I set myself up just for drinking. The last time I got drunk was simply doing it because the people I was with were drunk. Koyuki looked thoughtful, what makes you miserable, Naruto? The past. Wasn't I also hindered by the past? It was the past that made me unable to face forward no, I just didn't want to face it I ran away from it. That was why but I am not running away from my past. I have stared into its hateful eyes, fought with it, sometimes it nearly knocked me out, but I have fought it and I have not lost. But because it has been filled with injustice, I can't let it go. I want to wear it over my shoulders and express the injustice to those responsible. What happens if you don't? If I let it go? I won't be miserable, I'll be free but nothing changes. Nothing changes, Koyuki. This is why I have resolved to carry it. But it is proving to be difficult. Naruto nodded his head, a sad smile on his lips he responded in whisper. I have had time to think about things clearly. You know, thinking and thinking has been what signifies my whole life. I have thought of many things, being happy, being miserable, regrets if I chose to walk on the wrong path. Things are always changing in this world. Nothing ever remains same. You will change but I think I have reached a point where I can't change anymore I have accepted my roles, my job, my path the princess said. Changing means abandoning it all or doing things in a different manner but I don't want to abandon my people. 
And the way I have been doing things has made my people happy, so I am content with things as they are she paused and stared at the blonde. If you change, what do you think your change will do, how will it affect those around you? Naruto didn't respond to the question but he did smile looking at the princess a bit fondly. Princess, you have truly become a different person. You were a miserable person when we first met, you look at you now. She smiled, it comes with the job, she said. Wave country. You have a strange look on you Jiraiya said watching the blonde stand motionlessly. Naruto glanced at the toad sage for a moment before looking up into the sky. He was truly always wondering if there was life within the heavens but he didn't know. He would most likely never know about it because he could never reach there. It wasn't a place for humans. No matter how many times they try to go up, they would eventually be dragged back down to the ground. When did you arrive, Sensei? Naruto asked calmly after a couple of moments of silence. Not long ago Jiraiya said. Where is our friend? Resting she didn't get much sleep along the way Naruto responded before putting both his hands in his pockets and started walking away. This had been his training ground when they arrived to the wave country, a place he had met Haku, that delightful had such innocence and purity it had made him reflect on himself. Perhaps it suited Haku given his bloodline. White was a symbol of purity. He contained the Kyubi, a bijou known for its hatred and malice. I hope that wasn't your fault Jiraiya said in a sly tone. Naruto glanced at the Sanmin who was now walking beside him. If you had any shame, I would ask the question but I know the answer he said with a shake of his head. It is the journey he said. You are truly strong when you fight to protect someone precious to you someone said words along those lines while I was here. I am really a sentimental person, so I keep such things in my head. That is indeed the truth Jiraiya said with a nod. He wasn't agreeing to Naruto's thoughts about being sentimental but the words he had been told. We have to go now time isn't really on your side we have things to do and you have another training to do. What training? Jiraiya merely grinned. I'll tell you after this mission the sage said. Naruto shook his head, he didn't question the Sanmin he just continued walking with the man in silence. They walked through the streets of the wave it had truly changed from the last time he came here with Team 7 on their first mission outside of Kanoha. He was a little bit of a known person in this place. Then again, they had a bridge that was connected to the Fire Nation named after him. When they reached the hotel Koyuki was at, they found the princess sitting a single couch. I was wondering where you had run off to, Naruto she said before glancing at the man beside the blonde. Jiraiya-sama, she greeted without a smile. Jiraiya smiled. Princess Koyuki, you look as beautiful as always. The princess didn't respond to Jiraiya's compliment. Are we going now? I took the liberty of preparing everything. You know, the people in Yuzushio are waiting for me and I'd rather not let them wait for me. We are going to depart now Naruto said as he walked over to take Koyuki's things. I assume you two have some history. Well, given Jiraiya's skills, it shouldn't be surprising. I wouldn't call it a history Koyuki said. But we did meet once she responded as she stood up. I thought your sensei was someone else, not him. You had Kakashi with you the last time around, what changed? He was relegated Naruto said with a shrug as he looked around to ensure that he wasn't missing anything. I don't need to say anything but I really hope you behave sensei, we don't want you doing anything that might get us in trouble with the leaders of Yuzushiogakure. Jiraiya glared at Naruto. I'm not a child you know and I should be the one telling you to behave. He said sternly. You really have no respect for your sensei. Naruto shrugged his shoulders carelessly. There isn't really much worth respecting, pervert sensei. You're calling me that in front of her. Jiraiya looked shocked. And Naruto said carelessly. It is the truth and if you have met her before, it means she knows you are a pervert, right? Jiraiya mumbled something under his breath causing Koyuki to laugh. You two seem to get along just fine she said with a smile. Well, he is my sensei. Why are you putting it like that? Who knows? Naruto said before turning his attention to the princess. They walked safely for a couple of minutes and got into a large ship that was waiting for them. Naruto helped Koyuki into the ship and helped her towards her resting place. She stayed there and Naruto walked towards the deck, where Jiraiya was waiting for him. 
I couldn't get a damn thing about Yuzushiogakure from the people in the wave, not even the merchants know something Jiraiya said with frustration. I couldn't get a chance to work with the leader of the wave but I doubt I would have been able to get anything how do you control a nation, have so much influence over it and yet the people around you remain clueless on who you truly are. He had no doubt his mind that he was truly dealing with some crafty people in Yuzu. It did make him excited knowing that he was finally going to meet them but he really hoped that he was able to learn something. If they managed things in the same level as they did with the wave, it was really going to be a difficult mission and one that would truly make him nervous. Iwa's actions could be determined by what he was able to find and before Tsunade sends anyone to the village, she needed something that she could work on. She wouldn't get it if he wasn't able to work around Yuzushio's security measures. I cannot answer that question, Jiraiya you are the one who deals with intelligence you ought to know Naruto said with his eyes staring directly into the water below. You're not helping Jiraiya said with a frown. I didn't think you needed my help, sensei. You did go on your way to do things without me you can still continue without me but if you need my help, I can offer my services. Jiraiya shook his head. I can't expose you like that the Sanin said in a calm tone. You need to focus on protecting Princess Koyuki and I will handle the other issues. I hope I don't get caught he said with a shake of his head. But if I still get caught, it is part of the work. I doubt they'll do anything about it. I hope you don't get them thinking that she intentionally brought spies into their village Naruto said to the Sanin. That is something I have to consider when moving the Sanin said in thought. But I simply can't let this chance pass. Them banning me from their village will be worth stopping Iwagakure trying to invade Yuzu once more. Naruto said nothing in response. Yuzu Shiogakure. Jiraiya's eyes were as sharp as when he was in his younger days he didn't want to miss anything. The first thing he noted was that there was no way to enter the village with the whirlpools twirling around. They were stopped before their ship passed. It made him realize that some of them were man-made. It was possibly the work of Fuenjutsu. When the ship docked, there was only one person who was there. But there had been four large ships docked by the small seaport. He assumed that although there were no people around, this was probably the only way to enter Yuzushiogakure. The man who was waiting for them was just a civilian. He led them through a narrow road surrounded by trees. After walking for a while, they reached two large gates that were closed. The man told them he was stopping there and then turned away to leave one of the gates slowly opened and the three moved closer before entering the village. It was a completely different atmosphere there were people around, a bit tall buildings made up the village. The buildings didn't use wood like what they use in the hidden leaf. Across a stream of water that went through at the heart of the village, Jiraiya could see ruins, the result of destruction. Perhaps they had been left there as a form of a reminder to what was done to them. What was obvious was that the village seemed a bit bigger than he had anticipated and that worried him. The people seemed different, and Jiraiya concluded that these were people from different lands. Everything looked normal. He couldn't see a single shinobi. He couldn't see any red hair. But when they arrived deeper into the village, Jiraiya started to see them the Uzumaki. Jiraiya searched for Naruto's reaction but there was none. It was then that another person took over escorting them. Haku smiled at the guests. Princess Koyuki I am pleased to see you again he said quietly. Jiraiya-sama he then turned to the blonde. Hello Naruto it is good to see you again. I was actually happy when told that you'd be coming here. You know each other. Jiraiya was quick to ask. Haku nodded. I was their enemy in his first mission out the leaf he said. Please follow me I will lead you to your hotel. Jiraiya took the chance to walk beside Haku so that he could ask questions. Although he could see red hair, there wasn't many of them. This was what destruction did, wasn't it? Perhaps if they hadn't been destroyed, they would have been running through the streets, looking all energetic as Kushina had been. I don't see a lot of Uzumaki around. These are just the handful of survivors from the invasion Haku said. But even before, the village wasn't full of Uzumaki people. There were other people around. You are not from here are you? Haku glanced at the Sanin with a smile. Jiraiya-sama, we know about you to be honest, there was a debate about letting you into the village. We assumed that you'd behave given that you are here on a mission. And we would like you to behave we cannot allow you to walk around the village without anyone accompanying you. 
If possible, we'd like you to stay by Princess Koyuki's side. Jiraiya frowned. You're not even going to let us take a tour around the village. Haku shook his head. No, he said. You are not here for a tour, are you? But we would however, offer one to Naruto. Special treatment. The Sanmin asked with narrowed eyes. You could call it that but it is a fact that he is Uzumaki they are treated as precious commodity in here. Jiraiya glanced at Naruto at the corner of his eyes. You say that but you haven't made a move on him. That should be simple to understand, Haku responded calmly. Naruto is a shinobi of the hidden leaf. Any movement towards him wouldn't be welcomed. It is something else since he is a Jinchuriki. The leaders doubt Kanoha wouldn't be willing to part with the Kyubi. Without a doubt but the Kyubi wouldn't be the only reason. Naruto was a valuable asset to the Hidden Leaf and allowing him to leave would only weaken them. But it would also cause Yuzushio trouble if other villages knew that the village was in possession of the Kyubi. They would quickly turn their attention to destroying it without asking any questions. That was a reality that he didn't want to see. Haku didn't say anything more to the Sanmin. He simply led them towards the hotel before departing. They were all booked in different rooms, with Koyuki's surrounded by the two men. Jiraiya knocked in Naruto walked into Naruto's room and found the blonde lying flat on his back. The window was there, but he wasn't by it. Tell me about that Haku. There is nothing much to tell other than the last time I saw him he was dead and that he is holds a bloodline ice release Naruto said while staring at the ceiling crimson ceiling. Jiraiya narrowed his eyes with a bit of danger in it. Dead? You certainly didn't look like you saw a ghost when you saw him. It was like you knew he had been alive. Naruto glanced at the toad sage for a moment with an expressionless mask on his face. You don't have to shout, you know he said. That aside, regardless of what, when have you seen me giving any funny reactions? I had more things to think about other than seeing someone who was supposed to be dead. We are not exactly living in a world that doesn't make the impossible possible. Jiraiya was silent for a moment. I forgot that you were walking in the very land that your mother was born the Sanmin said. When are you going to take the tour? I haven't thought of it Naruto said with a slight shrug. Take it tomorrow you might be able to move freely given that you are Uzumaki and they are offering the tour the Sanmin said in a firm tone. I will head out later on, you can watch the princess. I plan to do so Naruto said. It is going to get dark soon for now. I will take a nap and when I wake up, I will go to the princess to entertain her. As her guard, I can't leave her to be alone before she decides to rest for the night. Later that night. Yuzu, it looked like it didn't have any shinobi but when it was night, you could not mistake it there were shinobi around the village. Jiraiya could feel shinobi moving around the buildings but there was one place that seemed to hold secrets, the emperor's compound. It didn't seem to hold any guard. There was no one around. It was curious but although he was cautious, he could not afford not go. He had been extra cautious about approaching the villagers. He didn't want them to know anything. The moment he starts asking questions, he was likely to land himself into trouble with the people watching over the streets as if they were hawks. The toad sage climbed the wall that took him into the compound. His instincts kicked in as he felt that he was in a dangerous place. He only took a single step before someone flashed in front of him. He frowned he had been caught. There was only one person. If he managed to disable her, he could still try something. He took a stance but was forced to take a step back when a wall of crystal formed around him. Guren smiled seeing the Sanmin in a fighting stance. He was a powerful shinobi. She would rather not fight him. That aside, fighting him was pointless since she wasn't going to end up torturing him or cutting off his head. Jiraiya-san, I believe you were warned about walking without someone to guide you she did not move from her position. I couldn't find a guide the Sanmin said, he still had his guard up. I don't plan on fighting you Guren said. Do you know where you are? The Emperor's compound the Sanmin responded. Guren nodded her head. You are not allowed to enter the grounds of the compound unless invited by the Emperor or given the permission to come in and go as you please. It is a rule in this village and the people respect it. You are not one of us, we usually don't forgive rats. Jiraiya narrowed his eyes with danger. Usually. 
Well, you are a special case and we don't want to end up having any problems with Kanoha. However, since you obviously cannot be trusted to follow our village rules, we will escort you out early in the morning. For now, please don't make any trouble allow me to take you back to your room, where you will not leave for the rest of the night. If I refuse? I have heard that a couple of times, but do you want to find out? Jiraiya had an itchy feeling. He was certain he could handle the woman but there was something off within the compound grounds. He touched down the ground and channeled chakra. It was quickly absorbed. So this is how you found out I was here he said looking towards Guren. There is a massive barrier within the compound that tracks chakra and absorb it as well. I guess for me, whose chakra is foreign, I can't use ninjutsu in this place. Guren didn't comment on the Sanin's words. Are you going to allow me to escort you? How is this going to affect things? It depends on your reasons, really. We don't think you are a bad person but we still don't like people who don't follow our rules. Guren said. What is your reason, Jiraiya-san? Jiraiya considered his options for a moment before speaking. Iwagakure wants to determine whether you are an enemy or not. They said if they discover that Yuzushiogakure is an enemy, they are going to destroy this village. When I told him that Kanoha wouldn't stand for it, he said it was fine. I am concerned about what he will do. I thought I find something, I would be able to give something to the Tsuchikage that would calm things a bit. Why didn't you just ask? Jiraiya smiled. Well he really couldn't say. You still need to leave tomorrow, Jiraiya. But if Kanoha asks nicely, we may respond Guren said as she started to walk towards the San Nin. Shall we? She snapped her fingers and the crystal disappeared. Jiraiya frowned. You're also a bloodline holder, aren't you? You are a spy all right, Guren said. But please, Jiraiya, don't try to leave your room this time around. We will know and we won't be pleased about it. We will be forced to make you leave even at this time and the sea can be rather moody at night. Meanwhile. At times, Naruto really applauded his ability to be able to talk to anyone about anything. He hadn't been used to regular contact with people. Quite honestly, the Shinobi Academy had been one of his biggest tasks. But Naruto had done it. He had pulled it off and still continued to pull it off. He was also able to understand certain things about people. Perhaps the knights in the bars were truly helping him in understanding people better. There was no human. If you were going to work out with people, you needed to be able to understand them, to know them, and to be able to read them. The real journey was up ahead. He was still learning many things about the shinobi world, about the great nations. Hiruzen had taught him most things about the elemental nations but he was learning it through experience. Sticking with Jiraiya had truly been a good idea on his part. Then again, the Sanin wasn't a bad person. Naruto was sure he was busy trying to infiltrate Yuzushiogakure's defenses to gain information. Naruto snorted at the thought. There wasn't going to be any luck in anything. Still, Jiraiya liked to gather information his instincts could not be refused when he sensed something fishy. It's not really a good thing to be occupied with your thoughts when you are sitting with a beautiful woman, Princess Koyuki said to Naruto with a smile on her lips. Naruto glanced over at the black-haired woman before shaking his head. It depends on what you are thinking I might be thinking deeply about you he offered. If you are a nervous child who is afraid to voice his thoughts, I can understand that but you are not a nervous child, are you? Naruto smiled. Who knows? He threw his hands in the air. Koyuki was silent for a couple of moments before speaking on a different matter. There is no place like home, is there? I was forced to flee when my father was killed by my uncle. I never looked back. I enjoyed being an actress, yet I was miserable. I had left my home and my uncle was doing as he pleased. But now, I am back home, I feel at ease, at peace. I am happy. As you say, there is no better place like home Naruto said. You're always fond of home because you know no matter I can always go back there. Besides, what is better than being of service to your people? The daimyo smiled. Nothing is better she said. Though, you do need to live. When acting, I simply have to focus on being an actress but after being feudal lord demands more attention from my side. 
My advisors are always nagging me about this and that it is frustrating at times. Naruto chuckled lightly. I thought you'd be used to it by now he said. Can't get used to it she said with a shake of her head. It even makes me fearful knowing that I will be daimyo for the rest of my life. Feudal lords are not chosen like kages of hidden villages. They were the people who ruled over countries not by skill and qualification but by birth. You'll probably be replaced by your heir. Koyuki frowned. I'm not married yet she said. The people there are trying to force me into marriage with princes from other nations just so I can have an heir. They'd be more than happy if I quit my job after producing a successor. Well, you are the only one in your family, so you have to do something Naruto said. Say, Naruto she started in a firm tone. You have a good standing, when you have reached that age, can you promise to marry me? Naruto stared at the woman for a long minute trying to figure out if she was serious or not. When she didn't say she was joking, he sighed. You want me to get killed by your fanboys? She smiled. I doubt they'd succeed she said with amusement. Most of them who want to marry me are after money and fame. Those who just like me are just not worth it. What of me? You'll be at your home and I will be at my home Koyuki said. It will be convenient. But we would have to talk about the other issues. You mean issues of the bed? Naruto asked with a straight face. The woman smiled slyly. You are not so innocent. You are not innocent either, are you, dear? Naruto said but before Koyuki could respond, there was a knock on the door. Naruto called for the person to enter because the door wasn't locked. Jiren walked into the room and looked between Koyuki and Naruto. They were sitting across from each other. There was peace in the room. Sorry to disturb you at this time, but I just wanted to inform you that we have caught one of your guards in the grounds of the Emperor's compound. Because he has disobeyed the rules and cannot be trusted not to do it again, we will escort him away tomorrow morning. He will return to the wave. I called it Naruto said with a smile. You owe me 1000 Ryo princess. I'm not paying that you had inside knowledge Koyuki said. Excuse me. Don't worry about it I can understand Koyuki said to Guren who looked surprised. I will be fine. Yuzu is the safest place anyway. My meeting is still scheduled for tomorrow at 10 a.m., yes? I'm not certain about that Guren said with a shake of her head. I will have to inquire and report back to you. Koyuki shook her head. No need she said. Thank you for the warning I will have a word with Jiraiya-sama she said. Guren knew she was being dismissed. She didn't linger around for much longer. She cast her eyes towards Naruto she tried to say something but he caught her look and smiled. A look flashed across her eyes she returned the smile before turning away without another word leaving her lips. Who am I going to hold discussions with anyway? I assume you're not going to join. Yoshino Naruto said. I'll be with Haku. The princess nodded. Where were we? Oh yes, we were getting to the good part before the interruption Koyuki said with a smile. Naruto shared the smile. Yuzushio will arrest you for trying your moves on a young one, princess, he said. Koyuki laughed upon hearing those words. I wouldn't mind, as long as I stay your prisoner. But you must still look after my land. She stood up after saying those words and then walked over to Naruto. She lifted her dress, exposing her thighs before she sat on him, both hands on his shoulders. You brought me all the way here I'm allowed to do whatever I want with you. Besides, it's a little taste of what it will be like when we marry. I don't remember agreeing to marry you, Naruto said. He was saying that, his hands were already on her hips. At least you're not wearing your daimyo clothes. It would have been a hustle he said. Koyuki smiled. Maybe, she said before leaning closer. Naruto suddenly pulled her closer. No teasing, he said before capturing her lips. Koyuki's lips were soft she was taking the lead even though he was the one who initiated the kiss. He allowed her to do what she pleased, he permitted her tongue to slip through inside his mouth. After a couple of moments, they separated. Someone has been practicing, she said with a smile. And someone feels sexually frustrated, he said as he stood up. He carried the princess bridal style. Let us take the bedroom where the walls are thick and Jiraiya won't eavesdrop. 
Being carried like this, Koyuki smiled. There had been many moments she was carried like this in her movies. It has always felt so hollow, but this was exciting. This is rather fitting you know I am a princess, and you a... Naruto stopped her from talking by capturing her lips once more. Let us leave that, he said. When they arrived at the bed, he gently placed her down and quickly got atop of her before she decided to beat him to the punch once more. Slowly, he tore off her upper clothing, exposing her chest. You are going to pay for the replacement of those she said with a smile. I will forfeit my pay on this mission. I thought you were paying for this mission as well. Naruto shrugged. I'm just a genin from Konoha, where do you think I will get that kind of money? Koyuki laughed in response. The following day. Naruto had laughed seeing Jiraiya's miserable face as he was being escorted away from the village. He never listened and had been caught red-handed. It served him right. The Sanmin did have many moments in which he was caught doing things he shouldn't be doing. It was mostly when he was peeping but he had never felt sorry for the sage and he hadn't felt anything even now as he was being taken away. He had even waved his right hand, saying goodbye to his sensei. The only thing that brought his mood down was the fact that Sanmin was likely to question him more than he would have if he had done things right. It was going to be like an interrogation. But he has always handled questioning fairly well, hasn't he? Perhaps he had learned while being watched by the sharp gaze of the Sandame Hokage. Those eyes might have been old, but they saw clearly. I'm surprised that he chose to disregard my warning Haku said to Naruto. He had honestly been surprised to learn that the Sanmin had been caught in the Emperor's compound. Couldn't the man have just relaxed in his hotel room without getting too curious? It was like this with everyone, wasn't it? Itachi did the same thing, but at least the Uchiha was never brought into the village. He was much of a danger than Jiraiya was. Well, the leaders would be happy that they finally got rid of the Sanmin. They hadn't been exactly happy with his appearance in the village. It wasn't that he was seen as an enemy but it was his curiosity that had been a bother. Jiraiya doesn't follow anyone's rules he likes doing things on his own Naruto responded calmly. Well, I am not sad he got caught. It should have taught him a valuable lesson. That is rather cold Haku said. He is your sensei. Naruto shrugged carelessly. Jiraiya wasn't a child. He was a grown man. He didn't have to worry about the man's feelings. That aside, the man did like teaching by experience this had been his own trial by fire. He broke the rules he must face the consequences of such actions Naruto said with indifference. Koyuki had already gone for her meeting. Naruto didn't know how long it would take. But he wasn't worried much about it. She was going to have another meeting in the evening and they would be able to leave Yuzushio tomorrow morning. Jiraiya would be waiting impatiently for them perhaps by then he would have made another attempt pass through the village's defenses. For now, Naruto had time. He would have time for most of the day. With the princess away, he could wander around. He has missed the feeling. Sometimes Yuhaku didn't finish his thoughts he shook his head. Do you want to settle down or should we go to side of the river? It was just ruins. A place left to remember the injustice of the past. It was a reminder of how cruel this world of shinobi could be at times. When he was seven, the image had brought in some raw emotions from him. He had experienced something strange and this emotion is what brought him to this point in his life. Naruto did wonder though, how different would things be for him if the Sandame hadn't brought him here. Things would be different. He certainly wouldn't have been standing here. He would have been back in the hidden leaf, maybe miserable or happy. Anything could have been possible. Little things could make big changes. But Naruto was thankful to the old man for bringing him here for everything he told him about the Uzumaki. By the time he came here, he had truly felt like he had known them, he was one of them. Naruto nodded his head but before he could say anything, his bird friend chirped as it landed on his left shoulder. He had missed this messenger. He hadn't been able to get the chance to do anything because Jiraiya was always around. He turned to Haku and spoke. Well, I wanted to spend some time, but as you can see, my friend here has brought me work. Chapter 8 Sakura couldn't keep her excitement from her face when she walked into the office of the Godame Hokage. She had been summoned here and she had a feeling it to do with Sasuke her beloved Sasuke-kun. 
She really hoped it was something good, hence her excitement. Tsunade wasn't smiling but that didn't make Sakura's smile falter she kept it even when Tsunade stared at her. You called for me, Tsunade-sama. Tsunade nodded her head. She truly had more troublesome brats to deal with. Back in her days, brats were fighting in the war there was no time to be a fangirl or anything. Fighting for survival, protecting your comrades, it was all that mattered. Today, they have time to think about worthless things. They even take their makeup when going on a mission it was utterly ridiculous but this just showed how much the world has changed. Tsunade was going to straighten them. Those who were not worthy of becoming shinobi would not graduate from the academy. She would make sure that the graduation exam was a little challenging. She could not have kids who just want to play shinobi to become ninja when they could be facing war in the near future. Even if they did not face war, it was important to keep Kanoha's defenses at best working condition in case something happens. Godain cleared her throat and spoke. Naruto encountered Sasuke and they fought but Sasuke managed to flee with Orochimaru Tsunade said those words in a simple tone there was no other way to put it. She wasn't going to add anything unnecessary and she would not say when this had happened. I called you here just so you can know that Sasuke is alive and well. Sakura frowned not the good news she wanted to know. She had always known that he was alive. She could feel it in her heart that her beloved was alive. But Naruto had seen him, he had fought him. That didn't surprise her. Before Sasuke decided to ditch Konoha, he'd been prone to fighting Naruto over little things. Someone always got in the way before things got serious. Oh Sakura mouthed with disappointment. I know this isn't something you wanted to hear, Sakura, but I just thought you should know Tsunade said. Sakura nodded. She hadn't even heard anything from Naruto. He didn't respond to the letter she sent him it didn't make her smile. But she didn't want to think too deeply about it. Naruto was going to come back, and she would face him. He was still her teammate after all. You said Naruto, wasn't Jiraiya-sama there with him? Tsunade shook her head. Jiraiya wasn't there, he only joined in during the fight and that was when they were forced to flee. Who was winning? Tsunade tilted her head to the side. She was curious why Sakura would want to know it wasn't a competition, was it? Jiraiya didn't say she lied. Why do you ask, Sakura? Well, Sasuke Kuen has always felt that he was superior that was something she had ignored or just failed to see in their younger days. Of course, she did think about it now but it didn't change anything about her feelings towards him. Sasuke would always glare at Naruto if he did something better than he did. She didn't want to admit this but she did. Sasuke was always even jealous of Naruto. There had always been a feeling that Naruto never really tried too hard. I think his jealousy was part of the reason he felt he needed to leave Kanoha. Tsunade frowned. So, if Naruto was winning, there is a chance that he might decide to abandon Orochimaru and go somewhere Sakura said. If he lost, he'd feel frustrated and would think Orochimaru wasn't giving him what he wants. That is an interesting conclusion, girl Danzo said as he stepped into the office. Sakura twirled around to face the man who spoke in a cold tone. She always had a chilling feeling whenever she saw this person. Now, she wasn't a good judge of character, but there was no way Danzo was a good person. If this man was a good person, then Jiraiya wasn't a shameless pervert. Granted, he has already shown himself as a jealous person and betrayed Kanoha, if those feelings resurface, where do you think he will go? Sakura hesitated for a moment before responding. I think he will come back here. Nave, Danzo said in a cold tone and then dismissed Sakura just like that. He turned his attention to Danzo. What do you think, Hokage? Tsunade ignored the war hawk and turned toward Sakura. She smiled the pinkette and then spoke. You may leave, Sakura. If there is anything else, I will tell you. Hi Sakura hurriedly left the office. Tsunade's cold look turned towards Danzo. Since they were working together, he was appearing before her a bit more often. At least now he knew who was in charge of Kanoha and if he was going to try to undermine her rule, he wouldn't do it blatantly he would do it in a way that he thinks she won't find out. There was still a minor problem with how things are in this situation. She wasn't going to tell him that the might be war it might just entice him to do something ridiculous that would frustrate her planning. 
she didn't want anyone who would worsen things as they are. There was just no telling what the old man would do if things turned out dangerous. She didn't want him attacking any hidden village. Tsunade crushed the thought that she could not tell what Danzo would do she knew quite well what he would do in a dangerous situation. If Kyumo and IWA proved that they could work together. Danzo would do everything in his best of capabilities to make sure that those villages end up fighting. With how skillfully crafty he was she was certain that he would succeed in something like that. He was good player of the dark arts after all and he has been playing the game in the past wars. What Sasuke will do isn't the least of my concern Tsunade said in a stern tone. Well, if he does leave Orochimaru, we have more opportunities to take him back. Orochimaru is weakened in this time, so it wouldn't be difficult for Sasuke to leave, especially with the Sharingan. Orochimaru was quite arrogant and he would think he could do whatever he wants. Tsunade pitted her former teammate at times. If it does come to a point where he is brought back to the village, you should give him to me. I'm certain I can bend him to serve Kanoha to the best of his abilities. Danzo said confidently. Somehow I don't doubt that Tsunade said. But you'd also make him serve you, isn't it, Danzo? The war hawk didn't respond to Tsunade's question. So, you'll give him to me? What he demands is power and power I can give to him. He is also someone who lacks emotional control, I can help with that. Tsunade looked thoughtful for a moment before responding. We will consider if we manage to capture him in time she said. Then? What can I do for you? I heard that Jiraiya and Naruto were in Yuzushio Danzo said with narrowed eyes. It was certainly reckless to have Naruto go to Yuzushio. What if he likes what he sees and then decides to bide his time before abandoning Kanoha? Some people could not put clan past village. Shinobi like Itachi were truly rare. It was indeed a pity that Sasuke hadn't turned out like his brother. Perhaps if things had been different, he would have made a play. But he had been warned and so he stayed out of it. He was starting to see that it was now a mistake to have left the last Uchiha alone. That is true they were there for a mission Tsunade said. But they didn't get much information out of the land. Jiraiya was kicked out of the village after getting caught trying to find information for some reason, Tsunade had laughed when she heard that the Sanmin had been caught. It wasn't a situation she should be laughing at, but it was Jiraiya. Anything else? What mission? Escorting the snow daimyo that is as far as we know Tsunade said. And your search? No progress Danzo said with a barely noticeable frown. They have even guarded against aerial approach. There is a barrier that surrounds the village, so you can't see anything from up. There is only one entrance. There is no village that is completely impenetrable, Danzo. Danzo nodded he was able to finally agree on something with the Godame Hokage. It didn't please him nevertheless. They were humans there was no defense that could be perfect. As long as they were dealing with people, they would make a way into the village. Entering isn't that much of a problem. If you have proper documentation, you might enter. But moving around the village is the problem. During day, the sun's light reaches everywhere. You can only hide under a shadow, but even then, you can't make any moves. It is quite possible that they use a similar principle when it comes to monitoring movements in the village. Tsunade didn't act surprised by hearing that information. Jiraiya had told her something similar. This really just meant that Yuzushio had some adept sensors and few Injutsu users. When it comes to the latter, it shouldn't be a surprise it has always been their trade. We are thinking of sending a civilian since they seem to track down chakra movements. Tsunade waved her right hand at this. There is no need for that, for now at least she said firmly. I am going to open a dialogue with them and try to see if we can negotiate something with them. I don't want a spy being caught there while we are talking. They will accuse us of negotiating in bad faith. Negotiate? Danzo asked. He looked surprised. Negotiate what with them? Excuse me. Do not be knave, Tsunade. Danzo slammed his cane on the floor. Yuzushio's resurrection will cause a problem for us because both Kyomo and Iwagakure will act. We cannot let them act before we do something. I value the work of Fuenjutsu and know what the Uzumaki have offered to this village, but we don't have to negotiate with them. 
Trying to get intel into the village is nothing more than an exercise to determine the village's strength before moving in. We need to think deeply about this. Tsunade wasn't really shocked that Danzo would think of invading Yuzushiogakure, their once ally. He would think that. She shook her head. He was thinking about it and actually thought that they were planning to do it. Was he thinking that it was best for them to take control of Yuzu or just destroy it before their enemies get hold of it? This man was truly ridiculous. We are not going to invade Yuzushio, Danzo. And I don't talk to me like that ever again. I understand the situation more than what you might think. She glared at the war hawk for a moment before speaking again. Don't think of doing something behind my back. If you are going to strap one of your agents with an IWA uniform and send them to Yuzu, just know that a seal can be removed, Danzo. If you put a seal on them to stop them from speaking, you know that you are dealing with people who understand Fuenjutsu more than you do. They can undo your seal and get what they want. If that happens, and someone is tracked down to you, I will feed you to them as a peace offering, do you understand me? You are making a mistake, Hokage. Danzo said in a firm tone. You are making the same decisions Hiruzen would have made. If this village gets in trouble B. I will not repeat myself to you, Danzo. Tsunade cut off the war hawk before he could finish talking. If I want your opinion, I will ask for it. Now, leave before you say anything else that will piss me off. Danzo eyed her coldly before twirling around. He left the office without saying another word to her. On his way out, he slammed the door like a child. Tsunade sighed tiredly. She was starting to regret her decision to bring the war hawk in but then again, if she hadn't done it, she wouldn't be able to anticipate his movements by hearing his thoughts about certain things. She knew how to handle things because she was certain of how he was going to do things. If anything happens, he was going to be the scapegoat. She didn't even feel bad for it. She called an umbu to get her Kakashi and Niji. The silver-haired Jonin arrived in her office after about ten minutes. This time around, he didn't have his perverted book at hand. Niji arrived a second later, looking as stoic as ever. He did the formalities of greeting everyone before waiting to hear why he had been called. Despite everything, Niji was the best out of Naruto's generation. He was even the first one to become Jonin. He was a good kid. She couldn't count the blonde in that comparison because she thought it wasn't fair. Then again, both had been unfortunate when growing up. Niji, what do you know about the Uzumaki clan? Tsunade asked calmly. He probably didn't know much since Kanoha appeared to have done everything in its power to bury the history of the clan and its relations to the village. Uzumaki. He thought of Naruto when thinking about this, but he shook his head. Not much he said. The Uzumaki clan was a prestigious clan that had always been close to the Senju clan. My grandfather was married to Uzumaki and the Yandame Hokage's wife was Uzumaki. You probably already know about the Kyubi and have seen something in Naruto with your, Byakugan, haven't you? Niji nodded. He told me he said calmly. The blonde had told him, his burden his curse. A curse that was worse than the one on his forehead. Tsunade smiled. The Shodai Hokage's wife was the first Jinchuriki of the Kyubi, and Naruto's mother became its second Jinchuriki Naruto is its third do you follow? All Jinchuriki have been from the Uzumaki clan. Tsunade nodded. Yes she said. You don't hear much about them because during the second Shinobi World War, their village was destroyed because some villages feared them. They were masters of Fuenjutsu and they had considerably strong chakra that was able to suppress bijus, who were used as power balancers. Since the Second Shinobi World War, we have always thought that they ended, but they did not. It has come out that they have revived and their clan is fully functioning but we don't know anything because the village is closed. I am going to attempt to start a dialogue with them. I haven't started but if they permit it, you and Kakashi will head to Yuzushio to hold discussions with them. Now, Yuzu has always been our ally. It has done much for this village than you know. Most of the seals that are used in this village were developed by the clan. That swirling symbol on your flank jacket is a symbol of the Uzumaki clan. Do you understand just how much of a partner they were to Kanoha? Niji nodded. 
To think that Naruto was from a clan and not just any clan but a prestigious clan that Kanoha valued so much it decided that its shinobi should wear its symbol. That was a massive honor. No matter how good a friend's clans were, you never wear the other's symbol. Kanoha had many great clans, but its shinobi didn't walk around wearing their symbols. Just how much of a bond did Kanoha and Yuzu have? Niji smiled. He wondered how the people who have resented Naruto will think about this. Is there something amusing? Tsunade asked. Naruto and I have a bit of a history, so I know how he was treated I'm just thinking of how ironic it is Niji said calmly. You said that Naruto's mother was Uzumaki and the Yandame Hokage was married to Uzumaki, is there any relation? I told you about the Uzumaki clan because you two will go on a mission to Yuzu you need to understand things and how you react and respond when you talk to them but above all, I have chosen you two because of your jujitsu prowess. Tsunade said without answering Niji's question. I will call you when they say you can come. Niji nodded. He was careful with his words. Naruto is connected to Kanoha's fourth Hokage, isn't he? The Yandame was his father. That is a village secret, Niji Tsunade said in a stern tone. Prepare yourself. I won't assign you any mission for the next month. We don't know when they will give their go-ahead, so you have to be ready at any time. Niji nodded and walked away without saying anything else. Kakashi who had been silent throughout then spoke. What happens when the Uzumaki consider us an enemy as well? Tsunade frowned at the thought. That is something I have been trying to ignore she admitted. I don't know much of what happened in their destruction and why Kanoha didn't do anything. The Sandame would have answers but he is dead. Well, that is troubling. Not so much Tsunade said with a shake of her head. If Iwa and Kumo go after it, Yuzu will not have any choice but to ally with us. It will be for their survival more than anything. I don't even think they would want to make enemies with all the great nations. They wouldn't survive that fight. And this time, there would be no one left Kakashi said. What of Naruto? We will see when he comes back Tsunade said with a shake of her head. It is most important now more than ever that he learns everything he can from Jiraiya. Even if Kanoha cannot be involved, if he wants to fight for his clan, I will not stand in the way. That would be the least I can do for him. But if it is against the great nations, it will be sending him to his death. Kakashi, what has Kanoha done for Naruto? If I stop him from going, and his clan is destroyed again, do you think he will ever forgive us? If we let him go and he fights as best as he can, we have the opportunity to save his life if it is in danger. Kakashi nodded. Tsunade didn't have any intention of allowing Naruto to die with the rest of his clan if the situation came to that point. But this also said that Kanoha wasn't going to fight a battle that would see its very existence threatened. It feels like we are at those dreadful times once more Kakashi said. War wasn't a mission. People died. The people you love die. Anything could happen. No one was guaranteed to return from the war. Not yet, but we have to be prepared for anything that happens. Tsunade said in a calm tone. I truly hope that it doesn't come to that. But in this world, the flames of war are simple to ignite. Land of the Toads. Naruto had never felt such peace before he had never seen such beauty in nature before. This was truly a sacred land that wasn't corrupted by the blood of humans. The air felt fresh. It wasn't polluted by anything. Naruto felt like a man possessed he just wanted to take a swim through the air and giggle like a fangirl, thinking lewd thoughts about the boy she loves. In this land, even the sun seemed to have a different vibe to it. The heavens seemed to look at the land much more brightly than any place he has ever touched. Naruto held out his right hand and then his left. He closed his eyes as he felt the air gather strongly around him, causing his air to stand a bit wildly. Naruto then started twisting around. As he twisted, a tornado started to form around him, rising towards the heavens. The winds were so powerful that they started pulling everything towards them. Before they started pulling the boulders that laid around him, Naruto came to a halt and everything that was up began to fall. He watched the show with a smile. Someone is having fun Jiraiya said he was walking towards Naruto, Fukasaku with him. You just have to love nature, Aero Senen Naruto said calmly. 
When the wind blows like this, it fills me with its mood and I just want to do things with it I just want be part of it. You are going to need that concentration Jiraiya said in a calm tone. But that alone won't be enough. Then again, despite your large chakra reserves, you have fine chakra control I'm almost jealous with how you are able to control it. You don't have the patience to learn Naruto said with a shrug. But if you want to learn, we can take you to the sea and leave you there. You'll know, if you don't stand on the water using your chakra, you'll drown. Jiraiya thought about it for a moment. That is way too risky. You've always been taking risks, sensei what is the difference now? There is a chance that I might actually die. Naruto merely smiled but didn't respond. He settled down and turned to the sage next to Jiraiya. Fukasaku-sama he greeted politely. Naruto-chan Fukasaku responded calmly. You have more chakra than Jiraiya had when he first came here and he still couldn't master sage mode this might take time he said. But you seem to be sensitive to nature, so it might not be. Naruto turned to Jiraiya. You failed to master sage jutsu. I didn't fail I just didn't have enough time to learn Jiraiya grumbled. Naruto smiled. Oh my poor sensei. Your poor chakra control really does cost you a lot. You seem to struggle with a lot of things. Hell, even learning the Raisingan took you quite a while and that was due to your chakra control lack of it rather Naruto said. But it still does make me respect you more of what you have achieved. Even with all that, you have still managed to become as powerful as you are. Finally, you are showing me some respect. Jiraiya exclaimed happily. Naruto shrugged. I am going to perfect it and then gloat about it at every turn I get. Jiraiya frowned. There is no need to be like that, sensei it happens Naruto said with a wide smile. Are we going to start now, Fukasaku-sama? The toad sage nodded his head and then asked Naruto to follow him. They stopped behind a small fountain of water. The sound of the water was calming. Naruto had to settle down to enjoy the comfort. You must understand the risks of this training, Naruto-chan. The toad said in a firm tone. Naruto's eyes snapped towards Fukasaku. Risks I didn't know there were risks he said. There is a risk and it is death. Fukasaku said sternly. Natural energy is powerful but also dangerous to those who cannot control it. You need to have perfect control of it to be able to absorb it and regulate it within your body. If you absorb it and fail to control it, you'll turn into a toad and then a statue like those. Naruto looked at the many toad statues lining up. Well, great power comes with great dangers. You don't look that concerned. I will be if you don't have method to stop me turning into a toad. Naruto said in a very serious tone. There is a way I just have to supervise you and this is why I will tell you that you mustn't try absorbing natural energy unless I am with you. If I am not there and you lose control or absorb too much, you will turn into a statue. I am very good at following rules Naruto said with a nod. Besides that, turning into a toad means the death of me. How is Jiraiya able to use Senjutsu if he hasn't perfected it? Ma and I absorb fuse with him and we absorb the chakra for him. But because it is imperfect, it turns his appearance into like that of a toad. This is why he probably hasn't showed it to you. He will only use it in a situation of life and death Fukasaku said. However, if you perfect it, you won't turn like a toad and you won't need our help. Naruto nodded. Is there a limit? It is chakra, there is no time limit, but how long you keep the mode depends on how much chakra you use. If you use it all, you will lose it. If you lose it in battle, gathering energy will be near possible because you'd have to be calm to absorb it. Naruto was silent before asking. Is there a limit of how much chakra I can gather? Can I absorb much more chakra than I have? The limit is how much chakra you can absorb. Aside from having the risks of turning into a toad, you can absorb as much as you want, as long as you can control it. I assume that I can also store it in my body if I develop a proper method. If I do that, I'm safe from running out of power while in battle. But we don't have that method, do we? Fukasaku shook his head. Since there is no end to natural energy, you don't have to worry much about it Fukasaku said before he smiled. You have asked more questions than your father he said. Minato. He was here. Fukasaku nodded. 
but because of his duties as Hokage, he didn't have much time to train and perfect it and he died before he could. I hope you'll surpass both him and Jiraiya-chan. Naturally. Yuzushio. Gyurin couldn't help but admire the genius that was the man who sent this assassin to the whirlpools. You couldn't tell where the man came from just by looking at him. He looked like a normal civilian but he was not. He was a trained killer who didn't have a problem in trying to blow himself up. It was like he had been ordered, the moment they were caught, activate the seal and die to avoid being questioned. Most of her captives usually swallow their tongues to avoid talking but this one didn't try that, he had tried to blow himself up. But this was Yuzushiogakure. They had stopped him before could do so, but talking seemed impossible. He simply could not answer certain questions because of the seal inside of him. The seal had been removed, Gyurin tortured him, and he still refused to talk. The man didn't scream or cry out in pain. And she had learned her trade from Orochimaru. When she failed to get any information, she had gone straight to the leader's tower and found the man sitting with Haku. The two seemed to get along well. She had never questioned it. She was mostly doing the dirty work, which she realized Haku could not do because he was a kind-hearted person. She snorted at the thought. She didn't usually like people like that but Haku was fine they were comrades after all. The leader was a tall man with clear blue eyes, long crimson hair. He was usually smiling his face was a bit flat, with large cheeks. But those eyes could switch from warmth to coldness in the blink of an eye. One second he was a cold as Haku's ice and the second he could be generating the same heat as lava. Gyurin San Yoshino said in a light tone. You look frustrated. I am Gyurin admitted. The man always spoke in a smooth tone. Gyurin noticed, he was truly a man who was polite and pleasant to have a conversation with but he was still a frightening person. It was no wonder he held the position of leader. There were many personalities in this land and a weak person could not control everyone. People listened to him when he spoke. He commanded respect. He won't talk. He is prepared to die before he says anything. Yoshino nodded. But you are positive he is an assassin, yes? Gyurin nodded. You can dispose of him there is no need to apply any measures on him to make him talk. If the person is unwilling to talk and we apply strict measures, he will die. Yoshino stated calmly. The mark on his tongue, we can work with it and inquire where it comes from. If we discover that, then we know who sent him. Should I start digging? Yoshino shook his head. That will be for another unit to do he paused for a moment, thinking. On second thought, keep him alive. We don't know what we might discover if we search. Maybe he might be willing to talk if he has the truth in front of him. Any suspicions on who could want to kill his majesty? Haku asked. Spies from other villages have only been trying to find information but they have never come for the kill. Gyurin said with a shake of her head. I can't figure out who would try something like that. We can rule out the smaller villages, Suna and Kiri I doubt Kyumo would try assassination attempts. The Yandame Rakage is a little proud and his moves aggressively not so subtle like this. It will be either Kanoha or Iwagakure. Yoshino responded quietly. I can understand Iwagakure but why Kanoha? Every village has its darkness, Gyurin san. You should know that the hidden leaf has done many things that are not so much what it preaches. There is a certain man named Danzo who moves even without the approval of the Hokage, he could have done this without the Godame Hokage knowing. If it's such the case, then we won't be taking any action until His Majesty is made aware of it. The village was run differently. The man who sits at the top of the village, the Emperor, wasn't involved in everything. This man, Yoshino, ran the village and commanded even the Jonans around the village. However, the Black Corps which she ran were only supposed to report to the Emperor. Because of his absence, she usually reported to this man. If you need help with pursuing, this, you will let me know. Yoshino smiled, as always. He said. Gyurin looked at that smile and shook her head. She left without saying another word. Once she was gone, Haku tuned to Yoshino. You really found a dependable person he said of Gyurin. Well, she was once Orochimaru's number two and she knew a lot of things he knew. We had to get that information from her. 
Yoshino said. I am glad we came across her on the hunt. She has freed our time to focus on other things. A month later. A month long time and he hadn't come here at once he hadn't even bothered trying to check in on how Naruto was doing in his training. For the first time since they started their journey, Jiraiya hadn't worried about Naruto. He hadn't worried about anything because Naruto was in a safe place. Nothing could possibly go wrong here. So he had moved around in peace and the quietness of long nights observing things while keeping in contact with his network to gain information about the happenings of the elemental nations. Naruto was a person who worked fast, so he had thought there would be some progress with the training. When he was reserved summoned to the land of the toads, Fukasaku took him to a secluded place wearing a rather serious look on his face. He didn't joke around, but the look informed the Sanin that something was bothering the sage. Naruto didn't turn into a toad did he? Jiraiya asked with concern. Well the blonde had a tendency to train on his own. It wouldn't surprise him if he somehow went off to train on his own and ended up being petrified. That would be a disaster. Tsunade would kill him and Kushina would certainly mutilate him if he sees her in the world of the dead. Naruto could not go in such a way. Even if he was going, the blonde would have to die after him. He could not bury another student. Jiraiya could not survive that. He had mourned Minato he would not mourn Naruto as well. Fukasaku slowly shook his head. Nothing like that happened. Do you think we'd let something like that happen to Minato's son? You wouldn't have allowed it to happen but sometimes things you have no control over do happen Jiraiya said in a serious tone. If nothing bad happened to Naruto, what is wrong? How did the training even go? Naruto had been an excellent student. He listened when someone was telling him something. He asked questions when he didn't understand something. When you told him to rest for the day, he would do it. He was truly the best student Fukasaku has ever had. It wasn't just that but his ability to understand what he was being told and his fondness of nature made it suitable for him to learn Senjutsu. He learned quickly and he grasped the methods he was taught quickly. In no time Naruto was able to gather natural energy and absorb it into his own body. He was able to attain a perfect sage mode. He had done what Jiraiya had failed to do and in a short period of time. Fukasaku should be happy. Naruto was even well-mannered. He appeared to be a child who behaved. You wouldn't think that he was learning from Jiraiya. Yet, Fukasaku was concerned. The training went perfectly, Fukasaku said. Naruto mastered sage mode and he has been training to get a better handle of it and absorbing more chakra than he has. Jiraiya raised an eyebrow. Isn't that too dangerous? If you can't control the flow of chakra but there must always be a balance of chakra he achieves this by adding a bit of the Kyuubi's chakra Fukasaku said. I didn't think it possible but he is doing it. He said with a shake of his head. The brat did it Jiraiya said. I'm not going to hear the end of it he mumbled. You just don't want to learn. If you had given it more time, you would have perfected yours already Fukasaku said. It is too late for me Sensei Jiraiya said in a resigned tone. If Naruto has done everything right, what is wrong? Fukasaku stared at Jiraiya for a long moment before asking. What do you know about Naruto-chan, Jiraiya? Huh? Jiraiya blinked in surprise at the question. What was that supposed to mean? He has been Naruto's sensei and the blonde was Minato's son. What was there more than he didn't know? Naruto-chan isn't like his father, is he? Jiraiya shook his head. Given everything, I didn't expect him to be like his father. There is a certain limit to how much hate you can take in. Naruto isn't like his father and he isn't like me. He is different from both his parents. I can't tell what he inherited from both of them. Minato had been a genius but Naruto wasn't a genius. Kushina was a strong-willed woman who was full of kindness and warmth though, she could turn violent at any moment. Even so, she had been a good person. Naruto was like neither. He didn't have their vision, he didn't have their eyes. The hair was the same with his father and so was the color of his eyes, but Naruto's eyes were different. You couldn't tell what was in them. I discovered that Fukasaku said. I can't tell if he is hot or cold, Jiraiya-chan. He has the concentration never seen in a human. I think it is impossible for a human to be as concentrated as he can be. 
This very ground can be shaking with explosions occurring left and right, Toad screaming in despair and he can still just stand still, eyes closed and have sweet dreams. Aren't you taking it a little too far? Jiraiya asked. But he knew just how much Naruto could focus on something. He had seen it after all. The blonde could stand still for hours. Sometimes regardless of how raging the battlefield was, you could miss the sound of his heartbeat, his breathing. Fukasaku shook his head. That is the truth, Jiraiya-chan he said. It isn't necessarily a bad thing but Naruto-chan makes us nervous because we don't know what he is thinking. It is troubling given the revival of the Uzumaki clan. This revival is going to change the ninja world, Jiraiya-chan. Jiraiya's eyes narrowed. What do you mean by that? I can feel it the elemental nations are heading into a different path. I don't know whether it will be good or bad but the honorable geezer says the Uzumaki will be the cause of this great change Fukasaku said. Not this again. Already the revival of the Uzumaki clan has made other people take measures that worried him and could lead to war. But this just meant that there was more to the Uzumaki. They could be much more dangerous than he thought or anyone thought they were. The village itself looked normal. But they could still be hiding something. Well that was a possibility. They were keeping themselves locked up in their land. They were planning something. And Naruto was going to be involved simply because he was Uzumaki. Perhaps it was time they faced the fact. If Naruto wanted to go, he would go. Perhaps he shouldn't have easily accepted the reasons the blonde gave him when he asked about the issue the other day. But it had made sense. Jiraiya had reasoned and found that Naruto made sense. It was like him he always reasoned sensibly. We are not saying Naruto is bad, Jiraiya-chan Fukasaku said. The Sanin nodded. You said he is neither hot nor cold, which means he could turn to any other side and it is my responsibility to ensure that the path is one that we will still wish to be associated with. Yes Fukasaku said. Other than that, he is good, respectful. Respectful my ass. Jiraiya exclaimed. That brat doesn't show me any ounce of respect. Fukasaku smiled. Naruto does respect you, Jiraiya-chan he said. He is currently meditating by the waterfall. Jiraiya nodded and turned away from Fukasaku. He walked for a couple of moments before finally reaching the area. The air felt heavy. It wasn't natural. He figured it was Naruto's doing. The blonde had his eyes closed, meditating. The child of prophecy he had been told he would train someone who would have the power to save or destroy the world. He had thought it would be Nagato, but Nagato died. He had thought it would be Minato, but he too died. And now there was Naruto. Was he going to end up getting another student? Jiraiya didn't think so. Naruto had to be the child of prophecy. But what could he do? He had done right by Naruto. He had shown him the world and what it was. At this point, he believed that Naruto understood the world better. But even now, he still couldn't get the blonde to answer him on what he wanted to do to change this world he felt was rotten and controlled by those who were greedy. He had to demand answers now. But he would have to be careful not to push Naruto away. Could the blonde bring destruction? Jiraiya couldn't say. He couldn't say Naruto could do it or could not. He didn't know the deeper thoughts of his own student. Wind blasted all around, hitting Jiraiya but he remained grounded. It just succeeded in snapping him out of his thoughts. Naruto was staring at him with a sharp look. You know, for a moment I thought you were deciding on whether you should kill me or let me live Naruto said. I doubt you'd let me get that close Jiraiya said in a flat tone. I heard you succeeded. He said with a smile. Naruto nodded. Yes natural energy is truly special. I love it. I'm proud of you. Jiraiya said with a grin. We can go to celebrate once we leave this place. A celebration with you sensei? Why does that give me the chills? You worry too much. Jiraiya shrugged his shoulders carelessly. So what do you say? We are going to sow it in the Fire Nation Tenzaku guy there are some good spots there. Naruto sighed. If you are paying, I can't complain. The blonde said. 
I haven't had a drop of alcohol since I came here and I really miss a steak if we could, I just head to Kanoha just to get a couple of ramen bowls and devour them. What are you complaining about? You look healthy. First day I had to eat with my eyes closed you perverted sensei. Although, the food does taste good then it looks Naruto said responded as he got up. I wonder how the world of humans will smell like when we finally get there he said in thought. Two weeks later, Tenzaku. Kurinai was walking with her team through the town of Tenzaku Gai Kiba was bickering about something that happened during their successful mission. Then again, he was always very vocal about his thoughts. He wasn't the one to let things slide just like that without having a few words of his own to say. It did cause some problems for them when he could not keep his head down during tense times. He really needed to get a grip of his emotions at the crucial times or it would cost them dearly one day. Nothing has happened so far. They were a team, so when they moved, they always accounted for Kiba's behavior. That aside, they always had each other's back, so that helped during crucial times. Her team had grown nevertheless. Hinata and Kiba hadn't performed that well in their matches when they first took part of the Chunin exams, but they had done better in the next one. Perhaps it was because they had been better prepared. Kakashi's team and Guy's team had been the one with top students. I'm telling you, Shino, I had it under control. Kiba grumbled towards the glass wearing shinobi. I didn't look that way to me. Why? Because you were getting beat. I was just trying to see what he could do, Kiba exclaimed a bit loudly. He was honestly annoyed about the fact that Shino had to come to his rescue. At this point, he was the weakest one in the team. It frustrated him because no matter what he did he couldn't surpass Shino. He wasn't worried about Hinata on that level, but Shino always beat him each time they sparred. You seem to do that a bit often Shino noted. Hinata giggled lightly. Just admit it, Kibakuin she said. It always amused her when her teammate tried to play tough. Sometimes even when he was hurt, he would say he wasn't hurt just to put on a brave face. A man always has to be strong in front of a woman, huh? But did that apply for Shinobi? Gender was irrelevant to the Shinobi world when it does come to power. Kiba mumbled something under his breath. Kurinai sighed she did wonder if Hinata knew that the boy always acted strong because he wanted to impress her. For Kiba's clan, being the alpha male was the most important thing and the method of winning the female. The weak were devoured. It was like a pack of wolves. The alpha male dominated. But Kiba didn't have the strength. He had the desire and attitude but strength failed him when it mattered. Perhaps it had to do with a bit of his arrogance as well. Kiba, you remain the weakest link Kurinai said. Not the words she would usually say, but he needed to hear it. They were heading towards a path of war. Kanoha was preparing for the worst possible scenario and if her students were going to survive, she needed for them to be strong. Kindness wasn't really going to make them live, was it? Kurinai sensei Kiba looked shocked hearing those words. The ruby-eyed Genjutsu mistress smiled, a bit sadly. I'm sorry I had to say it but you are not going to improve if nothing changes. I will have to speak to either Gai or Kakashi about teaching you Taijutsu. You also need to learn to control your emotions. She said the last words with a stare. Anyone but Gai, Sensei. Why? Kurinai asked. He was eccentric and perhaps way hyperactive but he was still a better jonin and very powerful. He might not use ninjutsu and his behavior might make many frown but there was no jonin who has witnessed him fight who doesn't respect him. Well, he is Gai Sensei Kiba said. It was enough that he had to deal with Lee he didn't need to deal with Mike Gai as well. I would rather have Kakashi Sensei. Kakashi was a lazy jonin, Kurinai wanted to say. She doubted he would even agree. Then again, this was one of those times. He could be serious. She heard that he was training these days. So, maybe things were different. You do know that neither you nor Shino have been able to defeat Lee, right? You don't need to remind me, Sensei. Kurinai shook her head and looked up ahead of them, she saw shoulder-length blonde hair it was wild as if it wasn't combed. There was the familiar swirl inside a circle on the back of the crimson long-sleeved shirt the person was wearing. The presence, it felt somewhat similar. For a moment, she would have thought she was staring at the back of the Yandame Hokage. 
Naruto Kuen. Kurinai glanced towards Hinata the girl had said in a whisper, staring a bit wide eyed to the person in front of them, who had his back on them, walking slowly with his hands on his pockets. Of course, she would be quick to recognize him. She seemed to know him better. The Jinjutsu mistress looked ahead once more. The Uzumaki symbol, he'd always worn the mark in each of the clothes she saw him wearing in the leaf, wasn't it? Well, there was no doubt he was from the clan. Then again, she hadn't thought much of the clan before they were called by the Hokage to discuss the clan's revival and what it meant to the shinobi world. He was from that clan, and he was in front of them, wearing the clan symbol. Having heard Hinata with his keen sense of hearing, Kiba rushed forward. He stretched out his right hand to grab the blonde by his shoulders but the chunin found himself being lifted up into the air. He watched with surprise as his view turned upside down before he hit the ground on his back. What the hell, Naruto? Kiba shouted. Naruto didn't look at the Inazuka he glanced back through the corner of his eyes and frowned. He had been curious to know why Jiraiya chose this town and now he knew. The Sanin had known he would meet Kanoha Shinobi. Not just any shinobi but ones he had a history with. If the man really wanted for them to go to Amagekure, they would have traveled somewhere a bit closer to the storm. The blonde glanced down at the Inazuka who was getting up. Kiba dusted himself up before glaring at Naruto. No need to look at me like that Naruto said with a shrug. You should know that you can't sneak on a shinobi from behind. I'm your friend. Naruto shrugged. I wasn't expecting friends he said before twisting around to face the rest of the gang. He smiled brilliantly as he greeted them. Shino, Hinata he eyed the Genjutsu mistress for a moment before greeting her. And the delightful Kurinai sensei He wanted to say it was very convenient to see them, but he stopped short of saying those words it wasn't convenient. Hardly anything was convenient in this world. Kurinai blinked at the greeting. Had he been always like this? She shook her head. She didn't have many interactions with him. She'd always watched from afar but he hadn't been like this. Admittedly, he had grown and he had a presence about him. He had become quite the handsome young man. Naruto Uzumaki she hadn't seen him in close to three years in Kanoha. What was he doing here? Are you on your way back to Kanoha? Naruto shook his head. I have been in this town for about two weeks now he said. Just taking a breather for some training I was doing before heading out for something else. Naruto said kindly. Coming from a mission. Kurinai nodded. Are you alone? No he said, but didn't say who he was with. It was nice seeing y'all. Wait. Kiba said before Naruto could walk away. When are you coming back? Naruto adopted a thoughtful look on his face before responding. Very soon he said. Very soon he repeated those words with a nod of his head. He waved his right hand with his back turned on the team before disappearing from the view. He completely disappeared Kiba muttered. Wasn't expecting to see us Kurinai said calmly. Come on, we shouldn't linger around here. We have to go back to Kanoha. She began to move ahead. Later. Naruto would have to smack Jiraiya in the head for taking such measures just to get him to meet people from Kanoha. It wasn't anything serious and what did it achieve? Did he just want him to think, good lord, he misses home? What was it? Naruto couldn't understand. After thinking about it for a couple of moments, he decided he didn't need to understand it. Those people were going to tell other colleagues that they had seen him and then people would be talking about him. Perhaps that was the main idea. Naruto really didn't care about it. He was currently sitting under a tree in a meditative pose, gathering natural energy. The process of trying to gather chakra while in battle would be a bit costing, so Naruto has been trying to test the limits of how much chakra he can absorb. Once he was done, he would find a way to create a seal that would allow him to store as much chakra as he could. Eight trigrams was able to contain the Kyuubi's chakra without any problem, and then he should be able to create a seal that can hold natural chakra. Minato's seal wasn't made to lock away the Kyuubi's power but he had left a small path that allows the Biju's power to pass through a gate. There were no limits to how much chakra the seal could contain, but there were limits to how much he could wield. A seal he would have to create would need to have two openings, but they could not be opened at the same time. 
If the absorption gate opened, the release gate would have to close. This would mean he could properly regulate chakra and avoid overload. But how did he go about it? The seal itself could not do the absorption, he had to do it and then open the gate to store the chakra within it. This would require extensive chakra control. How much he was able to push into the seal would depend on the size of the gate. It was a challenge, but Naruto already had the ideas he just had to begin with the formula. What would he name it? Two-gate sealing method. No, he would be using the same basics of the trigram seal. Two trigram sealing method. Perhaps that would do. He would still need to develop a method of release for it. Given the danger that was with natural energy, he would need to be careful with the release, because he could not release it all at once. He would need to keep a constant flow of the chakra. If he released enough to activate sage mode, he would have to close the seal but that would leave him with the task of releasing it once more if he ran out of chakra. He needed to release it once, but still keep a constant flow of it that would mean had all the chakra available to him. Have you become my stalker, Itachi? Naruto asked without opening his eyes. The Uchiha was sitting on a tree branch just above him. No, you're a clone where is the original? Not anywhere close, Itachi said. I can tell, Naruto said. I have been looking for you from the past couple of weeks Itachi started. This might perhaps be the last conversation we will have Jiraiya is busy with something else, so we can talk freely. Don't you mean, you can talk? Naruto asked calmly. I can only indulge you, Itachi. You are the one who has something to say to me. I can only respond to what you have to say. Itachi was silent for a moment he didn't argue with Naruto on his point. Last time you spoke about what was right and wrong but it has come to my understanding that Kanoha's people will never beg you for forgiveness. They just want to forget the past and move on into the future. That is something I have thought about Naruto said. You don't have hatred in your eyes I have looked deep into you. But even when you don't have deep hatred for what was done to you, I still cannot tell what you will do about it. Itachi said in a calm tone. If Kanoha's people pretend that nothing happened, will you still not do anything to forgive the past actions? Who knows? Naruto said with a thoughtful look on his face. I have much bigger issues to think about than that. As you know, the shinobi world is heading into a dark path and I must prepare myself for it. And who is the cause of this tension? Naruto looked amused for a moment before responding. You are going to blame the revival of the Uzumaki clan on the tension. Perhaps you might as well say if they had remained dead, things would be fine. But I say, if they hadn't been attacked in the first place, none of this would be happening. We cannot blame the branches for not producing fruits, Itachi we must look at the soil and see if it was being nurtured enough to provide what is necessary for the branches to produce. The root of the problem isn't that the Uzumaki have returned, but that they were destroyed. Itachi could not disagree with that, he would not. It would be irrational to put any other argument that would not even hold. Naruto was right in what he was saying. But perhaps what worried him was what he would do. You can determine a problem and still take the wrong path on trying to solve it. I have already told you that what was done to the Uzumaki was wrong. Itachi, you told your brother to hate you, to resent you and then he was strong, he should come to face you Sasuke is trying to gain power to get revenge for his clan, the clan that you massacred and you set him up for that path. My clan was destroyed, and if I set up for revenge, you wouldn't argue it was wrong, would you? Because it would be nothing more than hypocrisy. If Sasuke kills me, it is just me and no one gets caught up in it. But if you are going after revenge, a lot of people die, this world is taken into another war. You have to look at the bigger picture. The picture for me for would be that it would revenge. The only difference is that it didn't just one human to destroy my clan but great nations to do it. Naruto said in a firm tone. I have seen what hatred does, what revenge does to a person, Itachi I don't like it. No doubt he was talking about his own experiences. He has been living through hatred most of his life. If there was someone who could define what hatred is, it would be Naruto. He had seen it in Kanoha and he was hosting a bijou that was known as hatred. His former teammate had lost his way in his thirst for revenge the greed for power. What do you think will happen if it comes clear that there were more parties involved in the Uchiha massacre, do you think Sasuke will stop there? 
Of course he won't. He will do everything he can to destroy those who caused the downfall of his clan Naruto stated in a firm tone. What is important to you, Itachi? Itachi knew. He was certain that if Sasuke learned of the truth, he would try to destroy Konoha. That was why he had asked Naruto if he would be willing to stop the Uchiha from doing so. Naruto was a capable shinobi. Konoha. I see, you value village over clan, Naruto said with a nod. Then what should I value, Itachi? The Uzumaki is more than just a clan. It is a village my home. If I decided to leave Konoha, I'm certain that I would be able to live happily with my fellow clansmen, in our village. Would that be wrong? Itachi shook his head. No, he said. I just want to know what you really want to do, Naruto. As I speak with you, I begin to understand a bit more of how you reason things. But with how you reason, you should be with your people, your clan, but you are still with Konoha. Why? I can't understand that. What makes you say that? You are proud of being Uzumaki and I find it highly unlikely that you have no connections with the clan. You have a connection with them. You would fight to protect them, even if it meant going against Konoha. But why are you not going there? Isn't it because I am a Konoha shinobi? For now, at least. I have no evil intentions, Itachi. If you are concerned about destruction, go to your brother before he delves further into darkness. If he does, there will be no one to save him. Naruto said. I am also not someone you should worry about because the actions of IWA and Kumo should be what concerns you. Am I wrong? I will deal with Sasuke, soon Itachi said. You have a good understanding of things, Naruto Kuen. I am certain that you think deeply about your future. You are not stupid or arrogant. I wish we had grown around the same time. Perhaps we might have been friends. Itachi burst into a murder of crows after saying those words. Naruto sat still for a moment before shrugging his shoulders. He went back to focusing on his seal. Chapter 9 Later that night. There was a small symbol of the Uzumaki, a kanji for chakra at the heart of it at the top and base, there were two similar markings. The marking at the top was lying upside down and the one at the base lying flat. The drawings on the top read, seal, and at the base, release. This was the work Jiraiya found when he returned late at night. It was drawn on a large ceiling scroll, left open on a small table. Naruto always had a table in each room they rented, wasn't it? He had questioned Naruto's prowess in Fuinjutsu but now he was seeing it. He had learned the art, so he could tell it was as a complex work that could regulate chakra. He stared at the seal for a couple of moments, trying to piece it together. It had three parts and they were all separated. Perhaps it wasn't a finished product but a work in progress. Are you sleeping? Jiraiya asked in a quiet tone. Naruto was sitting silently by the window with his eyes closed. I was before you woke me up with your presence. Naruto responded without looking at the Sanin. What is this? Something I was working on today. I'm trying to create a second storage of chakra to be used in case I deplete my chakra reserves. Naruto responded calmly. Do you need to worry about that? Naruto nodded. Some of my jutsus require massive amounts of chakra my raisin shuriken has limited use because it demands too much chakra. In a situation where I have to fight a long battle, having more chakra will be important. Stamina I have I can fight for longer periods but stamina is nothing when you are out of chakra and your first fighting style is the use of ninjutsu. Things were going to get heated soon. Naruto could already see himself fighting large number of shinobi and if things happen like that, he would need almost unlimited supply of chakra. Well, that is if a war occurs. With Kyumo and Iwagakure, lurking, anything could happen, Naruto wasn't going to take any chances because he had to be prepared for anything. Only those with strong minds and bodies could survive a war. Naruto wanted to survive. He wanted to live a long life worthy of someone with the Uzumaki blood. I know you said you studied almost everything about Fuinjutsu, I didn't think you were this good Jiraiya said. And all this time you never said a damn thing. Naruto shrugged his shoulders in a careless manner. You should know me already now, Jiraiya-sensei. It was never convenient for me to use my Fuinjutsu skills. 
and I never pretended to be ignorant of it. This was just a subject we never really did discuss in details. Jiraiya sighed before settling down. He cast his glance towards the seal once more. It had been left there on purpose, just for him to see. He had said they would have to discuss the practical use of Fuinjutsu. What did he expect anyway? Naruto was a proud Uzumaki what did the Uzumaki excel in? There was no doubt he was Uzumaki now. But what more could the blonde do with Fuinjutsu? He had obviously developed that from scratch. And that was no easy feat. Drawing a new formula was no easy thing to do. He had learned most of the seals he knew. Naruto has probably learned more about many seals than he has since he has studied seals for many hours. I am going to be honest with you, Naruto Jiraiya said in a serious tone. You shouldn't phrase your statement like that, Sensei Naruto said. You make it sound as if you have been lying all this time and which isn't true he paused and looked over at the Toad Sage. I figured this was going to come any time soon he said. You figured? Naruto nodded before looking outside the streets were dark. The sun was nowhere to be seen. The moon had its eyes closed tonight. When you came for me, the air around you felt tense when you were staring at me. I couldn't read anything from your mask. You are a professional at that. Jiraiya was silent for a couple of moments. Naruto hadn't even twitched to show him he thought there was something wrong. The blonde was truly another professional when it comes to schooling his reactions. It just spoke volumes to how calm and controlled he was. The toads told me something I have told you about the prophecy the toads told me, right? Naruto nodded. Perhaps it was something that made him cautious about being near the toads. You did say something like that you did say you once thought it could be my father but that didn't end while you also had another student. Nagato Jiraiya said. He was Uzumaki and had the Rinnegan the eyes once wielded by the legendary Sage of Six Paths. The Sage of Six Paths that wasn't something Naruto thought much about. But the man did once exist in this world. Another story does state that he was truly a master of the sealing art. Perhaps the Uzumaki got this from him. Both the Senju and Uchiha were descendants of the sage. And they inherited his powers or so the powers of his sons. If you didn't know the history of both clans in their founding you wouldn't know something like that. Uzumaki Jiraiya smiled. The clan wasn't blessed with the Dejitsu prowess of the Uchiha, and yet they were the danger. You know, there was once a time when there was a rule if you meet a Sharingan wielder and you are alone, you don't face, you run away. The Sharingan is also powerful enough to cast Genjutsu to control a Bijou yet, it wasn't the clan that was determined the most threat, but Uzumaki. There are just many things that we don't know about why they were destroyed and we might never know. Perhaps Naruto said. Some secrets have died with relics of the past. You might find that 50,000 people were involved but only one of them knows the real truth of what actually happened. There is that possibility, Jiraiya said. I think that you might be the child of prophecy Naruto. I think that you can bring change in this world but whether it will be destruction or peace is another matter that nobody can determine. I really hope that if the prophecy is indeed true and I am correct, you will become a savior of the shinobi world, Naruto. Destruction, oh yes there were powers in this world that could cause so much destruction and death. It could just be pure chaos. One person could destroy the even a village like Kanoha with just one jutsu. Naruto had a clear idea on what he needed to do but whether there was going to be peace or destruction would depend on how the elemental nations responded to him. He wasn't thinking about that for now, he was most concerned about what was in front of him. You have huge dreams, Sensei Naruto said. Naruto wasn't going to comment on his proclamation, Jiraiya realized. Before, he would have allowed the blonde to get away with it but not this time he wasn't going to do something like that. I want your response about what I just said Naruto. Naruto looked at the Sanmin for a couple of moments before looking away. That is something to think about but it is really a frightening knowledge. I am not a kind-hearted person who is as idealistic as you are, Sensei. Nevertheless, I heard what you have said. Perhaps it excites me more than it does frighten me. Either way, we will not know anything unless we truly live that reality. I have no thirst for destruction and I'm still evaluating things. I will be watching you from now on, Naruto more so than I did Jiraiya said in a hardened tone. 
You are my student yes you do not share my dreams, but it doesn't change anything. I don't know how you will involve yourself with the Uzumaki, but you'll probably play a huge role. As your sensei, it is my job to ensure that your role is good your role doesn't bring chaos and destruction in this world. You have the power of the Kyubi, that isn't something even I can go against. Then I look forward to seeing what you are going to do, Sensei Naruto said with a small smile. What are we going to do? I said we would visit Amage Kyur, I never mentioned why. Jiraiya said. Amage Kyur was led by Hanzo, but we haven't heard anything about him. Given how strong he was, I doubt he is dead. The rain has nevertheless been under lockdown for a while. Its reputation with spies is as notorious as Yuzushio. We are going to investigate to see is happening. I have also learned that the Akatsuki might be located there. I have also learned that there is a civil war in the village. It might the Akatsuki against Hanzo. What is the problem with the Akatsuki, Jiraiya? They are just a mercenary group, isn't it? Jiraiya nodded his head. That is true but Orochimaru was once a member, and Itachi is currently a member. Who is able to control these powerful shinobi? The leader of the group must be a powerful shinobi. We don't know anything hence we are going to investigate. I know the civil war is real, but if the Akatsuki is involved, it means a mercenary group is trying to take over a village. This will be my first spy thriller, Naruto said with a smile. When do we leave? You'll have to be careful, Naruto. Amage Kyur is dangerous if we go there, we could be walking straight into a civil war Jiraiya said. He hadn't been planning on taking Naruto with him but with the blonde done with his training, he had to take him. That aside, Naruto knew how to hide his presence he knew how to be subtle. And if something happened, the two of them could always handle it. Naruto had perfected Senjutsu. There shouldn't be problems the two of them couldn't handle. They would make a combo, wouldn't they? If they entered a battlefield in sage mode, they would decimate their opponents. When have I been careless, sensei? Those words ran inside Jiraiya's head like a loud bell that left him dazed for a moment. Perhaps he had been right to think that Naruto would do well. The blonde was never careless. He certainly moved with the slickness of a snake. I sometimes forget those qualities you don't always show. You should pay attention to your student, Jiraiya Naruto said sternly. What was it with Kurinai's team? Jiraiya grinned. I thought it would be a nice touch to remind you of home. We had been avoiding Kanoha Shinobi and never talked more about it. I just thought it would be nice if some of your friends saw you. You know old feelings. Naruto shook his head. Don't be diabolical, sensei. You are already a shameless pervert you need not add such a trait in your personality. Jiraiya shrugged indifferently. We leave tomorrow morning. The Sanmin said. Be ready when I come. Sleeping elsewhere. Jiraiya merely smiled before he started to walk away. He stopped by the seal on the small table and stared at it for a long minute. After this mission, you'll need to show me more seals you know he said in a serious tone. Kanoha. When Danzo burst into her office, waking her from her nap, Tsunade was close to jumping on the man to crush him for disturbing her but she quickly stopped from doing so. There had to be a reason he was in her office. She hadn't been seeing more of him in the past month because she had been busy tidying up things in the village and he had been busy running his show in the underground. The war hawk had a rather serious look about him it was a stern look. Perhaps it was something that she had used to doing but this one looked different. What is it, Danzo? Danzo stared at the woman for a moment. It wasn't easy working, for, her. But he was managing. He hasn't been doing anything that would warrant her attention but he was just being careful. There was no need to do anything now. Patience has always been his friend and he would be patient. He would strike when the time was right. He wouldn't be afraid if she failed with Yuzushio and Iwagakure. He could pick up the pieces. But the fact that she wasn't glaring at him meant that Yuzushio Gakure didn't inform her that it caught his people who had a mission to assassinate their leader. It had been a risk worth taking. If he had managed to kill the leader of Yuzu and leak this to Iwagakure and Kyumo, he could have plotted things wonderfully and Kanoha would watch the chaos occur before pouncing. Yet, the fact that Yuzushio didn't say anything to Tsunade was a little troubling. 
He was dealing with devious people. Well, it was better that the Godame didn't know. He was safe as long as she didn't know. But Yuzu wouldn't try to use this information to blackmail him, would it? If something happened, this woman would no doubt send her shinobi after him and it would not be pretty. At this point, he was even considering using Shirsue's eye on her. I have just received a report that Sasuke has left Orochimaru. Danzo said. What? He left Orochimaru and was seen into the Fire Nation. We don't know where he ended up going but he is possibly looking for Itachi. Danzo said. It would be troublesome if Itachi comes across the younger Uchiha and says something. No, the Uchiha knew his duty to the village. He wouldn't dare say anything to Sasuke. With how emotional the young Uchiha was, he would no doubt try to attack Kanoha. With how the elder Uchiha loved the leaf, it was unlikely he would do anything that would lead to such an action. Tsunade stared at the war hawk for a moment Sakura had been right. This was happening, but where was he going? Did he think that he was now powerful enough to defeat his elder brother? What about Orochimaru? I don't know if he is alive or dead though, it would be best if he was dead. Orochimaru was a liability to the leaf and to him. His continued existence was nothing more than a ticking time bomb. I want something more than that Danzo Tsunade said in a firm. Go confirm it, if he is indeed dead, I want his head before me. If you can't bring his head, get me something I can work on. If he is still alive, confirm it. There is still Kabuto to think about, where is he? I will have to look for that. Then get to it. Tsunade ordered in a hardened tone. I want results soon. Danzo didn't respond to being order like that. He could permit it, for now. He had patience to deal with this. For now, but the day would come. She would either be dead or kneel before him and beg for him to spare her life. We have not discussed Sasuke. What of him? If possible, it would be best that he not even meet with Itachi. We have a better chance of catching him since he isn't under the protection of Orochimaru. Danzo said those words in a stern tone. Do you have his exact location or general location? Tsunade asked. No. Then go find it, and when you do, come back to me and we will discuss what needs to be done. I will be more than happy to send my top shinobi after both him and Itachi. Tsunade said. He would not allow that to happen. Danzo would make sure that Itachi was dead before he arrived in the hidden leaf. There was a chance of talking if he arrived back in the leaf. They had not even been actively pursuing him because they had let him leave the village after serving it. A truly noble act as one should expect from a true shinobi of the hidden leaf. You still haven't given me a clear answer on whether you will give Sasuke to me or not Danzo said. Since we have a clear chance of getting him back, we need to settle the issue. Tsunade looked thoughtful for a moment. Whether she gave Sasuke to Danzo would depend on a couple of things. She was going to conduct a psychological evaluation on the Uchiha to determine if he needed to be sent into a cage and given strict lessons by Umbu. It would be a good mental exercise that should teach him better emotional control. Speaking of evaluations, she needed to order Shikaku to have them performed for every active shinobi to determine their state of mind. She didn't want loose cannons in a situation like this. Tsunade would really not want to deal with Sasuke. It would be good if he was with Danzo. But there were risks contained there. Nevertheless, she could do without the headache. I provisionally give you my approval to handle him. However, after some time, I will call him back, determine his state of mind and see if he can get back under my control. That is acceptable. Good Tsunade said. Now go find him and Itachi. There is still one more issue. Danzo said. Tsunade narrowed her eyes. What? I have to first congratulate you on implementing changes to the Shinobi Academy and approving tough guidelines on how Jonans train their students. While it is not enough, it is still a start and at a time like this it is needed. Of course, we would have never come to this point if Hiruzen had bothered listening to me Danzo said. Tsunade stared at the war hawk for a moment before sighing. Receiving praise from Danzo was nothing good. She didn't need it from him. Those words felt a bit disgusting. But she didn't show it. Then. 
We need to do something about both Kyomo and IWA Danzo said. We cannot simply allow them to form a partnership in this situation. It would prove to be a problem for our survival. We need to ensure that they never become allies. If you approve it, I have the necessary methods to make sure that they fight each other. Tsunade frowned. It was always something dark with Danzo. There was just no way Tsunade was going to go under that path. Even her grandfather would be ashamed. They needed to survive this. And indeed if Kyomo and IWA rallied against them, it would prove to be a challenge they might not be able to overcome, but going dark like that? Never. Kanoha has already done many dark things, she would not do this. I am not giving you my approval and you will not do it. Tsunade said firmly. If I hear that there is something happening between the two, Ibiki Ninoichi will have a couple of words with you. Predictable. Danzo said before walking away from the office. He had known she would give a response like that. He was hardly surprised, but for Kanoha's survival, Danzo would do anything in his power to protect it. He would make sure that the leaf survived this mess. He would not allow a knave woman who allows her emotions to get the best of her to drag this village down with her. Danzo blamed Hiruzen for this mess. These people were following his former teammates' teaching and it was dragging this once great nation down. Amage Kyur. Naruto looked down at the toad that had sneaked him into the rain through the large lake that surrounded the village. You entered the village through a bridge but that didn't accept visitors. And so, they had been swallowed by small toads and then dived into the water. They were now out and into the raining village. Naruto didn't look around he didn't run for cover as Jiraiya did. The Sanmin had quickly made his way out of the rain to look for shelter but Naruto stood still, looking up into the clouds with his right hand held up, waiting for the rain drops to hit him. He closed his eyes and felt the drops hit his body. It wasn't the kind of rain that made you wet in a second. Hey, what are you doing standing there? Jiraiya said to Naruto. There was no one around here, and so they were safe. But he didn't want Naruto standing in the rain like that as if he was a child. Naruto didn't respond immediately, after a minute or so, he walked over to the Sanmin who was giving him a questioning look. Long ago when the orphanage stopped being my home, when it rained, I could freely cry without anyone noticing I was indeed crying. I was just remembering those cold and miserable moments. Why remember something like that now? Jiraiya asked. Naruto shrugged. You know I am rather sentimental, sensei he said carelessly. Jiraiya shook his head. He knew that but it didn't make it okay sometimes. Sometimes Naruto did things that were like rituals. They were here for an important mission and they didn't need to do anything that would give them away. He was ready to fight, but if he could avoid it, he would do so. This isn't going to affect you, yes? Naruto glanced over at the Sanmin, asking if he was making a joke or not. He didn't even bother responding, he merely transformed into a different person. The elder toad sage did the same and they started to slowly walk into the rain. Amigekure is truly locked up, isn't it? There was just no way of entering the village without sneaking in as they did. There was always rain so entering the village through aerial means might prove to be a little difficult for many people. Well, it wasn't that people had the means to travel through the air. Perhaps that was why most shinobi villages were not prepared for such assaults. Perhaps the Sky Nation was once feared because of their ability to bomb nations by flying over them. Jiraiya looked around for a moment. It wasn't always like this. This place could be easily accessible by shinobi and in all the past wars it had been used as a battleground by Kanoha and Iwagakure. Hanzo would always have to join the battles to make sure that the battles didn't affect his village. He'd never liked the Kages and he had killed all shinobi who faced him. Locking in Amage Kure had been his way of ensuring the village survived. Hanzo started the rule because the land was used as a battleground. We ended up fighting him because we were also fighting in this land. Naruto looked up for moment this village. Shinobi nations use it for their wars. How despicable. How selfish and rotten for these nations. They didn't fight their wars in their own lands. They fought in other people's lands. Whenever there is a war, smaller nations are the ones who have to suffer. They always suffer. Horny shinobi take over their homes. 
Their lands are destroyed as shinobi battle it out to their deaths. There was always massive destruction. Amige Kure has never done anything to ignite war, even if it hasn't been an enemy of any of the great nations, it still wouldn't have been spared from the destruction. When giants fight, it is the land that suffers. For the small creatures to survive, they have to become giants themselves. Sanin's Naruto said. Hanzo was that powerful, huh? Yet, it didn't stop the great nations from using this country as a battleground. You simply didn't care about smaller nations. It was better them than you. Jiraiya wasn't going to deny that past actions had been unjust, even by Kanoha. But no matter how evil Kanoha was, it was still his home and he would defend it. He would not look at what other villages have done. Certainly, none of their enemies were innocent. They were just as corrupt as the hidden leaf. Maybe I felt pity for the orphans because I did realize that it was our actions that had brought them to the state. Nagato's parents were killed by Leaf Shinobi and he became an orphan. He was still a young boy and had to steal food to survive Jiraiya smiled sadly as the memories of his students flashed through his mind. They were all innocent children who had just been caught in our wars. You saved three, Jiraiya. Naruto started. What do you think the others grew up believing? You know, it is one of those things that make children grow up hating you. You always speak about the cycle of hatred, but when great nations fight and crush those beneath them in the process, do you not think the small nations feel aggrieved and learn to hate? That is what happens Jiraiya said with a shake of his head. They were different though. They were kind and loving children. I taught them how to live and they became good people who fought for peace that just proves to you that not everyone gets tangled up in the path of darkness. If you have guidance, Sensei Naruto said. What are we looking for around this village? You said it was supposed to be locked up and in some civil war, but everything looks fine now. Jiraiya frowned. This had worried him the moment he saw the village. But he knew there had been a civil war. It just means that the civil war ended with how locked down the village was, nobody was told about it. And they haven't made any movements that showed that Hanzo was dead. In fact, they'd been acting as if he was still alive. This made the situation worrying. Perhaps he was still alive. He really should have asked Danzo about this. He knew the two were connected. We have to find out what happened after the civil war, when it ended and who is in charge of the village now. Once we are done, we can see what we have before deciding if we should meet the leader. If Hanzo is still alive, we can go see him. He shouldn't be hostile towards me. Even if he is, I am sure we can handle the situation. Well, you are no longer the same person you were when he defeated you Naruto said in thought. What time do we rendezvous and where? Let's keep walking Jiraiya said. I never said I would be allowing you to go alone. Naruto shrugged. It wouldn't be so much of a learning experience for me if I am with you. Besides, it will be more effective if we go our separate ways he paused and glared at the man. Don't speak as if you hadn't suggested we would be going separately. Jiraiya merely smiled. They finally found Bar. It wasn't crowded but there were people around. They didn't enter. We will meet here in about three hours. If you're late by thirty minutes, I'm searching for you, but in case you were just running late and don't find me, I will leave instructions. Naruto nodded. You are going to start here. The Sanmin nodded. Naruto peeked inside. I don't see any woman you'd want to charm he said. Jiraiya didn't bother responding to Naruto, he merely stepped into the bar. Naruto shook his head and looked around for a moment before both his hands slipped into his pockets and he slowly started to walk away from the bar. Pain's Tower Nagato looked through the rain with the Rinnegan as he felt disturbances in the rain. He stopped his jutsu and turned around to face Kona his longtime friend and partner stared at him curiously before asking. Is something wrong? There is an intruder and a guest. He said. Intruder Conan said. They usually killed those without asking too many questions. Is he powerful? She asked. Nagato nodded his head. Yes he said. Go deal with it I will go to welcome our guest. Conan inquired about the general location before heading out. Nagato took the other way to find another person who has managed to infiltrate his village. When was the last time he even stepped out of the tower like this? 
Ever since he stopped using the mechanical walker, he had yet to step out but just moved around the tower. With Jiraiya. Ridiculous, you look away for a moment and the man who once fought the Sandame students is dead and everyone in his clan is systematically erased from the face of this world. It was perhaps a good method to gain control and keep someone from rising up to challenge you. But it was a brutal method a cold-hearted move that would only please the likes of Danzo. That aside, Payne seemed to be a good leader to his people. They spoke wonderfully about him and they actually worshipped him for his power. The more Jiraiya heard from the people, the more he became curious about the mysterious leader. The people here didn't know about the Akatsuki and they didn't appear fond of the great nations he could understand that. Nevertheless, there was something that makes him uncomfortable it was the militarization of this village. Amagekure wasn't supposed to have strong shinobi. But since he started his search, Jiraiya had come to realize, Amagekure has been under a heavy method of increasing its strength over the past years. He couldn't determine its strength, but it wasn't the same village that was once led by Hanzo. The man who took over here certainly has an idea. It wasn't suffering. Everything looked in order. But the way the people spoke about their leader made him curious. He wanted to meet him. But he still needed to first see Naruto they would go together. Jiraiya came to a halt when he saw a woman flying over, wings flapped behind her. She looked like an angel. He grinned, seeing that she was ready to fight. So, you are the angel he said. He looked at the woman who was stone-faced. An image flashed into his mind and he gawked he was seeing a ghost. Conan. The toad sage undid his henge. Conan looked at her former sensei for a moment as she considered what to do about this man. What was happening in this village wasn't supposed to be known by an outsider. They risked invasion if people from the outside knew about them. They didn't want to start trouble now and they had been willing to kill anyone who threatened their secrets in any other way. Jiraiya Sensei Conan acknowledged the man. She didn't get down. She was still deciding if she should kill him or just let it slide. She sighed inwardly and dropped to the ground. The moment she landed, Jiraiya was upon her, his eyes wide. It is really you, Conan. He said filled with happiness. You have truly grown into a fine, woman. He added with a perverted grin. Conan didn't share Jiraiya's happiness. She simply stared at him, why are you here, Jiraiya-sensei? It took a moment for Jiraiya to get hold of himself. He was finally happy to learn know that his student was alive. He had thought they were dead. But she was standing here, looking alive. He didn't even notice that she was wearing the same cloak as Itachi the Red Clouds of the Akatsuki. When it finally dawned on him, he took a step back. What is happening here, Conan? Jiraiya demanded with narrowed eyes. I should be asking you the same question. You infiltrated this village. I came here because I am looking for information. I didn't think I would end up seeing people who were supposed to be dead. I see now that the story of your death was false and massively exaggerated. Are both Yahiko and Nagato still alive? Conan did not answer the question. I would rather you leave the village, Jiraiya. We do not take kindly to intruders. This wasn't going so well. He didn't think that he would meet his students like this, and the hostility. If Nagato was the one who was behind Hanzo's death, what did it mean? Did it mean he was the leader of this village? What did it say about the child of prophecy if Nagato was still alive? He too was Uzumaki, this just changed everything. It was a confusing situation. Last time we spoke, I was crying because I was going to miss you, Conan, is this how you greet me now after all these years? Conan was silent for a couple of moments. She then turned around and started walking away from the Sanmin without saying a word. Jiraiya followed her, he attempted to ask questions but she didn't budge. She didn't twitch. She didn't say a damn word to him. Even when he made a lewd comment to try to get a reaction, she ignored his comments. She led him towards the tallest tower. When he arrived, he saw Naruto sitting by the balcony, in his favorite pose. The blonde turned towards him. Oh, sensei, you got caught too he said casually before looking away once more. Jiraiya hurried over to the blonde, leaving Conan behind. Naruto looked fine he was just sitting as he would when sitting by the window. He wondered, 
What would happen when they head back to Kanoha, would they be fighting for the window? That was his spot, he would fight for it. I'd even forgotten about you when I saw Conan the Toad Sage admitted. But I'm glad you are fine. I don't think we are fine though if her reception is anything to go by. She is one of my former students, but I think depending on what we say to them, we might not leave freely he whispered into Naruto's ear. No kidding, Naruto said. If Jiraiya wasn't used to Naruto's indifference, he would have been frowning now. But he was used to it. He didn't respond but merely turned around. He saw Nagato standing there next to Conan. The Rinnegan. He looked between his students and then Nagato once more. He was now a man. He had once believed this was the child of prophecy. He was supposed to be dead, but he was very much alive. Jiraiya Sensei Nagato started without emotion. I didn't expect to see you so soon. What brought you here? This was not the same Nagato he knew. This was not the same child he had trained. Nagato was strong. If he had defeated Hanzo, it meant that much. But it was still something that the kind-hearted person he had trained would massacre everyone who was connected to Hanzo just to strengthen his grip on power. The Nagato he knew wouldn't do something like that. This made Jiraiya stiffen. They were both different. Both? There should be three of them. If you two are alive, where is Yahiko? There was no reaction from the two that gave anything away. They just stood there, unflinching before Nagato spoke. You have not answered my question, Jiraiya-sensei. Jiraiya knew things were not going to go smoothly if he did not respond to the question. He could see that they were prepared for anything. He glanced at Naruto, his eyes were cast outside, but still ready to jump in if anything happens. He smiled. He could always count on the blonde. Last time I heard this village was in a civil war I also heard that the Akatsuki was connected to this village. Are you the leader of the group, Nagato? Jiraiya asked with narrowed eyes. Yahiko is dead. He was taken from us by Hanzo but that is something Danzo should know very well it was Conan who responded. What do you mean by that? Jiraiya asked with suspicion. Nagato walked away from Conan and then passed Jiraiya. He stood over the balcony and looked down the streets before responding. We were doing well in our group with Yahiko as our leader. Our group earned many admirers and many comrades joined us. I'm sure our actions even reached your ears. Jiraiya nodded. I kept receiving the information. I was really proud of your actions. Everything stopped when we were informed that you were dead. We did die. Nagato said in a cold tone. Our actions even reached Hanzo. We met him once and he supported our work. We had his blessings. One day, he called us out and we went to him. But it turned out to be a trap. Hanzo was under the illusion that we were just power-hungry children who were after his power. He tricked us, and that was when Yahiko died. That was when we died. In order to protect his power, Hanzo betrayed us. But it turned out that he was fed false information by Danzo of the Hidden Leaf. Danzo feared that we might overthrow Hanzo and that would threaten his power. Hanzo was his ally so he didn't want to lose that. When Hanzo laid the trap for us, he even offered Hanzo his shinobi. Our group had grown in strength and in numbers. To Danzo, our actions were not good. Our growth wasn't good. It was a threat and so he conspired with Hanzo to get rid of us. That bastard. That is all for today, Jiraiya Sensei. We have been hospitable because you were once our sensei and you treated us well. But you must leave this village. We do not want any trouble and would appreciate it if you left. We will not answer any of your questions and will prefer it if you left in the same way you came in. As you can see, this village is enjoying its peace and growth. We do not wish to have any interaction with the outside world for you have brought us nothing but pain and destruction. Nagato said those words in a powerful tone. Conan will escort you out. Jiraiya narrowed his eyes dangerously. What makes you think that I will simply leave like this? You have obviously been rebuilding and you're no longer the same Nagato as you were. I wouldn't forgive myself if you ended up being a threat to the elemental nations and I let it happen. If we had plans to be your enemy, you wouldn't be standing here with us, Jiraiya-sensei. 
Nagato said walking away from the balcony. Jiraiya got the message loud and clear. If Nagato thought he was an enemy, they would have been fighting now. That much was apparent and clear. No, it should have been clear from the start. These people were not afraid to fight him just as he wasn't afraid to do it. Perhaps for him it would be out of responsibility for having spared their lives and trained them. What really happened to you, Nagato? Nagato didn't say anything he was already walking away. Jiraiya-sensei, please let me escort you out peacefully. There will be time to talk, but we have don't have anything more to say to you now. We have said we want to say to you Conan said to Jiraiya in a stern tone. Are you going to force things? Jiraiya glanced at the silent Naruto for a moment before shaking his head. No. Conan nodded. Please don't try to sneak in again and we would appreciate it if what you discover doesn't find its way to the nations that surrounds us. We are not ignorant of what is happening in the world outside. Nagato was Uzumaki and he was alive. It made him the second Uzumaki was alive but not in Yuzushiogakure. A combination of Nagato and Naruto? That was just a frightening thought. But did these two not have any connections with the clan? With Nagato, it would be doubtful to think that the Uzumaki would not approach him if they know he was alive. This great revelation just changed everything now. He had thought Naruto was the child of prophecy but if Nagato was alive, then it was one of them. So, was it Nagato or Naruto? Was it both? If it was, one of them, the other would desire to save the world and the other would seek destruction. If they worked together, would it be for destruction? Jiraiya didn't want to dismiss that possibility. They have both been wronged and could have strong emotions about the issue. He had his work cut out for him. In the next month or so, before they returned to Konoha, he would be forced to work hard to try to make sure that Naruto becomes the savior of this world. There was another problem of Danzo. He would deal with this. Conan, Jiraiya started calmly. Is this village connected to Yuzushio? Its actions seem familiar to what Yuzu is doing. Both these villages have also suffered in the hands of the great nations, are you connected? Is Yuzushio also building its military strength while on lockdown? It is pointless to ask these questions I will not answer them. Conan said. She was walking behind the two Kanoha shinobi. At this stage, I am tempted to force you to answer questions. Jiraiya said with a smile. It is me and Naruto we can take you down silently before Nagato even notices. Conan didn't say anything she kept her silence and kept walking. Minutes later. Talk about a plot twist, Jiraiya could still not comprehend what had just happened in the rain. He'd gone to find intel in a land that was supposed to be in a civil war but he'd found a peaceful village which was prospering. But what he found next has truly put a spanner in everything that he had been thinking. He would have to redraw all his conclusions and even consult with the toads. They had said a, child of prophecy, not children. It possibly couldn't mean two of his students were somehow part of the plot, could it? Jiraiya shook his head he needed more time to think about this matter. I can't believe that they are still alive he said as they made the distance with the hidden rain. People who don't want to be seen fake their deaths many times it happens it is a good way to disappear and not have people still look after you. Naruto responded quietly. I guess I am no longer the child of prophecy, huh? Jiraiya frowned. I don't know he said. I don't really know. Days ago, you were saying you are positive that I am the child of prophecy, you should really make up your mind, sensei. Our world is full of many surprises and if you allow them to change your every decision, you'll be filled with indecision for the rest of your life. At this moment, you can't choose between me and Nagato. You have gone all your thinking maybe this is the one, maybe not him, maybe this one. You have lived long enough, sensei. You need to decide on who you believe is the child of prophecy. I'm saying this because it also affects me you cannot come and tell me that I could be responsible for either destruction or be the one who saves this world, and then the next moment you say, you really don't know. If you are full of indecision, nothing happens. You sow nothing but confusion. Unknown location. Sasuke stared into the eyes of his brother with nothing but hatred. The fact that the man even smiled infuriated him even more. Itachi he growled. Sasuke Kuen Itachi said. I see you rushed over here after receiving my message. 
Do you think you have the strength to face me, now? I watched your battle with Naruto Kuen I was quite honestly disappointed. What was some months ago Sasuke responded with gritted teeth. I see Itachi said. Come, Sasuke Kuen. Fight me. If you defeat me, I will answer all your actions. I'm sure you are curious about why I did what I did. But if I win, I will take your eyes. Chapter 10 The Hidden Leaf How many years has it been since he last stepped into the village? Naruto felt neither excitement nor the longing to be finally home. This village had been nothing but a curse to his very existence. There had been days he had been walking around, feeling as if he had been carrying its full weight on his shoulders. A treacherous and miserable life that he had been forced to live. But he had endured. He had accepted the hatred that these people pushed towards him. He had carried it without falling down. The hatred. The loathing. The contempt. But Naruto had never hated himself, he loved his life. He was a miserable person who has chosen to shoulder the hatred and contempt rather than to try to live happily. That was his decision and he was content with it. Naruto was truly glad that the Sandame told him about his mother, the Uzumaki clan. He couldn't even think of how his life would have turned out if the old man hadn't informed him of the truth when he did. Hiruzen hadn't told him about the Kyubi, he had found out about it. He hadn't been hurt. He hadn't felt betrayed by the Sandame Hokage. Naruto had laughed hard the day he had found it because, finally, everything had made sense. It had made sense why they hated him. But it hadn't made his life any better. He knew the Sandame had passed a law forbidding people from mentioning the Kyubi, but it didn't change anything. Naruto shook his head and took a deep breath he frowned inwardly. The air around the village was still the same contaminated. Naruto, Jiraiya called with patience. The blonde was walking a bit slowly. Come on, I've got things to do. Naruto glanced over at the perverted Sandine for a moment before shaking his head. No doubt you are thinking about going on a peeping road show he said calmly. Would you like for me to accompany, you? Jiraiya halted and the turned to face Naruto with wide eyes he seemed excited. Really? You come with? I could do the watching while you write what I tell you to write he said. He could focus his attention on his eyes so that he doesn't end up missing anything. Of course not Naruto said blankly. I'm not a perverted old geezer who likes peeping on young girls. I swear one day you are going to get your balls crushed and that foot between your pants cut off. Jiraiya immediately put his hands between his thighs as if to protect himself from an oncoming attacking. Don't say things like that he said with a wince at the thought of being crushed. Naruto shrugged. I'll say whatever I want he then smiled. I think it would be amusing if that happened. I think I wouldn't be against the idea of exposing you and then holding you down just so it can happen. Jiraiya glared at Naruto what a cold-hearted student has earned for himself. He did shudder at the thought of Naruto going through that statement it made him afraid. He could see the blonde doing something like that. Of course, he didn't for a moment think of quitting. If he got caught, he would beg and make promises he couldn't keep. If you do that, I stop being your sensei. I'll disown you. And Naruto said with indifference. You have already served your purpose. Perhaps I should even stop calling your sensei now since you won't be training me Naruto looked to think about it for a moment. You can be so cold sometimes, Naruto Jiraiya said with a hurt look on his face. After a moment, he spoke again when Naruto didn't respond. I expect you to be lively to ease Heim's worries. Don't worry, I will put my face between her bust just to show her how much you have corrupted me. Naruto said with a smile. Tsunade's reaction would be amusing but perhaps more so would be Jiraiya's. Naruto was certain the Toad Sage would be turning around to glare at him for doing something he couldn't get to do. No doubt he has had so many miserable days just thinking about the Godame's large chest. Instead of turning to pummel him, she was likely to turn towards Jiraiya and hit him hard to turning him into a shameless pervert. On second thoughts, I'm not going to see her with you. Naruto just laughed seeing the fear in Jiraiya's eyes. Oh sensei, you truly have been exposed to too much of her beatings. Worry not, if you give me your spot, I will behave. His spot. The window. Never. You are not sitting on my place. 
Whoever arrives first claims it Naruto said with wide smile. Harem no Jutsu. In a puff of smoke, a couple of young beautiful ladies appeared before the Sanmin with innocent looks. Seeing Jiraiya turning on a perverted look at the almost naked girls, Naruto didn't even laugh he just shook his head and then disappeared, leaving Jiraiya alone to nurse his nose bleed. Hokage's Office Tsunade didn't hold herself from rushing over to Naruto when he stepped into the office with a small smile on his lips. Finally, he had returned. She was happy to see him alive, so well and so happy. She was happy that he had grown and that he was back in her presence and she could see him. Three long years and she didn't see this person but now she was finally able to see him. When she was the last time her heart felt so warm at just seeing someone she loved so alive and well. Naruto, the Godame Hokage whispered as she pulled the blonde over to a tight hug. She smiled warmly as she embraced him, her strength gaining by the second. And then, Naruto disappeared in a puff of smoke. Tsunade blinked. The happiness she had been filled with disappeared in a second when she realized that she had been hugging a clone of the blonde. She was now furious. How could he do that to her? She twirled around and saw him sitting by the window, a wide smile on his lips he was waving his right hand slowly. Out of frustration and perhaps a bit of too much happiness, Tsunade grabbed a chair and flung it towards the blonde. Naruto ducked under to avoid getting hit by the chair. He watched it pass just above him and through the window for a second before sitting up. His smile didn't leave him. It is pleasant you are still energetic, Bachan. Then again, it would have been unpleasant if you lost your strength with age. Tsunade glared at the blonde. Do you want to send you to the hospital? Naruto held up both his hands in the air and got up from the window. He walked over to the Godame Hokage and stopped just inches away from her a charming smile slipped through his lips. Princess Tsunade, he said in a slow tone. I'm truly happy to see you again. It has been quite some time, after all he then leaned closer. Please let me express myself he kissed the Hokage on the right cheek before quickly moving away to avoid being hit. Jiraiya whistled as he appeared in the office. Tsunade didn't hear it she just stared at the retreated blonde with unblinking eyes. What the hell just happened? Naruto of the old wouldn't have done something like that. He had manners yes, but he didn't treat her like a woman. It was always the old hag. Tsunade shook her head and walked over to chair without saying another word. You came here a little quickly, sensei. Naruto said to the toad sage. I'm not as simple as you think. The Sanin said with a shake of his head. Naruto smiled. Oh really? I don't like the way you are smiling now, Naruto Jiraiya said with a nervous look on his face. I was simply going to suggest that I perform that jutsu but this time, a bit x-rated to see if you really won't get a nose bleed. Naruto said with his smile. There was just no way he wouldn't get a nose bleed. Naruto was playing with fire here and he wouldn't stand for it. Of course if the blonde activated the jutsu he wouldn't be able to help himself but try to look. Jiraiya didn't have to respond as Tsunade finally spoke. What jutsu are we talking about here? She demanded with narrowed eyes. Naruto merely smiled. It is a hidden jutsu that has worked against the most powerful shinobi, even a man who once claimed the title of god of shinobi the blonde said proudly. In any case, we have returned from our training trip by Mu Naruto turned his eyes towards the silent Shizun. He smiled towards the black-haired woman. Shizun, how rude of me you look delightful as always he tilted his head to the side. You seem to have a certain glow about you, fallen in love. Shizun blinked before smiling. It is good to see you too, Naruto she said. I wasn't looking, she said. Love doesn't find only those who are looking, dear. Naruto said with a small shake of his head. The human heart is an unpredictable thing. You might tell yourself you are not looking for love, you won't ever love again, but one day, you meet someone and it starts racing, while whispering soothing sounds to your ears. Since when did you become the romance expert? Tsunade asked with a raised eyebrow. She looked at him carefully, his air, it had truly grown and he didn't look to be taking care of it. It was as if he didn't really touch it. That aside, he had become a handsome young man. It wasn't bad at all. She could understand why Tamari had seemed so keen on him. 
She hadn't commented on it but the Sunakunoichi had spoken about him in glowing terms. Perhaps she liked him. Well, what was there not to like? You forget who his sensei was, Haim Jiraiya intervened, with a proud smile. Naruto snorted. Please don't take credit for something you didn't do, Erosenin. The only thing you could have possibly taught me would to, Jiraiya flashed towards Naruto and put his hands around his mouth to stop him from continuing to speak. Now, now. There is no need to say anything. The Sanin whispered. Tsunade looked curious, what were you going to say, Naruto? She demanded while shooting daggers towards Jiraiya, who was still standing beside Naruto. Nothing much it isn't like he has many stories to tell about romance anyway. Naruto said with a shrug before walking over to the window. He looked down the streets as silence fell into the office. Tsunade studied Naruto's body language for a moment before shaking her head. He was back in the hidden leaf and now that he had returned, she didn't know what to do with him. Put together Team 7. Perhaps they could do that because of the kind of times they now found themselves in. There was likely to be war in the coming years, Kanoha had to be ready, and everyone had to be ready. She wouldn't complain if it doesn't happen. Shinobi were trained to fight, to be strong for their village having a strong military presence only strengthens Kanoha. I was worried that you might have returned damaged Tsunade said before casting a glare towards Jiraiya. Who knows what this pervert might have tried to teach you. I am not unguarded Naruto said. Besides, it was a little too late for Jiraiya to corrupt me he said before turning to face the Godame Hokage. Things seem to have changed in this village perhaps I am reading the atmosphere wrong. Tsunade was silent for a couple of moments before she responded. You already know what is happening, so we have to be ready for whatever happens in the future. Now that you have returned, it will be good if you were to play an active role in the mediation between Yuzushio and Kanoha. It would work well with Naruto's presence. They'd yet to say anything to her, and she was getting a bit worried. They had said they would contact Kanoha but they haven't been saying anything. It wasn't like they were ignorant of what was happening in the elemental nations or the threat that villages like IWA posed. They knew and yet according to Kakashi, they hadn't looked a bit concerned and that worried her more than anything. If they were not concerned, there was something that was making them confident. There had to be a reason. They had been destroyed once they would certainly do everything in their power to defend themselves. People once thought it was impossible to invade Yuzushio because of the whirlpools but it had been done once and it could be done again. Diplomacy isn't really my thing Naruto said calmly. Besides, are you sure that you want to send me to Yuzushio? Are you going to give me a reason, why I shouldn't? Naruto stared at the woman for a moment before looking back at the window. You're the Godame Hokage and regardless of your feelings, your duty to your village comes first. You made an oath to protect this village with your life, and you will do so. We should not avoid being honest with each I am considered a flight risk, yes. He glanced over at the Godame Hokage, waiting for her response. Umbu have determined that to be the case Tsunade said. Naruto nodded. Why? I am Uzumaki and Kanoha hasn't done anything for me that would make me choose it over Yuzushio. It is like if you are in an abusive relationship, if another lover shows up and promises to treat you tenderly, you will abandon your current lover for something that promises to be better. The situation with me is like that, and I can understand that. I also appreciate the fact that you are not casting me glares. Seeing more of Yuzu tempts me. I saw the village, it is lovely and perhaps if I go there I might feel at home. Perhaps your reason for doing this would be to try to keep me feeling like that even though I am with Kanoha, I am also playing for Yuzushio. It doesn't matter regardless the fact is that I am considered a flight risk. He paused, taking a thoughtful expression. You'd call me a very S-rank flight risk. Are you rejecting the idea? Of course not Naruto said with a shrug of his shoulders. As long as I am a shinobi of the hidden leaf, I am work for Kanoha's interests admittedly, this would be a bit complicated. I'm surprised that you don't look offended that your own village would consider you a flight risk. Many shinobi would be pissed off if they learned that their village considered them such. Tsunade said. Being considered a flight risk would be an insult, but this isn't the worst thing Kanoha has done, isn't it? Besides that, the risk isn't determined by what you feel but by the circumstances that surround us. 
I assume whoever came to the conclusion looked into my history and the present and determined that even though I haven't expressed any desire to leave, anything can still happen. Naruto explained lightly. Tsunade smiled. You have really grown, Naruto. She said calmly. You're no longer just a brat that I must worry about. What is born must grow, Naruto said with a smile. Since you admit that I am no longer just a brat, can I take out Shizen for dinner tonight? Tsunade was shocked before a moment before shaking her head. Go play with someone your age. Naruto merely smiled. The matters of the heart do not care for age or physical appearance, Princess Tsunade the blonde said calmly. But I shall retreat enjoy the rest of your day saying that, Naruto departed the office through the door. Then? What? Jiraiya smiled innocently. I didn't do anything to him but don't be fooled by that. He is just fooling around at least Jiraiya hoped the blonde was. Sometimes he couldn't tell what was really going on in Naruto's mind. Tsunade shook her head. Well, everything looks fine he thinks well but then again, he hadn't been stupid. He was just a silent child who looked miserable. Jiraiya wanted to say it but he did not, what was inside of Naruto's heart wasn't misery. Naruto could smile and laugh, but when he was alone, he became expressionless. It was always like when he was with people, he put on a mask that people could accept and he did it perfectly. Jiraiya would not say something like that it would only worry Tsunade. For now, they just had to be happy that the blonde was here in Kanoha and not in Yuzu. Jiraiya took out a small sheet of paper he had wrapped up. He handed it over to the Godame. This is a list of the jutsus I know about Naruto and how I have rated him about all ninja arts. What do you mean everything you know? There are things that I don't know Jiraiya said with a shrug. He didn't show me everything. He is also a master of fuinjutsu. He's not going to show that around, but I do assume it is something that needs to be kept secret. You don't want people afraid that he might release the Kyubi since he knows Fuinjutsu. Tsunade smiled bitterly. He'll be releasing it now. Will they be accepting that he isn't the Kyubi but just its host? She asked calmly. That is a little too late, don't you think? Jiraiya frowned upon hearing those words. He didn't expect Tsunade to come up with something like that. He shook his head. I didn't mean the villagers he said. I but guess they too would be wary. We just have to keep it to ourselves. We believe nothing bad will happen but others might not. With Naruto. Naruto stared at the faces of the past Kages, an interesting monument. All Kages had been powerful but Naruto couldn't decide who had been the strongest between the Shodai Hokage and the Sandame. The Sandame had been bestowed with the title of God of Shinobi while the first wasn't. Even if Kanoha itself was weak, with the Sandame still in his prime, no one would dare anything. It was no wonder the old man was respected. There were not much stories about Hashirama, but only that he was a beast. When it came to skills though, and just pure genius, it was perhaps safe to say Hiruzen stood out. But of all the Kages to have ever led this village, his father, the Yandame Hokage was celebrated as the village's greatest hero. The Kyubi would have certainly turned this village into a memory if not for the efforts of the Yandame. No, Naruto shook his head. What of his mother who was the one who pinned down the bijou with her adamantine sealing chakra chains? Kanoha celebrated his father as its greatest hero and yet tormented his child as the evil that killed many of its loved ones. There had days they had seen his miserable look, the days they saw him walking down the streets, shoulders down, looking defeated. But they never saw a child who had no parents, a child who longed to be loved they saw a nine-tailed bijou that killed their loved ones. A child. A beast. They couldn't separate the two. Hatred really did make people believe and do certain things that are unforgivable. Reason doesn't matter when you are clouded by hatred. Naruto didn't wish to turn his life into such a hollow existence in which he lived for nothing more than hatred, vengeance. He would never find peace if he went down that road. But if people were willing take him to that path Naruto would indulge them with every fiber of his being. Naruto looked away from the Hokage monument and placed his hands inside his pockets. As he started walking away, he realized he was being watched by someone. He sighed, he just got back to this goddamned village and he was already being watched. 
the Sandame wouldn't have allowed for something like this to happen. He walked towards his old stomping ground the training ground he had shared with Team 7. He stood still in the clearing, eyes looking up into the heavens. Please come out while I have the patience to stand here like this all day, I have other things to do so I can't entertain you for longer periods. Naruto's eyes glanced towards his left side a huge beast was rushing towards him. He sighed tiredly he had no problems fighting someone, but he really didn't like doing boring battles against weak people. Perhaps this was because he spent much of his time fighting someone like Jiraiya. The Sanmin wasn't like a jonin he was above that. He held out his left hand and channeled his wind sword. When the beast jumped towards him, Naruto swung his hand in a downward slash. The beast was sliced in half, and it burst into black ink. Naruto raised an eyebrow seeing this. It was something he hadn't seen before a rare ability. Sai flashed on Naruto's right hand, flashing a kunai towards the blonde's shoulder in an upward slash. Naruto jumped back slightly to avoid the slash. He twirled around to face the pale black-head teenager. The kunai was flung towards his forehead with sharp accuracy. Naruto tilted his head to the left, and the kunai sped past his head. Sai was upon him, trying to punch him on his gut. Naruto caught the punch with his right hand. His hold was like a tight iron grip. What do you want? Sai frowned, trying to break free, but Naruto didn't budge. He might not look like it but he certainly had massive physical strength. He wasn't even being taken seriously. He sighed and stopped struggling. Naruto freed him but the next second he was standing just inches away from him, cold blue eyes staring at him. Sai tried to make the distance when he felt an immeasurable pressure suffocating him, but the blonde caught him on his right shoulder. I don't know you, you're not even wearing a leaf headband, if I burst a hole through your gut, I can get away with it can't I? Especially since you just attacked me without saying anything when he was saying that, Naruto had a ball of flames on the palm of his right hand. Sai's expression didn't change, but he felt afraid. He'd forgotten what fear meant but he felt it no. He was becoming familiar with it now. He couldn't even breathe because there was some force that that was making it impossible for him, no matter how hard his nose tried to suck in oxygen, he couldn't get it in. When Naruto let him go and twisted around, walking away, Sai fell on his knees. His breathing was labored he was finally able to breathe. It felt good to be able to breathe again. But he had learned. Naruto was a frightening person much more frightening than Danzo. Of course, he would never admit that to anyone. Foundation Hideout Jiraiya had never really given himself time to come down here, but now that he was here, he certainly didn't like it. The air was cold and it made him think of the cold and brutal training that Danzo gives his operatives. Naruto would have been a monster if Danzo had trained him a demon perhaps. The war hawk prioritizes the Kyubi and he would have made sure the blonde trained hard to control the power before he could even write or read. Worse Naruto wouldn't have had the emotions needed for a human. He was truly glad that the Sandame had made sure that Naruto was far away from Danzo's hands. He didn't mind that he was surrounded by a couple of Nei agents. They didn't frighten him. Not to sound arrogant, but these shinobi in here were just too young to threaten him. Of course if they wanted a fight, Jiraiya would ensure that they received a fight. He was nevertheless not here for a fight. He was here to speak to Danzo about what he had learned in Amage Cure. Jiraiya hadn't told Tsunade about it but he was going to have a word about it with the War Hawk. There was no telling what this man would do behind Tsunade's back. If he thought that she was weak and naive, he would take measures that were likely to earn Kanoha more trouble in the future. He was Danzo, he would always be fanatical about his love and what he does things for Kanoha. He was always extreme. When the cripple walked over to him, Jiraiya felt the urge to lunge towards the man and grab him by his throat before demanding answers but he was unlikely to gain any answers. He also wanted to see what was behind those bandages, but he was unlikely to see anything until the man was dead. Jiraiya Danzo said with narrowed eyes. He was on guard and ready to move if there was a need. He couldn't read anything from the Sanin. Despite his naive views and idealist beliefs, Danzo did think that the man was a loyal servant of the Hidden Leaf. He was essential to the village's power. However, if he became a problem, Danzo wouldn't have a problem making sure the man was dead. 
There were many tools and if Jiraiya disappeared, it would be easy to get his hands on the Kyubi. Danzo Jiraiya said in a stern tone. What was your relationship with Hanzo of Amage Cure? Danzo's eyes sharpened. There was something that the man knew which was why he was asking the question. He would not fall for it. Shouldn't you be talking about Naruto and the Uzumaki? It would also make sense for you to even stay in the village to train more shinobi in preparation for war. That is something we should be talking about, Jiraiya. Who said there is going to be war? It is a possibility but not a sure thing Jiraiya said. Even if there was war, his network was fundamental. He couldn't stay in the village for far too long. He wasn't even thinking about taking any student at this time. Whether you might want to believe it or not, there is going to be war. Though I was surprised that Tsunade recognized it and stepped away from Hiruzen's knave methods, there is still much that is lacking. Perhaps that was true but Jiraiya couldn't talk with Danzo regarding the matter. The war hawk would be willing to sow the seeds himself for war to make sure it happens, thinking that they would greatly profit off it and improve Kanoha's standing. Either way, you are not the Hokage and we will not let you do as you please, Danzo. I am here to let you know that Jiraiya said, leaking a bit of his killing intent. I have never been afraid of doing what needs to be done to protect Kanoha. If it means killing everyone in here and you, I will do it. For certain, Jiraiya would do it. He might be naive and holding the teachings of the Sandame Hokage, but he was able to work to do what needed to be done. I see Danzo only said. Tell me about Aim and Hanzo. Danzo was silent for a moment before responding. Hanzo and I had a working relationship. I cannot divulge the details but we stopped receiving communication from him during the time there was a civil war I assume he is dead. It has been years anyway. When the man came to the conclusion that Hanzo was dead, he probably didn't bother trying to find for sure but just decided there was no need. The relationship had run its course. I was told that you conspired with Hanzo to remove a certain group in Amage Cure. You sent people in to handle things. But Hanzo lost and that person knows what you did. He might come after you and when he does, Kanoha will not shield you. We will feed you to him. I didn't tell Tsunade this because she doesn't need to know. She will probably decide to cut you off if she is told. The things you did in AIM are nothing short of treasonous. However, this is a delicate time for Kanoha, eliminating resources won't do us any good. Stay on course, Danzo. Danzo stared. Now he had to deal with this and he already had the Uzumaki. Very soon, they will be making a move and it wasn't going to spell nice things for him. Danzo didn't show it nevertheless. You were outside of Kanoha and Sasuke has already left Orochimaru. It has been months now and he was suddenly disappeared. I'm not really concerned about the Uchiha Jiraiya said with a shake of his head. Yes, you'd be concerned about Naruto. How far is his connection with Yuzushio? At this point, it would be naive to think that he has no connections to the clan. That isn't your concern Danzo Jiraiya said turning away from the war hawk. We will find Sasuke in at this point, I will object him being given to you. You are not behaving but if you behave, I might change my mind the toad sage said before disappearing from the view. Sai stepped up having just returned moments ago. He knelt before the master of the underworld before speaking. I was able to get close to him but not able to anything. I will need to be in a team with him to be able to learn anything. Tsunade had yet to agree on his plan to put Sai in Team 7. Danzo was a little itchy because of this but he would have to try again. He needed to stay close. He needed to keep an eye on Naruto and the only way to do so was putting Sai on the team. Improvements on his skill. Last time the blonde had butchered his agents but he figured they were just weak. And so, Sai had to do it and he also needed an improvement. He toyed with me Sai said in an emotionless tone. He is way stronger than anticipated. My attacks on him seem to be like nothing but child's play. The blonde hadn't even seemed interested in anything. Danzo wasn't disappointed nor was he pleased. Naruto could be strong that was to be expected since he was a Jinchuriki. But he wanted to see if the blonde could use the Kyuubi's power. That could prove to be their trump card if war came to their door. He would need to gain control over the blonde in that case and he could do it. He had Shirsue's eye. 
he could work on both Naruto and the Kyubi if there was a need. There was no time to train another Jinchuriki as war could break out any time. That aside, Naruto could leave any time. This was why he really needed to keep an eye on the blonde. Later that day. This was his first time in a bar in the Hidden Leaf. He never visited the places before when he was still fooling around with Team 7. He'd never imagined that he would end up here. He didn't even think that upon his return to the Leaf, he would the desire to be upon such a crowd. He didn't want to sit with anyone or chat with anyone, he just wanted to be alone. This was a shinobi place it would be difficult but he would hold a sign above his head that says that he didn't want to be disturbed. Naruto ignored the looks from the shinobi around. He had seen some faces around. The shinobi population, especially the experienced ones hadn't been all high on contempt for him. When the villagers drove the wagon of pure loathing, they stepped away because they understood the situation. They had seen it before. They had heard about it. He went to the bar and made his order before going to sit next to a lone dark table. Naruto leaned against the wall and stared at the bottles on the table for a moment. The noise around him silenced. He could only see people moving around in slow motion it was a bit beautiful. There was silence. Peace. But he didn't enjoy it for too long. He didn't get to drown on his misery. Someone burst his little bubble. His puddle of pathetic memories was splashed across his face when a hand wrapped around his right shoulder. He could feel a woman's breasts pressed against his back. He felt the slick cares of a tongue running through the edges of his left ear. Naruto felt a chill run his spine. What is a handsome young man sitting by himself on a warm and beautiful night like this? Anko asked, in a sly tone. Naruto glanced over to his shoulder. He saw the face. He didn't really like it when someone came up to him like this. He hated it. Not in a bad way. Perhaps the mischievous part of him wanted to play along. Proctor San Naruto responded with a smile on his lips. He turned around to face the woman. Her face was just inches away from his. This was a crazy sadistic bitch he had seen in the Chunin exams, the second stage Proctor. If he seemed to recall, she had issues with Orochimaru. Snakes. Oh, yes, she had been his beloved apprentice and when Orochimaru turned traitor, Kanoha stared at the student. Why did she stay when she had been happily sitting on his shoulders? Humans, they always had to glare at someone for something. You have truly grown Anko said grinning. His bravery only excited her. It enticed her to move closer to let loose a little. He was still just a brat, what could he do? With her experience, she could dominate him and make him cry like a little girl. And she would enjoy that show with a good round of laughter. I see you still have the love for danger, Naruto said in a calm tone. It didn't bother him that he could feel her breath, the smell of alcohol. She had certainly been drinking before sporting him alone in his little corner. He cupped her chin and tilted his head to the side. I hadn't noticed you have a delightful face up close. He pulled her closer until her nose was pressed against his. Can I caress your lips? Anko blinked in surprise but before she could laugh, Naruto did as he had asked without waiting for her response. It caught the jonin off guard but she didn't let it show as she was able to respond to the kiss before Naruto pulled away and turned around. The jonin stared at the back for the blonde for a moment, before a splitting grin spread across her lips. She walked over to the side and sat across him. He was slightly amused. Did I surprise you? He asked. He seemed to know what he was talking about, if the look on his eyes was anything to go by. Anko didn't let a frown settle on her lips. It wasn't disappointing. The surprise wasn't so bad. It was actually a good thing and she was very happy. Maybe she said with a shrug. You're not going to deny or confirm it Naruto said. Do you always like to unsettle young men who are drinking alone? No but you are not just anyone, are you? Anko asked with a grin on her lips. The Kyubi's Jinchuriki and the last time we had such a famous blonde shinobi in Kanoha, was when she had the Yandame Hokage. Famous? Naruto laughed. She had a funny way of putting things. Infamous is the right way to putting things in the right perspective, don't you think? It depends on your view Anko said carelessly. 
It doesn't seem to concern you much though she eyed him carefully when he merely shrugged indifferently in response. Now, why are you sitting alone? You haven't been in the village for a couple of years. It doesn't matter if I have been away for a day or a year Naruto said indifferently. But you are also here, it means you came alone. Should I be asking you the same question? I didn't come alone Anko said pointing at a group of shinobi. I was with them before I saw you. You looked really comfortable. Learning new things from Jiraiya-sama? Naruto smiled. I'm certain if I had learned anything from him I would be dropping under the table to check which color you are wearing he said. Who said I am even wearing anything under my skirt? Enko asked with a grin on her lips. You can check for yourself if you don't believe my words. Naruto had to pause and stare at the audacity of this woman. She would say something like that to him. She knew one would be interested in taking a peek. Jiraiya would certainly relish in sitting with a woman like this. Naruto was starting to see that she was certainly above his pay grade. If I go down, my hand will have to reach. Sometimes I don't believe what my eyes show me so I confirm with a sense of touch. Anko laughed. Perverted brat she said. Want to confirm? She asked slyly. Naruto thought about it for a moment before shaking his head. The night is still young for such festivities. I'm afraid if my hand goes there, I will end up taking you to my den. What would be the problem? We could have the whole night. Naruto smiled. Oh, she was good at this game. Then again, she was older, and experienced, a sadist no less. Let us enjoy the night, Anko besides, I don't need the hold to satisfy you. Anko stared at him for a long minute before bursting out in laughter. Why do I get the sense that though this is a play, there is some truth in your words? Before Naruto could respond, he glanced over at his left, seeing a certain silver-haired jonin walking towards him along with Asuma. Ah, he was certainly not going to get his quietness. But he should have known. This was Kanoha. Well, at least none of his former classmates in the academy frequented this place. They were probably at home or dinning somewhere while eating meat. Naruto faced Anko once more, before smiling. Because that is the truth you want to test it. He said in a serious tone. Someone seems to be having fun Kakashi said, pulling a chair along with Asuma. He sat down and faced Anko with an eye smile. I see Naruto is telling you sweet things. Well, he knows how to behave, unlike you. Anko said with a stare. You are stiff and no fun. The only thing that gives you a reaction is that little orange book of yours she said with distaste, not at the book but over the fact that the man would ignore a live woman in favor for giggling while reading his book. Now, now, Enko there is no need to be hostile while we just sat down. Kakashi chided. Naruto faced Kakashi, I'd always assumed that you were a closet pervert, Kakashi. You probably wouldn't fall for some lewd talk because you are chained in your closet or just have excellent control of yourself he said. Closet? Anko asked with a surprise. He reads his book in public. Naruto shrugged indifferently. It's not exactly porn he said before turning to face the bearded Saratobi sitting on his right. Asuma he greeted with a small smile. Naruto Asuma returned the smile. I haven't been seeing much of you over the past years I have to say, I never imagined that you'd turn out to be this person. This person? Naruto asked. You mean sitting here with a sadist while exchanging pleasantries? Well, not exactly pleasantries, it was a lot less like soft foreplay, don't you think? He glanced at Anko who laughed before responding. Yeah she said. I have to say, it does show that you learned under Jiraiya-sama she said. Well you pick up certain things when you spend time under someone, Naruto said calmly. What are you doing here, Kakashi? You never seemed like a person who went out with other jonins for drinks. You'd always seemed like a recluse to me. Another miserable person there was no doubt that Kakashi was a lonesome person who was held up by his dark past. He didn't let it show to his students, but anyone who checked, would know that the man was filled with nothing but regrets. Perhaps this was why the man even felt he needed to solely focus on Sasuke during the Chunin exams. He was surrounded by miserable people, wasn't he? Jiraiya was miserable, Tsunade was held up in her past that she couldn't love anyone now and he had his problems. But that was alive. 
his life and he accepted it as it was. Maybe it would change in the near future, maybe it would not. He was ready for anything. Kakashi I smiled. That is harsh, Naruto. Well, he's not exactly off the mark Enko said, to which Asuma nodded. The jonin shrugged his shoulders carelessly. Naruto smiled, it was something he did in such situations. Maybe he learned it from this man, maybe it just came naturally when you didn't want to talk about things and didn't want to sound too concerned. What are you even doing here your friends don't visit this place? Naruto shrugged before turning towards Anko. What, I thought I would get lucky today. Anko laughed while Asuma looked surprised by that response. Yeah, right, the snake mistress said with sarcasm. You were sitting all alone looking miserable before I decided to rescue things before you drank yourself to sleep and wake up in dark alley somewhere without any clothes. Naruto merely smiled. This could be my play, Enko-chan he said in a slow tone. I sit alone, drinking because some predator will come after me, thinking I am just another miserable brat they can conquer for the night but not really knowing, they are the prey. I think we shouldn't allow you to come here alone Enko said with a stare. You sound dangerous. Naruto just laughed. Their one who is dangerous, is you, Enko he said. Asuma quickly tried to steer the conversation away from the current subject. So, Naruto how was the training trip? Training under Jiraiya-sama, you must have learned many things. The following day. Ramen, his beloved daily meal. How many times had he thought of the noodles sliding down his throat, the aroma smell filling his nostrils? The joy his tongue felt when it tasted the delicious meal. The purring sound his stomach made when the noodles settled down in its chambers. This food was his holy cup. He had missed it. Not just for how good it was, for also its sentimental value. Sitting here was more than just eating good food it was sitting in a place that accepted him, a place that welcomed him when everyone in the village shunned him. He had been told, even if he was broke, he could eat for free. These people would let him eat for free he never had to eat for free because the Sandaim Hokage made sure he always had something. Many shops didn't even want the demon's money. Even some greedy bastards would wash it down the drain simply because it was his money, rotten pieces of craps. But he had endured the emotional abuse. He did not break. He didn't let them win. They certainly did make him miserable, but at the end of the journey, he would ask. Who is laughing now? Ayam smiled happily when her favorite customer settled in with a happy smile on his lips. She had surely missed his face. Naruto she greeted him happily. It is so good to see you again she said. She wanted to rush over the counter and hug, but she held herself. Likewise, I am Naruto said with a smile. He closed his eyes and breathed in the smell of ramen. God, I missed this smell. I'm going to eat until I can't take it anymore today. I am laughed. As much as I love you eating our ramen, we can't have that. We don't want anything happening to you for overeating. You know, even if you eat too much of healthy foods, you can get sick. There must always be a balance. I know, but you just can't help it with the Karaka ramen the blonde said. I'll be watching you I am said. The usual? She asked. Naruto nodded. Please bring three for now I will get three more after I'm done with the first load. I freed up my stomach yesterday. And he had been drinking. Ah, what a pain this was to his body, but for filling up on ramen, it was worth it. Two at a time, I am said before walking away from him. Naruto just shook his head and waited for what seemed into be an eternity. He didn't even notice when someone walked into the stand or sat down just away from him. When Ayam finally brought his bowls, Naruto clapped his hands, said his thanks before inhaling the steam. He started to dig in. Ayam watched him for a moment before speaking. You have grown big you've turned out to be a handsome young man she said with a smile. She then frowned looking at his wild long hair. You never did cut your hair when you were younger. Naruto shrugged. I like it this way, he said. Besides, I had a dream once and I was told that if I don't cut my hair, I will become the most powerful person who will rewrite the history of the elemental nations. Dream my foot I am said with a snort. Tell that to someone who believes it but even if you did have the dream, does it mean you don't have to look after it? You're ruining your look like that. 
Naruto looked up and stared for a moment. I thought I looked better this way he said. I am just shook her head and walked away.